My little junior sister is a super pervert. She always likes to sneak in when I'm taking a shower. Then, with an evil smile on his face, he ran out again. Still, when I am focused on cultivating. Wearing white socks, she vigorously swayed in front of me, seducing me. It makes me restless every time. I vaguely guessed that she had the intention to challenge her teacher. But busy with career and not paying attention to peace of mind. Just because I was only 17 years old, I single-handedly founded the Sun Moon Divine Sect. After three years of development, it has become the largest dark force in Yuan Zhou. My own cultivation has reached the pinnacle of the supreme realm. I should have been full of spirit and stood above tens of thousands of people. But suddenly found that he was infected with the death worm. And the person who cast the curse turned out to be his beloved junior sister. I didn't expect that she, who is usually gentle and weak, would only know how to act coquettishly. Surprisingly, he is also a supreme powerhouse. And she not only took away my position as the leader. Still breaking my legs, imprisoning me in the back hall. At this moment, a beautiful woman wearing a black veil walked over. The slender jade legs wearing ice cicada silk stockings are faintly visible in the black skirt. The person who came is my junior sister, Chang in the flower realm. Thinking about everything I experienced yesterday. I said in a cold tone. What are you here for? Did you kill me? As the words fell, she paused in place then the expression was restored. Her hand gently caresses the side of my face. Senior brother, if you obediently listen to me. So you don't have to worry about the toxicity of the reincarnation goo. I will search for treasures from heaven and earth for you to take. Immediately, her words took a turn. But if senior brother doesn't listen. So I will kill my senior brother. Waiting for the reincarnation of the senior brother. No matter how long I have to wait, I will wait. Before this. I will be with my senior brother's body, never to be separated. Watching my junior sister's face getting redder as she speaks more. I suddenly realized. Isn't this just the Yandera from the previous life? Suddenly. Hua Jian Chang holds me tightly. Senior brother, please don't reject me. The next second, a faint fragrance penetrated the nostrils. Looking at the approaching peerless beauty. I, however, firmly held her down. Let me go and kiss a woman who takes away everything from me. I'm sorry, I can't do it. However, her expression gradually turned dark. It seems like it's about to erupt in the next second. Senior brother, the goo worms in your body must be biting you painfully. Do you need this? Immediately, he handed me a box of refined heavenly treasures and earthly treasures. The wandering soul goo is a creature that feeds on the life force of its host but it can be replaced with natural treasures. It seems that my junior sister wants me to submit to her skirt but I, Yi Bei Xin, have an iron bone how could it really be as she wishes? Just about to push it open a mechanical beep sounded in my mind. Ding! Congratulations on binding the soothing system for the sickly cute character. As long as the host satisfies the idea of a sickly sweet character to avoid a deadly crisis. You will receive a random blind box. Current bound Yandera girl, Hua Jian Chang. Good impression, off the charts. I haven't finished waiting for the system to finish speaking. I directly hold onto the delicate green silk of Hua Jian Chang's hair. In her puzzled eyes. Pull her over. The next moment, I only felt a sweet fragrance. At first, Chang'e in the flower realm was shocked. But after a brief moment of confusion, he quickly turned the tables. Quickly reach out your jade hand and embrace the back of my head. Time passes by minute by minute. Until I started feeling a bit short of breath. Just forcefully pushed her away despite her reluctance. And Chang'e's eyes in the flower room are like flowing water, graceful and gentle. Seems to still be savoring. At this moment, a voice from the brain system came. Congratulations on successfully appeasing the sickly sweet character. Please select the type of blind box. I didn't hesitate to choose the blind box of resources. Now, natural resources are very important to me. The only way to break the life-prolonging goo is 
Just push it hard until it breaks. Senior brother, you finally figured it out. Give you a rare talent. You don't have to suffer from the pain of being bitten by insects anymore. Hua Jin Chang's eyes regained clarity at this moment. Handed me a golden box. With the idea of not wanting to waste anything. I took the box and casually ate the ingredients inside. The tearing sensation in the body indeed disappeared instantly. After sending away the Chang'an in the flower garden. I will directly open the blind box system. I saw an additional 1 kilogram of Qilong Yenxiong in my hand. A stock of iceberg snow lotus. 1 kilogram of dragon vein essence. Take out anything from inside here. All are valuable treasures without a market. My originally low mood is starting to rise. Finally saw the hope of revenge. Unfortunately, my legs are already numb. It seems that I can only find a way to see if I can deceive my junior sister to help me get cured. It's soon evening. My junior sister brought me dinner. And I took the opportunity to take over the meal. Intentionally or unintentionally, touching her small hand. I saw her face instantly turn crimson. The eyes also began to well up with tears. I pretend to apologize. Sorry, I will pay attention. Hua Jian Chang, however, shook her head. I like senior brother like this. Please treat me kindly, senior brother. I laughed heartily in my heart. Yandera, huh? Let's see how I can handle you. Senior brother, I'll feed you. She scooped up a spoonful of porridge with her jade-like hand and fed it to me. I'm not polite, I opened my mouth and ate it. There has always been a smile on Chang'e's face in the flower room. As if like a gentle wife. But I suddenly made a frustrated expression. Junior sister, now I am just a waste. I feel unworthy of you. How is that possible? If it's my senior brother. I can give myself to you today. And then tomorrow we will get married, how about that? She said eagerly. But I am a useless person, I really don't have the face to marry you. Isn't this just making others laugh? Senior brother, you don't need to worry. Who dares to say another word? Who should I kill? Hua Jin Chang excitedly said. The sharpness in the eyes reveals a murderous aura. I became a little impatient when I saw that she was still not getting on track. Junior sister, senior brother's cultivation is gone. But if someone else has to carry me out when getting married. I would rather die. I think I've made my hint clear enough, right? However, as soon as the words fell. But only saw her face start to turn cold. A smile appeared at the corner of the mouth. Senior brother, you will ride my Jean Lian out when the time comes. How could I let anyone touch you even a bit? I did not reply. There is no point in saying anything further in my heart. Excuse oneself by saying they are tired and then issue a dismissal order to the guests. Who knew she would directly hug me from behind? Muttering in one's mouth. Senior brother, I really love you. We will always be together, okay? Really really love, love. Towards the end, her tone even became somewhat choked up. But I just feel extremely angry in my heart. You say you love me, but you want to break my leg? Now imprison me here. Is this how you love me? Senior brother, it's not like that. Chang'e's tone in the flower room sounded a bit aggrieved. I urgently want to explain something. But I interrupted and said. I'm tired, please stop talking. You go first. I can clearly feel that I just finished speaking. The delicate fragrance and soft jade-like body attached to the back clearly stiffened. Then she slowly moved her body away. I lay in bed with a headache for a while. It is impossible to say that I have no good feelings towards my junior sister. After all, childhood sweethearts are still my own junior sister. Looks that can overthrow nations and cities. But this kind of pathological love is too difficult to accept. Therefore, the top priority is to heal my legs and restore my cultivation. This is how you can take control. I pondered and pondered, 
and thought of someone. She is the head of my spiritual medicine hall, Huan Shi Sha. This person's medical skills are extremely superb. Cold and ruthless personality. But every time I used to see me, they would always have a smile on their face. I don't know if she would be willing to help me. I also have no confidence in my heart. After all, helping oneself now is tantamount to opposing the leader, Hua Jianchang. In the late night, in the back garden. A dark and blurry figure wriggles on the ground. I am planning to go find Huan Shi Sha. Crawled in the darkness like this for a while. Suddenly I only feel hands crawling forward. Encountered a delicate and small thing. I wonder in my heart, and my hand naturally reaches up to touch. A burst of elastic touch came. How is it? Does it feel good? The sudden female voice startled me. Just realized that I was holding someone else's leg. I muttered to myself, it's over. According to the character of Hua Jin Chang, I'm afraid I won't be able to keep my own hands. And will also send subordinates to guard it all day. Just when I thought I would never see the light of day. I heard a satisfied laughter coming from above. The leader wants to escape. I saw everything, you know. By the moonlight, I finally saw the woman's face. Cute face with a mischievous expression. A green dress. The young and inexperienced body is extremely adorable. Isn't this the disciple I recently accepted? Is it you, Ru Yen? I tentatively shouted. Leader right, is me. I finally took a deep breath. Fortunately, it is not Hua Jian Chang. Like Ru Yen, she probably wouldn't betray herself. However, her next words. But he fiercely slapped my face. Master, oh, no, former master. Are you ready to go find the leader of the laundry room? When Ru Yen speaks. The eyes blinked in a suggestive manner. I just came out to get some fresh air. What does the laundry manager do? I definitely cannot admit it at this time. It doesn't matter if you don't acknowledge it. Then I will go and tell the Lord Master about this matter. See how she thinks. Like smoke against her own rosy lips, she helplessly said. I didn't expect the seemingly harmless little girl. The words spoken seemed to be like a little devil. How can you be willing to keep it a secret for me? See the goal achieved. She revealed an extremely evil smile. The complexion also began to turn crimson. You don't want the Lord Master to know about this either. I stood frozen in place upon hearing these words. Why does this line sound so familiar? At the moment, I don't know how to answer. If you want me to keep it a secret, you have to be my slave. As the Master, I have an obligation to help the slave keep secrets. What? Although I know that I am indeed very handsome. There are many people infatuated with me within the school. But I didn't expect that, they actually played so extravagantly. At this moment, the system prompt sound rang again. Ding! Bind the sickly girl like smoke. Goodwill, 90 out of 100. The sound echoed in my mind, and I felt a bit confused. There is another Yandere here in terms of emotions. I miss you day and night. The pain of this lovesickness is tormenting the person's family greatly. So every time it gets late at night. I want to stay as close as possible to the leader. Looking at the sleeping leader beside me, that's the only way I can fall asleep. So every time it gets late at night. I want to stay as close as possible to the leader. Looking at the sleeping leader beside me, that's the only way I can fall asleep. Although what she said was extremely artistic. But I still found the keywords from it. Close to me, watching me sleep? Isn't this a voyeur? Previous cultivation in the supreme realm. I didn't even realize. Does this girl still have any secrets? However, it is most important to go find Huanchi Silk at the moment. Wait for me to regain control of the Sun Moon Divine Sect. Just let you become my direct disciple. So can you keep it a secret for me? I feel that I have already drawn my own pie big enough. Disciple directly transmitted by the master. 
When it's time to practice, something happens between men and women involving joy and love. It is not impossible. I didn't expect Ru Yen to agree so readily. The petite head nodded heavily. Great, then I'll go first. However, as I was about to leave, she grabbed me. Don't worry. Of course, I can help you keep the secret. But, you have to. As Ruyin kept talking, she took off her small white ribbon shoes. Five minutes later, she finally left satisfied. When leaving, they also handed me something. Master Zaya, you can do some bad things to it. But be sure not to lose it. Otherwise, the flower sect leader will know where to find you. After she finished saying this inexplicable sentence. Turned around and disappeared into the night. Ding, congratulations on avoiding the threat of death, please choose a blind box. This time, I still chose the blind box of resources. Pinched the thing that was just forcefully stuffed in like smoke. I just feel incredibly smooth. Then I took it to my nose and sniffed it, only to feel a pleasant fragrance. As if being immersed in a sea of flowers. And when I realized what it was, I even had the desire to die. In the end, I decided that it is more important to focus on important matters. About to knock on the door. Just as I raised my hand, the door opened by itself. Huanchi Silk is also a physician I rescued. Therefore, even if she is unwilling to help, she will never betray herself. About to knock on the door. Just as I raised my hand, the door opened by itself. A highly pathological beauty in white appeared. Bei Xian, you're here. Huanchi Silk seemed unsurprised by my arrival. Then, coldly, he led me into the inner hall. After entering the room, after entering the room, she helped me sit down on the chair. Brewed me another cup of tea. Then he sat across from me and just stared at me. Washing room master. Call me Shisha. Okay. Shisha. I came here this time to ask for your help in curing my legs. You also know about the matter of the main hall. I must vent my anger. I spoke excitedly. However, she had no reaction and just stared at me straight. After a moment, he withdrew his gaze. Treatment is definitely possible, but I can't guarantee that it will be completely cured. Your legs have been sealed by the cult leader. Fortunately, the leader is afraid of harming you, so the seal is not very strong. I am 50% confident that I can cure you. I feel like the probability is quite high when I hear it. Would you be willing to help me? If we are discovered by Hua Jin Chang, the consequences. I didn't continue speaking, but both of them knew. With a fierce, ruthless and indifferent nature like China in the flower room. The fate of the Wuxi silk will definitely not be too good. If it weren't for Beishuan's intervention at the beginning to help. Shisha is now dead. That Shisha's life belongs to Beixian, what is there to be unwilling to let go of? Upon hearing those words, my heart was filled with excitement. Finally, I met a normal person. Still so grateful and willing to repay the kindness. Don't worry, I will do my best to clear my relationship with you. As much as possible, not to burden you. I immediately made a promise to her. However, her next words left me dumbfounded. It doesn't matter if me live or die, but be sure not to distance yourself from Shisha. Why does she seem a little abnormal? Which link went wrong in the end? Okay. I don't want to distance myself from the relationship. When do we start healing? I'm fed up with a life where I can't walk anymore. But she answered with unrelated questions, constantly asking me about trivial topics. It feels like I'm procrastinating until I can't stand it anymore. She suddenly asked me Bei Xian do you feel that it's getting hotter? Getting hotter and hotter, when she said this, I actually felt a little hot, I thought it was caused by impatience, but I found something wrong. What's going on? Why do I feel like my whole body is burning up? Otherwise, you can open the window, I touched my handsome face at this moment, speaking is a bit unclear. 
Don't worry, the window has been tightly closed, the washed silk slightly smiles, so beautiful that it cannot be described. Close it, and oh, I mean. Open the window. Let some fresh air in. I am confused and my speech is fragmented. Finally, he collapsed to the ground and fainted when I saw that I was silent, just a moment ago I was quite serious about washing the she silk, at this moment, the complexion turned an abnormally flushed red, the beautiful eyes seemed to be like flowing water. I thought I would never have a chance in this lifetime, but who would have known that something like this would happen, Beishan, do you know how much I love you? She was speaking took off the outer gauze skirt, the relentless longing day and night is driving me crazy, today, I finally caught you. Soon, you will belong to me, let's leave the sun moon god sect together and live a secluded life, to be together forever and ever, the waxy silk gently caresses my handsome cheeks. Hot to the touch, that is the medicine she took. Ha! Rumpelstiltskin smiled morbidly, as if he wasn't in a hurry to enjoy the food, but rather the hunt. Finally, I can stare at you with impunity, you know? If it wasn't for my low profile, I'm afraid that I would have been just like the people you sent, and would have been beheaded by Hua Shang and hung at the bottom of the broken dragon cliff, she's really fierce ah. Rumpelstiltskin's face turned ugly. That woman is too scary, we must leave as soon as possible. I don't know how long it took, but Raccoon Shisha's enchanting figure lying on the table slowly propped itself up, and on her body was a silver-white top-grade silk cloak, making her figure look even more alluring. Slowly carrying Night Beixian onto the bed and couch, she gently blew out the oil lamp, Beixian, I'm coming, couldn't get a response, but just at this moment, creak, the door was suddenly opened, Who? Rumpelstiltskin raised her head indifferently, and her legs, which were riding on Night Beishuan's body, trembled slightly, at the doorway, bright moonlight shone in from the open sandalwood door, and it also illuminated the person standing at the doorway into pure black, and one could only vaguely see that the visitor had a petite figure and was tied with a double ponytail, Aya Aya, playing so devotedly ah, I didn't even realize I was spying on you for so long, the Lolita voiced young girl slowly walked into the room, and even smoothly brought the door with her, Rumpelstiltskin stood up and put her dark purple sarong on, her eyes shot out a dangerous gaze, and with a squeeze of her left hand, the oil lamp suddenly lit up, the orange colored light illuminated the entire room, Rumpelstiltskin also saw the person coming, it was the disciple taken in by the sect a few days ago, D Dome, what are you doing here? A small inner disciple, how dare you break into the hall master's couch? Looking for death? Rumpelstiltskin's tone was extremely cold, this was also the original him. He he. But who knew that Di Chiong was not afraid at all, but said with a confident chest, he is my slave, so it is my duty to save him, as for killing me, have you thought about how to explain this scene to sect master Hua? Rumpelstiltskin's eyes narrowed into a line. She was aware of Hua Mashang's methods, not only was she herself at the venerable realm cultivation, but the divine powers and magic treasures in her hands were even more powerful, and her heart was ruthless and unparalleled, comparing to Night Beishuan's reign, it was no less than the other way around. If Hua Mashang knew that she had mesmerized Night Beishan and wanted to do something untoward, then her fate would definitely not be as simple as death. After all, any individual could see that Night Beishan was Hua Mashang's absolute scales and forbidden domain. What exactly do you want? Rumpelstiltskin looked at the petite young girl in front of her, her cream-colored tassels fluttering and her hands wrapped around her chest. I don't want to do anything, but if you dare to touch a hair on his head, I need you to die without a burial place. The tone was light, but the content was enough to scare people to death. Di Chong did not use Hua Mashang to threaten her, Ronik Lisa was more or less a bit strange, originally thought that Di Chong's bottom line was to inform on her, but now it seems as if it's not so. He he. Little sister, you're not the only one with a secret, so it's best to keep a low profile, and if Bei Xian is concerned, how could I possibly be willing to hurt him? Rumpelstiltskin was unexpectedly calm. Anyway, don't think about this matter, letting him come to you for healing is already my bottom line, if not for not wanting to expose too much, I would have healed him myself. Di Chiong spoke in a shocking manner, but it didn't startle Rumpelstiltskin. He he. Since everyone is doing this for Bei Xian's good, then let's help him leave the Sun Moon Divine Sect, after all. That woman is just too terrifying. As Ranixish's words exited, Di Chiong's serious little lowly face nodded, Hua Ma Shuang is too strong, it's also good to help brother Weedfish leave her. The moon color had gradually dissipated, it was the darkest time of the day, as if the ink was staining the sky, and one could not see a finger. Night Baishian slowly opened his eyes. A scent of lavender mixed with medicinal herbs lingered at the tip of his nose, as if he was in a sea of flowers between medicinal fields. Am I asleep? Night Baishian said as he sat up, covering his forehead as he looked across at Raccoon Shisha, who was handling medicinal herbs on the table. He felt that his entire body's meridians were tingling, and his body was extremely hot as if he had just experienced a fire roast. You should be too tired, you just fell asleep while chatting, 
I was afraid that you would catch a cold, so I carried you to the bed. Rumpelstiltskin's eyes stared at the medicinal herbs to herself and said with a bland expression. Hearing this, Knight Bashian let out a long breath. It should be caused by his own expression being too tense in the past two days, the threat of Huama Shang had caused him to barely sleep in the past two days, and it made sense that he was too exhausted to sleep over just now. Just, why is this body so hot? Knight Bashan then shook his head, no longer thinking about those irrelevant things, and rubbed his face with his hands so as to refresh himself. With a rub, he realized that his hands were particularly fragrant. He came close and smelled hard. It was the flavor of rouge. The corners of Knight Beishuan's mouth twitched slightly as he glanced at Raccoon Creek Sand, who didn't have any abnormalities, and gulped. Afterwards, he raised his hand and shone it at the oil lamp, but unfortunately, the imagined red rouge didn't exist. What the heck, so it was his own overthinking, he thought that after he fell asleep, he was violated by Raccoon Creek Sand, so it was his illusion. It was indeed an illusion, because it was actually the two beauties who had violated him. Perhaps it was just rubbing the rouge on someone's pillow, Knight Beishan didn't count on this aspect being so neurotic, it was also because he had encountered too many perverts in the past two days. Shisha, when do we start the treatment? Right now, you take off your pants first. Ha, huh? take off your pants. Healing the legs, taking off the pants seemed to be a must, which was fine, but Knight Beishan always felt awkward. But seeing Raccoon Shisha's couldn't care less expression, Knight Beishan was a bit ashamed again, how could he maliciously speculate about others? It was simply too wrong. Then, under the light of the oil lamp, he began to undo his belt and slowly took off his pants. It's off, Shisha, please. Knight Beishuan's face was a bit uncomfortable as he said to Running Shift. Aha. Ranixisha nodded extremely elegantly and organized the medicinal herbs in her hands before slowly standing up. But at the sight of Knight Beishuan's lower half, Ranixisha's facial expression became strange, then she raised her head slightly and took a deep breath, forcing down a certain restlessness. Since that little girl won't let me eat you anymore, it's only right to collect a little benefit before escaping from the Sun Moon Divine sect, right? Thinking of this, Rumsha smiled faintly and walked slowly towards Knight Beishuan, her gaze fixed on him with a deadly stare. Knight Beishuan's scalp went a little numb from the look, and he could only speak out to ease the embarrassment, thank you. Shisha. No harm done. You can just lie back. Knight Beishuan let out a deep breath and looked up at the silk carvings inside the tent as he waited for running Shear's healing. At first it was fine, and he saw Ranixisha tapping on his leg, asking questions. Is there any sensation here? Ranixisha tapped on Knight Beishuan's calf and opened his mouth to ask. No, not at all. Ranixisha then leaned in more and more and knocked on the knee again, what about here? Is there any sensation? Knight Beishuan answered truthfully, no. Ranixisha's face began to turn ugly. A chill ran through Knight Beishuan's heart, is the situation serious? Is there any chance that it can be cured? Ranixisha didn't reply, but continued to tap forward, this time coming to her thighs, what about here? Knight Beishian felt some itching and replied with some excitement, there is sensation here, but it's not obvious. Rongxisha nodded at this, and once again moved down to the root of Knight Beishuan's thigh. Here. Before Ranixisha's words could leave her mouth, she was interrupted by Knight Beishian, stop stop stop. Does it hurt? Facing Ranixisha's questioning, Knight Beishuan's face flushed a little red as he took a deep breath in an attempt to suppress the flood of energy in his body. He didn't know why he was so unable to withstand temptation, but just a gentle tap had made him almost break an extra bone. Even though he had been single for 20 years in his mother's womb, he wasn't sensitive like this, was he? Or was it that he was actually horny himself? The two were briefly silent for a while. Watching Knight Beishuan's face gradually return to calmness, the corner of Ranikles's mouth smiled slightly, then returned to being concerned. As a physician, she knew which part of the human body was sensitive like the back of her hand, and just now it was also on purpose that she wanted to stimulate Knight Beishuan to take the initiative to possess her. This also does not count as breaking the agreement with the little girl, right? The first time I saw her, I was so happy to see her, but she was so happy to see me. Knight Beishuan's self-control ability how heavenly? How could he be taken down by a little bit of means? Knight Beishuan shook his head. The current situation didn't allow him to think too much, healing his legs and escaping from the Sun Moon Divine Sect was the top priority at the moment. There shouldn't be any problems there just now, I feel especially clear. Knight Beishian returned to his breath and said to the stunning figure on his upper body, Very well, then there's still a possibility of a cure. Hearing this, Knight Beishian let out a sigh of relief in his heart and relaxed on the large bed, waiting for Rumpelstiltskin's next move. But what Knight Beishian didn't expect was that Runiklisa was massaging his thigh area. This caused him to be a bit overwhelmed for a moment. It was obviously just a very ordinary massage, but why? Flood power pressed and pressed, this if transformed, then the shame can be lost. As if she could see Knight Beishuan's dilemma, Ranaklisa smiled faintly, like a knowing big sister. Sickness is not a taboo, relax your mind, 
Massaging the places that have feeling then stimulating the places that have been necrotic is a part of the treatment, don't think too much. Rawaksisha had said this, so Nightbashian could only endure alone and in silence. But this feeling was really too strong, coming on more ferociously than at any previous time. But he was still enduring it with his tenacious willpower, just not changing his body. This time, it also screwed up the evil raccoon creek sand in his heart. He could see that Nightbashian was a virgin, and was also a straight and strong man, a state that absolutely could not withstand temptation. But Nightbashian was hard to hold back, couldn't help but make her somewhat impressed. The man she loved deeply was just different. Right right. This is what makes it interesting. In a place where Nightbashian couldn't see, Ronicles's face began to turn scarlet, as if this behavior of Nightbashian had completely released her. The clueless Nightbashian was struggling to suppress his body's agitation. That unique feeling of excitement, coupled with Ronixish's heavenly fairy-like appearance, all caused him to nearly break. But as time passed, he slowly got used to it. But just at this moment, he only felt a pair of cold and delicate small hands sticking to his abdomen, slowly squirming. Crap! Nightbashian instantly arched his body in an attempt to make that feeling dissipate, and then his gaze looked towards the serious Ronicles, his eyes revealing doubt. Ronixisha touched it while speaking that one sentence again in a serious and incomparable manner, illnesses are not taboo, don't think too much about it. The words landed. Nightbashian only felt like he was a fish on a chopping board, that people could fiddle with him however they wanted to, and the key was that he still didn't have a single solution. Just now, he would more or less explain, but now he was too lazy to do so, and the direct sentence, sickness is not a doctor's specialty, left him with no solution at all. Shisha. I have a problem with my legs, what's the use of massaging your abdomen? Knight Bashian still asked out loud. It was as if Ruwashi Shah had already thought of how to answer. The abdomen is where the meridians are the most active. To see if I can stimulate the dead veins from the source, don't think too much, all of this is to heal you. Is that right? What does the meridians in the abdomen have to do with legs? Why is it getting more and more unreliable? If this continues, he's going to be unable to suppress the fire. Knight Bashwan's entire body stiffened, allowing that pair of cold little hands to roam around his abdomen. It was too torturous, even more torturous than when he was facing Hua Ma Shang, and almost as torturous as when he was facing Di Chiong. This continued for some time, and Raccoon Creek San's petite body gradually attached itself to Knight Beishuan's body, strands of green silk spilling onto his body, the scent spreading across his entire body. Is it better? Knight Beishuan asked, his face also turning red. Relax your whole body, don't be so stiff, this affects the healing effect. Raccoon Shisha's hands kept massaging on Knight Beishuan's body, her mouth was proper and incomparable as if she was really treating Knight Bei Xian. But in her heart, she didn't think so. Bei Xian baby is too able to hold on, it can only be a desperate move, this time it is always impossible to still endure it. The back hall. Dark moonlight sprinkled in a black veil on the body of a stunningly beautiful young girl, hanging jade feet will be set off its figure extremely proud, golden phoenix eyes as if in the darkness flickering light. Walked into the open sandalwood door. The stunningly beautiful silhouette looked at the messy bedding on the bed, her face gradually began to become flushed, and as soon as she pounced on it, she vigorously breathed in the flavor that remained on it. While behaving like this, she said, Senior brother, why are you just not listening to the words? Mesmerizing is going to be angry. At this time, the spirit medicine hall. Knight Beishan was half believing raccoon Shisha's bullshit, but there wasn't a single thing he could do about it, so he could only lie down and try to suppress the blazing fire in his heart. But suddenly, he felt Ronixisha's fingers running along his abdomen all the way down. That cold and tender touch gave him goosebumps. What is this going to do? Is there any king's law left? He was actually eating his Knight Beishuan's tofu openly. Knight Beishuan struggled to shrink down, and running Shir's small hands followed suit, as if playing eagle and chicken. At this very moment, Knight Beishuan saw Ronixish's sickly pale phoenix face begin to turn flushed, the corners of her mouth curling up slightly with a demented expression. Ding! Binding the sickly heroine. Name, Raccoon Creek Sand. Identity, Sun and Moon Divine Sect, Master of the Medicine Hall. Cultivation, Early Marquee. Hearing the mechanical beeps in his head, Knight Beishian then completely came back to his senses, and the previous guesses all made sense, as well as the non-existent rouge fragrance on his face. Grass. I said how so wrong, the original special is also sickly, my life how so bitter ah. As he spoke, Knight Beishian propped up his body with both hands, causing Raccoon Hall to temporarily lose its target and lay down once again. I say, Hall Master Raccoon, what do you mean by this? It was you who drugged me just now, wasn't it? Thanks to me trusting you so much. Knight Beishuan's face turned ugly as he lay down on the bed. He he. Beishian. Since you guessed it, then I won't hide it, it was indeed me who drugged you, but it was for your own good. Rumpelstiltskin didn't feel that she had done wrong. Oh. Knight Beishian squinted at Runisha. Hua Ma Shan. 
Contemporary Sun Moon Divine Sect Master in Baixian's senior sister, but do you really know her? Her terror can be said to have reached an unimaginable level, and what has been shown now is just the tip of the iceberg. Rumpelstiltskin straightened out the deep purple-colored gauze skirt on her body, her expression bland as she walked around the room, her mouth muttering. The tip of the iceberg? Night Beishuan's eyes narrowed slightly. If one were to say who understood Hua Ma Shang the most, it would definitely be him. At the age of three, his mother had brought back the petite and cute Hua Ma Sang, and since then, the two of them had been inseparable. Seventeen years. Now telling him that you actually don't understand your senior sister at all, that feeling could be imagined. If it was someone who came to tell him this before, he would have scoffed, but now he had to believe it. It wasn't because of how much he believed in Raccoon Creek Sand, but rather the things that Hua Ma Shan had shown. For example, why did she suddenly become the supreme realm without cultivating every day? Or where did she get the past life compass? Night Baixian froze on the bed and pondered, and running sure didn't disturb, sitting by herself and drinking tea. Sighing, Night Baixian once again looked at Rumsha, then what is it you said about helping me? Of course it's after possessing you, so that you can feel at ease and follow me to go live a secluded life, thus giving up on taking revenge on Hua Ma Shang, so that you won't die at the hands of Hua Ma Shang. Rumpelstiltskin did not feel justified and said rightfully. Without saying anything, Night Baixian realized that there was a blind box to be selected in the system warehouse. It seemed like he had unintentionally survived a life and death crisis, and he didn't know how he had survived it. Listening to Raccoon San's words as a matter of course, Night Baixian smiled in relief, no matter how strong Hua Ma Shang is, I will definitely take revenge, if you're afraid, then just pretend I haven't come today. Although he was also curious as to why Rong Shisha drugged him and didn't do anything in the end, he knew that Rong Shisha would 100% not say anything about this matter. It was because Sickly Zhao's purpose was very strong, and that was to possess the handsome and compelling him. When he was all fish and meat on the chopping board, the raccoon Creek Sand who was holding a butcher knife could still control himself, that was definitely something extraordinary that had happened to make it possible. As he spoke, he intended to leave. Wait, when did I say I won't help you? Rumpelstiltskin, on the other hand, stood up. Groping on me again? Night Baixian said somewhat mockingly, his face not easing up too much. He he. This time is different from just now. It requires you to pay a one-time medical fee. Raccoon River Sand's delicate eye seemed like a rushing brook. Medical fee? Silver? Or spirit stones? And what does one time mean? Night Baixian was a bit puzzled. He hadn't given medical fees just now either. Baixian, are you playing dumb? Do you think I would care about any silver, spirit stones? Rumpelstiltskin slowly walked towards Night Baixian. That. Ranixisha no longer hid her desire and sat on the edge of the bed. I want Baixian to hold me and kiss me hard. As she spoke, Ranixisha slowly closed her beautiful eyes, a look of letting the king pick her, her red lips shining brightly under the illumination of the oil lamp. Night Bei Xian swallowed a mouthful of saliva, seeing the extremely tantalizing sickly beauty in front of him, he actually felt a little moved for a moment. It was true that he had been tortured in the past two days, but it was also true that he had been attacked by beauty, and he really couldn't help it. Moreover, this was also helping him, and could not be considered as him having a weak will. Yes, it was like that. At this time, Rumpelstiltskin spoke again. It must be rough. Night Baixian let out a low roar, directly embraced Ranixisha, and went over to the sickly beautiful little face in front of him, swallowing the cherry mouth into a mouthful of. Under the illumination of the oil lamp, the two figures on the door of the room were intertwined, and there was a tendency for it to get more and more intense. I don't know how long. Is it done? Night Baixian asked with a ragged breath, just now it was considered that he had used all his milk strength. In the middle of the process, Rongxisha kept telling him to hold on tighter, and he could only break the pot and show obedience in droves. Rongxisha also slowed down for a long time, still constantly up and down squeezing the red lips, obviously some intention not yet finished. Looking at night Beishuan's eyes were full of aggression, looking up and down and squinting left and right, as if a vicious wolf staring at a white rabbit. Night Beixian instantly wrapped the quilt around himself, don't look around ah, I've already paid for the medical expenses, hurry up and help me heal my wounds. The words landed. Only then did Rongxisha's face slowly begin to return to normal, clearing her throat, of course, you lie down first, I'll go get a little something. In his heart, he was thinking. There will be a long time to come, there will be plenty of opportunities in the future, although there is some unfulfilled intention, but we can't scare Bei Xian, or else it won't be easy to fool him next time. Just like this, both of them tidied up a bit. Night Bei Xian was still lying on the bed, exposing his legs, Running Sha took a pile of implements and medicinal herbs and sat on the edge of the bed, and began to slowly examine Night Bei Xian. Seeing that pile of implements and medicinal herbs, Night Bei Xian only felt the fire rise, feelings just touched for so long, is purely in taking advantage of him? I don't know if it was because he had promised Night Bei Xian, or because he had just been satisfied, Rong Shisha acted extremely professionally and seriously, the instruments in her hands constantly changing. 
At this moment, Raccoon Shisha put down the herbs in his hands, a purple aura, released from his hands, surging towards Night Bei Xian's ruined leg. Continuing for a while, Ranixisha was already drenched in fragrant sweat, and the room was overflowing with fragrance for a while. Gradually, Knight Baishian felt his leg getting a little hot, which made him ecstatic. He also had to marvel at Ranixisha's superior medical skills. How is it? Feel anything? Ranixisha wiped her sweat and turned her head to ask Knight Baishian. There is. Feeling a little bit of heat. Knight Baishian couldn't hide his excitement and replied with a smile. Who? That's good. Proving that the sect master didn't want to waste your legs. After Rumpelstiltskin finished speaking, he once again plunged into the treatment. After roughly half an hour. All right. Come down and try. Rumixisha had already taken off the deep purple sarong on her body, and the strapless cream-colored lining was extremely eye-catching. All right. Although his legs had regained consciousness, being crippled for several days made him a little weak for a while. Subsequently, under the assistance of Raccoon Creek Sand, Night Bei Xian slowly stood on the ground. The first step. The second step. He gradually adapted to walking, but unfortunately, because of the seal set by Hua Ma Shang, he wasn't able to move too fast and could only walk step by step. But even so, he was satisfied. Thank you, Shisha. I'll go back first then. Night Bei Xian was in a good mood, and after acclimatizing for a while, he planned to leave, after all, he still had a lot of things to do. Good. But remember to come over every three days to consolidate, or else there's a good chance that your legs will be wasted again. Rumpelstiltskin admonished the patient with a serious face. Why? Isn't my leg already healed? The only thing left is the ceiling of the flower room raiment. Knight Bei Xian had a puzzled question. You have to come back every three days to consolidate it, otherwise I don't know what will happen. Rongxi Sha was still saying this, her expression unchanged. Not knowing what will happen. It was that nothing would happen at all, right? Eh? There's no need to collect medical fees, right? Knight Bei Xian asked tentatively. The medical fee is definitely necessary, see you next time. Knowing that it wasn't easy to answer, Raccoon Creek Sand directly sent the guest away, choosing not to answer. Looking at the closed silverwood door, the corner of Knight Beishuan's eyes twitched, but he still planned to come and consolidate after three days. Although he knew the odds were that nothing would happen, he didn't dare to gamble ah, after all, it was about his legs. His legs were about whether he could escape or not, whether he could escape or not was about whether he could grow or not, whether he could grow or not was about whether he could take revenge or not. Rounding up, the treatment of legs is equal to revenge ah. The latter half of the night of the sun and moon divine church is already not much of a person, and the night Beishan walked to the back hall. With light footsteps. But the next second. Originally in a good mood, night Beishuan's eyes instantly widened and his mouth opened, revealing an extremely frightened expression. The door was closed. It's over. Senior brother, since you're back, why don't you come in? Huama Shan sultry, withdrawn, ethereal voice came out from within the door. Night Beishian stood dumbfounded, the air around him seemed to freeze, making it difficult for him to breathe for a moment. It wasn't that he hadn't thought about it ahead of time when Hua Ma Shan came back to him, but he still decided to take a gamble. After dinner, he intentionally cold-shouldered Hua Ma Sang, hoping to use this to let Hua Ma Sang know that he needed space to be alone. He had done his best to change the outcome, but unfortunately, his luck was too bad. Senior brother? Why don't you reply? Immortal sounds echoed, the sandalwood door slowly opened. A pair of golden eyes in the dark night was particularly eye-catching, making people sink. Eh? Master. Senior sister. What are you doing here? Night Beishian knew that this was merely the calm before the storm. Senior brother can I come? Then again, where have you been? Why weren't you in the back hall for a whole hour and a half? Hua Ma Shang was still smiling like a flower, unable to see any abnormality. Ha ha. As brother saw the moon shining brightly and high, wanted to go out for some fresh air, and forgot about the time in his excitement. Night Beishian casually babbled, already not quite knowing what he was saying. Oh, it's like this ah, uh, it's Ma Suang who was ill-considered. Hua Ma Sang made a particularly guilty face, but it was a different flavor, beautiful and stunning. She then turned her gaze to Night Beishuan's intact legs and said in surprise, Senior brother, your legs are fine. Night Beishuan's heart was beating wildly. Looking at the golden-eyed beauty in front of him, he decided to do something about it because there was no longer any point in sophistry. It was possible that Hua Ma Sang, who was hiding her face and snickering one second, would rise up and kill someone in the next second, even if the target was him. He only had one thought now, and that was what the hell he had to do to save his life, the leg didn't matter anymore, just break it. Thinking of this, then his heart crossed. Two steps forward, a hand will be stunning silhouette into the arms, to the pink lips on the kiss. Flowering Shang also only briefly stiffened for a moment, and then let him kiss, without a trace of response. Night Beishian immediately sweated like a pig. Normally, if he kissed Hua Ma Sang, she could be happy for a long time, but today, his own initiative to kiss, but there was no response at all, 
it seems that things are really more serious than imagined. However, he could only increase his efforts, hoping that he could evoke the softness of Hua Mashang's heart, so that she wouldn't be able to kill herself. Night Beixian increased the strength of the kiss, and his hands also embraced the fragrant soft and delicate body in his arms more tightly. But no matter how hard he tried, how hard he tried to please Hua Mashang, the other party never reacted at all. Cold sweat had already flowed onto the side of his face. Night Beixian slowly opened his eyes, only to see a pair of golden eyes that seemed to contain a sky full of galaxies, staring at himself in death. He saw it clearly, and it was filled with dead silence, as if all things had returned to one, all beings had fallen, and the eastern domain had dried up. That kind of fear that struck straight to the heart caused Night Beixian to be somewhat unable to stand, and just as he was about to fall, he was clasped by a pair of slender jade hands. Hua Masang had finally moved, even though she was now furious, she was never able to control herself very well in the face of Night Beixian. It was as if Hua Masang was venting something, rude, without a trace of gentleness to speak of. The two figures under the moonlight kept fusing and intertwining. I don't know how long it took, the two people were finally separated, and both were a little out of breath, that was caused by not having a change of air for too long. Senior brother, let Ma Sang come and accompany you to look at the moon. Hua Ma Sang smiled and did not mention the matter of Night Beixuan's leg. Fine, senior sister can do whatever she has the grace to do. Night Beixian took the initiative to hold Hua Ma Shang's delicate little hand and slowly walked around. Hua Ma Sang was wearing a wide silver white robe that drifted away when the wind blew. I remember that in the past, senior brother liked to pull me out at night to look at the moon, but unfortunately after master left, it's been a long time since I've walked like this. Hua Ma Shang said with some melancholy. Yeah, but it was all a long time ago. Night Beixian blurted out. What was there to see in the moon? When he was at Mount Immeasurable, he had come out to look at the moon every day because there would be a beauty bathing in the lake at the back of the mountain, that was his purpose, and calling Hua Ma Sang was purely a cover. As for the master in Hua Ma Shang's mouth, of course it was Night Beixuan's mother. If senior sister likes it, we can often come out to look at the moon. Night Beixian complied with Hua Ma Sang as much as possible. Just now, she had moved her emotions, giving Night Beixian a slight sense of security. Hearing this, Hua Ma Sang then shook her head, her face revealing regret, but she didn't explain why. How much I want to go back to when I was at Mount Infinite, at that time, my senior brother was only me, how happy we were, but why did it become like this? Hua Ma Shang looked at the bright moon in the sky and said with some choking. Quite a bit. This moon had shone on them in the beginning. And at this time the moon is still that moon, they are no longer the same as they were at the beginning. Speaking here, Night Beishuan's face also sank. How could he not miss that home in the beginning? But there was no way, it was too late to talk about that now. The current Hua Ma Shang was his enemy. Senior brother, will you miss me forever? Hua Ma Sang looked at Night Beishuan and asked with a bashful face. Of course, you're my favorite senior sister. Night Beishuan looked at Hua Ma Shang's eyes and replied without flashing his eyes. Hua Ma Sang smiled happily, but no matter how one looked at it, the smile was heavy, making one feel absolutely no happiness, only endless despondency. Senior brother, I'm here. You must must hold back, if you scream too loudly, I will die of heartache. Hua Ma Shang's words were extremely gentle, as if she was a mother coaxing a swaddled baby to sleep, while Night Bei Shen was completely unresponsive, after all, the contrast between before and after was too great. What? What? Ah. Before the words were finished, Night Bei Shen only felt a burst of heart-rending pain coming from his knees, and that feeling of his bones shattering into pieces directly shattered his mental defenses. It also made him recognize the fact that this matter had only just begun. Senior sister. Wait. I didn't mean to leave you, I just. Night Beixian fell to the ground and tried to explain. But Hua Ma Shang, who had a face full of black lines and tears in her eyes, didn't even listen to the explanation. Another golden lotus seed struck into Night Beixuan's knee, and the golden lotus seed then exploded. Ah! After the pain had passed, Night Beixian breathlessly begged for mercy, hoping that Hua Ma Shang could stop. Senior sister. Listen to me. Explain. He had never felt that death was so close to him, just a stone's throw away. Elder brother, you're so bad, knowing that Ma Sang will be heartbroken, you still have to scream so loudly. A single teardrop fell from Hua Ma Shan's delicate side face. Then she pulled out a small blue bottle from her sleeve and squatted beside Night Bei Shen. Elder brother hold on, come take this ice extension water so that the body won't rot. Ice extension water? Night Bei Shuan's brain buzzed, directly in a state of downtime. The pain in his legs couldn't even be bothered. This divine water taken from a 10,000 year old cold pool, once it entered the body, it would instantly rush to the limbs and then freeze, and could retain the body for 10,000 years without decaying. The worst case scenario still happened, Hua Ma Shang was prepared to kill him and then wait for him to reincarnate in his second life, during which he would always be with his corpse. No. No. He hadn't gotten his revenge yet, he still had a lot of things to do, he didn't want to die. 
Senior sister, give me a chance, will you? I promise to stay by your side forever and never run around. Knight Bashian said as deeply as possible. No way oh, senior brother is not good at all. Although there were still teardrops rolling down from her golden eyes, the corners of her pink and delicate mouth were smiling as she continued. After my senior brother reincarnates, I will find my senior brother at the first opportunity, and then teach my tiny senior brother to become a person who will never betray me, then we can be together forever. Looking at Hua Ma Shang's yearning eyes, Knight Bei Xian knew that he might really be in trouble this time. For a time the emotions were depressingly inexplicable. His mother's appearance slowly surfaced in his mind. Ever since he was 16 years old and his mother had never returned, his mother's appearance had not been so clear in his memory. It was as if his mother's words when she left were still echoing in his ears. Shinner, take care of your senior sister, mother is going to a place far away, looking forward to the day she will reunite with Shinner in the future. And so on. In the void of his mind, Knight Baishian suddenly remembered that his mother had also given him something before she left. His gaze froze. There was salvation. Then he searched his body for it. Huama Shan was still chanting at the side. Killing senior brother, I'm also very sad, but it can't be helped, senior brother isn't good at all, he always likes to stay with some demonic bitches, it's all senior brother's fault. As soon as those women were mentioned, Huama Shan's face began to turn gloomy and her aura became extremely frightening. As if in response to the angry Huama Shang, the sky, which was as black as ink, began to resound with bursts of thunder. All right. Elder brother, drink this ice extended water yourself. Huama Shang was also afraid that if she dragged it out for too long, her heart would go soft. The words landed. Night Baishan was all but unresponsive, still searching for something on his body, sweating profusely. Senior brother. Don't force my hand, hurry up and drink this ice continuation water. Huama Shang's expression became horrified. But Knight Baishian remained indifferent, even ignoring her. This time, Hua Masang was truly enraged. There were two things she hated the most in her life. First, Knight Baishian having any, even a little, relationship with another woman. Second, that was being ignored by Knight Baishian. This would make the usually cold, unquestioning Hua Mashan, instantly furious, and there was no way to dissipate it easily. Senior brother. You really are too naughty. Hua Mashan's eyes were dead silent as she slowly propped up her jade feet and looked down at Knight Baishian then threw the ice extension water aside. With that, the catkin lit up with a burst of golden light, and as the aura reached its peak, a shocking wave of chi swept through all the surrounding buildings. Senior brother, since you're not willing to drink the ice extension water, then you'll have to sleep with my golden lotus, although it will be a little more troublesome, but it's worth it for senior brother. After saying that, he raised his golden flashing jade hand, wanting to split down. But just at this moment, Knight Beixian, however, suddenly raised his hand, still holding a bright shining thing. Ridiculous. The strength of Huama Shang's venerable realm, placed in the entire Yuan continent belonged to a phoenix-like existence, and there was something that could withstand her strike? Knight Beishuan's approach was tantamount to asking for death. But, Huama Shang was instantly stopped the jade hand that split down, froze in place for a long time, did not return to his senses. For a time the scene was quiet. This is, this is really, reacted Huama Shang, words are a little unclear, stammered. Who? Knight Beishuan took a long breath. Fortunately he was carrying it with him, otherwise this time it would be really finished. The thing he held in his hand was an emerald green and pink intertwined jade bracelet, the body was translucent, not like a mortal object. This jade bracelet was carried by Knight Beishuan's mother, it was passed down to the future daughter-in-law of the Knight family, and was given to Knight Beishuan before she left. This thing Huama Shang is extremely want, as a child, more than once pestered his mother to give her the jade bracelet, but his mother are on the grounds of age is still small, refused. Knight Baishan had to marvel at his mother's resourcefulness at this point, if he had given it when he was a child, then he would be dead this time. Senior sister, take it. Knight Baishan looked deeply at Hua Masang and said in a weak voice, slightly contrived. Hua Mashang's stunningly beautiful immortal face was at a loss for words, and only after hearing Knight Baishan's words did she slowly accept the jade bracelet. Hands cupped, afraid of falling. Senior sister, try it on. Knight Baishan continued, is it really possible? Huama Shang held the jade bracelet in her hands, loving it, her voice trembling a little. Of course, sooner or later I'm going to give it to you, but it's just ahead of schedule, try it. Knight Baishan revealed an extremely painful smile, giving off a feeling of forced hardness. Senior brother, are you alright? Seeing this, Huama Shang was heartbroken and hurriedly went forward to support Knight Baishan. It's fine, as long as the senior sister is happy, how can I be, just like before? The selling of misery offense is effective at first, and then turned to warmth offense. Senior brother. Flowers between Shang Tears snap tower snap tower downstream. Blame it on senior brother. Why don't you listen to me well? Why do you have to go out and find a woman? If you listen to me, how would you get to this point? Facing Hua Shang's confidences, Knight Bei Xian only felt happy, 
as long as the problems started pouring out, then it was not far from solving them. I don't blame senior sister, it's senior brother's fault. Knight Beishan let out a long sigh, his lips that were drying up with dead skin wriggled slightly as he hardened his lips and squeezed out two tears. If I hadn't wanted to marry senior sister, this wouldn't have happened. After Hua Mashang heard Knight Beishan's words, her small cherry mouth slightly opened, her golden eyes revealing incredulity as she stood still for half a day without moving a bit. Knight Beishan continued. It's all my fault for wanting to give senior sister a perfect wedding, so I went and treated my legs, thinking that I could walk out on the big wedding day and not lose face for senior sister. Knight Beishan seemed to be very self-blaming, constantly clenching his fists before unclenching them, pain, struggle, and remorse, were portrayed to the fullest. Thought I could give senior sister a surprise, but I didn't expect ah. Speaking to the excitement, Knight Beishan directly raised his hand and gave himself a punch. Senior brother. Don't be like this, it's Mashan's fault, it's Ma Sang who wrongly blamed senior brother. Where did Hua Ma Sang still have any semblance of anger? Reaching out, she went to block Knight Beishan. Don't stop me, senior sister, sneaking out and healing my legs, I'm not worthy of death. Knight Beishan turned his offense and raised his hand to give himself another punch. Senior brother. Seeing that Knight Beishan didn't hold back, Hua Ma Shang's anxious face lost its color, completely losing its usual calmness. Hastily pressing down on Knight Beishuan's hand, senior brother, this is all my fault, if I was willing to listen to senior brother's explanation, none of this would have happened. Hua Ma Shang sincerely apologized, her absolutely beautiful face filled with guilt, the jade bracelet in her hand held tightly. Senior sister, how can this be your fault? Seeing that the time was ripe, Knight Beishan gently stroked Hua Ma Shang's jade-like face. This is all senior brother's fault for not listening to you. Elder brother. Hua Ma Sang fluttered her big eyes, looking at Knight Beixian in a daze. Elder sister, let us be good in the future, okay? Knight Beixian looked doting, his hands gentle. Good, good. After Hua Ma Shang finished her sentence, she directly jumped onto Knight Beixian's body, the corners of her mouth filled with a sweet smile. Ding. Congratulations to the host for stabilizing the sickly girl and surviving the crisis. Please select the blind box. Reminder, this selection is a purple colored blind box. Purple color blind box? It seems that this blind box is still divided into grades, this time stabilizing the stormy Wama Shan, so it is given higher? Knight Beishan had a lot of thoughts in his mind, but he didn't choose the blind box first, instead choosing whatever. According to the introduction he knew that the opportunity to choose could be kept until the next time he obtained the blind box, so there was no rush. After all, the help of the blind box of his resources in a short period of time was really limited. In a direction that Hua Ma Shan couldn't see, Knight Beishan let out a long breath. This time, it was considered to have barely passed. In the rear hall, Knight Beishuan's legs had been treated very well, and the places that were originally broken and bleeding had basically recovered completely. At this time was sitting on a carved large bed, legs did not move at all, obviously did not recover. While in Knight Beishuan's arms there was another person, accurately speaking a beauty, extremely beautiful person. She was facing Knight Beishuan's handsome face, sitting on his lap, with only a layer of cream-colored robe on her body, her jade legs and pink shoulders were exposed, her willow waist was tightly wrapped around by Knight Beishuan's large hands. Senior brother it's been a long time since you've hugged someone. Hua Ma Shang rubbed against Knight Beishuan's chest and said daintily. If this scene was seen by the rest of the Sun Moon Divine sect, their jaws would definitely drop in shock. In the eyes of the people within the sect, Hua Ma Shang was even more ferocious than Knight Beishuan. She was even more ferocious than Knight Beishuan. She was ruthless and didn't care who was in the wrong, she treated everyone the same and usually always an expressionless, uninviting look, cherish words like gold, rarely say more than three words. But now in Knight Beixian's arms, Hua Ma Shang, not only was she delicate as if she was a younger sister of the forest, but she, who had a serious cleanliness fetish, was currently sticking her whole body to Knight Beixian's body. Yes, it's been a long time since I've hugged you, unbeknownst to me you've grown so big? Knight Beixian joked. Does senior brother want to touch? Hua Ma Shang, however, raised her head slightly and looked up at Knight Beixian, her golden eyes fluttering. Ha! Touch what? Knight Beishian swallowed his saliva and said in a somewhat trembling voice. Ha! Elder brother is shy, so cute, Hua Ma Shang guffawed, grabbing Knight Beishian's big hand and pressing it towards his body. MMM. Knight Beishian only felt a delicate, soft and tingling sensation spread throughout his body from those five fingers of his. In an instant, he only felt goosebumps all over his body, and his meridians were as if they had been electrified, immediately growing a root bone. Senior brother how does it feel? Hua Ma Shang's face became extremely scarlet as she exhaled, a stream of fragrance gushing out. Knight Beixian was only slightly immersed, and immediately pulled his hand back, some beads of sweat rolling off his forehead. Senior sister, you girls, you need to learn to be reserved. You can't be like this anymore. 
Even though Knight Baishan wanted to pinch it, he also knew that not only would Hua Mashang not do anything to him, he would also be very happy, but he couldn't do that. He was going to take revenge in the future, and he absolutely could not succumb to Hua Mashang's lustful authority. Although his hands felt good and extremely fragrant and soft, he, Knight Baishan, would only treat this as a difficult test before taking revenge. Definitely won't enjoy it, that's right, definitely won't. He he. Senior brother is very spirited oh. Hearing Knight Baishuan's words, Hua Ma Shan laughed like an oriole. Then she propped up her willow waist and attached herself to Knight Baishuan's ear like a beautiful snake. I'm only like this to senior brother. It had to be said that this sentence was too lethal for a man, it was simply a treasure tool for men. Knight Baishuan was also enduring it harder and harder, and could only hurriedly change the topic, senior sister, what are you going to do in the future? Do you mean within the religion? Or, within the sect ah? Mentioning this, Hua Ma Shang was clearly lacking in interest, but she still patiently answered Knight Bei Xian. Within the sect will follow the previous course of development, I won't interfere too much, after all, nothing can be more important than senior brother. As he spoke, Hua Ma Shang lifted the jade bracelet and pointed it at the moon. Senior brother, does it look good? Knight Bei Xian nodded. Good looking, senior sister's hand is so beautiful, can't get enough of it. Oops, senior brother. People are asking if master's jade bracelet looks good? Hua Ma Shang glanced at Knight Bei Xian angrily. Well, it's very nice and matches you. Knight Bei Xian thought to himself, this thing saved his life, so it must look good, but it would be nice if there were a few more of them. Hua Ma Shang instantly smiled like a flower, slowly got up, changed position, kneeling on Knight Bei Xian's lap, jade hand gathered Knight Bei Xian's neck, looking down at him. Then I, am the daughter-in-law of the Knight family? Hua Ma Shang asked expectantly, unable to hide the excitement in her tone. No. What? Hua Ma Shang instantly froze. But before Hua Ma Sang could get angry, Knight Baishan continued, You are my Knight Baishuan's daughter-in-law. Hearing that, Hua Ma Sang froze slightly and hammered Knight Baishan with her pink fist, revealing a smile. Then when does senior brother plan to marry me? Not in a hurry first, wait for me to recuperate for a while, moreover, these two days have changed too much, saying that you want to get married at a time, some people within the sect said that there would be gossip. Knight Baishan said in a proper manner. Hua Ma Shang revealed a disappointed look. If she could, she would like to get married tomorrow, she really didn't want to wait, but Knight Baishuan's words, she had to listen, after all, she had only just wronged someone. Okay. But at most one month, senior brother must propose to me, and then. Hua Ma Shang was in a trance with anticipation on her face, as if she had already arrived at that day. Then reacting, she wrapped her arms around Knight Baishuan even tighter, as if she was repeatedly confirming that the person in front of her was real. Okay, just one month. Knight Baishan replied with a smile, also wrapping his arms tighter around Hua Ma Shang's willow waist. A month was enough time for him to escape. That being said, senior sister's waist was really thin, with an excellent feel, full of elasticity, and not bloated at all. Knight Baishan. After Knight Baishan agreed, the two of them finalized that the wedding would be placed a month later, and that was the end of the matter. A few days passed. Knight Baishan usually moved around in his own back hall, eating and changing clothes were all handled by Hua Ma Shang living a life that made others extremely envious, but he himself didn't enjoy it much. The more he took the initiative to approach Hua Ma Shang, the more clearly he could feel that Hua Ma Shang's obsession with him that went deep into his bones. For the hope of being able to escape, it also gradually became slim. The matter of their big wedding was also announced to everyone in the sect the next day. Countless people were shocked at that time. There was a hall master who adored Hua Ma Shang, on the grounds that he was compelled and a money loser, he wanted to let Hua Ma Shang rethink his thinking but he was directly beaten into the dungeon by Hua Ma Shang. This kind of thunderous means, make the hall full of hall masters, no one dares to say a word again. Hua Ma Shang ignored the internal affairs of the sect, and has been accompanying Knight Baishan for the past few days. Today the sun shines brightly, the wind and sunshine, the clouds roll in, the weather is very pleasant, Hua Ma Shang pushed the Knight North Xian in the back of the mountain around. Sitting in his special wheelchair, Knight Baishan also heard about a hall master who opposed his marriage to Hua Ma Shang and was later sent to the dungeon, or his life was worse than death. That hall master, when he was first in power, was born with a rebel bone, and had also been in love with Hua Ma Shang. There were many women who adored him within this sect, and there were even more men who adored Hua Ma Shang. In the past, it was so, now Hua Ma Shang became the sect leader of the Sun Moon Divine Sect, it was even better than at the beginning. After all, there wouldn't be anyone who wouldn't like a perfect woman who was stunningly beautiful, had a high position of power, and had strength greater than the heavens. Except for Knight Bei Xian. Senior sister, people only objected to one sentence and you sent them to the dungeon, isn't that a bit heavy? Knight Bei Xian looked at the scenery in front of him and said to Hua Ma Shang, who was pushing herself. Heavy? At the mention of that hall master, Hua Ma Shang, who was originally wearing a spring flower peach smile, instantly sank in color. 
If it wasn't for the fear of affecting my wedding to my senior brother in half a month, I would have shot him on the spot. Don't even look at what kind of goods you are in dare to taint my affairs. Knight Baishan pulled at the corner of his mouth. Still really overbearing ah. However, the more Hua Ma Shang was like this, the more uneasy he became, and he secretly resolved in his heart that he must leave earlier. If it really came to that situation where he would go berserk if he left Hua Ma Shang, then he was truly afraid that after he ran away, Hua Ma Shang would kill all the people in the world. Senior brother, I'll take you to other places to look around. Good. A white tasseled jade lotus dress of Hua Ma Shang was like a fairy descending to the world, not touching half of the earth, cold and lonely. It was such a superb human child that pushed a cripple around within the sect, still talking and laughing. All right senior sister, it's getting late, go back. Knight Baishan looked at the receding dusk and said. Yes, it's time for dinner. Hua Ma Shan looked happy, feeding Knight Baishan every day was the thing she looked forward to the most, and there was no one else. Halfway down the road, Knight Baishan saw an emerald green figure, slowly walking towards them, feeling familiar, but couldn't recall for a moment. The figure got closer and closer, and Knight Baishan also saw it more and more clearly. The petite figure, the playful movements, and the standard imp smile at the corner of her mouth all signaled who she was. Emperor Dome? Crap! What Knight Baishan was most afraid of right now was seeing two people, one was Raccoon Creek Sand who had taken advantage of him, and the other was Di Chiong who wanted to be his master. Somewhat vain, he slowly tilted his head and glanced at Hua Ma Shang, the other party didn't have any expression, so he couldn't help but secretly breathe a sigh of relief. Thinking that it was because he was too nervous, if Hua Ma Shang really knew about those things, Raccoon Sand and Di Chong's heads would have been taken off a long time ago, still need to wait until now? The thought fell. Knight Baishan straightened his expression, put on an appearance of not recognizing Di Chong, and didn't look at her. Just as the two of them brushed past each other, the thing that Knight Baishan least wanted to see happen after all. The petite figure that Di Chong had originally walked past suddenly jumped back in front of Knight Baishan and saluted. Lord Sect Leader. Former Sect Leader Lord. Whom? Knight Baishan coldly replied back, signaling with a frantic look that she shouldn't mess things up. Hua Ma Shang, on the other hand, didn't even bother returning. Ha! Former Sect Leader Lord, did you get sand in your eyes? Di Chong made that standard human and harmless look. Hiss this dog thing. As this sentence from Di Dome was uttered, Knight Bei Xian could clearly feel that an extremely powerful line of sight with a high level of pressure landed on the back of his head. What a damn thing to go out without looking at the yellow calendar. One would have to go out less in the future, but only after settling this matter. It was quite windy just now, thanks for your concern. Knight Bei Xian pretended to rub his eyes before asking, are you a disciple within the sect? What's the name? He he. Former Lord Sect Leader doesn't recognize me anymore? Di Chiong tilted a small head, jade fingers against his pink lips. When did I? Knight Baishan hurriedly wanted to retort, but was interrupted by the cold voice behind him, Senior brother, you know her? The words didn't have any ups and downs, just like her usual way of speaking, but only Knight Baishan knew that it wasn't that she wasn't angry, but rather that she was giving him the chance to explain. In this situation, there were also no internal injuries, or else Knight Baishan would have to spray out a mouthful of blood at this moment. Recognize? Don't recognize ah. Knight Baishan still didn't dare to tell the truth, because if he did, a few more lives wouldn't be enough for him to die. How could you not recognize it? Former sect leader lord, have you forgotten? Di Chong seemed to be a bit anxious and stomped his little foot. Knight Baishan was all confused by what he heard. Eyes opened wide, madly signaling the other party with his eyes. Telling what happened that night, everyone would have to play it out, and it wouldn't do you any favors. He knew that Di Chong understood what he meant. However, Di Chong was taking advantage of the fact that Hua Ma Shang's attention was all on Knight Bei Xian, and gave Knight Bei Xian an evil smile, as dark as it could be, giving Knight Bei Xian a blank stare. To say that there is only a wrong name, there is no wrong nickname, little devil this nickname, is really suitable for her nevertheless. The scene is briefly cold for a moment, around the people see this situation are detour away, do not dare to come over. Knight Bei Xian knew that if he didn't explain, he would be finished, no matter what, first pass this hurdle. Senior Sister but just as he was about to explain, he was interrupted by Hua Ma Shang. Elder brother shut up first, Di Chiong right? Come on, tell us how you two met? The tone of her voice was icy cold, without any temperature, as if it was a 10,000 year old deep pool. Okay lord sect leader. Di Chiong was like a fool who couldn't read the air, his interest was high, causing Knight Bei Xian to be speechless for a while. In his heart, he said where did the fool come from? It was even if it was just a moment ago, but at this point in time, can't you still see that something isn't right? At the same time that Knight Baishan was messing around with his thoughts, Di Chong also began to answer Hua Ma Shang's question. It was a late night. Late night? Hearing this, Knight Baishan was really a bit unable to sit still. He didn't think that Di Chong was really daring to say it ah, hurriedly speaking out to stop it. Senior sister I'm hungry, quickly go back, she and I should have met somewhere, 
it's no big deal. Knight Baixian said smoothly, his acting skills had risen greatly in the past two days. While Hua Mashang was ignoring Knight Baixian, her jade hand slightly squeezed tightly, signaling Di Chong to continue. Di Dome continued. Knight. Is the former sect master lord personally assessed me to come in ah, at that time already reported the name, so I and the former sect master lord knew each other a long time ago. Di Chong finished with a colorless face, and then covertly smiled wickedly at Knight Baixian, as if he found it very amusing. And as Knight Baixian listened, he only felt that his wildly beating heart slowly stabilized, no matter what, after all, there would be no major problems, this kind of thing was irrelevant, there were more than enough of them in the past. After listening to Di Chung's explanation, although Hua Mashang still felt very angry, she didn't look deeper into it though, she just made up her mind that this kind of thing couldn't happen again afterward. Senior brother, aren't you hungry, go back. Hua Mashang changed her indifference and ignored Di Chung, pushing Knight Bei Xian towards the back hall. And Knight Bei Xian, who was sitting in a special wheelchair, fell into deep contemplation. How is it so hard to live? The sun sets in the west, so that the sun and moon divine sect, which was not seeing the light, was suddenly hidden in the ink, and there was no more light. In the back of the hall, because of the coolness of the upwelling and draped in snow-white fox fur, Huama Shang, as if a spirit in the snow, holding a vermilion lacquer Rui beast food box in her hand, came to the side of Night Bei Xian. Senior brother, the weather is getting cooler, this is the soup stewed by the spirit beast specially captured for you from an extremely cold place, quickly drink it to warm your body. Between words, Huama Shang was already opening the food box, a rich aroma bursting out, the golden layer of oil, signaling how delicious it was. Seeing this, Knight Baixian was indeed somewhat pleased. Senior sister has a heart. How Hua Masang treated him, it was absolutely beyond words, she would get him whatever he wanted, and any voice that opposed him, Hua Masang would also suppress it with thunderous means. Not only is she a stunningly beautiful woman, her strength is even more powerful, and if she doesn't have that sickly personality, she might really be a very good wife. Thinking of this, Knight Baixian violently shook his head. Crap! I can't think like this, I must take revenge when I recover my cultivation in the future, these sugar-coated bombs are nothing more than a test for me, I must hold on. Senior brother, what are you shaking your head for? Is it a headache? Hua Mashan's face showed concern as she put down the soup she was holding. In Knight Beishuan's dumbfounded expression, Hua Masang directly pressed her forehead to his. An ethereal fragrance scurried into his nostrils, as if breathing slightly louder would fill his entire body with the aroma. The exquisite and incomparable face caused Knight Beishuan's breath to catch and goosebumps to rise all over his body. Well, didn't get sick well, I was worried that with no cultivation, you'd get the wind chill that only mortals get. Huama Shang's face was as normal as ever as she picked up the vessel once again. Come, open your mouth. Hua Manshang smiled, picked up a spoon, and fed the soup to Knight Beishian. After what happened just now, Knight Beishian hadn't completely calmed down and could only open his mouth as if following orders. Hold on ah, Knight Beishian you can do it. The enemy's sugar-coated bombs are very fierce, but you can do it. I'm not sure if I can do it, but you can. Knight Baixian kept cheering himself up in his heart, telling himself not to fall into Hua Mashang's trap. As for Hua Mashang, she had smiled and fed Knight Baixian throughout, without saying a single word. The meal was finished in this inexplicable atmosphere. After Hua Mashang had someone clean up, she laid into Knight Baixian's arms and began to whisper. It was as if she enjoyed this very much, controlling everything about Knight Baixian, eating, dressing, bathing, all of it was done by her. And Knight Baixian always maintained an extremely subtle emotion. He was enjoying everything that Hua Mashan did, but in his heart, he was extremely conflicted and ended up swinging for the fences. Anyway, it was also to cater to Hua Mashan, it was only right to be a little submissive himself, it wasn't to be considered that he was degenerate. Senior sister, you smell so good ah. Knight Baixian embraced the stunning beauty in his arms and spat out his words clearly. That senior brother wants to eat me and arched into Knight Baixian's arms, letting his delicate body try to stick closer to Knight Baixian. This kind of thing and why rush for a moment it, after you, and I get married, there are plenty of opportunities ah. Knight Baixian was sweating a bit, if he really ate Hua Mashang, it was hard to say if he would still have thoughts of revenge ah. Senior brother, I have to remind you that you must never, ever do anything that makes me unhappy again. Otherwise, the consequences are very serious. Hua Mashang's golden eyes shone. When? Of course, don't worry senior sister. During this period of time, Hua Mashang basically did not ask about things within the sect, her heart was focused on Night Bei Xian, repeating the same thing every day, but enjoying herself. Around the third night, the two of them, Hua Masang and Night Bei Xian, did everything except for the last step. Elder brother is quite capable of persevering Hua Mashang's jade-like face showed an abnormal flush, a fragrant bead rolled off her forehead, and her pink lips exhaled like orchids. Senior sister, well, sleep. Night Bei Xian tiredly huffed and puffed, for his senior sister's jade feet, his resistance was zero. Alright, let senior brother off the hook today. 
Hua Mashan also felt that she should consider Night Bei Xian's body, which needed moderation, and then she removed the black ice silk rosary on her legs and went to clean up the pool in the back room. Once again, she came back. Senior brother, hold me tight. Just as the two of them were preparing to go to sleep, an icy female voice was heard coming from outside the door, the kind of professionally trained, business-like voice. Sect master, Shui Zhu has something to report. Hearing these words, Huama Shang's face instantly became ugly, disturbing her and Night Bei Xian's coitus was a taboo. Only killing someone could resolve her anger. To say who knew Huama Shang the best, it was Night Bei Xian, seeing Huama Shang's expression, he knew something was going to happen. Maybe there is something urgent, anyway, we still have a lot of time together afterward, things within the sect also need to take care of it. Being persuaded by Night Bei Xian, Huama Shang's face recovered a lot, but it was still as cold as a 10,000 year cold pool. After putting on the snow white fox fur, slowly stepped out of the room, and closed the door again. Along with the sound of the door closing, there was also the sound of a slap, before hearing someone speak. Didn't I say to leave all matters to the blood pearl? There was only a burst of whispers afterward, which Night Bei Xian, an ordinary person with no cultivation at all, definitely couldn't hear. In fact, he wasn't kindly trying to speak for others, but rather hoping that Hua Mashan could focus a little more on the inner sect. In this way, he would be better able to plan his escape, and he would have to take back the Sun Moon Divine Sect in the future, so if it was gone by then, who would he find to reason with? Outside the door whispered for a while. After Hua Mashan gave an icy, murderous hmm, she suppressed her anger and said as gently as possible to Night Bei Xin in the room, Senior brother, there's something going on within the sect, I'm going to take care of it and I'll be back soon. It's fine, you go. Night Bei Xuan's voice fell, and the sound of the two men's footsteps drifted away. Seeing the opportunity come, Night Bei Xian panicked and opened the system. These days he was within the line of sight of Huama Shan. He couldn't even take a look at the system. After roughly half a pillar of time, the door to the room was suddenly opened. Night Bei Xian thought it was Hua Ma Sang returning, pretending to be half asleep. Senior sister, you're back ah? But the petite figure under the moonlight said, He he, brother Weedfish, it's me yo. Hearing that soft, yet lowly voice with a hint of a sinister smile, Night Bei Xian didn't react for a moment. Waiting for that petite figure to walk into the hall and close the door, Night Bei Xian only then reacted. Emperor Dome? Are you crazy? Night Bei Xuan's voice was suppressed, yet it was vaguely somewhat broken. Brother Weed Fish how do you talk to your master? For his part, Di Qiong was unperturbed, holding his hands as he gracefully walked towards Night Bei Xian. Don't you know that if my senior sister finds out, both of us will be finished? Night Bei Xian was already quite critical of this little devil, and now he was exploding with anger. What are you afraid of? Just don't let her find out. Di Cheong said rightfully, taking a white jade chair for himself, hugging his chest and sitting in front of Night Bei Xian. Looking at Di Cheong who was sitting in front of him on Hua Ma Shang's exclusive white jade chair, the question marks in Night Bei Xian's head had already filled up, said quite reasonable. Only strange. Hurry up, my senior sister will be back later, I'm not joking with you. Night Bei Xian waved his hand, pretending to be angry. If Hua Ma Shang was extremely doting on Night Bei Xian, then Di Cheong was clearly here to torment him. Not only did he not leave, but instead, he took off his own little white ribbon leather shoes, placing his hot, soft and sticky white silk little feet on Night Beishuan's unconscious legs. The corners of his mouth revealed an extremely belabored smile, weedy brother isn't it very happy to be treated like this by dome child? Night Beishuan at dollar hashtag asterisk forward slash. In his heart, he wanted to get angry, but he also knew that it was useless, and in the end, he had to be patient and say it properly. Stop fooling around, okay? When we have time, we'll play, let's go first now, okay? A fragrance of gardenia that was completely different from that of flower room ranges. It filled Night Bei Xuan's nostrils. That won't do, you're my slave, but you're being possessed by the sect master every day, that's not right oh Di Cheong said somewhat angrily, and her white silk little foot even hit Night Bei Xian's leg. Auntie, what exactly do you want? Night Bei Xian glanced out the window every now and then, afraid to see that absolutely beautiful figure. Night Bei Xian was so anxious that he was close to just jumping up, while Di Cheong was smiling, as if he found this amusing. Hey, don't talk as if people are bullying you, it's so meaningless. Di Cheong's two flesh-penetrating white silk legs overlap together, very visually impactful. Count on me to beg you, can we play next time? My senior sister could come back at any moment, I'm not the only one who screwed at that time. Night Bei Xian said sincerely. Under the moonlight, Di Cheong jade finger against his pink lips, making a thinking gesture, the scene was also quiet for a while. That's true, it's better for me to be careful now. Di Cheong lowered his hand, revealing a rewarding expression. Alright stray fish brother, just listen to you for once and spend the rest of your life thanking your master for his gift. Emperor Dome straightened his short emerald green skirt and said. Well well well, I'll damn well thank your whole family. Night Bei Xian couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief when he saw that Di Dome was finally willing to go, and muttered in a small voice. What? 
No, but just when Knight Baishan thought that Di Chiong would obediently put on his shoes and leave, the other party was once again putting his small white silk feet down and folding them together. What? Want me to help you put on your shoes? Knight Baishan thought that it was Di Chiong who was still going to play a demon. This kind of reward would have to be a mongrel brother kneeling on the ground and begging me, between your crippled legs, so there's no chance. Di Chiong looked at Knight Baishan like he was looking at trash. Knight Baishan. Let me see what you've done to your master's intimate apparel, take it out. One of Di Chiong's jade fingers traced across the pink lips with a smile, looking extremely tantalizing. Knight Bei Xian swallowed a mouthful of saliva, he felt that in going on like this, he was about to turn into a lowly control, even though the guy in front of him didn't even know how old he was. What? What intimate apparel? Knight Bei Xian had a confused question, careful. Are you saying, you don't have any? Di Chiong's face slowly sank, his face filled with a dark aura. An extremely cute lowly face, after changing face, was unexpectedly oppressive, and it was unknown if it was because of any other reason. Eh? Knight Bei Xian subconsciously touched towards his clothes, and really touched it. Because he was afraid of being discovered, it was placed in the innermost part, and it was only at this time that he remembered that there was such a thing. A milky smelling belly band was taken out. Seeing this situation, the Emperor Dome's face is also gradually eased down, and finally became belly black again. There are properly put away well also put in the innermost, so like the master's intimate apparel? D Dome said while poking Knight Beishuan's stomach with his white silk little feet. Ah, ah, like, like. Knight Beishuan just wanted to hurry up and get rid of this person, and didn't deny it. Ha! <laughs> Not caring about Knight Beishuan's perfunctory answer, D Chion's eyes fell on top of that belly band, looking up and down as if he was searching for something. In the end, he didn't find it and was somewhat disappointed, looking at Knight Beishuan with a grumpy face and not speaking. What's wrong? Look too, can we go now? Really can't wait any longer. Knight Beishian said anxiously. Hoof. Di Chun's face was a bit strange. Between the fact that you didn't have an outburst of beastly desire for your master's personal clothes, so cultivate it from now on. Di Chun's little head tilted up, smiling like a curved moon. What? Knight Beishian was instantly confused. This thing still needs to be cultivated? That said, how to cultivate it, he was still a bit curious. What what? By all rights, that night after I left, you should have been unable to control your beastly desires and directly ate my intimate apparel. Di Chong seemed to be really thinking, frowning at times and falling into deep thought. But you didn't do that, so you're not a qualified slave, but my slave can only be you, in that case, I can only train you ah. What a reasonable thing to say. The first thing that went through Knight Beishuan's mind was actually shocked at Di Dome's logical thinking and ignored the content. Immediately, it reacted. Auntie ah, what are you going to do hurry up and say yes? Knight Beishian seemed to have gotten used to it and wasn't too surprised. Take a whiff. What sniff a sniff? Not good oh. I'm quite fond of this place. Knight Beishian slowly picked up the milky smelling belly band, the lotus flowers on it were particularly eye-catching under the moonlight. You'll leave after I smell it, right? Di Chiong revealed an expectant look. Of course. Seeing the white jade chair, as if it were a demented girl, Di Chiong, Knight Beishian resignedly brought that light bodysuit to the tip of his nose, casually perfunctory and took it down. All right, can we go now? D Dome originally tilted his body forward, slowly leaned back again, and did not speak, hands clasped his chest, a look of don't fool me. Knight Beishian knew that this was the meaning of not being satisfied. He then sighed and once again picked up the belly band, parallel to his handsome face, just when he was hesitating whether or not to do such a perverted thing. D Chiong was the one who suddenly jumped up in a lightning fast manner. The small white silk foot stepped on Knight Beishuan's unconscious leg, and his entire body lunged forward, smoothly pressing the light, thin, intimate clothing, onto Knight Beishuan's face. Oh, how is it? Doesn't it smell good I don't refuse, in the future you won't necessarily have it even if you wanted Di Chiong's little devilish smile resounded in the hall. And Knight Beishuan had no way to resist. A few big breaths down, only to feel as if he had drifted to another world, a world without strife, only beautiful. For a while his face was filled with enjoyment. When Di Chiang saw this scene, her face also began to turn flushed, fragrant sweat broke out on her forehead, and she exhaled like an orchid. At this moment, it was as if the air had frozen. But this atmosphere didn't last long. A burst of footsteps came from outside the hall. It was also at this instant that Knight Bei Xian widened his own eyes, which were filled with blood and fear. Just by listening to the rhythmic yet slightly hurried footsteps, Knight Bei Xian knew that this was definitely Hua Ma Shang. The thought came together, only to feel a chill crawl all over his body from his backbone, causing him to shiver. Hurry up and get up. Knight Beishian anxiously pulled up the Emperor Dome on his body, but a wisp of gardenia fragrance remained in place. Finished. Knight Beishian at this time is a head too big, this person can hide, but how to eliminate the smell? Moreover, with the cultivation of Hua Shan's Zunshu realm, would he not be able to discover a tiny disciple? 
It seemed like it was already in a dead end. If last time he could hide once by virtue of the jade bracelet left behind by his mother, then this time, unless his mother was present and personally called Hua Mashan a daughter-in-law, only then he has a little possibility to survive. Looking at the Emperor Dome and his arms smiling brightly like the sun, Knight Baixian was somewhat puzzled. Is this person really stupid or fake? Hua Mashan's methods are well known within the sect, what she can end up with, that only the King of Hell can know. Listening to the increasingly clear footsteps outside the door, Knight Baixian said to Di Chiang, Do you have any more ideas? My senior sister is back. Di Chiang's entire body shrank in Knight Baixuan's embrace, playing with the white tassel as he laughed slightly, Where would I have a way, now I can only be grabbed by the sect master. If it was possible to act, Knight Baixian absolutely went to headbutt, this is too torturous. TSK. I've really fallen into eight lifetimes of bad luck. Knight Baixian spoke sharply, lifting Di Chiang up with one hand as the footsteps gradually approached. The petite Di Chiang's face finally changed, hurriedly covering her short emerald green skirt, her two white silk legs swinging irregularly in midair. What are you doing? Quickly put me down. Di Chiang's face blushed with shame, without the arrogance of the past days. Poof. A brat like you, you can't be arrogant after a little bit of tactics, right? Spitting, Knight Baixian stuffed the struggling Di Chiang into the futon behind him. Just now, he had already said that with the strength of divine sense in the Zunsha realm, the number of fine grains of sand around him could be felt clearly. Therefore, Knight Baishuan's actions were tantamount to covering his ears and stealing a bell, completely useless. What's more, that fragrance in the air, if any, is still wafting. Hush, be quiet. Knight Baishuan hurriedly pressed down on Di Chiang who wanted to come out. Why didn't he know that doing so wasn't the least bit useful? But sitting around waiting to die wasn't his character, no matter what, no matter what kind of ground, he had to do something, even if it was futile. After Knight Baishuan's reminders and pressure, Di Chiang was finally nestled in the bedding and didn't continue to move. This also made Knight Baixian breathe a sigh of relief. It was also at this moment that the door to the room was opened. A golden lotus flower held up a jade foot, swaying gently and slowly. The snow-white fox fur was glowing with silver under the moonlight, and the extremely beautiful and demonic face carried a hint of anticipation. Fairy in the moon, beauty in the flower, indescribable. The person who came was also not what Knight Baixian expected, it was precisely the flower mansion who had returned from dealing with the affairs within the sect. The footsteps had just stepped closer. Stop. Knight Baixian immediately raised his voice to stop. Hua Mazhang, who was originally wearing a smile, was a bit puzzled for a moment, but obediently stood in place. Senior brother, what's wrong? Oh, nothing, just want to take a look at you from a distance. Hua Mashan smiled charmingly, feeling very happy. Elder brother really, it's so late and still not sleeping, is he waiting for me? Or is it? Hua Mashan pursed her pink lips. Senior brother can't sleep without hugging me, huh? Demon Wool's face was full of temptation for males, slowly walking towards Knight Baixian. Stop! Knight Baixian shouted again. If it was usual, he might have really fallen into Hua Ma Shang's peach blossom trap, but right now he had half a mind of that, because there was still a little lowly under the quilt, drawing circles on his back. Senior brother, what's wrong? Hua Ma Shang's patience had always been very poor, but it was facing Knight Baixian that would be much better, and now it was also a bit impatient. After all, hugging Knight Baixian for a little less time, that was all a great loss for her. Eh? Senior sister Ah, what happened just now? Why did you have to make a trip yourself? Knight Baixian said without words. Hua Ma Shang remained patient as she answered. The hall master of the performing arts hall, he fought with people from other forces, and then he was held up. Oh, how did senior sister save him? Save? Hua Ma Sang snorted as if she was very disgusted by the word, I directly killed. Wanting to threaten me, Hua Ma Sang, those people aren't qualified enough. Ha! Huh? This time, it was Knight Baishuan's turn to be confused. Their Sun Moon Divine Sect, even though it was a cult, still had the minimum rules, right? People let you go to save the hostages, you Hua Ma Shang is good, directly go to kill the hostages, really put the evil word of evil, show to the fullest. Senior sister. Accidentally quite suitable to be a sect master ah. Knight Baishuan said somewhat breathlessly, the corner of his mouth pulled. Senior brother, have you finished reading? Hua Ma Shang grabbed a strand of her own green silk and said as the iceberg melted. Wait a little longer. Knight Baixian tensed up again. I found that the senior sister under the moonlight is really something else, it's like a fairy descending to the earth, I can't get enough of it. Knight Baixian gave a burst of bragging. Although he didn't know exactly what the use of stalling was, there was nothing else he could do. Even if it meant death, he would have to wait and see. Senior brother really, what's there to see, isn't it good to get your hands on it and feel it? Hua Ma Shang had an expression of being unable to do anything about Knight Baixian, extremely spoiled. Senior sister, you killed the hall master of the martial arts hall, aren't you afraid of losing your prestige within the sect? Knight Baixian was genuinely quite curious, he knew that Hua Ma Shan was not a fool. 
Seeing that Nag Baixian had once again brought up other matters, Hua Masang was somewhat disinterested, but she still explained. In front of absolute strength, any words and techniques are futile, I will do as I please. Saving that hall master is not a difficult task for me, but it is not desirable. Hua Masang struck an extremely good-looking pose under the moonlight for Nag Baixian to admire. Cults are like the righteous path, strength is everything, and in the past, senior brother's management style was too flimsy. Besides, it's still that hall master himself who did the sin. Then the painting turned and said. Most of all, he disturbed my time together with my senior brother, so as soon as I started to follow to snow bamboo in the past, I had already planned to kill that hall master, after all, nothing can be as important as my time together with my senior brother. After hearing what Hua Masang said, Night Baixian secretly swallowed a mouthful of saliva, a feeling of powerlessness growing in his heart. This was Hua Masang, a woman who had interpreted the aesthetics of paranoia to the extreme. Even Di Chiong, who didn't care about anything, was quiet at this moment, and there was no movement in the futon. All right senior brother, have you seen enough? Hua Masang was already frowning, not wanting to wait any longer. Eh? Night Baixian still wanted to drag it out further, but he heard an icy voice coming from Hua Masang. Why does the room smell like a woman? Thud. Thud 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 thud. In just an instant, Night Baishuan's heartbeat reached a height it had never reached before. He had asked Hua Masheng not to come in, and another purpose was that it would also dissipate the smell. But he didn't expect that it was still discovered. No right, how could there be a woman's smell? Night Baishuan replied calmly, he hadn't learned anything in the past two days, but his mental quality had definitely improved. It seems like I've smelled it somewhere. Hua Masheng's face was already deep as water, her golden eyes slightly narrowed as she did a thinking form. Then he looked at Night Baixian again. Senior brother, honestly, what's going on? All the things that were out of place just now had all turned into doubts in Hua Masheng's heart at this moment. There really isn't. Don't you believe me, senior sister? Night Baixian made a look of disappointment. Hua Masheng was suddenly stunned. She once again remembered the last time she wronged Night Baixian, and her anger gradually subsided. Thinking about it carefully. It was mainly because Night Baixian didn't have to. It wasn't that Hua Masheng was self-absorbed, within this huge Sun Moon Divine sect, there was no one that said they could rival her in terms of face value, so if Night Baixian wanted it, why would he need to go find someone else? The more she thought about it, the more she felt that she was overthinking it, and she couldn't help but secretly blame herself inwardly, feeling that she had wronged Night Baixian. Senior brother, then forget about the smell and hurry up and sleep. Hua Masheng closed the door and moved lightly with lotus steps. This time, it was Night Baixian who was confused. Was it that simple? According to his understanding of Hua Masheng, this kind of thing would require at least a layer of skin to be removed. Now it is he has not said anything, Hua Masheng himself first skipped, this is a little. However, he was just so stunned. Hua Masheng has already backed the moonlight, came to the bed. Night Baixian realized afterward, his eyes wide open. Di Chiong that little lowly was still in the bedding. Just now, no matter what, after all, Hua Masheng had not caught her in the act. This time was different, once Hua Masang found out that Di Chiong was in the bedding, even if he, Night Baixian, had a longer mouth, he wouldn't be able to say anything. But now ought to stop already too late, due to the miss of Night Baixian, Hua Masang paces very fast, all the previous day's elegance is gone. Wait, wait, senior sister, senior sister. Night Baixian hurriedly beckoned, wanting to stop Hua Masang. It was also because his legs couldn't move, if he could, he could just jump up and stop Hua Masang. Senior brother, what exactly are you hiding? Do you have any secrets? Hua Masang finally did notice that something was wrong, or perhaps it was Night Baixian who had been exposed. Ha, ha, how could? Cold sweat flowed from Night Baixuan's forehead, and he subconsciously shielded the protruding bedding. But just this one time, it was captured by Hua Masang. In an instant, the temperature within the hall seemed like a deep mountain in a waxing moon, freezing one's entire body to the point where the blood stopped flowing. That piercing coldness was also transmitted to Night Baixian at the first moment, and he then shivered, also knowing that he had been exposed, his teeth clenched. Senior sister, this is a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? What misunderstanding? I don't know if it was an illusion, but Night Baixian felt that Hua Shan's black and translucent hair seemed to float in the air, and her entire figure became more erect. Senior sister, you have to believe me, there's no way I would do anything to wrong you, this is really a misunderstanding. Night Baixian was already slurring his words a bit, his heart hated Di Chong. If he could, he would definitely want to hang Di Chong up and spank her until she begged for mercy. Senior brother, I'm really curious as to what kind of woman is it that has you so enamored that you want to make out with her even at the expense of pissing me off. As he spoke, Hua Masheng walked step by step to the bed before the couch, looking at the white jade chair next to him, his heart became even more angry. Seeing that he couldn't hide anymore, Night Baixian didn't want to be sophomoric fighting for a good attitude and being treated leniently. Senior sister, 
I won't hide it from you. Knight Baixian made a face of surrender, looking relieved as if doing so made him feel good. Hua Ma Shan, on the other hand, because she had wrongly blamed Knight Baixian last time, chose to listen patiently, if it was a different her from before, at this time, Knight Baixian had already lost. Actually, I didn't know what was in the bedding at all, just now I fell asleep, and as soon as I woke up I realized that there was something in the bedding. Knight Baixian squarely defended, trying his best to set himself aside. Senior brother is really misbehaving oh. As the sect master of the Sun Moon Divine Sect, Hua Ma Shan, no matter how much she favored Knight Bei Shen, there was no way she would listen to such foolish words. Not waiting for Knight Bei Shen to explain, Hua Ma Shan's hands flashed with golden light, gently lifting upwards. The bedding above the bed seemed to come to life, slowly floating into the air. Not good. Seeing this situation, Knight North Shen a hand will bedding press, senior sister you do ah, strange cold, I will get wind cold. Hua Ma Shang hadn't used too much force, this time being torn by Knight Bei Shen making the scene in the futon hidden once again. Senior brother, be obedient. Hua Ma Shang increased the force in her hands, she was now on the verge of a violent rage. If it wasn't for the fact that she wanted to see it with her own eyes and slowly settle the score later, she would have dragged Knight Baixian out of bed long ago. Moreover, Knight Baixuan's attitude, along with the series of strange behaviors she had just witnessed, had caused her to repeatedly confirm what she had in mind. As soon as she thought of what she would see later, Hua Ma Shang's golden pupils began to fill with blood, slowly turning a dark golden color. Bang! Under Hua Ma Shang's means, the bedding was directly torn apart. Everything on the bed and couch was visible. Hua Ma Shang's foxball blanket, Knight Beishuan's legs, and a few pairs of ice silk luo stockings, but there was no woman. Seeing this situation, Hua Ma Shang's emotions slowly began to stabilize, and for a while, she was a bit at a loss for words, and the green silk floating in the air also slowly fell. Where is Di Chiong? Not only is Hua Ma Shang, Knight Bei Xian is the most confused one, he was ready to lick Hua Ma Shang's feet to apologize, but did not expect, things came to a big reversal. For a time, a needle fell in the back hall. No. If there is no woman, where does the scent come from? Hua Ma Shang seized the point, her agaric nose twitching slightly, but not before capturing the scent. Knight Bei Xian also discovered this. For a moment, he felt extremely curious about Di Chiong's identity, a person who could retreat in front of a Zunshur realm powerhouse in his entirety, just what means did he use? And the breath was removed altogether. Could it be that Di Chiong had also hidden her cultivation? And what was her purpose? It couldn't be just to temper him, could it? Senior brother. Hua Ma Shang blinked her peach blossom eyes and cupped the hem of her skirt with both hands, appearing somewhat at a loss for words. Knight Bei Xian had traditionally been someone who took what he saw as a good thing. Ha ha ha. Senior sister, just joking with you. Quickly get into bed, there's no bedding, senior brother will hold you in sleep. Hua Ma Shan's small cherry mouth slightly opened. Senior brother doesn't blame me? Knight Bei Xian, however, smiled gently. How could I blame? That's even if senior sister really did something to me, there's no way I would blame senior sister. Senior brother. Hua Ma Shan's self-blame also came to a peak. Di Chiong disappeared without a sound, as if she had never appeared. No one knew where she had gone. Knight Baixian single-handedly repaid the grudge with virtue, coaxing Hua Ma Shang is extremely happy. After this incident alone, Hua Ma Shang's freedom from Knight Baixian has relaxed a lot, as long as it doesn't touch the red line, you can freely come and go anywhere within the sect. This was definitely a good thing for Knight Baixian, because being able to go out of the back hall, then there were more things that could be done. After a few more days, in the back hall, Knight Baixian sat on his bed, fiddling with the system blind boxes, there were a total of four blind boxes, three gray and one purple, as well as some heavenly treasures. What exactly should I change? Knight Baixian muttered, somewhat confused. According to his initial thoughts, he was using all of the blind boxes to exchange for resource blind boxes to help him hold out the past life compass, thus restoring his cultivation. But now that he thought about it, it didn't feel right. Because he only had a dozen days left, it was simply unrealistic for him to gather enough heavenly treasures to sustain the past life compass in such a short period of time. After thinking about it for a while, Knight Baixian decided to take a gamble. He decided to open the talisman blind box, this kind of thing could be used even by those without cultivation, and it was an unbeatable choice for the current him to utilize external power. Opening the talisman blind box. Ding! Congratulations to the host for obtaining the jaw-breaking talisman, amulet, sprinting talisman, and powerful talisman. Looking at what the system opened out, Knight Baixian smiled from the bottom of his heart for the first time, he had gambled right. Although he had wasted the resources of a blind box, he had opened something he needed very much, and these talismans would help him a lot in his escape. Luck is really good. Knight Baixian couldn't stop smiling at the corners of his mouth, originally he was afraid of opening something useless, but now it seemed that the heavens still had eyes. Still, one couldn't be too happy too early. With that, he organized his thoughts. 
There were still two difficulties in escaping, the first thing to be solved was his legs, if this problem was not solved, then escaping could not be thought of. The second was the protecting sect formation. Because of the imperial enemy plus the fear of a mole, everyone who wanted to go down the broken dragon cliff had to go to the mission hall to apply, and only after the hall master agreed, could they leave. If not, they will be blocked by the protectorate formation and notify the criminal martial hall. Both of these things were a bit difficult for him, but they were not without any thoughts at all. If he had two legs, he could still go to Rumpelstiltskin. Between now and then, Huama Shang was already very trusting of him, so operating it was definitely much easier than before. Go out and take a look, it's idle anyway, why don't we go and step on the ground first and see the changes within the sect. After saying that, with a flip, Knight Baishan got on top of the special wheelchair, pushed and left the back hall. Today, Huama Shang was not in the back hall, this was a historical habit, every month there was a day when she closed her door and went into seclusion in her own attic. Even if Knight Baishan went to look for her, he was not allowed to enter. In the past he would still be curious, now well. He only wished that Huama Shang stayed inside every day. The midday sun was very hot, but the sun and moon divine sect seemed to be plated with a layer of black veil, except for the back of the mountain, where it was cloudy and ghostly. Knight Baishan pushed himself to the side of the clear water terrace, looking at the guard situation in the front hall through the stone fence in front of him. Looking at the crowded scene a few steps at a time, he couldn't help but burst out, crap, were there this many people before? Or is it? Thoughts were instantly enlightened. It seemed that Huama Shan was also just putting on a show of trusting him on the surface, but in reality, was still wary of himself at every turn. But this was of no use. If he could solve the first two problems, then on the day of the wedding he would be carried to the front hall, and at that time he would directly get off the car midway and run away as, the guards were simply useless. Moreover, I believe that Hua Mashang, who was about to become a bride, must be at her most lax in vigilance, and wouldn't even think that he would run. This escape can be described as a nine deaths in one life, must be foolproof ah. Knight Baishan secretly resolved in his heart. He then prepared to push his wheelchair back. But just at this moment, a burst of playful sounds came from far away. Knight Baishan looked up and found that three men were traveling in his direction not far away. All of them were also recognizable as the former vice hall master of the performing arts hall in Xia. The other two should be Lin Xia's men. This Lin Xia is still his hand to promote up. Did not think that things are not the same now ah, he is wasted. People but the scenery is infinite, walking with the wind. However, Hinite Beixian is also a person who has seen the big world and experienced trials and tribulations, and will not care about this momentary endurance, so he was ready to greet, but he was interrupted by the sound of the three people talking. Hall Master Lin. What a congratulations. You've only been a deputy Hall Master for a year, and you've been directly promoted to Hall Master. The follower behind Lin she said with a fawning face, yeah, and it's also the sect master himself who promoted him up, that's really a great honor. Another added. Lin Xie's face was red and glowing. The sect master has his own plans, so how can we speculate on them? Lin Xia replied with a smile. It had to be said, Lin Xia was really a talented person, wearing a white robe, ink hair to the waist, a long look of a flamboyant gentleman, although it was much worse than the night Bei Xian, but it really could afford to be, the stranger is like Jade, the gentleman world is unparalleled. The follower behind him continued. Hallmaster Lin, this time when you are promoted to Hallmaster, you really have to thank the sect master. Yes, yes, I heard that this time it was the sect master who personally killed the former hall master, which gave the hall master position to hall master Lin. Hey, could the sect master be interested in hall master Lin? When these words were said, all three people were nonplussed. Although the corners of his mouth were almost turned up to the sky, Lin Xie still said steadily, you must not talk nonsense, the sect master passed on the position of hall master to me, there must be some other purpose, and how could it be for the sake of a child's love? That may not be possible, if the sect master has no interest in the hall master, how could he kill the previous hall master without any reason? And give the position to you, hall master? Another follower chimed in. Yes. The sect master's intentions are clearly seen within the sect. What you love and what I wish for, why would you squirm, hall master? You have to know that the sect master is a famous beauty, even if you put it in the entire Yuan continent, you can definitely call it number one. Lin Shi's eyes curved into crescent moons. Extremely flattered by what the two had said, as if it was the same as the real thing, and what Hua Shang had done was indeed untraceable, if it wasn't for him, then who was it for? After all, the hall master position was given to him. Alright, stop it, it's not good if others hear it. Hurry up and go to the snowy region to pick 10,000 year old ice flowers and present them to the sect master in return for the grace of promotion. The words fell. The slowed down trio once again moved forward at a fast pace. Just like Lin Xie said, this time, the purpose of the three of them going down the broken dragon cliff was for the 10,000 years ice flower of the snow domain. That kind of thing was in the innermost part of the ice layer, 
and even if it was refined by divine fire for 77 or 49 days, it might not be able to melt. For the sake of this thing, Lin Xia had hemorrhaged money. It was only after paying a great price that he managed to get the treasure that could obtain this flower. He was hoping that this thing would please flower Mashan. Don't worry, Hall Master, we can definitely get it. Yes, when the time comes to become a sect master's husband don't forget about us. This time, Lin Xia didn't retort and smiled, feeling extremely smooth to the ears at the four words sect master husband. But just at this moment, a roadblock suddenly appeared in front. That person, although sitting on top of the wheelchair, but does not change the big stature, although there is no point of cultivation, but the aura is above all people, the power bone is born, does not bring half a bit of artifice. That is a person they are most afraid of in their hearts, a person who can take the goddess that they dare not make a mistake in their dreams into their arms, a person who has reached the realm of the honored one at the age of 17. Night Bei Xian. A few of you enjoy fantasizing. In the middle of the back of the mountain, where it was tightly blocked off, an airy attic surrounded by black aura and imprinted with countless golden Dao patterned shadows was extremely conspicuous amongst the mountains. Within the attic, Huama Shang sat in a golden lotus flower, as if she was cultivating some kind of technique. At first, everything was normal. But the next second, something unusual happened. Flowers between Shang body surprisingly silk black gas flow out, after being golden lotus flower sucked in, so repeated, continued for a long time. I don't know how long it took, but the black chi on Huama Shang's body slowly turned into a golden color, and Huama Shang also opened her eyes. Blood Pearl, how much more demonic chi can this lotus platform absorb? Huama Shang's immortal voice curled up, and with the white mist around her, it was quite a bit of a fairyland. The words fell. A woman wearing night tights, green silk tied up, and a black veil instantly appeared in front of the lotus platform, kneeling on one knee and saluting. Subordinate just went to check, it's enough to purify all the demonic chi in the lord's body. Hmm, very good, it's time to go find senior brother. Huama Shang smiled faintly, her jade feet hooked up the cream-colored robe on the ground and then draped it over her body. With light lotus steps, when she was almost out the door, she asked with slanted eyes, is there anything else you want to do? What are you kneeling for? Blood Pearl, who had been kneeling on the ground, only then dared to speak, my lord. My subordinate really doesn't understand why the lord wants to purify the demonic chi, that is the lord's most powerful inheritance, and it's not even a little bit harmful to the lord, the demonic chi is stored under the lotus terrace and can still be absorbed, and now that the current situation is in turmoil, my subordinate pleads with the lord to take back the demonic chi, and to unify the 3000 Taoist states. Hearing Blood Pearl's urgent questions and pleas, Huama Shang however instead lost interest and only left a sentence. My senior brother does not like, and disappeared in the attic, leaving the frozen blood pearl, alone, to suffer from the cold wind. Clear water terrace. Knight Baishan locked eyes with the three, his eyes filled with playful mockery. The conversation that the three had just had, he had heard all of it word for word, and this kind of obsessive foolishness really made even him cry and laugh a little. Or rather, it was a big fall. To actually dare to fantasize about the flower room dress? It wasn't that he, Knight Bei Xian, was talking nonsense, since childhood, the number of times Hua Ma Sang had spoken to other men, added up, could be counted on one hand, and killed the hall master of the martial arts hall, that is purely because of disturbing her and himself together, with you Lin Xia have nothing to do, and go through all the trouble of sending what 10,000 year old ice flowers? Send a gift, but where the flowers between me look at a glance, he Knight Bei Xian this life to stay in the sun moon divine sect where not to go. Teaching. Knight Bei Xian? Lin Xie swallowed a mouthful of saliva, for Knight Baixian was still very fearful, but sensing that the other party did not have a bit of cultivation on his body, he let go of his heart. So what if he was powerful in the past? Now it was just a waste with no cultivation, nothing to be afraid of. He he. Not even shouting at the former sect master? Knight Baixuan's eyes went cold, he was definitely not a good person. At 17 years old, he had single-handedly founded the Yuan continent's number one dark force, the sun and moon divine sect. No one would believe him if they said he was a good person. Knight Bei Xian, don't give me that pretense, if it wasn't for the sect master remembering that you're his senior brother, how could you have survived? A deputy hall master behind him said angrily, intending to curry favor with Lin Qi. Right. The past is the past, the present is the present, although the sun moon divine sect has only changed its sect master for half a month, but things are already different, do you still think that you're the sect master who covers the sky with one hand? The two deputy hall masters behind him spoke treacherous words, but Lin Xie didn't care, he just stared at Knight Baixian with a spiteful face. The one who made him so jealous that he went crazy. In the past, he had a different mind towards Hua Ma Shang, and in recent years, he had been constantly courting her, not to mention that Hua Ma Shang hadn't even said a word to her. Although he was frustrated, he didn't feel very happy, because Hua Ma Shang wasn't just like that to him, but to everyone, regardless of gender. 
But there was just that one man, not only could he enjoy Huama Shang's perfect petite body, his clothes, food, housing and transportation were still taken care of by Huama Sang. That kind of high mountain flower, in front of that man fell into the mortal world, all the tenderness is also by its one person alone. And that person was the handsome man sitting in the wheelchair in front of him Night Bei Xian. Lin Xia, your dog is biting me, didn't you hear me? Night Bei Xuan's tone was icy cold, he could cower when facing Huama Shang, but facing other people well. How I discipline my subordinates, I'm afraid it's not the former sect master's turn to do so. Lin Xia's face became extremely ugly, the illusion he had just had shattered made him furious. In particular, Night Beishuan's scornful eyes seemed to be telling him all of his thoughts about Hua Ma Shang were nothing more than a fool's errand. This also made him completely explode. Taking a few steps forward to stare at Night Beixian, he mocked. Do you really think the sect master likes you? That's nothing but a blindfold, for the sake of your sect leader position, and the fact that she personally broke your legs is the best proof of that. Lin Shi was very convinced of this and instantly felt much more comfortable in his heart. Night Beixian then silently stared at the hissing Lin Xia, the corners of his mouth faintly smiling, a program to get the best of both worlds, surfaced in his mind. Since you're so obsessed with the flowery dress, then slightly utilizing it, I don't think it's that difficult. Right. The sect leader's announcement that she wants to marry him is just a matter of having to compromise due to the pressure of public opinion, it's not like she really likes it at all. The deputy hall master next to him chimed in. More and more disciples gathered around and felt surprised to see Night Beixian, most of them thought that Night Beixian was dead. After all, even though what Lin Xia and the others had said were speculations, they were all reasonable, making it impossible to find a break. In their view, if Hua Ma Shang really loved Night Beixian, how could she have robbed him of his position as sect leader and then killed all of his followers? She also broke both of Night Beixuan's legs. As for the house arrest did not kill, but also flowers between the afraid of affecting the public opinion within the sect, intentionally, after all, was under the past life compulsion of the night Beixian has no threat. But how do they know? This was not a sign of not loving, but a sign of loving to the extreme. Night Beixian was a bit speechless. How come all these people were looking forward to their own deaths? Back when he was the sect master, he didn't have to enlist people ah. It's really the world's wins, people's hearts aren't ancient ah. Lin Xia, do you think that because I, Night Beixian, don't have my cultivation, I can't do anything about you? Night Beishuan's tone changed and said somewhat playfully. Without waiting for Lin Xia to open his mouth to retort, Night Beishuan pushed his wheelchair to the edge of the clear water terrace, looked down at the front hall and said, The person in the world who understands my senior sister the most is me, the 10,000 year ice flower she definitely won't even take a look at it, if I have to send it well, I definitely won't send this. Night Beishuan you less fart here, you understand the sect master? Then tell me what she likes? Lin Xi cursed angrily, his heart vaguely curious. The corners of Night Beishuan's mouth smiled slightly, the fish has taken the bait. Ignoring what Lin Xie said, Night Beishuan continued to mumble to himself, recently, I've also been planning to give my senior sister something. That thing, senior sister must really like it. Night. Lin Xie wanted to continue pressing the issue, but at this moment, a wave of aura fluctuations shook the clouds and also shook the crowd back and forth. Everyone in the arena fell to the east and the west, but only one person was unaffected, and that was Night Beishuan, who had no cultivation at all. After the smoke and dust dispersed, a stunningly beautiful figure slowly marched in with an extremely cold face. What are you doing? A cold and cruel question directly pressed the temperature of the scene to freezing point, and the people on the periphery retreated, fearing that Hua Ma Shang would be a fish in the pond. Lin Xie thought that he didn't act too excessively and was telling the truth, even if he was pursued, he could use the reason that he was trying to find 10,000 year old ice flowers for Hua Ma Shang. So there was a lot of guts. Sect leader. Lin Xie's words had only just left his mouth when he realized that a pressure was coming towards him, feeling a great threat, he couldn't think too much and all of his cultivation at the inscription realm erupted to resist. Boom! Dare to interrupt again, shoot on sight. Icy cold words were spat out from Hua Ma Shang's pink lips, without any semblance of temperature. In the crowd's astonished gazes, Hua Ma Shang slowly put away her jade hands, hiding them in her cloud sleeves, and slowly walked towards Night Beixian. In looking at Lin Xie, he crashed through several stone pillars before stopping and then a mouthful of blood spewed out, and he couldn't stand up for a while. Lin Xia clenched his teeth, his heart felt stifled abnormally, but he didn't dare to make a mistake and hurriedly climbed up. Subordinate nose. Deliberately making an extremely weak appearance, he hoped that he could cause Hua Ma Shang to look sideways. Just now, he had figured everything out. The reason why Hua Ma Shang had struck out at him in public was not because she wanted to punish him, but because she was afraid that those old monsters from Night Beishuan's party would find themselves in trouble. After all, he himself had been promoted by her. Although most of this was because, the sect leader didn't want the hall master he had promoted to die just like that, he was still happy in his heart, and his body didn't even hurt as much. Kneel down. 
The immortal voice of Huama Shan was targeted, next to the two deputy hall masters of the martial arts hall, all of a sudden felt as if the heavenly tripod pressed on his body, just a moment, put on kneel down. The two strong people at the beginning of the inscription, did not have the ability to resist at all. After all this was done, Huama Shan's golden eyes turned slightly and came to Night Bei Shen. In an instant, the eyes that were originally cold and without a trace of vigor were immediately revitalized, as if after winter, everything was revived and spring had come. Senior brother, what exactly happened? Huama Shang's tone had never been so gentle, hearing the surrounding people freeze. Lin Ste's teeth were bleeding from biting. Although he knew that Hua Masang was merely making a superficial gesture, he still felt that he couldn't accept it, yet there was nothing he could do about it. Ah, nothing, just looking for a greeting. Knight Beixian said calmly, Senior brother, you don't have cultivation now, so you have to be careful in everything, if it's this person who offended you. Tell me, I don't mind changing two hall masters in one day. Huama Shang slowly cupped Knight Bei Xian's hand in front of the crowd's dumbfounded gazes and said in a serious tone. However, when she said the last sentence, the killing intent was like a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood. Thump. Lin Xia, who was next to the collapsed stone pillar in the distance, had a cold heart. Anyone with a discerning eye could see that Huama Shan was definitely not joking or being facetious. If Knight Bei Xian revealed what had just happened, then the next day his head would appear under the broken dragon cliff. For a moment fear took over his heart, and his body couldn't stop trembling. But even so, he still couldn't figure out why in the world. The rest of the people within the sect just watched this scene with wide eyes. To kill someone for merely taking offense? Just how far was this spoiling? This moment. All those subtle rumors were not broken. Seeing Huama Shan looking at himself with a worried face, and everyone around him being incredibly quiet, all waiting for him to speak, he honestly felt quite good, he he. Halt. Cautious sugarcoating. Suppressing the fluttering in his heart, Knight Beishian cleared his throat and said with a smile, it's really nothing. It's just to see that he's been promoted to Hall Master and say hello. This was followed by a squinty-eyed grin as he looked at Lin Xia. Senior sister you're really too, you didn't even get it right before you beat someone up like this, it's really not right. After listening to Night Bei Xian's account, Huama Shang finally breathed a sigh of relief, she was truly afraid that someone else would hurt Night Bei Xian. What she would do if that sort of thing happened, she herself didn't dare to think about it. Alright senior sister, I'm fine. Night Bei Xian felt a little amused as he looked at the relieved Huama Shang. If he told what had just happened, Knight Beixian believed that Hua Masang would absolutely slaughter Lin Xia, it was inevitable and the least suspicious. But he didn't do that. It wasn't because he was some rotten good guy, just based on the few foul words Lin Xia had exploded at him just now, it was enough for Lin Xia to die several times, after all, he was by no means a good person either. But Lin Xia was useful to him. During the conversation just now, he had hit on the idea. As a hall master, Lin Xia was bound to have a hall master's token on him and with that he could freely enter and exit the Sun Moon Divine General, and Knight Beishuan's goal was it. As for how to get the token? There was no rush, Knight Beishuan had already baited the hook, he just needed to wait for the fish to bite. Elder brother, I boiled soup for you, aphrodisiac, you drink more, there are still ten days to go as our wedding, when the time comes, Huamanshan pushed against Knight Beishuan, and said by its ear, Air, senior sister, senior brother I don't need that kind of thing, my body is very good, really. Knight Beixian showed off his muscles and said with a sincere face. Still talking big words, last night only a few times and you can't do it. Huama Shang twirled her fingers and laughed lightly, as beautiful as a flower and as fresh as water. You don't use your feet. I'm great anyway. Yes, senior brother is the most powerful. Knight Beishuan's hard mouth was tolerated by Huama Shang, who gently teased, and both of them were in an extremely good mood, talking and laughing with each other. This beautifully intoxicating scene was watched by a pair of spiteful eyes. Kneeling on the ground, Lin Xia paid no attention at all, his entire body became uncomfortable at the sight of the two laughing and joking, and urge to vomit made his eyes bloodshot. Jealous, jealous to the point of madness. He couldn't wait to rush over and slap Knight Beixian to death, stripping his bones and pulling out his tendons. Eat it alive. Put it into the refining furnace. But he didn't dare to have any opinions about flowering Shuang. Because that high ridge flower's unintentional smile was a delicacy that he would never dare to ask for in his life. First vice second vice, let's go. Lin Xia slowly retracted his gaze and said to the two deputy hall masters. Sect leader didn't let us go? Yeah, the consequences of this leaving privately are very serious. The two vice hall masters still had palpitations and did not get up. Humph. Lin Xia's eyes were vicious as he said, thinking he knew everything, this is just the sect master's way of controlling public opinion, portraying an affectionate and righteous personality. After all, he only just killed a hall master for me, so we can't mess up again at this time. The two were still a bit unconvinced. But, but just now that look in the sect leader's eyes was really about to kill someone, it's not like he's just saying it. Lin Evil smiled seductively. So we were killed? 
That's where the sect leader is brilliant. What I just said was just a scene, otherwise if Knight Baishan had suffered that kind of insult, how could he not let the sect master back him up? The two nodded, suddenly realizing. They stood up, then what do we do now? Lin Qi narrowed his eyes slightly. First mate, you go spy on Knight Baishan. The crowd at Clearwater Terrace had dispersed. Originally, Lin Qi, who had just taken the throne, was the object of everyone's attentions, but at the moment, he was like a lost dog, his head was broken and bleeding, and all of them didn't dare to utter a word. What? A pair was a bit puzzled, letting him spy on Knight Baishan? Not to mention whether or not he could, even if he could, what could he gain from spying on a loser? Lin Xie's eyes were resentful as he stared dead on in the direction that the Knight Baishan duo had left. This Knight Baishan is right about one thing, and that's that he understands the sect leader, go spy on him and see what gifts he's planning to give to the sect leader, and snatch them when the time comes. Lin Xia believed that as long as he could gain Hua Ma Shang's heart, then getting Hua Ma Shang's person would only be a matter of time. A sudden realization dawned on him. Then, million-year-old ice flowers won't be taken? Lin Qi said coldly. Fetch. Why don't you fetch it? Two things, one full of heart, one full of warmth. With this kind of offense, I don't believe that the sect master won't be moved. It was as if he had already gone off the deep end, the moment he thought of Hua Ma Shang and Knight Bei Shen talking and laughing, he felt a rush of fire attacking his heart and nearly spat out a mouthful of blood once again. In the end, the three of them each packed up. According to the plan, the three of them split into two. The first mate would be responsible for going to spy on Knight Bei Shen and find out about Hua Ma Shang's preferences, while Lin Qi and the second mate would go to the snow region to fetch the 10,000 years ice flower. And in the back hall, the corner of Knight Bei Shuan's mouth grinned slightly. It's almost time. Based on what he had just hinted at, he thought that Lin Xia should have made a move, so it was up to him next. Senior brother, what are you talking about? Hua Ma Shang was fiddling with the fabric on the side, and when she heard Knight Bei Xian speak, she looked up and asked. Nothing. Knight Bei Xian turned his head, looked at the absolutely beautiful Hua Ma Shang, and the clothes in her hands, and continued. Senior sister is really handy, but it's not enough to make so many clothes to wear? Knight Baishan suddenly remembered that all of his clothes seemed to have been made by Hua Ma Shang. He he. Senior brother. I'm making clothes for the baby, not for senior brother oh. Hua Ma Shang smiled like a flower, hand flicking needle and thread, skillful. Isn't the baby. A little fast? Knight Baishan heard a burst of speechless, it has not yet a skimming it, began to give the unborn baby to do clothes. It's not fast, senior brother. It'll be almost time to have a baby after the wedding, what will we name the baby then? Hua Ma Shang's face was filled with longing for the future. Knight Bei Shen didn't know how to answer, there was a little twitch in his heart, especially that maternal glow on Hua Ma Shang's body, making him not know how to face it for a while. Could only skim his head. It's a little too early to talk about this, wait until the child is born, right senior sister, where did you go today? Knight Bei Shen panicked and tried to change the topic. Hua Ma Shang but extremely rare did not pay attention to Knight Bei Shen. the immortal face was full of joy, said to herself. The girl, it is called the night fairy child, the boy. Hua Ma Sang made it difficult, stop the hands of things, asked the night Bei Xian, senior brother, what is the boy called? A woman who hadn't come into contact with a male other than night Bei Xian since she was a child, asking her to name the boy was indeed a bit difficult for her. The boy's name will be Night Boo Boo Return. Night Bei Xian said indifferently, but his sight was cast to the sky through the window. Why should it be called Boo Gue Ah? I don't like this name, it should be called Night Return. Hua Ma Shang's jade fingers pressed against her own pink lips as she said thoughtfully, Call it whatever you want, it's good if senior sister likes it. Night Bei Xian didn't dwell on this issue. In casual conversation, an afternoon quickly passed, and in the blink of an eye the setting sun faded, and night came. Senior brother, are you hungry? I'll go cook for you. Hua Ma Shang put away her future daughter's little skirt into the cabinet. It's a bit hungry, please trouble senior sister. Elder brother, I've already said, no being so polite or I'm going to get angry. Good. Senior sister go quickly. Aha. As the sandalwood door opened and closed, Knight Bei Shen let out a long sigh of relief, his feelings towards Hua Ma Shang becoming more and more complicated. Although he had been resisting Hua Ma Shang's sugar-coated bombs, he had to say that Hua Ma Shang's personal charms were too strong, at least his mindset had now produced a change. If there was a chance to regain his cultivation in the future, and Hua Ma Shang still fell into his hands, then whether or not he would be able to lay his hands on her, he didn't know, or perhaps he didn't want to know. All of his thoughts finally turned into a long sigh, only to blame the world for the impermanence of the world and the creation of people. Well, let's not think about this, it's time to do something. Knight Beishuan's eyes were instantly as sharp as eagles. Because Hua Ma Sang insisted on being in charge of Knight Beishuan's food, clothing, and shelter, there would be two periods of the day when Hua Ma Sang would not be in the middle of the back hall, in addition to drinking the spirit dew in the morning. That is, noon and night, and if you wanted to do something, you would have to act during this time period. 
sitting on the wheelchair out of the room, hands whirled smoking, afraid of being a step slow, all the way along the white jade corridor, and finally came to a flower bed, where Di Cheong had already waited. Within the gazebo, Di Cheong sat inside. Seeing Di Cheong's person, Night Bei Xian let out a sigh of relief, then straightened himself up, looked around and coughed before slowly traveling to Di Cheong's side. You came? Night Bei Xian purposely made his voice thicker, so that it would have a stronger penetrating power, and would also allow the eavesdroppers to hear more clearly. The words landed. Di Cheong, who was originally smiling like an imp, was slightly stunned. Brother Weed Fish, what are you up to? What? Can't help but want the master's reward? As Di Cheong spoke, he squinted his eyes to the grass on the side and grunted coldly, but didn't say anything more. When she was at the clear water terrace today, she understood what Night Bei Xian meant when he winked at her and told her to come here and wait when the sun set. Originally, she had thought that it was about treating her leg, but now it seemed like it wasn't that. Night Bei Xian cleared his throat once again. Di Chong, the leg can be cured, but it's useless, the broken dragon cliff has a protectorate formation, even if I can move, I won't be able to get out, so there's even less of a way to escape the wedding. D Dome. Jade hands encircled her chest, not saying a word for a while as if she was looking at a fool as she looked at Night Bei Xian. She was wondering if she had overstimulated last time? How did this start talking nonsense? Had she ever discussed this with him? And running away from marriage? When did this happen? Seeing Di Chong's cluelessness, Night Bei Xian blinked his eyes vigorously, trying to get the other party to cooperate with him for a bit. Oh, oh, and then what? Di Chong once again squinted and glanced at the grass, cooperating with the show. Di Chong picked up the conversation. Night Bei Xian first sighed, then with some inexplicable sadness, said in a hoarse voice, seeing your sister wants to kill me on the wedding day. Eh? Why? Di Chong already knew to cooperate. I grew up with her yes, but the power has already corrupted her heart, in order to the position of the sec master not only give me under the past life compulsion, but also broke my legs. Night Bei Xian took a deep breath, as if forcibly suppressing the sadness, then said, This wedding is actually a compensation she gave me, and a bargaining chip to shut up the old ghosts within the sect. After the wedding she would never remarry for the rest of her life, and would no longer owe me anything. Under these circumstances, she won't have any psychological burden if she kills me, and the sect will all turn a blind eye. The words fell. Di Chiong and the people in the bushes all stared in disbelief with their eyes wide open and their mouths hanging open. The people eavesdropping in the grass only felt their three views shatter. It was as if they had heard some heavenly secret. Strongly suppressing the excitement, patiently continued to listen. As for Di Chiong, he was shocked at Night Beishuan's ability to talk nonsense, he really opened his mouth, that acting skill was really excellent. Ah, uh, then what? Di Chiong swallowed his saliva. So I resigned myself to my fate, to be able to taste my senior sister's body, I have no regrets in death, when the time comes, you come to pay tribute to me a little every year, remember to wear stockings. As if he had finished his last words, Night Bei Xian pushed his wheelchair in solitude and slowly left, during which he kept sighing, a sad, defiant aura of not being able to resist his fate drifted up. Emperor Dome dumbfounded in place, even flirting with Night North Xian have forgotten. Until that sad figure disappeared in the corridor, she still did not return to. At this moment, there was a whoosh in the grass. A figure flew onto the roof, his face filled with excitement. We have to tell the hall master quickly. P.S. said four chapters or one chapter short, but there are two chapters is 2,500 hundred words, barely count three and a half chapters it. The main thing is that the author is now suffering from jet lag, and is especially sleepy as soon as it's afternoon. I'm sure I'll make up for it tomorrow. Finally, I beg all the readers, more five-star reviews, more gifts. Don't forget to add the bookshelf. Thank you. The sun sets, the night falls. Night Bei Xian, who had just performed like a show-off, was at the moment returning to the back hall without any danger before Hua Ma Shang returned. Phew I can't even move my legs in this day, and I'm still running blindly. Night Bei Xian spat out his situation. If Hua Ma Shang hadn't slaughtered everyone in his party, then he shouldn't have to work so hard. It's a pity that. Hua Ma Shang didn't still have to come back. Night Bei Xian looked at the cabinet, revealing his future daughter's skirt, his heart sighing. A scene from his childhood, like a movie, kept passing through his mind. Taking the flower dress to peep at his sister-in-law's bath. He was naughty and ran into the mountains and met a wild wolf. Accidentally breaking someone else's precious jade lamp. Every time Hua Ma Shang's overwhelmed expression made Night Bei Xian feel warm and despondent. I'm not a normal person either. Night Bei Xian said to the bright moon, his emotions a bit off. From a young age, Night Bei Xian also basically didn't have many friends, Hua Ma Shang was his only playmate, and as soon as his mother left, he revealed an extremely strong killing nature. Founded the Sun Moon Divine Sect. According to a modern person's way of thinking, what he should have done was definitely not all of this, but he still chose to be a bad guy, probably because bad guys had a wider range of choices. Night Bei Xian whacked his head. Why am I so easily emotional these past two days? 
What's wrong with me? Thoughts drifted far away, and Night Beixin felt a little strange, he hadn't been this kind of person before. The thought of how Hua Masang would react after he escaped made him feel a little heartbroken. He didn't want to make Hua Masang sad, but it was still the same saying, that things in the world were unpredictable, and there were many things he couldn't control. Just at this moment, Hua Masang carried a vermilion lacquer Rui beast food box to the back hall, her immortal face hung with joy and satisfaction. Senior brother, hungry. Some of the spirit medicines have been put in too much, so the stew took a bit longer to cook, come. Hua Masang lightly moved her lotus steps, placing the food box on the tabletop and guiding Night Beixian over. Senior sister has the heart, but I still have to say one thing, your senior brother is fierce, no need to eat any aphrodisiac elixir. Night Beixian collected his emotions and said somewhat helplessly, elder brother is an ordinary person now, there's no problem with eating more, besides, people have been waiting for a long time. Hua Masang's face was a little flushed, hiding her face and said, eh? Senior sister, on the big wedding day, you won't be draining me dry, right? Night Beixian pretended to be scared and said in an exaggerated manner. Nasty senior brother really, just knows how to bully me. He he he. In this cheerful environment, a meal was quickly finished, and after the two of them bathed, they directly laid on the bed. Warming up for a while, Night Beixian was lying down, and Hua Masang was sleeping on his chest as if she were a kitten behaving well, and fragrant hot air was sprinkled on its white chest. Gently stroking over its soft, clear hair, Night Beixian decided that it was better to test the waters first. Senior sister, who languid as a kitten, extremely receptive to Night Beixuan's head stroking, she also arched into her chest. If, I mean if, if I escape, what will you do? Night Beixian spoke extremely casually, as if he was just making small talk without words. But as soon as the words left his mouth, it was as if a large mass of ink had suddenly sprung up in the entire room, coloring the room that was originally visible and bright with moonlight pitch black, and the temperature had reached freezing point. A pair of golden eyes were exceptionally dazzling in the darkness, filled with mountains of corpses and seas of blood, and all paths returned to one. Elder brother. Hua Masheng said in a light tone, this kind of thing. It's best for elder brother not to even think about it, because it's really dangerous. Night Bei Xin swallowed a mouthful of saliva, embracing the delicate fragrance and soft jade in his arms even tighter, but it's just talk, it's just curiosity, it doesn't mean that I'm going to run away, how come senior sister is still taking it seriously, huh? The words landed. The moonlight broke through the darkness and once again shone into the room, and the coldness gradually faded away. Senior brother, not allowed to think about this. Hua Ma Shang buried her small face in Night Bei Xian's neck, her tone less icy. Talking about it, just curious. Night Bei Xian was unforgiving. Seeing that Night Bei Xian was extremely interested, Hua Ma Shang sighed and pondered for a while, I don't know what I would do, that depends on what senior brother did. Oh, Night Bei Xian was curious. If it's a normal escape, then I'll kill senior brother, wait for him to reincarnate in his second life, and then be together forever. Hua Ma Shang's expression stared as she said this. If elder brother is purposeful, premeditated, and also deceived me to achieve his goal, then. Hua Ma Shang once again broke off the conversation, and Night Bei Shuan's heartbeat accelerated slightly as he continued to ask, what would happen? I don't mind killing everyone in the world. Hua Ma Shang seemed as if she was saying something extremely easy, her tone unchanged. Night Bei Xian. Senior brother, why is your heart beating so fast? Hua Ma Shang raised her delicate little head, her golden eyes staring at Night Bei Xian. Ah, a bit. A bit startled by senior sister's thoughts. Night Bei Xian forced down the shock in his heart. Not only had he lied to her and used her, the escape plan had also been planned for a long time, and it was still an escape on the day of the wedding, which, it had to be said that Hua Ma Shang understood him well. If it was just the people of the Sun Moon God sect, he, Night Bei Xian, would not care if he gritted his teeth, but the people of the world? He couldn't do nothing about it, and Hua Ma Shang also had the intention of venting her anger in it. So this is also a kind of warning given to him by Hua Ma Shang. But back to the flavor to think carefully. Did Hua Ma Shang really possess the ability to sweep the world? A supreme realm can indeed walk horizontally in the Yuan continent, but how big is the Yuan continent? There are so many powerful people in the world, how can a supreme being be able to deal with them? Not to mention the old monsters in the ancestral graves of the great families, just the three major forces in Dakian, the court, the myriad heart workshop, and the night cloud chamber of commerce, all of the family members in them are supreme beings. Moreover, I heard that the owner of the myriad heart workshop, Yun Zun, had already reached the realm of a half-saint. He could tear apart the void and shatter stars with his fists. These people were all members of the righteous path, so if Hua Ma Shang dared to have the slightest thought of killing all the people, she would definitely be attacked by a group of people. So regarding the consequences Hua Ma Shang said, Night Bei Xian was a little less convinced, but it still didn't stop him from being surprised. He he, what is senior brother afraid of? As long as you obediently stay with me, you'll never be harmed in the slightest. 
Hua Mashang's pink lips were playful, repeating these words that had been said countless times. Don't worry senior sister, I definitely won't run away, I also believe that senior sister can definitely protect me, it's just that. Knight Baixian first made his attitude clear, then wanted to speak. Hua Mashang's curiosity was piqued. She did not allow Knight Baixian to question this. Just what? Knight Baixian made a helpless face and said, It's just that we're a cult, and those righteous forces are numerous not to mention that every single one of them isn't inferior to us, so I'm afraid that they'll rise up as a group and attack the broken dragon cliff together. Knight Baixian said while paying attention to Hua Mashang's expression, the latter's face did not show any reaction. Hua Masang slowly said, The righteous path? If they are peaceful and don't disturb elder brother and I, then I don't care what they do, if they dare to come and disturb elder brother and I, then I will use their corpses to fill up the broken dragon cliff, this elder brother can rest assured. That Qing Pao replied blandly, there was no anger or killing intent in his words, he was just purely stating the facts. At this moment, Knight Baixian had been completely dumbfounded. After that night's trial, Knight Baixian had become more cautious about the escape matters he was planning. Seeing that the wedding day was getting closer and closer, the entire Sun Moon Divine sect was bustling with red tribute silks wrapping around all the white jade stone pillars, appearing festive and extraordinary. The entire Yuan continent's dignitaries had received invitations, but most of them had only sent a gift over, and had not sent anyone themselves. The feelings between Knight Baixian and Hua Shang had also gradually risen over the past few days, but of course Knight Baixian was doing it more for the sake of clarity. This day, the sun was shining brightly and there were no clouds in the sky. Knight Baixian sat in the courtyard, thinking about his next move. Seeing that the wedding date was approaching, if he didn't act then it would really be too late. I hope everything can go smoothly. Knight Baixian was actually a bit worried. He wasn't a god, he couldn't control anything, he could only do his best to change the outcome. A few days ago at the gazebo in the backyard, although he had passed on the wrong information to the vice hall master of the performing arts hall, but likewise, he had also exposed the fact that he was going to run away from the wedding. If Lin Xia hadn't followed his idea and had even told Hua Mashang about it, then he would be finished. According to Knight Beishuan's idea, the first thing was to tickle Lin Xia's itch, making him mistakenly think that he had something that could please Hua Mashang, and according to Lin Xia's level of infatuation with Hua Mashang, he would definitely think badly. This was also the first step. Obviously, he had succeeded in this step, as evidenced by the vice hall master who had been hiding next to the gazebo a few days ago. The second step was to convey the wrong information, so that that vice hall master who was spying on him, would pass on the wrong information to Lin Xia, thus achieving his goal. At this time in the snowy region, the land of extreme cold, the wind was bitterly cold, and a gust of white-haired wind whistled, silencing everything. The sky was also perpetually gray, as if there was no difference between day and night. This no man's land known as the snowy burial ground, but there are two people in it busy with something. It's your turn, hurry up and come. Lin Qi's whole body was frozen black and purple, and his lips were slightly trembling, where was there any semblance of a fluttering gentleman? Hall. Master. I really. Can't do it. Let me rest for a while. The second deputy gasped for air and lay down in a big word on top of the ice and snow. Called you to come on. Where to come so much nonsense? Lin Xia vacated the words and yelled at the second mate. There was no way. Officials were big, not to mention that they would have to look up to Lin Xia in the future. The second mate reluctantly climbed up walked next to Lin Xia, and replaced Lin Xia. A scarlet crystal, in the endless ice burning, wisps of white smoke out, and the air and the fog overlap. This crystal was called the Yen Crystal, which Lin Xia had spent a great deal of money to exchange from other hallmasters. Its function was also very obvious, it was used to pick things within the ice layer. Although the Yen Crystal was very useful, it had one major drawback, which was that it required spiritual qi for sustenance, and could not be recharged in advance, but had to be recharged when it was used. The two inscription realm powerhouses would be afraid of the cold, and it was because of this, that feeding the inferno crystal and consuming too much aura led to it. Lin Xia is also like the second deputy, collapsed on the ground breathing heavily, also a little overwhelmed. Seven whole days. After they arrived at the snowy domain in two different ways, they began to use the inferno crystals to penetrate the ice and search for the 10,000 year ice flower. But naturally, the ice was endless, so how could they just say they could find it? These days could be described as fruitless. Seven days of torment. Lin Xia also had the idea of retreating, but when he thought of Flora Shuang, he was reluctant. This was probably his last chance, he absolutely couldn't miss it. It had to be found no matter what. In his heart, he had a lot of thoughts, but suddenly, he heard the second deputy's surprised voice, Hall Master. Hall Master come over and look. It was only an instant. Lin Xia opened his tired eyes and stood up excitedly, what's wrong, did you find it? The second deputy stopped channeling his aura, and Lin Qi brought his eyes over only to see a strange plant similar to a snowflake in the bull-sized ice hole. It was crystal clear, as if it were a crystal product. 
From the outside, it looked as if it was embedded within the ice, appearing so beautiful and touching that it was simply a creation from heaven. Lin Chi said excitedly. That's right. That's it. Ha ha. Then he turned his head to the second mate and commanded, let's both channel our aura together and take it out directly. Good. For the sake of the hall master, my subordinate will go out of his way. Ha ha. Don't worry. There will be no shortage of benefits for you in the future. Just like that. Under the combined efforts of the two of them, the 10,000-year-old ice flower that was hidden under tens of feet of ice was finally taken out. Lin Shi cupped it in his hand. Great. Great. Sect leader will definitely like it. Gazing at the beautiful and touching 10,000 years ice flower, which was still emitting a gust of cold air, he excitedly said, unable to help it. Lin Xia was already starting to fantasize about his life in the future. Hey, hall master, someone's coming. The second deputy's mouse eyes peered out, and in the middle of the ice and snow, a middle-aged man with a medium build was walking towards them. Lin Qi's face changed, instantly pulling himself out of his fantasies, how can there be someone here? This place is in the depths of the snowy region, how could an ordinary person come? What does the hall master mean? Be careful. The two of them stood on guard. However, the person coming was getting closer and closer, but he also looked more and more familiar. Why does it look so familiar? It seems like big brother ah? The second mate covered the ice and snow to see as clearly as possible. Lin Xia didn't show any indication and just watched silently. Hall master, it really is big brother. At the second deputy's exclamation of surprise, Lin Xia directly walked over, and the second deputy froze for a moment and followed suit. The three of them hit the ground running. What's wrong with you, first mate? Didn't I ask you to spy on Night Beixian? What are you doing running to the snow domain? Lin Xi put away the 10,000 years ice flower and accused one piece. Yes big brother, I asked you to spy on the sect master's preferences. Murphy, you've already poked around? The second mate also interjected. The first mate didn't feed the inferno crystals, so he had plenty of aura and didn't feel cold or tired. Hearing Lin Chi's question, he replied. The sect leader's preferences were not pried into, but I heard a heavenly secret. An expression of extreme shock, with a little bit of stealing, not like talking nonsense or deliberately lying. Seeing that the person was still selling the secret, the second mate hurriedly urged, what is it in the end? You say it instead. Quiet. Lin Xie glared fiercely at the second mate to shut him up, then looked at the first mate, quickly tell us what's going on, what kind of news is it that made you come all the way here? A deputy suppressed the excitement in his heart, and the two people colorfully recounted, that day in the backyard pavilion heard things. After about an incense stick of time, the first mate had already told the whole story. Lin Xie slightly narrowed his eyes, hand rubbing at his chin, and finally laughed out loud, ha 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 ha. Heaven help me also, heaven help me also ah, have long been looking at that Night Baishian is not cool. Yes, once the sect master killed Night Baishian Nas, the opportunity for the hall master will come, he 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 he. The second deputy thieves out, but was shut up by a slap from Lin Chi. Ouch, hall master, what are you hitting me for? Say you're stupid, you really have no brain? What's wrong? Lin Xie sighed, no longer paying attention to the second deputy as a fool, and turned to discuss with the first deputy. This is an opportunity for us, since the sect leader married Night Beixian because she wanted to compensate him. Then as long as we make a move to kill Night Beixian, won't all of the sect master's problems be solved? Lin Xie smiled charmingly and said slowly. A look of contemplation for a moment. What a great idea, not only did I help the sect master get rid of Night Beixian, but I can also take the blame for the sect master, so that the old ghosts within the sect have nothing to say, it's simply wonderful. Lin Xia looked in the direction of the Sun Moon Divine Sect and revealed a greedy gaze, that's right, help the sect master organize everything and then take out the 10,000 years ice flower afterward, when the time comes. Speaking here, all three of them laughed out loud. Lin Xia was laughing because he could gain the favor of Hua Shang, and first vice second vice was laughing because he could hug a thicker thigh. After a burst of laughter, Hall Master, so do you have an idea on the matter of killing Night Baixian? First vice took the lead and asked, having a plan in mind. Oh, it looks like Vice Hall Master has something to say? Lin Shi smiled faintly and made a gesture of invitation. One shoulder humbly arched his hand. My subordinate personally heard Knight Beixian say that he had the intention of wanting to escape the marriage, but nay, without a token, there was no way to get out of the protecting sect formation. A pair of quoted a word, but didn't continue, but looked at Lin Xia with a smile on his face. Lin Shi was so smart that he immediately understood the meaning. You're saying that. Help Knight Beixian escape from the Sun Moon Divine Sect and then intercept him outside? A pair of nodded. Lin Xie took a deep breath, thought for a moment, and raised his own question. Knight Beixian has been infected with the past life compass and his cultivation is all gone, so why can't he be killed directly within the sect? What's the argument for running outside? Hall Master, you're confused. A pair hurriedly explained. 
There are many old ghosts from Knight Baishuan's party within the sect who are watching. If Knight Baishan dies within the sect, it will draw fire to the sect master, and that won't please anyone. Not only will we be punished, but the sect master will also resent us for not doing our job well. Lin Xia signaled the pair to continue speaking, but running away from the wedding changes the nature. When the time comes for Knight Baishan to run out, we'll pretend to be passing by, then accidentally kill Knight Baishan during the chase. This way, the sect master's problem is solved and the old ghosts within the sect have nothing to say, the best of both worlds. Hearing a pair of boastful, long-winded words, Lin Xia's brain pondered for a moment, his mouth slowly curled up. Not bad, not bad, the best of both worlds, any point has been taken into consideration. Lin Xia happily patted down a pair of, I didn't expect you this guy, there is a seven knuckle hard ah. Where where, it's still the hall master who cultivated it well. Ha ha ha. Well well well. The two of them a burst of mutual bragging, only to leave the second deputy to break his fingers, mouth chanting, do not know what to think. Between the coldness of the sky and the ground. Then let's hurry back, the sect leader's wedding day is already near. That's right. Lin Chi could already imagine the scene where Knight Baishan would run into himself and the others after he escaped. It must have been wonderful. The mist from his mouth rolled into the roiling snow and ended up going nowhere. The three of them set off on their journey back to the sect. Sun and Moon Divine Sect, the back hall. It should have already been conveyed, right? Lin Xia, ah Lin Xia, don't let me down. Knight Baishan sat in his special wheelchair, his mouth chanting. For Lin Xia's greed he trusted, but there were exceptions to everything. If Lin Xia didn't follow the rules and instead went and denounced himself, then, can only say that my life is over? However, Knight Baishan still had trust in his judgment, and Lin Xia's side only needed to wait, because those three were definitely more anxious than himself. After all, if he and Huama Shan got married, then everything would be too late, he didn't want to see that, and the same was true for Lin Qi. It's almost time to heal the leg again. Knight Baishuan's eyes were cold and somewhat uneasy. He didn't know why, but the closer he got to completing the plan, the more his heart flared up, as if his body's instincts were telling him don't do this, the consequences are unimaginable. It's fine, it's fine, as long as I'm given time, I will definitely be able to make a comeback, even if the Huama Shang at that time is already a half-saint, I'm still not afraid. Knight Baishian cheered for himself in his heart. He realized that he was beginning to experience a strange symptom. Once he did something that went against or angered Huama Shang, hairs would rise in his heart, his forehead would sweat, and goosebumps would rise on his body. In short, nervousness, fear, and kinkiness. He he. I really can't drag this out, if I don't go. I'll be tempered by Hua Masang myself first, said Knight Baishian as he looked at his hands, the feeling making him very uncomfortable. Right at this moment, Hua Mashang's voice came from far to near, like an oriole in the nine heavens above, like a nightingale that sings elegies under the night, and like the crispness of tinkling spring water. Senior brother, I'm coming. Hua Mashang was in high spirits, a black veil moon shadow skirt wrapped around her delicate body, her jade feet stepped on top of the golden lotus flower shadow, and she did not wear ice silk stockings. Back? Knight Baishan looked at the flawless Huama Shang, remembering that he had said when he was a child that he liked her to wear black, from then on, Huama Shang's formal attire was all black. Did you miss me, senior brother? Huama Shang squatted down, lying on Knight Baishan's thigh, and pampered herself. Wanted, of course I did. Although they had only been separated for less than an incense stick, but Knight Baishan still said so. He he. I'm going to get heavenly treasures for senior brother. Speaking of which, Knight Baishan remembered that he should take the heavenly material and earthly treasure, or else the parasites would be sucking his life force. Senior sister has a heart. Aha, uh -huh, I've remembered it all. I've already prepared the next ten or so years portions of heavenly materia medica. Huama Shang said as if inviting credit. Ha ha. Knight Baishan looked at the small red box in his hand, and for a moment, he didn't know how to reply. The more Huama Shang was like this, the more hairy he became in his heart. Have to find a time to make a trip to Raccoon Creek Sands Place. P.S. It's finished ah. I'm going to start with two shifts from tomorrow onwards. If the reader's old master look happy, ask for some gifts, ask for 5 star positive feedback, thank you, clasp fists. A night without words. In the morning of the second day, the green rare plants in the backyard were covered with water droplets, emitting the sound of ticking ticking. Knight Baishian sat in his wheelchair. Now that healing his legs was imminent, he had to find a way to distract Huama Shang and then go find Rumpelstiltskin. Senior brother, come, drink spirit dew. Huama Shang slowly came from the direction of the kitchen, and in her hands were two bowls of water that emitted spiritual energy. Thank you, senior sister. Knight Baishian took the spirit dew and took a sip, the sweetness was incomparable, and the entire person was soothed. It had to be said that Knight Baishian was truly good at enjoying himself. Spirit Dew and Essence Essence had a different flavor, it could help cultivators raise their cultivation level and wash their physique for essence blood, so it was precious beyond measure, and could be priced out in the outside world. 
But in this back hall, just because of the good taste and fresh flavor, it was used as breakfast. If some cultivators saw it, they would definitely die of envy. Senior sister ah, I heard that Lin Evil say that it was you who intentionally killed the former hall master just to help him to the stage? Knight Baixian said with some despondency in his eyes, and the spirit do stop drinking. Lin Xie? Who is Lin Xie? Hua Ma Shang said in a very droll manner and didn't have any unusual expressions. Eh? Lin Evil is the current head of the performing arts hall ah, don't you know? Knight Baixian explained with some surprise. I don't remember, I just instructed that the highest cultivation level of the performing martial hall serves as the hall master. I didn't ask about who exactly. Hua Ma Shang continued to elegantly drink the spirit dew. Its exaggerated face value coupled with its soft movements caused Knight Bei Xian to get the idea that he wouldn't get bored even if he stared at her like this for a day. Returning to his senses. Ahem. So it's like this. Senior sister, aren't you angry? He talked nonsense like that. Knight Bei Xian asked somewhat strangely. Before Hua Ma Shang explained, he could be sure that Lin Xia was talking nonsense, but he didn't know the specifics, so he wouldn't feel anything. But after he said this out loud, originally, he had thought that Hua Ma Sang would instantly become furious, slamming the dishes down and assuring herself that she definitely didn't have a how to. But now it seemed. She didn't seem to care very much. Hua Ma Sang tilted her head and made a thinking gesture. An ice cold goddess putting on a cute face also made people a bit overwhelmed. Well, I can't have mood swings about things other than senior brother, what they say, as long as it doesn't affect senior brother, I can ignore it, after all, the thoughts of a dispensable person, is it important? Knight Bei Xian. Regarding Hua Ma Shang's reply, Knight Bei Xian only wanted to give a thumbs up, to live one's life like this, then basically there would be nothing to worry about. Or maybe the troubles multiplied, because she was adding all her emotions onto herself. Elder brother do you hate that Lin something or other? Hua Ma Shan looked serious, as if as long as Knight Bei Xian nodded her head, she would immediately raise her sword and go slaughter Lin Xia. That's not true, it's just that. Knight Bei Xuan's face flushed a little red, wanting to speak, extremely appetizing. Elder brother you say ah. Hua Ma Shang's eyes began to fill with blood, her golden pupils gradually turning into a dark gold color. It's just that, senior brother I'm a little jealous. Knight Bei Xian tilted his head over, putting on a squirmy look. Knight Bei Xian was already extremely handsome, with a plump and handsome spirit, and an imposing aura, so acting like this was a different kind of flavor. Senior. Brother. Hua Ma Shang was stunned. After slowing down for a long time, only then did Hua Ma Sang come back to her senses, and all of a sudden her face became flushed, and it seemed like there was a small stream flowing in her phoenix eyes. Doesn't senior brother like to be jealous? Hua Ma Shang straightened her skirt and walked over to sit beside Knight Bei Xian. Inwardly, she was already happy. Elder brother cared about her too much. It was truly wonderful. But in the future, this kind of thing had to be eliminated, she couldn't make elder brother jealous too much, then she would be heartbroken. Knight Bei Xian didn't know what Hua Ma Shang was thinking, but continued to squirm, it's just that I don't like senior sister getting involved with other people, so maybe there's something wrong with me. The words landed. Hua Ma Sang hugged Knight Bei Xian and gently patted his broad back, as if she were a mother coaxing a baby, whispering, it won't be, it won't be, I promise my senior brother, elder brother don't be jealous okay? Ma Sang in this life and the next life are all completely belong to senior brother, completely. Every inch of the body, every hair, every drop of blood. Senior sister. Knight Bei Xian once again saw the paranoia of the sickly girl, the kind of obstinacy that thwarts the bones and also wants to be together, making him a bit at a loss for words. Senior brother, do you want me to send someone to kill him? Upon hearing this, Knight Bei Xian was startled for a moment, saying don't be bad, and hurriedly refused, no need, it's just like what senior sister said, why bother caring about a dispensable person? Whom? Seeing that Hua Ma Sang didn't take it to heart, Knight Bei Xian grabbed Hua Ma Shang's pink shoulder and pulled it parallel to his line of sight, saying seriously, promise me that you won't go kill Lin Evil. The opinions within the sect are already strong against you, don't do this kind of thing again. Knight Bei Xian spoke extremely seriously, while Hua Ma Sang paused for a moment before slowly nodding her head with a red face, indicating that she knew. Eh? Seeing Hua Ma Shang's face like a peach blossom, Knight Bei Xian realized that he had just drawn the two of them too close together in his excitement and hurriedly hugged Hua Ma Sang in his arms. Elder brother, your eyes were so handsome just now. Elder brother is always handsome. Thousands of miles away, Lin Xia would not have thought that he had just taken a turn from the ghost gate, and that the one who moved to kill was still Hua Ma Shan, whom he admired to oblivion. Because of the upcoming wedding, Hua Ma Sang herself wasn't staying in the back hall all day like she had been some time ago, and would go out to take care of the chores needed for the wedding. So Night Bei Xian had roughly one to two hours of free time a day. In the garden in the morning, Knight Bei Xian and Hua Ma Sang were sitting in the pavilion in the backyard chatting idly, and Hua Ma Sang was still sewing clothes for her future child in her hands, happily. 
Senior sister, when you go out in the afternoon, could you let elder brother go out for a spin as well? See how the wedding venue is set up? Knight Baishan asked with a colorless face. HM, then senior brother will follow me this afternoon. The fact that Knight Baishan had started to care about the matters of the wedding made Hua Mashan very happy, so he agreed without even thinking about it. But Knight Baishan couldn't agree to it. His purpose was to go out and find Raccoon Creek sand to cure his leg if he followed Hua Masang, wouldn't he be throwing himself into a trap? Although he could sneak out on his own while Hua Mashang was out, the cost of being discovered was too great, he didn't dare to gamble. And these days Wild Brush Goodwill, although originally is full, so that Hua Masang on their own put down the guard, properly say, not cover up words, should not be a big problem. Senior sister ah, I've been bored in the back hall also feel bored, wanna go to find former friends to catch up, after all, in the future still have to live for so long, do you think it's okay? Knight Baishan felt that what he said was sincere enough. But Hua Mashan's reaction was still out of his expectation. Senior brother. Isn't having me enough? Would senior brother be too greedy? Hua Mashan's golden pupils changed to a dark gold color, and the needles and threads in her hands all fell to the ground, and the temperature around her plummeted, and a black gas, if any, filled the air. Gulp. Night Baishan swallowed a mouthful of saliva. He didn't expect Hua Mashan's reaction to be so great, now if he didn't handle this one well, not to mention going out, the only freedom he had would also be taken away. Senior sister, calm down first. Knight Baishan waved his hand, wanting to let Hua Masang calm down, at least to the point where she could talk. But Hua Masang was slowly propping up her slender jade-like body and walking towards Knight Baishan, repeating while walking, Senior brother, isn't it enough to have me? Enough is enough. Knight Baishan hurriedly replied. In his heart, he was regretful, even cursing his own stupidity. Hua Masang's lifeline and bottom line was herself, going out to find a friend was equivalent to letting Hua Masang share herself, that normal people couldn't accept it, that's why this situation occurred. Enough? But senior brother just said that he was going to find someone else, is it because he thinks that it's meaningless to be with me? Ice coldness was all over the top of Hua Masheng's immortal face as she continued. It seems that even if you stay here, senior brother still can't collect his heart. Just when Hua Masheng was considering whether she should tie up Night Bei Shen and take him to a deep mountain old forest kind of uninhabited place to clear her mind, she heard a long sigh. Her eyes regained some sanity. After all, her greatest fear was misunderstandings caused by miscommunication, that would make her blame herself to the point of wanting to destroy the world. Why is senior brother sighing? At those words, the corners of Knight Beishuan's mouth grinned slightly before returning to its original state. After spending so much time together, he also knew how to deal with Hua Mashang. Senior sister, ah, uh, why don't you understand? With a look of inexplicable sadness, Knight Beishuan turned his wheelchair and angled it towards Hua Mashang. Understand what? Hua Masang was confused and clouded. I wasn't trying to go find any friends. Knight Baishan closed his eyes and shook his head, making a helpless expression of not being understood. Then just now, Hua Masang had been somewhat confused, her emotions gradually stabilized, and her surroundings returned to their original state. It's just because I love senior sister too much, so after being jealous today, I also wanted to make senior sister jealous. Knight Baishan said in a reminiscent manner, smiling slightly. It's because I always remember a saying mother said, that couples must be tolerant of each other and equal to each other in order for their relationship to be long-lasting and unchanging for 10,000 years. Hua Mashan sat back again. Her expression was somewhat struggling, shaking her head, somewhat at a loss for words, hearing Night Bei Xian's words, she had no way to refute them, but she also didn't want Night Bei Xian to go out and look for other people. For a time, she was torn beyond measure. Senior sister, it's just this time. After that, let's just live our lives peacefully, okay? Knight Baishan continued to persuade, his expression sincere and incomparable. As for Hua Mashan, she kept shaking her head, her jade hands covering her pink little ears, very resistant, but having to admit that what Knight Baishan had said was very reasonable. For Knight Baishan's request, she could do what she should, even if it was the moon in the sky, she could find a way to get it down, but this. Senior sister. Knight Baishan saw that Hua Mashan was so entangled to the point that blood and tears were flowing out, and his heart was also a bit intolerant. Ah. Hua Masheng's blood tears cut across her jade-like little face as she raised her head and vented her emotions, the surrounding plants and trees were uprooted and rolled into mid-air, and that's even under the condition of being restrained. But even so, the surrounding situation became a mess, but Knight Baishan was not at all bothered, his hair not even messed up. After all, just now, that air current had swept through everything around him, but not a single bit of might had landed on him. From this point it was enough to see Hua Masheng's intentions. Knight Baishan just wanted to open his mouth to persuade him. But just at this moment, Hua Masang was the one who lowered her head, her dark golden eyes that were flowing with blood tears staring at Knight Baishan, senior brother, I agree with you, who asked me to love you, to love you to the point of losing my mind. 
Night Beixian was overjoyed, but he didn't dare to make a sound and said in a low, suppressed voice, Senior sister, I love you too. This is just for the sake of equality, for the sake of our happy life in the future. Hearing this, Hua Mengsheng's face looked better, by this sentence of love to the Mu to turn back, after a cold face, killing Aura said, only this time, and can only talk to the male, if let me find you with that female together. At the disposal of senior sister. Night Beixian immediately perverted, after all, this time can never go wrong again. He he. Hua Mengsheng's face is still so cold, breath is still murderous, as if there is a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood behind. If let me see you and that woman together, I will break that woman into pieces. Cut to pieces and lynched alive. Hua Mashang said this passage extremely calmly. Don't worry, senior sister. Night Beixian pushed his wheelchair over, one hand holding onto Hua Mashang's small hand, the other hand going to wipe her tears of blood. Night Beixian was truly a little heartbroken. Just now, Hua Masang had let out so many harsh words, as well as an outburst of extreme anger, but none of them were directed at him. I think it is before he really do those things, Hua Masang even threatened him words, cannot say it. That would have to be love to what extent to be able to do that. Night Beixian didn't dare to think about it and couldn't empathize with it. There was a lot of clamor. From the beginning of Hua Mashang's anger, to Night Beixian obtained a chance to travel, and then the blood beads came to deal with the garden's debris as the end, in the middle of the time was only one incense stick of time. In the afternoon, after having lunch, Hua Mashang had to go set up the wedding site and do some necessary things. Before she left, she kept urging Night Beixian to make sure to make sure not to go looking for a woman, to always remember that men don't have physical contact either and to make sure to take a bath the first time after she came back. Night Beixian answered all of them. He knew that Hua Mashang had a very serious cleanliness fetish, and she would get angry if there was even the slightest smell of anything other than his things. But Di Chong's smell, it seemed like it had never been detected before. It's been a long time since I'd been to the front hall in a proper manner. Night Beixian pushed his wheelchair and traveled down the long white jade corridor. The further down the hall there were, the more guards there were. The guards who had previously refused to budge an inch were now actively giving way after seeing Night Beixian, clearly Hua Mashang had already ordered someone to greet them. Night Beixian smiled faintly, lazily grinding his lips was certainly good, directly descending to the front hall. It had to be said that the entire front hall was dressed up in an extremely festive manner, if he was willing to marry Hua Mashang, it would really be a nice wedding site. Exchanging with some previous hall masters for a long time, the female hall masters who posted up all avoided, but did not dare to dip the flavor. Finally as if tired, traveling to a secluded place. Surrounded by walls, it was already a dead end, Night Beixian stopped his wheelchair and coughed twice. I'm taking a walk. After a moment of silence, a miraculous scene happened. The surrounding walls responded to Night Beixian with a ventriloquized lowly voice. Yes you're great. Night Beixian continued to pair the code words. I'm going in. The ventriloquist lowly voice continued to reply. You should have come a long time ago. In the next second, Night Beixian, who was sitting in a wheelchair, directly disappeared without a trace. P.S. Gift. Gift. Fellow readers. Night Beixian only felt his eyes darken, and the entire person's sky swirled, as if he was in some sort of vortex. The code word he had just said was the note that Emperor Dome had left behind when he left that day, and it said that if you needed help, go to a designated location and recite the code word. Then he would be picked up. Originally also held the idea of trying, but did not expect to really succeed, which made him overjoyed, but his heart for the identity of the Emperor Dome is also more and more curious. A moment of dizziness. The body suddenly had a sense of reality, as if the body that was being lifted, was put down again. But it was pitch black in front of him, without a bit of light, which made Night Beixian a bit puzzled. But just now, he had already heard D Dome's voice, so his heart wasn't particularly nervous. Hello, D Dome, are you there? Night Beixian shouted tentatively, reaching around to feel around, but there was nothing. But suddenly, he felt a coolness on his face, and a strange floral fragrance suddenly entered his nostrils, and then immediately dispersed. Who? Quickly come out. Night Beixian raised his volume and reached out to feel around, but there wasn't a single thing around. It was as if he was staying in another dimension. Subconsciously, he touched his face with his hand and placed it on the tip of his nose to smell it, and the strange floral scent from earlier was gone. This had to remind him of D Dome's methods. That day in the middle of the back hall, even the Zunshu realm's Hua Mashang hadn't been able to detect that smell, so it was obvious how clever his methods were. Night Beixian couldn't move his legs, and the wheelchair was gone, so he could only move his body gently. But the next second, there was another coldness on his face. This time is the left side of the face, although there is also a fragrance, but not just now the fragrance of flowers, but a fresh fragrance of gardenia. That kind of pure young girl's fragrance made Night Beixian both confused and feel some enjoyment. Whirlwind. That scent disappeared again. Next, the two scents kept rotating and also kept picking up the pace, as if they were competing for something. 
Night Beishuan's face was dripping wet, but he couldn't do anything at all, but in his heart, he could already be sure that it was Di Chong who was up to no good, after all, he couldn't forget that scent. Suddenly, in the silence, came the sound of a quarrel. What are you doing? It's my turn. You just kissed twice. Unsurprisingly one of the voices was Di Chong, but there was another unexpected person from Night Beixian, Raccoon Shisha. How could it be her? But no matter what, someone spoke, and Night Beixian felt a sense of security in his heart, raising his voice, he said, don't play around, hurry up and light the oil lamp, I have limited time. The words landed, interrupting the quarrel between the two. Also knowing that they had been discovered, Di Chong and Rumpelstiltskin straightened their sarongs and lit the oil lamps. District mongrel brother, actually so arrogant. Don't you dare talk about Bei Xian like that. Zhao Joy bickered. The sudden bright light caused Night Bei Xian to be a bit overwhelmed, hastily covering his eyes with his hands and slowing down for a while, slowly opening his eyes. Realizing that the place he was in was the spirit pill hall storage room, a large place had been packed out in the open space, and he was sitting in it, surrounded by all kinds of medicinal herbs, and some utensils, as well as directly in front of the seat, a large and a small two different types of beautiful women. One was wearing a long purple veil, 3000 green silk pulled up, a phoenix-tailed gold hairpin worn between the green silk, beautiful, let a person look at a glance will not be able to extricate themselves. The other, playful, and cute, the corners of her mouth slightly curled up, two small tender legs with white silk folded together, her hands encircling her chest. Green silk is not like the previous bundle double ponytail, but directly down, like a waterfall draped behind. Although the two women had different looks and dresses, they were both doing the same thing, which was staring at Night Beixian, who was sitting on the ground, the corners of their mouths both containing smiles. I say you guys, hurry up and come give me a hand. Night Beishuan's handsome face looked somewhat helpless, as if he couldn't do anything with these two people. Brother Weedfish is this your attitude for begging? You should say, dear master, please help your lowly slave like this. Seeing Di Chong with a lofty, obviously petite figure, he liked to look down on others and be marvelous. The corners of Night Beishuan's mouth twitched, and the urge to spank Di Dome's as became more and more suppressed. Stop it, quickly come over and give me a hand. Night Beixian said again, his tone not impatient. Because these two were not Hua Ma Shang, it was impossible for them to obey him, it could only be that people had to bow their heads under the roof. TSK TSK TSK, it's not okay to not call master, Di Chong extended his jade finger and shook it, his eyes teasing. Night Beixian, he was extremely regretful in his heart. Sure enough, he shouldn't have trusted these teammates, the number of times he pitched himself, compared to the number of times he helped himself, that's really I don't know how much more, and all of them were also intentional. At this time, Raccoon Shisha can't look on, slowly raise the proud posture, purple long veil gently fall, will a pair of eye-catching jade foot to cover. Alright, don't tease him. Ronik Lisa walked over to Night Beishuan's side and helped him up, slow down, go to the bed. Thanks. Night Beishuan said as he looked at the gentle woman who was unusually dependable despite her sickly face. Looking at the two kissing, Di Chiong beamed her little mouth and directly jumped up. He's my slave, I won't let you help him, let me help him, I'm his master. The words landed. A flash of killing intent flashed in Rumpelstiltskin's eyes, but it flickered away, only Night Beishan detected a bit of abnormality. Because he had spent too much time with Hua Mashan, there was some of the purest instinctive reaction to that threat of death. Goosebumps rose on his body. Why has it suddenly gotten so cold? Night Beishan staggered and propped himself up, asking in some confusion. Maybe it's cooling down, quickly go lie down on the bed and come slower. Rumpelstiltskin was still as gentle as ever. Seeing that the two ignored themselves, Di Chiong was anxious as if he was a steamy concubine, with an I'm not happy look, turning his face aside. As a result, he found that Night Beishuan still didn't pay attention to himself, then Di Chiong grunted and hurriedly ran over to hold Night Beishuan's other side. Humph! Seeing that your legs are inconvenient, I'll spare you, remember to be thankful oh, district miscellaneous fish brother. I don't know why, but when Di Chiong finished saying these words, the environment that had originally warmed up, when cold again. After a thousand difficulties and dangers, Night Beixian was finally lying on the bed, Shisha, see if you can help me heal my legs like last time? Hearing this, Raccoon Shisha, however, signaled for Night Beixian to be at ease, and went to make a pot of spirit tea, pouring a cup for one person before slowly saying, instead of running away, I have a better way. Oh, Night Beixian was curious. Rumpelstiltskin sipped a mouthful of spirit tea and smiled at the corner of his mouth. Killing Hua Ma Shang, what does Beixian think of that? Boom. What? Night Beixian couldn't remember how many times he was confused today, but this time was definitely the most confused. P.S. Request for gifts. Requesting for gifts. Dad Ace. Sorry. After organizing the outline, there's only one more shift, and I'll make it up tomorrow, so I hope you'll understand. Quietly tell everyone, out of the sun and moon sect, the story is considered to be the real beginning. 
Sun and moon sect as if in order to welcome the joyous celebration after several days, the sky brightens up, the fog and clouds disperse, a peaceful atmosphere. Whoever was in the front hall was busy, this was the wedding of their current sect master and former sect master, so everyone was extra attentive, and the disciples who were out on a mission had also rushed back. In the back mountain attic. After handling things, Huama Shang, in a rare instance, didn't go to Night Bei Xin in the first place, but instead returned to her boudoir. Lord, it's ready. Blood Pearl at the entrance of the room knelt on one knee and reported, her voice devoid of any emotion. Um, Huama Shang did not even give the other party a look, just faintly answered, after pushing the door in. The room did not have the usual variety of things of a daughter's home. Not to mention rouge and powder, not even a mirror. All some messy things, all kinds of small objects were placed very neatly, meticulous. It could be seen that there was regular care. Flowers between Shang Lotus step lightly move, phoenix eyes around swept a circle, spinning around. Slowly walking to a corner, her jade hand elegantly fell and picked up a candy with blood stains. An instant. Memory was pulled back to the summer of eight years old. Immeasurable mountain. The young but fearless knight Bei Xian had to go to the mountain to collect essence to improve Huama Shang's physique. Because at that time, Huama Shang's talent was extremely low, and at eight years old, she hadn't moved blood yet. Senior brother, master said that the mountain is very dangerous, you'd better not go. Huama Shang's tender voice rang out, the tone mixed with uneasiness and worry. Cut. What does that old woman know? Although this Yuan Zhou is big, there is still no place that little master can't go to, it's fine, you just wait for me here. The young knight Bei Xian, with a dog's tail grass in his mouth. Lawlessness said, but it is confident beyond measure. Then. Then if senior brother must go, Ma Sang will also go. Hua Ma Sang, who was clearly very scared, stiffly braced herself and said, staring unblinkingly at Knight Bei Xian, What are you going for? Dragging me down? Knight Bei Xian stood up with his arms folded and said with some displeasure. Originally thought that this would make Hua Ma Sang back down, because usually as long as he was angry, Hua Ma Sang would never say anything else, but this time it was out of his expectation. If senior brother doesn't bring Ma Sang, then Ma Sang will go tell master now. Hua Ma Sang beamed her little mouth and lowered her head, her two little tender hands clenching the hem of her skirt. You. Me. Night Bei Xian tugged at the corner of his mouth, this is really talking about his fate, in the end there was no way out, had to bring along Hua Ma Sang. Remember ah, when you enter the mountain later you must listen to your senior brother. Aha, uh -huh, thank you senior brother. Just like that, the two of them sneaked into the dangerous back of the mountain to look for essence, but that level of heavenly material was not that easy to find? And even if it was there, it would be guarded by demonic beasts, and for an ordinary person to stumble upon the essence, it would be better to say it was an opportunity than a disaster. Two children in the forest around the afternoon, luck is really good, drink water, in a mountain spring next to the discovery of a little bit of the first growth of the essence. The two were overjoyed and hurriedly collected it. But just as they were preparing to leave, the danger still happened. Several vicious wolves that were guarding beside the quintessence drilled out, seeing the quintessence being taken, let out a low growl, and rushed up headfirst, pouncing and tearing at the two for a while. Although Knight Baishian liked to talk big, his own talent was extremely high. At only eight years old, he was already at the early stage of spirit transformation, and although he suffered some injuries, he still killed the vicious wolves one by one. But the house was in trouble. The wolf king came. Ma Sang. Quickly go back to mother. In the middle of the fight, Knight Baishuan's entire body was covered in bloody holes as he hissed at Hua Ma Sang next to him. Senior brother, what are you going to do? Hua Ma Sang was already crying into tears, her skirt was torn and her little shoes were gone. Quickly go. I can't hold on much longer. Instead of explaining, Knight Baishian hissed, hoping to scare Hua Ma Sang so that she could leave. But Hua Ma Shang's eyes were red. I'm not leaving. I want to stay with senior brother. Saying that, she braced her petite body and copied a wooden stick to hit the wolf king on the head. But how agile was the wolf king? How could he let a small hairy child get his hands on him? Turning around, he bit off Hua Ma Shang's wooden stick and was going to continue to victimize Hua Ma Shang. This time, although it didn't have any substantial effect, it allowed Knight Baishian to get away. Seeing that the situation was critical, how could Knight Baishian care about much? Reaching out, he pulled Hua Ma Shang out of the wolf's mouth, held her in his arms, and ran for his life. The wolf king was furious and roared furiously. A wave of air swept through the forest, leaping out and chasing after the two. In this way, one wolf chased two people. Time passed minute by minute. Knight Baishian knew in his heart that if this went on, he would definitely die, and it just so happened that there was an earth hole next to him, so he hid in it. The earth could mask the smell to a certain extent, and the wolf king circled around, searching for the two. Elder brother. I'm afraid. Reckless strength passed Wama Shang, crystal tears float out, big eyes fluttering, the whole body is trembling. Don't be afraid, senior brother is here. 
Knight Beishuan's mouth was full of blood, his body was either wolf claw marks or wolf tooth marks, but he also said as gently as possible. Elder brother, you're bleeding, do you hurt? Huama Shang, who was hiding in Knight Beixian's arms, saw Knight Beixian, who was covered in blood, as if she was somewhat unable to control her emotions. Seeing that the situation was not right, Knight Beixian immediately covered Hua Mashuang's small mouth. Elder brother is fine, don't talk, wait until you lure that mongrel beast over. Knight Beixian stared at the wolf king milling around outside and said to Hua Masang in his arms. Hua Masang nodded. There was a stalemate like this for an unknown amount of time, the wolf king simply had no intention of letting the two go, sniffing around without stopping, never leaving for a moment. Knight Beishuan's face was extremely ugly, knowing that this would not work, if they were discovered, both of them would have to die. He then made a decision in his heart to put up a fight. Shaking the gradually sleeping Hua Masheng in his arms, he said gently in a low voice, Senior sister, wake up, elder brother. Hua Masheng rubbed her eyes, staying in her elder brother's arms gave her a sense of security and she slept through. Knight Beishian touched Hua Masheng's little head and took out a brightly wrapped candy from her blood-covered clothes. Eat the candy. Wait for elder brother to return. Elder brother, when will you be back? You'll be back after you eat the candy. Hearing this, the originally sleepy-eyed Hua Masheng instantly woke up, rushed to pull the already unable to pull the Knight Beishian. Elder brother, don't go. Elder brother. Memories gradually dispersed. Hua Masheng smiled, but with tears. It is like an iceberg that has not melted for 10,000 years revealing the ice flowers inside, which is so beautiful that it makes people sink. Elder brother is too capricious, if not for master rushing here, it would really be murderous. Hua Masheng held up the candy that would come back and forth if she ate her senior brother. She knew that the candy was very sweet, it was made by elder brother himself, and it was made especially for her. There were many other things like the candy with blood in the room, Hua Masheng slowly put down the candy and came to the bedside. An extremely luxurious bridal outfit was spread on it, the cape was strewn with jewels, the phoenix crown was no less jeweled, and the two skimming feathers on it were colorful, as if they were real phoenix feathers. This day is finally coming soon. Spirit Medicine Hall. Killed the flowering shirt? Sniffing. Knight Beishuan's eyes widened in anger, his body stiffened, and a killing chance rose up horizontally in his heart for no reason. Returning to his senses, he was surprised at his own reaction. Sorry. Knowing that he had lost his temper, Knight Beishian covered his face with both hands, not wanting others to pry into his true expression. Logically speaking, although he would have been reluctant to kill Hua Masheng, he definitely shouldn't have reacted so strongly. Could it be that he really? Bits and pieces from earlier years surfaced in his mind once again. Senior sister I will handle it myself, you guys don't need to interfere. After a long period of silence, Knight Beishian opened his mouth and said, his tone as if he had returned to the time when he was still in the position of sec leader. But Di Chiong snorted coldly. It's not whether you're willing to kill her or not, it's that we're going to kill her. Di Chiong gathered his hands together and said with an indisputable and somewhat jealous face. What? Why do you guys want to kill her? Knight Beishuan's expression was already completely icy at this point. Di Chiong still wanted to say something, but was stopped by Renixisha, who smiled afterward and said, Beishin, I've told you before that this person, Hua Masheng, is extremely terrifying, and what you're seeing now is merely the tip of her iceberg. Knight Beishuan's curiosity was thoroughly aroused. What exactly is frightening, you should say it instead. Rumpelstiltskin, on the other hand, shook her head. With your current state, knowing would just add to your worries, it's better not to know. Knight Beishuan was silent once again, before looking back up and answering. What if I'm willing? As soon as these words came out, Di Chiong revealed a satisfied smile, and Ranaklisa also breathed a sigh of relief. Quickly tell me, how is my senior sister terrifying? Knight Beishuan continued to ask his heart again vaguely uneasy. The atmosphere baked to this point. Hua Masheng is the ancient demon god. Raccoon Shisha slowly opened his mouth, but there was no following. Boom! Knight Beishian was struck by lightning. The inexplicable worry in his heart came true, making him somewhat unable to accept it for a moment. How could his own senior sister be an ancient demon? That kind of people who eat people without spitting out bones, and how can it be his own sister every day to his own warmth? At the beginning of the Hongming period, the aura of heaven and earth erupted, allowing the world to cultivate, and also opening up the emperor road that led out of the domain to the 3000 Dao states. And as a result, countless extraterrestrial heavenly devils flooded into the 3000 Dao state, slaughtering unknown numbers of ordinary cultivators with their own cultivation. Right at this moment, with a shattering sound in the void, 12 heavenly emperors came from the desolate heaven ancient domain to suppress all the demons and devils. And just as in the time when the crowd of heavenly emperors forced the imperial path to close, a female cultivator took the opportunity to obtain the compressed 10,000 devils chi, which was the condensation of the dead chi of all the extraterrestrial heavenly demons. All the celestial emperors were distracted, and it was closed. And this woman is ruthless. 
For the purpose of unscrupulous, I do not know how many cultivators were killed. She's the cause of so much anger. By the twelve heavenly emperors to chase and kill, and finally hidden, do not know where to go. This devil who stirred up a bloody storm in the three thousand Tao states, stirring up the world, is the ancient devil. No one knows what her name is, only know that she likes to call herself, Flower Fairy. Thoughts drifting. Then Night Bei Xian slowed down, saw that there was no more context, frowned and asked, and then what? Just nothing? Instead, Rong Shisha poured a cup of spirit tea for Night Bei Xian. It's not gone, but it's too deeply involved. You don't need to know now, when it's time for you to know, you'll be told. Rumpelstiltskin said worriedly. Involved too deeply? Night Beixian chewed on the words. To be precise, it's too deeply involved with you. Sometimes I really admire the power of ties, letting the two of you be entangled for tens of thousands of years and not feeling tired. These words were spoken by Di Chiong, slanting his small face without bothering to look at Night Beixian, and there was a strong flavor of jealousy in his words. Eh? Night Bei Xian realized that he might as well not listen to it, his heart was dying of curiosity right now, and he still couldn't know. There was no way around it, turning to ask. Alright, then, what you guys said about killing Flower Mashan? Meaning you guys already have a plan? Night Bei Xuan's expression didn't change as he asked in a serious manner. Ronaklisa, however, smiled flirtatiously, her sickly face taking on some other emotions. The question just now was just for you to make a stand, killing Flower Room Shampoo? Don't say we can't, no one can now. The ancient demon god is no joke. Di Chiong also muttered from the side. Yeah. Saying it out loud is also just for fear that when it comes time to do it in the future, someone will be hesitant to give up. Again. Di Chiong. Hearing Ranixisha call out to herself, Di Chiong also knew that she had said the wrong thing and ended up skimming her lips. He's going to find out sooner or later anyway, so why hide it? Ranixisha didn't say too much in the end, as if she didn't trust Di Chiong at all, and was merely temporarily teaming up. Night Bei Xian, on the other hand, was completely frozen in place. The amount of information he had received today was not insignificant, causing his brain to short-circuit a bit for a moment. His own senior sister was actually the reincarnation of an ancient demon goddess, and he himself seemed to have an extraordinary identity, but he was clearly an earth traveler, how could this be? And these things, why would a hallmaster, a disciple of the sun moon divine sect know about it? Knight Bashian thought about it and decided to ask, these things, how do you two know about them? And talking as if you've been involved before. In the face of Night Beishuan's question, both of them were silent, turning their heads away and pretending not to hear. Don't pretend you didn't hear ah, uh, I heard everything that was said just now. Night Beishuan continued to ask. We have a special reason, don't mind it, we can't possibly harm you anyway. Di Chiong was asked in a hurry, his two white silk calves bobbing up and down, perfunctorily saying. Raccoon Shisha, on the other hand, directly grabbed Night Beishuan's hand and said softly, It's really for your own good if I don't tell you, Beishuan you trust me, you'll find out in the future. Hey! You don't keep touching him. I'm just trying to appear more sincere. Amidst the bickering, Night Beishian also thought clearly, by this situation, the two of them shouldn't be able to say anything, there was no need to keep asking. Alright, thank you guys for telling me this, now can you come and take a look at my leg? No matter what, escaping now is the key, everything else can be said later. So what if Hua Shan was an ancient demon sovereign? She wouldn't hurt herself at least, there was nothing to be afraid of. Ruaxisha once again pressed down on Knight Beishuan's big hand, stared at the other party's eyes, and said in a serious tone, Beishuan, remember our words, in the future, when facing Hua Mashang, remember not to be indecisive, or else the entire 3000 Dao state will be devastated. Even Di Chiong said seriously, right brother Weedfish, you must remember clearly. Knight Beishuan was stunned by what was said, swallowed a mouthful of saliva, and said tentatively, it's not that serious. The words fell. Rumpelstiltskin laughed and shook his head. It's too early to say that now, you'll know in the future. That's right, brother Weedfish is the key to killing that devil. Rumpelstiltskin and Dedome said this and glanced at each other, both with slightly narrowed eyes and smiles. But in their hearts, they were thinking, once we kill the devil Huama Shang, it will be your turn. As long as we kill Huama Shang, the remaining few will be easy. Looking at the two stunning beauties who were smiling, Night Bei Xian didn't even know what to say, all that was left was to hold his forehead and sigh. There is not much to see in these two days, please reward ah, immediately wonderful. These two chapters are slightly messy, but you have a general understanding is good, the back basically will not have this kind, this is the basic worldview. Watching the time slowly pass, the two women are not have to heal his meaning, only fighting there. Warning some people, do not have impure fantasies about the miscellaneous fish brother, or flower devil died, this lady is very idle. He he. This sentence is also what I want to say. Night Beishian really can't listen to it anymore, out of the blue interrupted, okay too, what time is this? By the time my senior sister goes back and realizes I'm not here, what if she comes out to look for me? Hurry up and heal me. The words landed. 
Only then did Di Chong and Running Shir stop arguing and turned their gazes towards Knight Bei Xian. Bei Xian, although our goals are the same, but one size does not fit all, this medical fee still has to be paid in advance. Rumpelstiltskin smiled morbidly and evilly. Di Chong was somewhat confused. She was curious as to why Runixisha was still talking about silver. For them, such mundane things as silver were of no use at all. Might as well take advantage of the opportunity to take advantage of some cheap. The corner of Knight Beishuan's eye twitched when he heard medical expenses. Of course he knew what the medical expenses in Raccoon Creek Sand's mouth were, after all, he had already experienced it once. I don't know why, last time he didn't feel it, this time unexpectedly quite resistant, although he had already known that there would be such a thing. The heart also prepared for this aspect. But, the heart secretly thought, it is estimated that these days with the flowers between the shang a little too close, resulting in with other people close to have a kind of derailment feeling, although it is all forced by the situation. Bei Xian, what are you dwelling on? Ruo Xia looked pitifully at Knight Bei Xian, her face full of aggression. She had committed herself to someone else, and someone else was actually still unwilling, this was unacceptable to anyone, let alone an extremely proud beauty. Could it be? Could it be that you don't want to? Rumixisha glanced over her scarlet cheeks and said somewhat tastily. Hearing the words, Di Chong's large eyes were greatly confused, only feeling as if things were not that simple, but for a moment could not think of where there was a problem. Knight Baishian let out a sigh. Then he shook his somewhat dazed head, knowing that now was not the time to dwell on this, if he couldn't satisfy Ranaklisa, then healing was definitely out of the question. For the sake of his big plan to escape, he could only be condescending to himself, although such a big beauty himself was not a disadvantage. All right. I promise. Knight Baishian said resignedly, his eyes all struggling, making it unbearable to see. Really? Ruashi Sha was overjoyed, without any intolerance, her delicate stance leaned towards Knight Baishian. Really, just heal my leg. Bei Xian, this you can rest assured. Listening to the two of them talking to each other, Di Qiong's thoughts were also repeatedly tugged at, finally realizing that something was wrong. Hey, what are you two up to? Di Qiong jumped to the ground and propped up his small body, asking in a milky and fierce manner. But it wasn't much different from a kitten. He he, this is not something a child should know. Raccoon Shisha Jade Hand rubbed behind Knight Bei Xuan's back, squinting at Di Dong, indescribably flirtatious. You, you are the child. This young lady is older than you. Di Chong's face flushed red, the imp's nature was restrained to death by Raccoon Shisha, not able to play out at all. Hearing Di Chong say that she was older than herself, Ranixisha only laughed morbidly and didn't argue. Knight Beixian wasn't interested in listening to where the two were bickering, and hurriedly interrupted, I say. Can you cure me before arguing? When I'm gone, the two of you can argue as much as you want. Speaking under his breath, his heart was anxious. If Huama Shang comes to find him later, and sees him disheveled, and a large and small two beauties sitting next to him and molesting himself, then it's really dead. Yes yes. Bei Xian can't wait. Oh. Raccoon Creek San deliberately misinterpreted Knight Bei Xuan's meaning, full of molestation. Knight Bei Xian didn't want to argue, he was just silent, he knew that if he said one sentence, he would have to invoke several more. Seeing that Knight Bei Xian was really a bit angry, Raccoon San also put away the playfulness, this kind of thing is too much, a little bit can regulate the amorous feelings, too much is not good. D Dome go out, bring the door with you. Rawaksisha took off the noble purple sarong on her body and said to D Dome, What are you, doing taking off your clothes? Di Chiong covered his little face and peeked through his fingers again. We're going to heal Bei Xian later, it's more convenient to take off the outer skirt, quickly go out. Ruashi Sha said in a serious manner, as if she had returned to the physician whose mantra was not avoiding illness. Hurry up and go out. We'll talk about what's going on later. Knight Bei Xian also said to Di Chiong, reaching out to take off his black outer robe as well. Of course, he wasn't afraid of any inconvenience, but rather he didn't want to get a taste of it, and was taking as much precaution as possible. What are you? doing taking off your clothes again? Although Di Chiong usually had a poisonous mouth and an incomparable belly, he was unexpectedly innocent. In order for Shisha to be more conveniently healed, it's nothing, get out. Knight Bei Xian also said in a serious manner. Under the two's continuous urging, Di Chiong could only reluctantly walk out, the main thing was that she was uncomfortable staying inside, closing the door behind her. Di Chiong immediately put her small ears on the sandalwood door, quieting her mind and not letting go of a single sound inside. Bei Shen, you have a really good body Raccoon Creek Sans charming, heart-taking voice rang out as if it was made of water, making people listen to it with a gentle flow, not knowing where it was going. Hurry up and start. Knight Bei Shen had some impatience. Really anxious, then satisfy you, don't be polite oh. Hearing this, Di Chiong's jade cheeks were red, and his little ears seemed to be smoking, but at this time, there was no movement inside. The heart felt curious. Di Dong raised his head to look. 
Through the rice paper, through the candle flame, the two shadows inside are entangled together, like glue, and there is a trend of more and more intense. Suddenly, Didoma crouch on the ground, no longer to see everything that happened in the room, white tassel fell on the ground also did not have time to take care of, just a hard to wipe his face, want to let himself calm down a little. A little calm some. Di Chong's eyes went from seeming to have running water turning to pitch black, she didn't understand what was happening to her, she only knew that she very much wanted to, very much wanted to slaughter Raccoon Creek sand right now. Who cares about the flower devil? Take the sundry fish brother to go to the secluded life, which cares about that flooding, let the flowers between thee, and what does it have to do with her? Weed fish brother is my. The brother of the miscellaneous fish is my. The brother of the miscellaneous fish is my. Weed fish brother is mine. Is mine. Thinking of the last, Emperor Dome mouth read out. The emerald green color of his body surged, and his aura began to become uncontrollable. But just at this moment, the sound of the door opening came. What are you doing? Hurry up and come in. Rumpelstiltskin looked at Di Chong, who was crouching on the ground, with some suspicion. At the sound of the words, Di Chong was instantly pulled back to reality, and was also somewhat unclear about what happened to his state just now. It only had to ask in a dazed manner. So fast? Ha! Huh? What's so fast? Rumpelstiltskin was confused by Di Chiong's headless words. Just one kiss, how long would it take? Di Chiong completely reacted and questioned aloud. What were you just doing with brother Weedfish? Her face was scarlet, but she didn't have a black aura anymore, and she held up her small waist, pretending to be unperturbed by the change. What for? You guess ah. Raccoon Shisha liked Di Dome's words with a vinegar flavor, and did not say it explicitly. You. You two bad guys. Di Chiong broke through Ranixisha's delicate body and entered inside the room. Ranixisha followed behind. Night Bei Xin saw that the two were arguing about something outside again, some anger surged up. What time is it? It's really almost on fire, the two are still not in the least bit of a hurry. But at this time, Di Chiong's delicate words were what made him freeze. Brother Weedfish, is there something wrong with your body? Looking at Di Chiong's somewhat squirming, yet slightly worried expression, Night Bei Xian was somewhat at a loss as to what to say. For a moment, he even forgot to rush for medical treatment. Why would you ask that? Hearing this, Di Chiong instead didn't know how to answer, pinching the hem of her skirt in place, her small face blushing, at a loss for words. Say ah, aren't you usually quite talkative? Night Baixian felt amused, for the first time getting the upper hand in front of Di Chiong. That's, what, that's the one, that? Opposite Night Baixian's step-by-step questioning, Di Chiong also went out on a limb, reddening her little face, her jade hands squeezed tightly, and she closed her eyes and roared, why is mongrel brother so fast? The words fell. The entire room was quiet. Di Chiong also realized what he said, then covered his little cherry mouth and hid aside, not daring to see anyone. Night Bei Xian didn't reply. He knew that it was Di Chiong who misunderstood, but he didn't expect this girl to be quite innocent, and he didn't know if it was because there was a third person present. Ignoring Di Chiong, Night Bei Xian looked towards Raccoon Shisha and saw that the other party was just staring at him with a smile on her face and didn't go to fetch the herbs and implements needed for the treatment. Shisha, what are you still waiting for? Night Bei Xian said patiently, hoping that the other party could understand what he meant. Bei Xian, don't be in a hurry. Since I've already collected the medical fees, then I'll naturally help you heal, but. Ranixisha said, selling the story. But what? Night Bei Xian had a bad premonition in his heart, and he didn't know why. However, not now. Rongxisha spoke extremely frankly, as if she was merely stating the facts. However, when Night Beixian heard these words, he only felt fire hitting the top door, but he forced himself to suppress it. If not now, then when? The words were icy cold, his eyes were cold, and his aura was heavenly. This time, the Emperor Dome who was doing nothing on the side was startled, his eyes opened wide, as if he had been evoked a very bad memory. Rumpelstiltskin also knew that he had overplayed his hand a bit and hurriedly explained, it's not what Beixian thought. Then it's like that? Obviously, he did not have any cultivation, but Night Beishuan's aura seemed to emanate from his bones, distinguishing it from forcibly pretending and violently bracing himself, but rather, it was the contempt of a superior. Like I said before, Bei Xian, your leg injuries are minor problems that can be treated with your hands, but the difficulty lies in the seal inside, which was placed on you by the flower demon. Night Bei Xian put away his aura. What does this have to do with you treating your leg? You can leave the seal alone, I'll figure it out later. Seeing that Night Beixian had withdrawn his aura, Romaxi Sha was also relieved, the only ones who could truly manage to not be afraid of Night Beixian were the one or two people that Night Beixian extremely favored. Then he wandered around the room, putting the purple veil dress on his body, and pouring spiritual tea all over. This time, Night Beixian didn't rush, but instead stared at Raccoon Shisha without shifting his eyes, waiting for the following. Beixian you don't know, the seal in your leg is not an ordinary seal, but a master servant seal. Master and servant seal. 
It was the first time that Knight Baixian had heard of such a thing, and he was somewhat puzzled. After all, he used to be hard-powered and strong, and simply couldn't use some, such as, formations, talismans, and seals. That's right. Rumaxi Shah gently sipped a mouthful of spirit tea and said, this kind of seal, normally, only restricts your movements, but that's all because you're staying at the side of flower shopper, that is, your master, so it won't have any other effects. Hearing this, Di Chong was the one who interjected, what? Brother Weedfish is my slave. Damnable flower devil, this young lady will not share the same fate as her. No one paid any attention to Di Chong, who was stomping his little feet on the side. Knight Baixian continued to ask, then what if say, if you don't stay near senior sister? What would be the consequences? You know how Hua Ma Shang treats you. Definitely won't lay a killing blow, so I reckon it'll be pain, pain so much that you won't dare to go, pain so much that you'll go back and beg her for forgiveness. Rumpelstiltskin said here and then refrained from speaking. Sniffing. Knight Baixian fell into deep thought. According to his understanding of Hua Ma Shang, this kind of thing she was definitely capable of doing, rather than saying that doing this kind of thing was very much in line with her character and persona. It seems that he doesn't want to leave until he solves the seal. Thinking of this, he had another headache, everything was almost taken care of and then this happened. A seal set by a powerhouse of the Zunshur realm, that had to be at least a Zunshur to be able to undo it, but the problem was where to find a second Zunshur right now? Things were in a deadlock in Knight Beishuan's mind. Seeing Knight Beishuan's face begin to turn ugly, Ronaklisa was the one who spoke out, although it's difficult, it's not completely impossible. Knight Beishuan's eyes instantly lit up, raising his head and asking with some excitement, you have a solution? Quickly say it. Rongxi Sha didn't sell the idea either. This kind of master-servant seal, logically speaking, once the master and servant are separated, the servant side is bound to die, but the extent to which an Wamanchang dotes on you, she definitely won't do that, and will forcibly follow through with altering the seal, so that it will only injure and not kill. This also leads to the seal not being a full body. So there is still a chance to break it. Hearing Ranixisha's words, Knight Baixian nodded as well, so, you actually already have a way? Ranixisha narrowed her eyes slightly. There is a way but there is no guarantee that it will succeed. How many percent certainty is there? 50%. It all depends on Hua Ma Shan loving you in particular and getting rid of everything in the seal that could threaten you. Knight Baixian let out a long breath, knowing that there was no choice now, he had to try no matter what. Well, what do you say? Rumpelstiltskin, however, laughed softly. Tonight, after a bout of dizziness, as if his body no longer belonged to himself, the arranged Knight Baixian once again appeared in which secluded place with four walls. Looking at the color of the sky which was already fading into yellow, Knight Baixian hurriedly pushed his seat and headed towards the back hall. Along the way, there were many hall masters who gave him greetings and wanted to flatter him, while Knight Baixian perfunctorily complied with them one by one. Right now he was in a complicated mood. On the one hand, he would go back to face Hua Ma Shang later, this time he came out for a few hours, in the future, he wouldn't want to have the chance to come to the front hall again, of course this he didn't care. The most crucial thing is, tonight's action. Just now, Raccoon Creek San said very clearly word by word that if he wanted to lift the seal on his leg, he must be very close to Hua Mangsheng when the seal was lifted. This was because this would allow the seal to be in a state that was the weakest, or even non-existent. At this time, it would be much simpler for them to use their means to unseal it. But problems also ensued. If Hua Ma Shang found out, then Rumpelstiltskin and Di Chion might be able to run, but by themselves, they wouldn't have a chance. The corners of Knight Beishuan's mouth smiled bitterly. He realized that ever since he had been placed under the past life compulsion and placed under house arrest in the back hall, he had been facing this predicament, many times acting under Hua Ma Shang's watchful eye. It had to be said that this had tempered his strong mindset, but he also knew the truth that there was no such thing as walking by the river all the time without wetting one's shoes. This kind of thing only needs to be caught once, then it's over. Unconsciously, Knight Baixian had already returned to the back hall, and his thoughts were expelled from his brain through and through. No matter what, this risk had to be taken thinking about this all the time would make him timid. The main thing was that there were no more things like the jade bracelet in his hands either. In the rear hall, the various things in the garden that had originally been destroyed by Hua Ma Shang had all been put back again, and were generally the same as the original, even the fish in the pool were not missing a single one. Before even entering the courtyard, Knight Baixian saw a stunningly beautiful woman wearing a black veil, sitting within the gazebo, a pair of golden eyes, only looking out, inside is a thick longing. The green silk was soft and flowing, without even a single stray hair, every willow was neat and tidy, and the hair ornament was also very simple, with only a jade hairpin of emerald green and bright gold intersecting. Absolute beauty seems to be the beginning of the creation of heaven and earth, the creator's most perfect masterpiece, natural beauty, without the use of external objects to set off. The only piece of jewelry on the body is the jade bracelet at the slender white wand. Flowers between the shang sitting in the green jadeite magnolia stool, 
today went to the room to see the cape, also let her see the previous small objects, from time to time can recall the previous night Bei Xian all kinds of. Seeing her own senior sister staying within the gazebo, sometimes smiling, sometimes shaking her head, night Bei Xian was curious. What is senior sister thinking about? He had come back, and Hua Masang actually didn't notice it at first. It was really rare enough. With that, he slowly pushed his wheelchair forward, and when Hua Masang wasn't paying attention, he reached out and blindfolded her. Into his hand only felt that his face was so small, I'm afraid it wasn't as big as the palm of his hand. Senior sister, guess who I am? Hua Masang just for a moment of killing aura burst out. After a flash it retracted again and smiled sweetly. Don't know yet. Who exactly are you? Night Beixian intended to continue playing this game and didn't stop at first. I'm the bad guy, hand over what's worth money on you. Otherwise, hey. Hua Masang's smile blossomed like a flower. But she pretended to be scared and said, people are just a weak woman, don't do something particularly excessive to them. After all, people are too weak to resist. Night Beixian sweated, thinking, are you scared, or are you just seducing people? However, no one else was absolutely allowed to enter within the back hall, so he wasn't afraid of being looked at by others. Little lady, hurry up and hand over what's worth money on you, or I'll really do it. But, but what? But people have already given you the priceless treasure on their body. What is it? People's heart ah. As Hua Mashan's immortal voice fell, she turned around and hugged Night Bei Xian's neck, and pounced on his lips. Feeling the warmth and softness on his lips, and the aroma within his nose, coupled with what Hua Masang had just said. None let his heart throb inexplicably. It felt like he was really being talked to by Di Chiong, and if he had to kill the person in front of him in the future, he might really be a bit unable to do so. After all, such a wholeheartedly for their own people. Who can really be indifferent? But the world is unpredictable. Who can say what will happen in the future? After all, before Hua Masang usurped the throne, he would never have thought that he would one day want to kill Hua Mashang. Adding to the fact that Hua Mashang's identity was still that of an ancient demon sovereign, an enemy of all cultivators in the world, made it even more troublesome. After thinking for a long time, Night Beixian came to the conclusion that he would take one step at a time and not do anything that he would regret. One breath. Two breaths. Time passed for an unknown amount of time, and the two of them parted their lips. Elder brother, you need to learn to change your breath, or else you'll only have so little time each time. Hua Mashang's face was slightly red, her golden eyes twinkling as she exhaled her breath like orchids. Night Beixian didn't say anything, he was just panting heavily, and mentally couldn't help but spit out, a little bit of time? This less said have passed two column incense, mouth is swollen. Senior sister, how are things handled today? Night Beixian gasped evenly and asked with concern. Aha! All the things are almost ready, as long as the time arrives, you can get married. Hua Manshang affixed herself to Night Beixuan's embrace and said daintily, Have the bridal attire been sent as well? Night Beixian continued to ask, watching the sky grow dark. It was sent. It's decorated by 10,000 year old red onyx, and the phoenix crown is also made of real phoenix feathers. Senior sister must look very beautiful wearing it. Hearing this, Hua Mashang looked happy. In beauty it is also senior brother's bride. Night Beixian fell silent. Before Hua Masang realized that something was wrong, she replied, Yes, if I don't want a bride who is as beautiful as the heavens, then that would really be too stupid. Don't allow senior brother to talk about himself like that. Hua Masang lifted her stunningly beautiful little face and stared at Night Beixian with a slightly exasperated expression. Senior sister, can you wear your bridal attire for me first tomorrow? Night Beixian said with a slight smile, and if one was attentive one could notice the despondency in his eyes. Why? There are still a few days left before the wedding day, so we'll be able to see it then? It wasn't that Hua Mashang wasn't willing to show Night Bei Xian in advance, but having seen it once the second time wasn't as stunning. She wanted to show her best side to Night Bei Xian, along with her own person. Ha ha. Elder sister looks good any way she wears it, so why bother sticking to formality, be obedient and wear it tomorrow for elder brother to take a look. Seeing that Night Bei Xian insisted, Hua Mashang could only agree. Elder brother is really impatient, really can't do anything about you, I'll wear it for elder brother to take a look tomorrow night. P.S. No update yesterday, sorry. Today first three chapters, tomorrow no less than four chapters. Beg for gifts. Request for gifts. Request for gifts. Thank you all readers greatly. The color of the sky gradually turned from yellow to black, and the silvery moon gradually rose, heralding the end of the day. In the middle of the rear hall. In the spacious hall, Night Bei Xian and Hua Masang were seated opposite each other at the table. On the table was a variety of mountain and seafood, just like before, all made by Hua Masang alone. Senior brother, quickly take advantage of the heat. Hua Masang spoke out gently, helping Night Bei Xian with vegetables in his bowl as she spoke. Good. Night Bei Xian looked at the dishes on the table and said somewhat absent-mindedly. Unsealing had to be done with Hua Masang by her side, 
and there wasn't much time left, it had to be acted upon today, so it was too late to think long and hard about it. Knight Baixian held chopsticks in his right hand and placed his left hand underneath, as if pinching something. Tangled for a long time. Master. Senior sister ah. Come over and let senior brother hug you, okay? Knight Baixian opened his mouth and said, his tone a little off. It appeared a little lewd. But Hua Ma Shang was completely unaware of it. Other than the fact that she would worry about Knight Baixian escaping, she was 100% at ease with him and wouldn't have any defenses. Really can't do anything about senior brother. Hua Ma Sang smiled sweetly and walked over to Knight Baixian's side without any squirming. Seeing the stunning beauty in front of him, Knight Baixian put down his chopsticks with his right hand and embraced her into his arms, leaving Hua Ma Shang's back to the dining table. Senior sister, your body is so soft, it's as if you don't have any bones. Knight Baixian took a deep sniff of the aroma, feeling the delicate body in his arms with a look of enjoyment. But secretly, his left hand slowly raised and sprinkled some crystal clear granular object into Hua Ma Shang's soup. That object dissolved when it met water and disappeared into the soup. This was a kind of hypnotic powder that Raccoon Creek Sand had given to Knight Baixian, colorless and tasteless, and as long as one wasn't checking carefully, one wouldn't notice it, allowing the person who had taken it to sleep more soundly. In order to also move at night is more convenient, will not easily wake up the flowers between thee. Elder brother. There are even softer places oh Hua Ma Shang immortal voice curls, tone full of temptation. For the matter of Knight Baixian's fascination with her own body, she was very happy, she liked Knight Baixian like this. She couldn't wait for more. All right senior sister, still eating, it won't be good if it gets cold. Knight Baixian completed his task and hurriedly urged Hua Ma Shan to go down. It was like the scum that lifted his pants and disowned him. Elder brother, you. Hua Ma Sang tilted her head to reveal an extremely cute look, her golden eyes somewhat puzzled. S. Knight Baixian thought that Hua Ma Sang had sensed something and hurriedly tried to explain, but was interrupted by Hua Ma Sang. Senior brother, you're just fine? Hua Ma Shan's tone was filled with pity, as if her heart was broken. What the hell? Seeing yet another woman questioning himself, Knight Baixian very much wanted to make this woman who underestimated him pay, but he still held back stiffly. Don't say anything stupid, hurry up and eat. Knight Baixian carried Hua Ma Sang off of himself, then watched as the other party drank the soup down before letting out a sigh of relief. It was also as usual. After Hua Ma Sang bathed, she came wrapped in a white sarong and burrowed into Knight Baixian's arms. Knight Baixian also came and embraced that mass of soft and ethereal fragrance into his arms, hugging it tightly. The two of them had a chat, and gradually, Hua Ma Shang's voice began to become weaker and weaker. Finally finding an extremely comfortable position in Knight Baixuan's arms, she fell asleep. Watching Hua Ma Sang, who usually always liked to move against herself, fall asleep, Knight Baixuan didn't call Rumpelstiltskin and the others at the first opportunity. Instead, he hugged Hua Ma Shang tightly and pretended to sleep. He knew that as the person closest to Hua Ma Sang, the other party would not be very defensive, but Hua Ma Shang's cultivation of the Zunshu realm was there, whether or not it was a swindle of his own, it is not known ah. Uh. Time passes by one minute by one second. Finally came to the third night, Hua Ma Sang is already sleeping very well, in addition to hugging him and not letting go of his hand, there is no abnormality, Knight Baixian knows it is time. Slowly pulling out the arm that was pressed down by Hua Ma Sang, the other hand wrapped Hua Ma Sang around him again, the arm that was pulled out reached under the bed and struck three times against the white jade stone, two short and one long. This was the code word that was planned in advance with Rumpelstiltskin when he was in the spirit medicine hall, as long as he could act, then he would send out the code word, and Rumpelstiltskin, who was hiding far away, would rush over. When he was hammering, Knight Baixian had his eyes closed, fearing that he would wake up Hua Ma Shang. The echo dissipated. Knight Baixian slowly opened his eyes and saw that Hua Ma Sang was completely colorless, still sleeping as dead as ever, even her movements didn't change, then he breathed a sigh of relief. In his heart, he couldn't help but sigh, the medicine was amazingly effective. The next step is to wait for Raccoon Creek sand to arrive. The moonlight shines through the rice paper and shines in. The sandalwood door, which was originally calm and without the slightest difference, suddenly imprinted a figure with a graceful body. Crunch. The sound of the door opening was very soft. A pair of jade feet took the lead and stepped in, the purple noble gauze skirt falling slightly to the ground, but the owner didn't care. Knight Baixian knew that it was Raccoon Shisha coming, could not help but gulp a mouthful of saliva, nervous whole body sweating, but did not dare to have a big movement, afraid of waking up the flowers between the gradually. Feeling that Raccoon Creek Sand is getting closer and closer, he also pulled out his legs that were pressed by Hua Ma Shang, and his hips powered up, and put them outside a little bit as much as possible. Time slowly passed. A floral fragrance that didn't belong to Hua Ma Sang rushed into his nostrils, it was a flavor that belonged uniquely to Rumpelstiltskin. Knight Bei Xin closed his eyes and wrapped the petite Hua Ma Sang all into his arms, his legs didn't have any sensation, but judging by the time then, Rong Shisha should already be healing him, now he just needed to wait. 
After another roughly one incense stick of time, he really couldn't hold back and looked up, only to find that Raccoon Creek San wasn't healing him at all, but was looking at him with some confusion in his eyes. In the back hall, for the first time tonight, there were voices. Bei Xian, are you nervous? Rani Aisha locked eyes with Knight Bei Xian, who raised his head, and said in as low a voice as possible. Crap! Isn't this nonsense? Forcing down the nervousness in his heart, Knight Bei Xian glanced at the sleeping Huama Shang and whispered, What are you doing? Hurry up and help me heal ah, what's the point of asking this? Bei Xian, pants. Rumpelstiltskin said with some embarrassment, her face was illuminated scarlet in the moonlight. Sniffing. Knight Bei Xuan's teeth clenched, how could he have forgotten about this, but there was no chance now ah, the slightest movement of his own might wake up Huama Shang. Can't you heal through your pants? Knight Bei Xuan's face was unsightly as he whispered to Rumpelstiltskin. I'll give it a try. Ranixisha had a bewildered smile on her face when she said this. There was a bit of a belly laugh. This made Knight Beixian a little puzzled. Why didn't you try in the beginning? Do you have to waste so much time, wait until you find out, and then try? Torture. Very torturous. Raccoon Creek Sand, Di Chiong, these two people were definitely sent by the heavens to torture themselves. That was the thought that was going through Knight Beixian's mind at this moment. I don't know how much time has passed. Knight Beixian never waited for Rumsha's voice, gradually sleepiness surged, and he slept. Dreaming. The sky was black. Huama Shang based on the dome above, dark golden eyes little by little black gas fluttering, absolutely beautiful face on the cold indifference is incomparable, like 10,000 years of cold pool. The aura is majestic. The long white hair has grown to the heels, windless. Hand over my senior brother, or not a single person will be left in the capital. The corners of Huama Shang's mouth moved slightly as she spoke icy cold words. The words exited. A wave of air and pressure rushed straight in all directions, and some ordinary people couldn't withstand it and directly exploded to death. Looking at all this, Knight Beixian was directly dumbfounded, was this still his own senior sister? How did she become like this? Afterwards, Huama Shangxing perhaps discovered him and glanced towards the city, that horrible look directly woke up Knight Beixian. Wang. Cold sweat broke out on his forehead. Knight Beixian let out a long breath, thinking that it was fortunate that it was just a dream, otherwise, he really didn't know what to do. Whirlwind. And then looked to the arms of the well-behaved flowers between the shine, Igar nose slightly twitching, sleep is also the same as the looks, cold and quiet, quiet, not at all like the dream of that devil. I also don't know if it was a daytime thought and nighttime thought, he actually had this kind of dream, simply don't know what to say. The Huama Shang in the dream was truly terrifying, and now that he thought about it Night Bei Xian was a bit horrified. He then hugged the person in his arms tighter. It's already done. A voice suddenly came out from the room, it was Rumpelstiltskin's voice, with some fatigue in its tone. The words landed. It was only then that Knight Beixian felt that his legs had gradually gained sensation. All right? He turned his head to look at Raccoon Creek Sand, who was covered in cold sweat, and there was a sense of unreality in his heart. How? How did it feel so smooth? Yeah, what else do you think is going to happen? Ranixisha teased, her voice still suppressed. Knight Beixian looked at Huama Shang who was sleeping soundly in his arms, and then turned his head to look at Running Sha, originally thinking that tonight would be a thrilling and vicious battle, but he didn't expect that just by sleeping, his legs would already be fine. No more thinking. A great favor is not appreciated, I will repay you afterward. Knight Beishuan's voice was somewhat agitated, but he still kept it as low as possible. He still understood the truth that what goes around comes around. Ha! It's fortunate that Huama Shang got rid of all the parts of the seal that were harmful to you, otherwise it wouldn't have been so simple. Rumpelstiltskin packed up his utensils. Knight Bei Xian didn't say anything. Reaching out, he hooked Huama Shang's bangs behind her ears, revealing that tragically beautiful little face. His emotions towards Huama Shang were getting more and more complicated. The person in the world who loved him the most, besides his mother, was Hua Mashang, but the person who hurt him the most was also still Hua Mashang. He didn't understand why the heavens had to toy with him like this, making the one he loved the most and the one he hated the most, the same person. Well, I'll leave first, remember the favor I did you this time. Ruashi Sha slowly walked out of the back hall and brought the door shut again, the hall once again returning to silence. Knight Beixian also stopped speaking. Hugging Huama Shang, he fell into a deep sleep. In the large hall where a needle could be heard, it was absolutely impossible for Hua Mashang to wake up, but she slowly opened her eyes, which were filled with black gas and blood water, like a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood. She stared at the already sleeping Knight Beixian, not moving a muscle, as if she wanted to completely carve this person into her brain. One hour. Two hours. It wasn't until the sky dawned and the disciples in the front hall began to cultivate. Only then did Huama Shang slowly close her eyes. It was only at noon that Knight Beixian slowly woke up from his bed, and the Huama Shang in his arms was still sleeping. Everything that happened last night was like a dream, making him unable to distinguish between true and false. 
Senior sister, senior sister, get up. Night Baixian was a bit amused, according to usual, it would only be right for Hua Mashang to have already gone to prepare breakfast for him when the sky had just seen the light of day. Yesterday, he had stayed up for too long, he didn't get up, and as a result, Hua Mashang had also stayed in bed. While laughing, Night Baixian also felt that there was either a hint of something wrong, after all, when was it not okay to stay in bed? After all, when couldn't he stay in bed, but only after he had done something bad? However, he felt that he must be overthinking it, after all, if Hua Ma Shan really knew something, she must have jumped up a long time ago, so why would she pretend to be asleep? Senior brother. Hua Ma Sang sleepily got up and wrapped her arms around Night Baishuan's neck. Still a child? So fond of pampering? Night Baishuan touched Hua Ma Shan's delicate little head. Doesn't senior brother like it? Hua Ma Sang asked with a smile, her expression not in any way out of place. Like it, I like anything of senior sister. Night Baishuan held Hua Ma Sang in his arms. The two of them flirted for a while, and there were less than three days left until the big wedding day. After having lunch, Hua Masang once again went to the front hall to take care of business, as well as to the sky pavilion to pick up her bridal attire. Night Baixian sat in a wheelchair, although his legs had gotten better, he still didn't dare to walk on the ground, after all, whoever found out about him would be doomed. Everything is ready, all we need is an east wind. Lin Xia, when will this east wind of yours come? Night Baixian no longer had the qualifications to go to the front hall, so he could only wait in the back hall. But despite this, he was also looking for some more secluded places so that Lin Xia and the others could make their move. Night Baixian pushed his wheelchair around the back hall. He wouldn't have to go through so much trouble if Raccoon Creek Sand also had a token, but it was a pity that only the martial arts hall and the task hall were qualified to have a token. After all, there wasn't much difference between having a token and not having a token for a spirit medicine hall, where there wasn't much disciple movement. Some halls that directly govern disciples would also have a lot of power, after all, disciples were the roots of a power, and they definitely had to be valued, besides, the spirit medicine hall would have normally had nothing to do with cultivation, so not being equipped with a token was justifiable. I don't know what means Lin Xia will use to send me a token, Night Baixian muttered as he wandered around. He was pretty sure that Lin Xia would help him figure out a way to escape, after all, the matter of pleasing Hua Ma Shan was too active for Lin Xia, or perhaps if there was a chance, there wouldn't be anyone who wouldn't be active. There was also no fear of Lin Xia snitching on him. Because if he was going to snitch, he would have snitched to Hua Ma Shang in the first place, and if he hadn't moved for so long, then it was clear that he wasn't going to snitch. Since he was certain of this, then Night Baixian had nothing to panic about, he only needed to wait quietly. Time was running out, it had to be within these one or two days, in the heavily guarded back hall, the token was handed over to him without moving, and without revealing his identity. This was not a simple matter. So Night Baixian wasn't panicking at all. I can't say that I'll be able to pick up the token while walking around. There were less than three days to go before the wedding day of Hua Ma Shan, and at this juncture, Lin Xia and the others had rushed back from the snow region, which was thousands of miles away. Martial Arts Hall. Outside on the grounds, all sorts of disciples were practicing here, and there were all sorts of implements for their use. At the back of the Martial Arts Hall, the three people who had hurriedly rushed back tidied up their clothes and began to discuss how they were going to trick Night Baixian out. Hallmaster, my subordinate thinks that we should just erase the name on the token and throw it directly into the back hall. A pair came up with an idea and said, very simple and rough. No way. This is something to help the sect leader, if the name is erased, how will the sect leader know that we did it? Lin Xia was eager to seek credit and refused. Then what does the hallmaster mean? A pair asked. Lin Xia stood up and smiled, then instructed the first mate, you'll find a chance to throw my token to Night Baixian, disguise it as me accidentally dropping it, and never let him get suspicious. Then you can reap the benefits of fishing. He he. That night Baixian must be on fire right now. With the token he must be thinking of escaping, and will definitely not think of it being a game. The second deputy also chimed in. Just like that. Now that the wedding was approaching, the first mate went to hand over the token to night Baixian, after which the three of them ambushed outside of the Sun Moon Divine Sect, waiting for night Baixian to appear. In the rear hall. Night Baixian had already wandered around the backyard for the 800th time, but he still hadn't seen any tokens and for a while, he was somewhat skeptical of his own judgment. Why are these people so inefficient? What time is this? Can't there be some sense of urgency? Night Baixian cursed under his breath, but his eyes still didn't spare any movement on the ground. Another incense stick of time passed. Seeing that the time for Hua Ma Shang to return was getting closer and closer, but there was still no trace of any token. Hey, I guess it hasn't returned yet, the snow region is less than a thousand miles away from here, so we'll see tomorrow. Just as Night Baixian was preparing to go back, there was suddenly a ringing behind him. Whirlwind. Night Baixian instantly turned his head, his heart thrilled beyond words. 
As expected, he wasn't disappointed, a token with a thousand-year-old acacia wood backing, gold-colored inlay, and the three big words of the performing arts hall written on it was just lying there peacefully and quietly. He could have sworn that when he passed by there just now, there was absolutely no token, this thing must have fallen there in the last second. However, Knight Baixian didn't feel surprised, he knew that Lin Xia and the others would definitely use some method to hand the token over to him, appearing anywhere wasn't strange. Not even acting, he directly pushed the wheelchair over to pick up the token, as if he had already known, and then left. Crouching in the bushes, came over to deliver the token of a heart feel strange, but also did not think much, only thought that Knight Baixian is being anxious, so this performance, then went back to report to the forest evil. Knight Baixian, on the other hand, unhurriedly put the token away, his mood indescribably beautiful. Everything has been arranged, just need to wait until the big wedding day, when they carry themselves to the front hall, they dismounted midway, and then from down to the broken dragon cliff, they can escape. The thought of being able to run away, Knight Beishuan's heart was indescribably excited, although he hadn't suffered much here, but this wasn't him. For him to hide behind a woman for the rest of his life, that was impossible and something he definitely couldn't accept. Moreover, he had a premonition that just like last night's dream, the entire Yuan continent would be in chaos. He himself must become strong enough before then, strong enough to deal with everything. Strong enough to stop the maddened flower mistress. Soon the time came to night again. This night was very unusual, even Knight Beishuan's heart was beating a little faster when he thought about what was going to happen later. The long wait passed quickly in a mood of anticipation, and without realizing it the moon climbed up the branches, and blackness once again covered the entire sun-moon divine sect. At this time, Huama Shang Knight came in style and carried a large red box in her hands, of course, Knight Bei Xian knew what was contained inside and couldn't help but breathe heavily. He also didn't know why he wanted Huama Shang to wear her bridal attire in advance to show him, but it was just that he felt that he would feel sorry if he couldn't see it. Consider it as fulfilling a small wish of his own. Knight Bei Xian comforted himself in his heart and called out to Huama Sang, Senior sister, you're finally back, I can't wait. He he. What's the hurry for senior brother? People are senior brothers sooner or later. Huama Shang smiled like a flower, jade hand gently covering her mouth, extremely elegant and noble. Indeed it is not Knight Beixian nonsense, today's Huama Sang came a little too late, unlike before, the sky is not yet dark to come back. Busy today? Knight Beixian asked with concern, and also felt curious in his heart, the wedding ceremony was basically handled by Blood Pearl, and Huama Sang was only responsible for taking a look, so why did she drag it out until now? And Huama Shang smiled meaningfully. There are indeed some things to take care of today, it's fine, it's all been taken care of. Huama Shan walked into the room and put down the large red box in her hand. Really, just deal with it. Once again. Knight Beishuan's heart was once again clenched together, just like before, he had some instinctive reactions to that kind of danger. Just now, Huama Shan's smile gave him a feeling of goosebumps rising wildly. Senior sister has worked hard. No hard work, as long as senior brother can be happy, then everything I do is worth it. Not knowing which everything was, Huama Sang organized the things in the large red box. Knight Beishuan's eyes also followed Huama Shang's jade hands as she rummaged inside, and then an extremely luxurious and noble bridal outfit was lifted up by Huama Sang grabbing the collar. Knight Beishuan's heart itched, at this moment he forgot about trying to escape, and stared at the bridal outfit with his full attention. Beautiful. Really beautiful. If in the case of letting Huama Shang wear it, Knight Beishuan didn't dare to imagine how beautiful that kind of picture really was, but he knew that it must be the most beautiful in the world. Seeing that Knight Beixian was mesmerized, Huama Sang smiled faintly and took out another item from the next layer of boxes, which was a phoenix crown decorated with phoenix feathers. The high-toned colors and the glittering feathers looked as if they were still alive, making people look at it and never forget it. Gradually, Knight Beixian became a bit mesmerized, imagining Huama Shang's stunning appearance when she put on the phoenix cape. Huama Sang continued to rummage through the box, but took out a piece of clothing that was unexpected by Knight Beixian. Eh? Is this a groom's outfit? Knight Beixian looked at the large red ceremonial robe in front of him and asked with some uncertainty. Yeah, this is senior brother's groom's outfit. Huama Shang replied with a smile, arranging the clothes neatly one by one. He he. What is senior sister doing taking out the groom's clothes? Knight Beixian had already vaguely guessed in his heart, but still inquired. Huama Shang didn't hide it either and said directly. Of course it's for senior brother to wear. Knight Beixian was instantly confused by these words. Didn't he himself say that he would let Hua Ma Sang wear the bridal attire to take a look at it in advance? How could he bring it onto himself? And what was the point of wearing it himself? Marrying in advance? Knight Beixian was a little confused in his heart, but he couldn't say anything at this time, after all, Hua Ma Sang had already brought the clothes over, and to say that he wouldn't wear them at this time seemed like a bit of a spoil sport. Come senior brother, I'll put it on for you. There was always a smile on Hua Ma Shan's icy and absolute face. Knight Beixian didn't refuse, so wear it. 
Alright, since senior sister wants to play, then wouldn't senior brother have the reason to not accompany her? Knight Baixian pretended to be generous as he spread his body open so that Hua Mashan could change her clothes. Lin Si's token had long been hidden by him, so he wasn't afraid to take off his clothes at all. In the middle of what should be how or what, has been pretending that his legs are still not good, also do not know if it is a psychological effect, he found that the number of times that Hua Mangshan touched his legs, it seems to be a little more. In the past, his legs had no sensation, and he didn't know if Hua Mashang was like this every time. Of course, with his legs healed and the seal lifted, Hua Masang would have found out with a little probing, and Knight Baixian was also betting that Hua Masang trusted him enough. After all, this big half-month's raid was not for nothing, only let Hua Masang trust herself enough to dare to be so blatant, otherwise she was looking for death. Not a moment's effort. Knight Baishuan's big red groom's outfit had already been changed. Hua Masang nodded with satisfaction, worthy of being my senior brother, really handsome oh. Your senior brother has been handsome since he was a child, it's nothing unusual. Knight Baishian narcissistically bragged about himself. He he. Senior brother is really cute. Afterward, Hua Mashang brought another copper mirror and stood in front of Knight Baixian, shining the groom's attire clad Knight Baixian in it. The Knight Baixian in the mirror could not be described as not handsome. The sharp features are like a knife and axe, the slightly indifferent eyes are a bit like Hua Mashang's, and the ink-like green silk hangs down at the waist. The air is lofty, handsome, anyone who looks at it will have to say one thing good a graceful young man. Knight Baixian looked at himself in the mirror in a big red robe, some laughter, he wouldn't even have thought that he would be wearing these clothes, would be in this situation and he had even gained a little weight compared to before. Hmm. I really am the most handsome man in this world. Knight Baixian's handsome face bobbed up and down as he shamelessly uttered these words. There was also the intention to tease Hua Masang. But instead of laughing, Hua Masang replied very seriously, I also think that senior brother is the most handsome man under the sky. This gave Knight Baixian a whole lot of embarrassment, coughed twice to hide his embarrassment, and couldn't help but blush a little. Elder sister, you quickly go change into it, I've been looking forward to it all day. Knight Baixian hurriedly said to Hua Mashang, Of course. Expecting a whole day wasn't a lie either. Senior brother is really impatient. Despite saying so, Hua Masang still took the phoenix cape and went behind the light veil to change her clothes. During the process, her mouth was still chanting. I've been waiting for an unknown number of years. Knight Baixuan's back was turned to the light veil, only hearing the sound of the veil slipping off his skin, and another ringing sound, he should be putting on his bridal attire. After about half an incense stick time. The sound of the light veil being slowly lifted came, Knight Baixian knew that it was changed, his heart was indescribably excited. Suddenly, the oil lamp that illuminated the entire room went out. The entire room was plunged into pitch black. What is the situation? Not waiting for Knight Baixian to open his mouth, a large red candle suddenly appeared on the table, burning continuously, expelling the darkness from the table and also illuminating the two people in flames. This, senior sister, what are you doing? Knight Baixuan's heart was a little puzzled the candle couldn't even be seen. Elder brother and a little peace and quiet. Hiding in the darkness, Hua Mashang calmed Knight Baixian, and then compared a gesture. Knight Baixian was uncertain. He only felt a breeze blowing in the back hall, pulling the candle's flame out quite far, but the breeze only lasted for two or three breaths. Senior sister. Knight Baixian just wanted to ask what was going on, when he saw that the places illuminated by the candles were all in big red, the bedding bed curtains on the bed couch had also been changed to a festive big red color, and the beams of the room, the stone pillars, were all tied with big red ribbons. Just a blink of an eye. The back hall just like a wedding room. Knight Baixian looked dumbfounded. Mute, he looked at Hua Mashan who came over from the darkness. The crystal clear gemstones were illuminated by the firelight extremely bright, the feathers on the phoenix crown were also vivid, and the graceful Hua Mashan wore all this on her body, appearing extremely noble and elegant, but also a kind of bride shyness. But the most perfect, the most immortal face, but was covered by the red cover, did not reveal. Knight Baixian swallowed a mouthful of saliva, looking at that slender person sitting next to him, until this moment, he was still in a state of confusion. But just wanting to take a look at Hua Mashan's appearance in her bridal attire in advance, how did she directly want to get married in advance ah? But now was not the time to think about this, and Knight Baixian didn't have that free time. Just a little bit of time to stare at. Hua Masang jade hand on more than two cups of wine, a cup handed to the Knight Baixian hand, husband. Drink the cup of wine. Knight Baixian was already in a daze, and hearing Hua Masang call herself husband, he only felt that his desire for conquest had been greatly satisfied. Heart beating wildly, he accepted the cup of wine. The two of them, like normal couples, held hands in an embrace and drank the cup of wine down with each other. Senior sister. Knight Baixian was a bit at a loss for words, a cup of wine made his body hot and dry. But he could be sure that there was absolutely nothing added to the wine, it was purely his own desire at work. 
But before he could finish his words, he was pressed against his mouth by a jade finger that carried the scent of wine and body odor. Call madam. At those words, once again, Knight Beishwan's throat rolled and he dryly swallowed a mouthful of saliva, not knowing how to manage his body. How to place his hands didn't feel like it. Madam. In the end, Knight Beishwan still shouted out this phrase that made him love and hate the title. It's there. Mistress. Add it. Ma'am. He he. Slave is always there. Knight Beishwan couldn't see his face, but he could also imagine how red his face was, after all, his body was too stiff. He didn't expect things to turn out like this, but he didn't feel any regret at all because the atmosphere and desire had already invaded his brain, making him lose his basic judgment. Husband. Still not lifting the cover? Yes. Madam. Knight Beishian tremblingly grabbed a corner of the red cover, then violently lifted it, and a stunningly beautiful face came into view. Usually never bother to use rouge and water powder of the flowers between the dress, today will be their own painting flirtatious incomparable, noble icy face was rouge a dye, cannot speak of the beautiful and moving people. Earlobes a string of milky white pearl earrings hanging there, so that the absolute beauty of the immortal face adds a few points of purity and clarity. The red mouth is like a ripe cherry, waiting for the sweetheart to pick. Knight Beishwan's throat was more than dry. Without hesitation, he kissed his bride. Afterwards, he carried Hua Ma Shang onto the bed. The surrounding candles were also extinguished. He lost control. This was definitely not a good choice. If there hadn't been the atmosphere just now, or if the target hadn't been Hua Ma Shang, or if there hadn't been that cup of wine just now, Knight Beishian would have chosen to refuse. But there weren't that many ifs. Knight Beishian possessed his own bride. P.S. Four chapters has finished. Request a gift. The night is speechless. Time flies. It wasn't until noon the next day that Knight Beishian woke up leisurely. So tired, what's wrong with this? As he spoke, Knight Beishian rubbed his eyes, his entire person slightly tired. Subsequently, he habitually reached out to embrace Hua Ma Shang, but there was half a person next to him. Suddenly, last night's various things, as if playing a slideshow, flashed continuously within his brain. Only slightly clarifying the situation, Knight Beishian instantly broke out into a layer of cold sweat, goosebumps rising wildly. He had actually given Hua Ma Shang to. Subsequently thought of something, Knight Beishian hurriedly lifted the bedding, and found that where Hua Ma Shang slept, the white blanket had been cut a large hole, and there was a slight reddish halo beside it. Finished. What have I done? Knight Beishian covered his face, chagrined. Obviously, he just had some greed and wanted to take a look at Hua Ma Shang in her bridal attire before escaping, but he didn't expect that things would develop to such a state. The most exaggerated thing was, last night, he was in such a high mood that he just forgot to hide the fact that his legs had been cured, and not only did he carry Hua Ma Shang onto the bed, but he didn't hide anything during that time. I also don't know if senior sister found out. Knight Beishian could only pray that Hua Ma Shang didn't notice last night. Otherwise, the impact would be too great. Of course. Even if this happened, Knight Beishuan's thoughts of running away would not change because his current relationship with Hua Ma Shang was monstrous and undesirable. If this continued, sooner or later, he, Knight Beishuan, would go crazy. According to the traditional customs of the Yuan continent, the bride was not allowed to meet the man the day before the wedding day. There were still two more days until the wedding day, which meant that Hua Ma Shang wouldn't show up again today, which caused Knight Beishuan's heart to fluctuate a bit. Sort of good news amongst the many bad news. Tomorrow is the day of escape. God bless. Knight Beishian said as he sat in the garden and looked at the sky. The front hall was festive, a stark contrast to the coldness of the back hall, and everyone was waiting for tomorrow. All the major powers in the Yuan continent had also received the news, but none of them had sent anyone, and at most, they had only sent some items and written some words of blessing. For those who adored Hua Ma Shang, it must be painful to the core at this moment, but there was no way, Hua Ma Shang's thunderous methods made all those who opposed it, not dare to say a word more. Time passed quickly. In the blink of an eye it was the next day. Taking advantage of the fact that it was still light, Knight Beishian went to the backyard and dug out the token, placing it in his clothes pocket. The sky had just dawned. Joy's procession arrived at the backyard, the sound of the swona was deafening, and the procession's footsteps were neat and tidy. Seeing this, Knight Beishian put on the groom's official clothes and directly got into the wedding sedan chair, heading towards the front hall. Looking at this big red sedan chair, Knight Beishian had a feeling of marrying someone, he himself was the one being married instead. I also don't know what this place will become like later, Knight Beishian said with some worry. These people who had come to receive the marriage, I'm afraid that it would be hard to escape death, but he, Knight Beishian, couldn't care less. There was only one chance, if he missed it, he would really be living under the control of Hua Ma Shang for the rest of his life. The sedan chair shook and the sounds of joy drifted away, the entire Sun Moon Divine sect. Whispers came from the ranks. Do you think the sect master is really planning to marry the former sect master? Why are they still faking it? It'll be too late for regrets if this reaches the former hall. Who knows? 
The sect master is ostensibly very much in love with the former sect master, but in reality, who knows? I'd say you two are just amateurs, right? The sect master has spent his entire life cultivating in order to unify the nine states. It won't pay any attention to love affairs at all, so who the nominal husband is doesn't matter at all. That makes sense. Marrying the former sect master will not only serve to compensate the former sect master, but will also stabilize the other elders within the sect, killing two birds with one stone. Between words, the sedan chair has already driven out of the front hall. Don't talk, carry it properly. Obviously the steward came out and scolded, and the people shut up. But what everyone did not expect is, just this one episode, Knight Baixian had already utilized the broken Zhang talisman to instantly move, hiding behind a stone pier on the side. Afterward, Knight Baixian panicked and took off the extremely conspicuous large red groom's official uniform on his body, watching the procession to receive the bride slowly move away. The talismans are still really good ah, without aura you can also casually catalyze them, it's just that there's one less with one. Knight Baixian ducked into the stone pier and looked at the three remaining talismans. They were, the sprinting talisman, the protecting talisman, and the powerful talisman. He couldn't use too much at this time, because unsurprisingly, Lin Xia and the others must have been waiting for him outside by now. If the talismans were used up in advance, his own cultivation would be completely lost, and he wouldn't be able to do anything against Lin Xia and the others. At that time, if he couldn't beat the snake, he would be bitten by the snake. Waiting for the procession to receive the bride to slowly walk by. Relying on his memory, Knight Baixian ran furiously all the way, avoiding pedestrians on the way, and finally plunged into a small path, heart beating violently. The front hall could be filled with experts, but any aura that was so out of place would be captured. So Knight Baixian could only forcefully suppress his heartbeat as a way to make his breathing consistent with that of an ordinary person. Taking a short rest for a moment, Knight Baixian swept around, recalling a path down the broken dragon cliff in this neighborhood. The entire Sun Moon Divine Sect was wrapped up in the Sect Protector Formation, and one had to have a token to go out, so some of the smaller paths others wouldn't even bother with, and this was his Knight Baishuan's chance. Being in a secluded place, before and after are people coming and going, but wherever a person is detected by a person have to be finished. Time passes little by little. Knight Baishuan finally found the path down the broken dragon cliff after making countless mistakes. While his heart was happy, it was also a bit strange. This path was so conspicuous that he didn't believe it at all at first, and in the end, he really had no choice but to try it out, and it turned out to really be a path. But there was no time to think about it much now. Knight Baixian surveyed the surroundings, saw that there was no one, leaned down and jumped directly onto the path, all the way down, running to the bottom of the broken dragon cliff. Out of the Sun Moon Divine Sect, in addition to the front door to go out, the other thing is the bottom of the broken dragon cliff, because next to it is the forest, vast and boundless, there are a lot of places to go. There was a wind beneath his feet. Knight Baishuan's mood was both excited and somewhat apprehensive. There was also some hidden fear. A stream of the smell of blood rushed into the nasal cavity, slowly, closer and closer to the bottom of the broken dragon cliff, white bones began to become more and more. After about two incense sticks of time, Knight Baishuan finally came to the bottom of the broken dragon cliff. The white bones and corpses around did not make Knight Baishuan feel any discomfort, after all, he had been in contact with a lot before. It's almost time to run away. Knight Baixian gasped, his tone excited. But just as he continued on and turned a corner, there was suddenly a rock blocking his way with female corpses hanging from it. Gulp. Seeing this scene, Knight Baixian gulped a mouthful of saliva, suddenly sweating, his mouth was wide open, but he couldn't make half a sound, and his legs couldn't help but back up. This. Is. The tone was mixed with fear. A stone that was obviously put there intentionally by a person was hung with corpses, all of which were wearing the practicing clothes of the Sun and Moon Divine sect but they were already vaguely blackened. The people on the stone had obviously been dead for some time, but Knight Baixian still recognized them at a glance, they were the party members that Hua Ma Shang had removed when he usurped the throne, belonging to his Knight Baixuan's followers, or perhaps supporters. Looking further up, Knight Baixian nearly sat on his butt. The fear in his eyes was on the verge of overflowing. The legs kept trembling. The rhythm of his breathing was chaotic, as if he had seen something extremely frightening, only to see that on top of the stone that was hung with blackened corpses, Two bloody human heads were being inserted at the very top. The breeze also blew its green silk fluttering, as if it was still alive. Raccoon River Sand. Emperor. Dome. Knight Baixian couldn't believe what he was seeing, how was this possible? He hadn't expected the trio's meeting again to be in such a posture. These two people had said that they were so powerful that if they couldn't kill Hua Ma Shang, they would at least have the ability to save their lives, right? How is this? At this time. Knight Baixian suddenly remembered that two days ago when he asked Hua Ma Sang why she came back so late, she said that she had gone to take care of something. At that time, he had felt a very strong killing intent. Yet he didn't know what it was because of. 
Now that he thought about it, he guessed that she had gone to deal with Rumpelstiltskin and Emperor Dome, and when he thought of this, Knight Beishuan's body suddenly went cold. Too underestimated Hua Ma Shang. Knight Beishuan gritted his teeth, only feeling that he was too stupid. How could those actions of his own really escape Hua Ma Shang's eyes? He was like a frog in the bottom of a well. He thought he was doing it seamlessly, but it turned out to be a joke. Hua Ma Shang put this dead man's mountain on the road that he must pass through to escape then it is certain that Hua Masang knows that he will escape, this is a warning, gradually calming down. Knight Beixian now looked towards the sky, where it seemed as if there was a large invisible hand that was manipulating everything. Perhaps Hua Mashan was staring at him right now. In vain. The subconscious thought made Knight Beixian sweat. Leave or go back? If he went back now and admitted his mistake, he believed that Hua Masang wouldn't do anything to him, but if he chose to continue running, the consequences would be unimaginable, and death might be the easiest. Knight Beixian let out a deep breath, straightened his clothes, and regained his composure. Slowly, he stepped forward, taking a glance at the dead and tragic head. I'm sorry, it's me, Knight Beixian, who has harmed you all. Knight Beixian didn't make any promises, just said this, then bypassed the mountain of the dead and ran wildly all the way. He thought clearly. A person that he loved and hated, then as long as he could control her completely, he could be perfect, so that she would never do anything that would make her hate herself. But this required unrivaled strength. But he, Knight Beixian, was not afraid. A few times, he was the first genius of the Yuan continent, and as long as he was given time, he believed that the day when he could control Hua Mashan would not be too far away. Of course, if Hua Mashan was really stubborn, he, Knight Beixian, might not necessarily be unable to do anything if he was ruthless. With such thoughts, Knight Beixian ran away from the mountain. The front hall. Where is the sect master? Still not coming to receive the former sect master? At the wedding site, there was always no shadow of Hua Mashan causing the crowd to be a bit overwhelmed for a while. I say, could it be that the sect master has backtracked? Very likely. The crowd bantered, but nothing substantial was done, and another roughly one incense stick of time passed. The auspicious time had already passed, but there was still no figure of Hua Mashan, and even within the big red sedan chair there was no sound at all. Suddenly someone exclaimed, Ah, the groom has disappeared. The crowd all gathered their gazes over, and seeing the empty sedan chair, the scene was instantly in chaos. What? Crap. Nima, hiding in the shadows, Blood Pearl frowned and disappeared in a flash, arriving at the Sky Pavilion. Lord Lord, my subordinate has something to report. The voice echoed for a long time before Hua Ma Shang's light voice leisurely came out, enter. Blood Pearl pushed the door in and immediately knelt on one knee. Lord, Lord Husband is afraid that he has already escaped, not far to run now, subordinate will now go to chase back. Blood Bead sweated like a pig and said that he was going to move. Not in a hurry. Hua Ma Shang but coldly said, as if it does not care, just playing with the broken spliced cup in his hand. After revealing a smile, I used to love this cup, but I was small and couldn't afford it. As if Hua Ma Shang was caught up in fond memories, the corners of her mouth smiled extraordinarily sweetly. Giving Blood Pearl a fright, she had never seen this kind of expression on her lord, as if she was very happy. However, seeing her own report, the lord did not have much of a reaction, so she patiently listened. Hua Ma Shang continued. After senior brother found out, he went to help me steal this cup, only to be discovered and beaten half to death. Hua Ma Shang stroked a crack on the cup, the cup was also broken, and elder brother picked it up piece by piece and put it back together again with tree glue. When elder brother was a child, he stole things, hit people, didn't cultivate properly, and liked to talk back, so it can be said that he was born with a bad seed. He is a bad boy in everyone's eyes, but he is a hero that belongs only to me, Hua Ma Shang alone. Hua Ma Shang's absolutely beautiful immortal face had a touch of sadness. Lord. If you don't chase after him, Lord Husband will run far away. After hearing all this, Blood Pearl didn't have any empathy, because to her ears, Knight Bei Shen was a bad boy who did nothing bad. Bad boy. The elder brother in Hua Ma Shang's mouth was uniquely hers. The words landed on the ground. Hua Ma Shang gently stroked one small object with memories, and again turned her gaze to the one placed on the main seat, the bloodied candy. But it was only a glance before moving her eyes away. Then he returned to his previous appearance, it's fine. Senior brother likes to run, so let him run. Blood Pearl was surprised. Not chasing? Hua Ma Shang smiled faintly. Elder brother just hasn't recognized the perils of the outside yet, as long as he is allowed to experience the badness of the outside, he will know how comfortable staying by my side really is. Blood Pearl seemed to understand. What does the Lord mean? Hua Ma Shang's eyes were cold as she commanded. Hunt him down, the fiercer the better. But remember not to hurt his life, otherwise. Don't need me to say more, right? Yes. Subordinate understands. Blood Pearl yelled to suppress the fear in his heart. Then it retreated and brought the door with it. The room was silent for a while. The immortal voice resounded once again. 
One or two failures, I can endure. I just need to win once, win the last time. Hua Mashang's tone didn't change half a bit, but the black aura on his body surged. Senior brother, you can't escape. Emperor and Raccoon were not dead and would soon make another appearance. On a day that was nothing more than normal. This day, the Sun and Moon Divine Sect, located in the southernmost part of the Garden Continent, was in chaos. A bunch of big shots who had a face outside and killed people as if they were chopping melons and cutting vegetables were kneeling within the splendid hall at this time, waiting for the sect master's sentencing. The next moment, a beautiful woman, front as frost, surrounded by black gas filled towards the main seat, said to walk rather than floating, because hidden in the black skirt within the lotus feet, and did not land. And the arrival of the beautiful woman, but also let the two sides kneeling on the ground crowd chills. Heads are lowered to the ground. Not a word, the atmosphere is incomparable. At this time outside of the Sun Moon Divine Sect, Lin says three people were hiding above a large tree, looking out at the bottom of the broken dragon cliff. Hall Master. Let's wait here, in case that Knight Bashian doesn't go here, what should we do? The second deputy was obviously waiting a bit impatiently and said as he sat on the side. Lin Shi just looked dead into the distance and didn't answer, but the first mate sitting aside said. The cliff behind us goes down to the territory of Duchen, Knight Bashian has been hit by the past life compulsion, if he wants to live, he can only go this way, it's absolutely impossible to find another way. At this time, Lin Qi narrowed his eyes slightly. That's right. Apart from going to De Qian and having a slight chance of surviving, Knight Bei Xian is bound to die anywhere else. Not to mention the fact that further south is the ocean, and there's even less of a place to go there. Speaking of this, all three of them became even more convinced that Knight Bei Xian would definitely take this path, and couldn't help but be patient once again. At this moment, Knight Bei Xian had already exited the broken dragon cliff and arrived in front of the protecting sect formation gasping for air and taking out the Lin Sis token from his body. Whirlwind. A hole suddenly appeared in the protecting sect formation that not even a fly could fly out of, just enough to allow a person to enter and exit. There was no hesitation. Knight Bashian pulled out his legs and ran wildly. Just like the pre-arranged arrangement, heading towards the cliff, his goal wasn't the great Qian below the cliff, but rather to deliver a gift to Lin Xia and the others. Going to the Qian was merely incidental. He he. Lin Xia Lin Xia, you've helped me so much, that I have to return the favor to you as well. Knight Baixian laughed extremely belly laughs, the wind under his feet, is running faster and faster. This movement caused the birds in the forest to fly away in all directions, for a time the movement was extremely loud, and was rightfully discovered by Lin Xia's few people. Paul Master, quickly look, is that Knight Baixian? The second may heard the commotion and immediately sat up straight, his eyes burning as he stared at the distant figure that kept weaving through the forest. But when no one responded for a long time, he turned his head sideways and realized that there was no one around him for a long time, and both Lin Qi and the first mate had already rushed over towards Knight Bei Xian. I go. Cursed angrily. Only then did he get down the tree afterward. Followed up. Knight Bei Xian now had no cultivation at all, and without running a few steps, he was already panting with exhaustion, his forehead dripping with sweat. Run ah, why don't you run? Lin Xia made an extremely condescending gesture and walked out with his arms folded. It was an imitation of Knight Bei Xuan's usual appearance. Knight Beishuan's face was cold, but he didn't speak. Aren't you quite powerful, Knight Beishian? You've fallen into our hands today, do you have anything to say? The second mate in the back also had the look of having eaten up Knight Beishian. And the second deputy who arrived afterward also chimed in. Yes, haven't seen you in such a sorry state? What? With less blessings from the sect leader, have you even forgotten how to walk? Knight Beishian caught his breath and braced himself, his aura steepening. What are you guys up to? Don't you know that I am the husband of the sect master? If you guys dare to touch me, your corpses will appear under the broken dragon cliff tomorrow. Faced with Knight Beishuan's majestic aura, the three of them were first startled, and then laughed out loud when they heard what he said. What are you guys laughing at? Knight Beishuan pretended to be annoyed, clenching his fists with a red face of indignation. Laughing at what? Lin Xia seemed to have laughed enough and wiped her non-existent tears. Knight Beishuan, you still consider yourself a treasure? That bit of yours, do you really think I don't know? Sniffing. Knight Beishian swallowed a mouthful of saliva and forced himself to calm down, no. What? Seeing Knight Beishian in this state, Lin Xia's self-confidence exploded. A sense of superiority arose. It was as if making Knight Beishian deflated was even happier than him raising a great realm. Is the sect leader going to kill you on the big wedding day, which is today? Lin Xia said confidently. As he spoke, he admired Knight Beishuan's shortness of breath. The words landed. Knight Beishian was so shocked that he couldn't help but take two steps backward with his legs, pointing at Lin Xia was half speechless. Only after a long half day did he say with a trembling voice, how did you? You know? I clearly only told Emperor Dome. Ha ha ha. Lin Xi laughed maniacally, Knight Beishuan's performance had already proved everything, 
He had now imagined that he had told Hua Ma Shang that Night Bei Xin was dead, and the smile that Hua Ma Shang would reveal at that time would be a smile that only belonged to him. Lin Xie, we have no grudges, and even more so, in the past, I was the one who promoted you to be the vice hall master, so are you going to return the favor today? Night Bei Xian said somewhat hysterically. So what? Who are you to enjoy the sect master's tenderness? Do you have that qualification? Killing you. Having solved such a big trouble for the sect master, when the time comes, guess how things will turn out? Lin Xie slowly walked towards Night Bei Xian. Looking at the greed in Lin Xie's eyes, the corner of Night Bei Xuan's mouth didn't move as he secretly pinched the sprinting talisman in his hand. Since you want to kill me so badly, then come. Finished speaking. In a puff of smoke, he ran away, his speed was staggering. Looking at the trail of smoke left behind, Lin Xia was dumbfounded, and so was the first and second lieutenants. It was too late to think about why Night Bei Xian could still run so fast without his cultivation. Quickly chase. An order was given. The three of them used all their strength to run wildly, chasing towards the Night Bashian who was running farther and farther away. One early seal marquee, two late spirit transformation stages. However, they were never able to catch up with an ordinary person with no cultivation, and the distance was still being continuously drawn away. Lin Chi's heart was anxious. If this let Night Bashian get away, then he wouldn't be able to survive, after all, this was all his unauthorized action. If he let Hua Shang know that the person he was going to kill at night had run away with the help of him, Lin Xia, then the consequences. The moment he thought of this, Lin Qi's back rose with goosebumps and he clenched his teeth, used the secretary. Can't let him run away. Saying that, he strangled his own hand, and in the next second aura gushed out. His entire body transformed into a red light, his speed skyrocketing more than a few times. Seeing this, the other two followed suit. For a time, this chase, the distance between the two teams began to become smaller and smaller. But right at this moment, a third team came, the hidden forces under the banner of the flowery dress. Leading the way was a masked slender woman, Blood Pearl. She had been ordered by Hua Masang to hunt down Night Bei Xian, but not to harm his life. Seeing that performing martial hall master Lin Evil was chasing after Night Bei Xian, Blood Pearl only thought that they were on the same mission as herself, so she didn't rush up to help in the first place. After all, there were too many people for fear of accidents randomly reached out and compared a hand gesture to slow down. And behind them were also all women dressed like blood beads, each body slender waist, but cold and indifferent, killing machine, after seeing the gesture, have slowed down. And Night Bei Xian sighed. Seeing that he was going to be caught up, Night Bei Xian did not panic in the slightest, after all, he had no intention of running. Another burst of chasing. Has come to the edge of the cliff, Night Bei Xian a sharp break stopped, a few stones rolled down to the bottom of the cliff, half a day cannot hear the ringing sound, visible cliff in the end how high. Run ah, why don't you run? Catching up, Lin Xie stopped and gasped for a few mouthfuls of rough air. Ignoring Lin Xie's expression that was so gloomy that he wanted to eat people, Night Baixian slowly turned back and faintly said, Run? Why would I run when I'm at the place? P.S. Make up for it tomorrow, beg for gifts. Readers. Above the cliff, the flying birds kept vacating, the wind swept by, blowing the black-robed Night Baixuan's in colored long hair fluttering. Lin Xie stood in place, slightly narrowed his eyes, his heart constantly speculating on the meaning of Night Bei Xuan's words, and did not say anything. Night Bei Xian, you're not scared silly, are you? Or are you trying to play some trick again? The second lieutenant who had followed him over showed a ferocious glare. His killing intent towards Night Bei Xian now came to a peak, after all, using secret techniques consumed too much. At those words, Night Bei Xian smiled. This smile revealed self-confidence, the cunningness of a great plan succeeding, and mockery. Lin Xie's three people were a little puzzled by this inexplicable laughter and glanced at each other. Before they could make a sound, Night Bei Xian spoke. Lin Xie. Shouting loudly, the birds in the forest scattered and fled in all directions, I've fallen into your hands today. But remember, I, Night Bei Xian, will not let you go even if I become a ghost. The words landed. In the dumbfounded eyes of Lin Xie's trio, and the horrified eyes of the blood beads in the distance, Night Bei Xian threw down his backpack, and then, in one long leap, jumped off the cliff. Boom. Seeing this scene, the blood pearl hiding in the back of the woods directly sat paralyzed on the ground, her face that had never had an expression before was filled with the color of panic. She knows, everything is over. This cliff was a demarcation point, below it was the Dechian territory, the territory of the righteous forces, so the cliff was extremely high. A spirit transformation realm cultivator would surely die if he fell, let alone Night Baixian who had no cultivation at all. The furious appearance of Hua Ma Shang vaguely surfaced in her mind, and in an instant, Blood Pearl was as if she had been given chicken blood, her black chi wrapping her slender figure, and in the next second, she rushed to the mouth of the cliff. She wanted to save the night Bei Xian, even if it is to pay all the price, but it is a pity. It was just a moment of days, in rushing over. Under the 10,000 foot cliff, 
there was only rolling falling rocks, no more half silhouettes, only the wind demon was still hovering in midair. Blood Pearl lying on the edge of the cliff, for a moment the body seems to be drained of strength, how can not stand up? Captain, what's wrong with you? Behind them, a group of Hua Ke's women rushed up with hindsight. The blood beads didn't answer. Lin Xia and the others also reacted from their dumbfounded emotions, and when they saw that the visitor was Blood Pearl, they rushed forward to pick up the backpack that Knight Baishan had left behind, fearing that Blood Pearl would grab it in general. They knew that Blood Pearl was a member of Hua Ma Shang's party and only took orders from Hua Ma Shang, so it was natural to assume that these people were sent by Hua Ma Shang to kill Knight Baishan. It was now midday. If Hua Ma Sang was late in waiting for Knight Baishan, she must have already realized that Knight Baishan had escaped, and it was only reasonable that she would send her close associates to hunt down Knight Baishan in a fit of rage. Thinking about this, the three of them looked at each other and smiled. The meaning of that was obvious sorry, you guys came late, I've already killed the person, the credit is also mine. Oh, sorry ah, this prey we have been eyeing for a long time, today he is difficult to fly even with wings. Lin Xia took two steps forward and explained. Right ah. In the future, we all have to serve under the banner of the sect master, so don't start any misunderstandings before it's too late. A pair also said with smiling faces. Although they all felt that something was wrong, but after all, Knight Baishan was already dead, so it didn't matter what happened. There was just something strange. Why would someone like Knight Baishan, who had seen the world, be forced to jump off a cliff? However, they didn't think much about it and just assumed that it was because Knight Baishan didn't want to be caught and humiliated. The words of Lin Xia and a pair did not receive an answer, and the scene was unusually quiet, with only the persuasive voices of the members of the Flower K. After a long time, Blood Pearl stood up with the help of his men, as if he was looking at a dead man looking at Lin Xia's trio, his eyes all bloodshot. However, there had been no words for a long time, and then he ran his aura and sped off towards the sun and moon sect. Lin Xia and the others were again confused when they saw this. Would this person be a little too careful? Isn't it just robbing a credit? As for that? The second mate crossed his waist and said with some indignation. No, there's definitely something going on. The first mate's brain was still sharp, sensing that things were a bit strange. Lin Xia hugged his chest, his face cold, his behavior and demeanor nonetheless imitating Knight Baixian, and said indifferently. Doesn't matter. As long as Knight Baixian is dead, that's helping the sect master remove a piece of heart disease, no matter what, we can't be wrong, it's just that we didn't let the sect master personally do it. This was a reasonable statement, and the other two no longer thought much about it, nodding their heads. Afterwards, Lin Shi took out Knight Bei Xian's bloodied backpack from behind his back, and took out the 10,000 year ice flower from his clothes. Looking at these two items, Lin Xie's heart began to beat wildly, this was all he had gotten with great effort. I guess the sect leader in his cold nature, seeing these two things, it's impossible for him to be calm, right? Lin Xie said confidently, his tone filled with laughter. Yeah. In the future, Hall Master has become the sect master's husband. You can take more care of us. Ha ha ha. Good to say good to say. No longer chatting, the three packed up some, rushed to the Sun Moon Divine Sect line, mainly also afraid of blood beads and other people robbed the credit. Sun Moon Divine Sect, Air Pavilion. Hua Mazhang was organizing something in the room, and from a close distance, they were all some of Knight Beishuan's robes, and some of them were the little skirts that were woven for her daughter, who hadn't even been born yet, in the first place. The things in the back hall, everything about Knight Baixian had been moved in, making the originally empty room, suddenly fill up a lot. Senior brother. But it's only been half a day, I can't help but look for you somewhat. Hua Ma Shang patted the black robe in his hand and said with some confusion. But for the sake of the final victory, I will control myself, I hope that senior brother can recognize the treacherous outside soon, and then return to my side. But just as Hua Ma Shang was reveling in the smell of one piece of clothing after another, suddenly a voice came from outside the door. Reporting to the Lord. My subordinate deserves to die. Blood Pearl's voice trembled, her body couldn't stop shivering, and drop after drop of sweat fell on the ground, slowly forming a small puddle. Hua Ma Shang's heart sank slightly. About my senior brother? Blood Pearl gulped and said with difficulty. Yes. At those words, Hua Ma Shang slowly stood up, walked to the window, stared at the scenery outside, and asked in a deep voice. What happened to my senior brother? Blood Pearl clenched her own teeth in death, not daring to raise her head to look at Hua Ma Shang her face twisted, her body like a sieve. Speak! Hua Mashan's cold and indifferent voice without a trace of liveliness rang out, shocking the mountains and forests and resounding through the clouds. It was Lin Evil. They forced Lord Husband to jump off the cliff, and Lord Husband may have. Already said, Blood Pearl said busily, the last sentence really did not dare to say it again. Boom! Rumble! In an instant, heaven and earth changed color. The sun and moon were lightless. Above the air loft, a dark thunderstorm vortex was slowly brewing, expanding larger and larger, as if it would descend at any time and obliterate everyone. 
Imperial Dynasty. Tai Chu Palace, a delicate face, slender figure, noble phoenix robe plus body of the beautiful woman, is enjoying the nourishment of the spiritual chi in the smoke-heavy pool. At this moment, I saw black clouds pressing down in the south. It was as if there were evil spirits roaring above the sky, and for a moment, the phoenix eyebrows wrinkled to the bottom. Come man. A clear and cold voice rang out. In. A woman in uniform appeared. The entire city is on alert. We can't let any of the demon cults members into the U capital. The troops stationed outside also called back some of them. Hearing the words, the uniformed woman was surprised. Although she didn't know what was going to happen, it definitely wouldn't be a small matter, after all, calling back the army, that wasn't a joke. Yes. After waiting for the people to leave, the beautiful woman once again let the delicate body was not in the water, a burst of ripples, will be floating on the surface of the water petals, dialed out and popped back. What is this woman mad about again? The commotion is so big, it seems like we have to go find Yun Zun. Not only the imperial dynasty, but the major forces that saw this scene were activating their alert status. Fear that the crazy woman from the sun moon god sect will be coming out of the broken dragon cliff tomorrow to kill people. At the same time, sun moon divine religion, the sky tower. Blood Pearl, who was kneeling on one knee, only felt an extremely strong pressure fall on her, making her unable to move halfway, as if she would be squeezed into a meat cake in the next second. Lord. Above, spare your life. Blood Pearl had already slumped to the ground, spots of blood spewing out. Spare your life? You should let me kill you directly, that would be a favor to you. Huama Shang's green silk fluttered about, black chi spreading around her, her white silk robe windless. Lord. On, the main husband jumped off the cliff, may. May not be dead, subordinate please order to go to look for, if you cannot find. Subordinate to mention his head to see. The blood bead body has gradually begun to distort, if the flowers do not stop, then this will be the last word she said in this life. Hearing. Huama Shang didn't say anything more, but moved the mighty pressure in the right direction and said coldly. You only have one chance. The blood bead that was no longer under the pressure of the might instantly recovered, panting heavily, but did not dare to be the slightest bit sloppy and staggered up. Yes. The subordinate receives the order. Just as Blood Pearl was about to leave, Huama Shang was once again speaking, Wait. What does the Lord command? Blood Pearl turned back with difficulty. Bring Lin evil here. When Huama Shang spoke, she was cold and indifferent, but the killing intent in it was like a monstrous wave. The thunderstorms above the dome were all galvanized even more ferociously. Blood Pearl breathed a sigh of relief and was just about to agree when she saw three people coming from the back, and the one leading the way was clearly Lin Xia. At this moment, Lin Xia's heart is extremely good, walking is not even called walking anymore, it's called floating. Lin Xia had just gone to the front hall, wanting to report this matter to Huama Shang and then reward him for his achievements, but the people kneeling inside said that Huama Shang had already returned to the pavilion. So he brought his people to the back of the mountain. Just now when he went to the front hall he also inquired that today Hua Masang was in an extremely bad mood, without having to think about it he knew that it must be because Night Baixian was still alive. Because Night Baixian was alive, it was ultimately a heart disease. Learning this news, his heart is very happy ah, after all, he has already helped Hua Masang remove this piece of heart disease, so only dare to bring people, strutting to the sky pavilion. You have to know that this place, usually except for Night Baixian and Hua Masang's close friends, other people within the sect were not allowed to enter. This showed how confident Lin Xia was. Walking closer. Lin Xia and the first and second lieutenants knelt down on one knee. Subordinate pays homage to sect master. The three of them shouted in unison, and in their speechlessness was excitement that they couldn't hide. Huama Shang moved lightly in the room with lotus steps, slightly squinting her eyes as she sized up these few people without saying a word. In about three breaths of time, her head was raised and she signaled for Blood Pearl to leave. Blood Pearl, who had received permission, was like a great amnesty. Turning his head, he left, and before he left, he squinted and sized up the three of Lin Xia, his eyes vaguely revealing pity. Lin Qi was given goosebumps, but he only thought that the other party was resenting him, so he didn't think about it. After the blood beads left, Lin Xia then excitedly reported, Lord Sect Leader, Night Baixian has already been executed by me at the mouth of the cliff, this is the proof. Saying that, Lin Xia pulled out the backpack that carried Night Baixuan's blood. At those words, Hua Ma Shang didn't react. She just listened indifferently, while the first and second lieutenants were like eating flies, their faces extremely ugly because Lin Chi hadn't mentioned them. Lin Chi, who wanted to take all the credit, continued to speak. My subordinate inadvertently learned of Lord Sec Leader's troubles, so I used a small trick to lure Night Baixian out of the room. Lin Xia self-consciously told how he tricked Night Baixian out of the room. Oh, meaning you gave him the token? Hua Ma Shang spoke for the first time, and there was a smile at the corner of her mouth. Yup, it was me who gave it to him. Lin Xia was thrilled. Hadn't he done so much just for this moment? 
Then he continued. My subordinate dropped the token under false pretenses, I didn't expect that Knight Baishian was eager to escape and didn't suspect anything at all. Lin Xia continued, describing the details as best as he could. But what he didn't notice was, the thunderstorms in the sky were getting bigger and bigger, and they were also getting darker and darker in the center, like dark clouds that had fallen into ink. Still only two chapters today. The author ate a bad stomach, a little sitting for a while on the stomach ache, the state is too bad, but I'm sure I'll make up for it. I'm sure you know that the author only has a lot to make up for, but not a lot to make up for, so don't worry about this, at most the day after tomorrow, absolutely all to make up for the end, just as much as not less. The last request is for some gifts, and comments. More comments ah, let the rating quickly out. The dome thunderstorms churning, the lingering winds suffing and blowing, the entire sun and moon sect is shrouded in a deadly atmosphere. Lin Xia lowered his head, still gabbling and detailing how he had teased Night Bei Xian, and how he had killed Night Bei Xian, completely unaware of the abnormalities in the surrounding area. Paul Master. The next pair somewhat stiffly patted Lin Xia, his tone filled with fear. What? Lin Xia tilted his head to look at the first mate, only thinking that he was reminding himself because he hadn't mentioned their names, don't worry, I can't forget you guys. No, look at the sect leader. This time it was the second deputy's voice, and that horrified and incomparable opening finally caught Lin Xia's attention. Lin Xia slowly raised his head, a gust of wind mixed with black gas blew his face raw, his eyes could not open. Thereupon, Lin Xia blocked it with his hand and looked ahead, only to see that Hua Ma Shang, who was originally still inside the attic, had already disappeared, and was instead stepping on a golden shadowy lotus flower, rising into mid-air, at the center of the thunderstorm. A line of ghostly text was imprinted on the golden lotus, but it was shining with golden light, appearing both hideous and holy. A wisp of Taoist sound came out from the center of the thunderstorm. The pressure shook the nine heavens. What is the sect leader doing? Lin Shi was blown back by the awe-inspiring wind, and a look of shock appeared in his eyes. It was as if this heaven and earth had changed color, making the sun-moon divine sect, which was originally devoid of light, even darker. It is like a mass grave, and the dead air is filled with. In the trio's terrified gazes, Hua Ma Shang, who was in the center of the thunderstorm vortex, that long black hair slowly turned snow white. Then a drop of blood tears dripped from that stunningly beautiful dark golden pupil. Lin Shi had been gazing at the drop of blood tears that fell, and after returning to his senses, he realized that he was no longer in the sun and moon divine sect, but rather next to a water pond. Where is this? Lin Xie gulped down a mouthful of saliva and felt remorse in his heart. He had guessed even in his stupidity that he was afraid that all of this was planned by Night Bei Xian. In order to get himself to help him escape, leaving the bloodied backpack behind was also an order for Hua Ma Shang to kill himself. If this is the case, then everything makes sense. Why did Night Bei Xian not let Hua Ma Shang help him out in the first place? Why did Night Bei Xian seduce himself into eavesdropping on Hua Ma Shang's preferences? Why did Night Bei Xian himself jump off the cliff? Because all of this was arranged in advance by Night Bei Xian, who had already counted on all the things. Thinking about this, Lin Xia couldn't help but feel a chill down his back. How could one be so stupid as to think that a figure who had single-handedly created the Sun Moon Divine Sect would be a timid and cowardly person? Of course, all of this had to be attributed to the fact that Night Bei Xian had hid too well and planned too well. And the thing that broke his heart the most was the flowering shirt. From the current situation, it could be seen that Hua Masang did not love Night Bei Xian, but loved him to the extreme. But it was useless to regret now, Lin Chi wanted to tell Hua Masang all of this, letting her know that Night Bei Xian was most likely still alive, thus preserving her life. But in the next second, it was as if his body had fallen into an abyss of 10,000 feet. A sense of weightlessness filled his entire body, and the images around him flashed. At first, it was him planning how to mess with Night Bei Xian, and then it was him becoming the head of the Hall of Performing Arts. With just a few images Lin Xia realized that this was a regression of his life. Each image represented a day that he had experienced before. Constantly descending. The images went from youth, to teenager, to child. And then to a swaddled baby, a lifetime regressed back, while Lin Xia didn't stop falling. Lin Xia was already numb, originally he would still struggle a bit, but now he was just feeling the fall of his body with dull eyes. Breaking through the layers of fog. Finally, in a place filled with black gas, the fall stopped, and there wasn't a trace of living air around. Is this place hell? Lin Xia opened his mouth somewhat weakly, his entire body was as if it had been chopped off, completely unable to feel it, and there was no way to use it. In the end, Lin Xia's entire body was enveloped in black gas, never to be seen again. The next day, at the very top of the broken dragon cliff, three corpses were hanging from it, with crows circling around them, constantly nibbling at the rotten flesh on the corpses, happily. The only difference was, the meat of the one in the middle of the three corpses would grow back immediately after being pecked by the crows, and its body was still trembling slightly, as if it could feel the pain, but his breath was all gone, and he was already dead. 
The corpse in the center surrounded a large group of crows, when after pecking the meat on the hand, a crystal clear ice flower fell out, crossing the air, leaving a line of lines. Then it fell on the stone and shattered into countless pieces, and the fragments were transformed into dots of starlight and disappeared into the air. Sun and Moon Divine Sect, Pavilion in the Sky. A stunningly beautiful figure sat in it, on the white jade stone table in front of her was a small object, the beauty sometimes laughed maniacally, sometimes hugged her head and cried, just like a madman. Senior brother. It's my fault, you come back okay. Huama Shang's entire body was lying on Night Bei Xian's clothes, with more than a few tears of blood. The regretful emotions were self-evident. That snow-white long hair dragged on the foxball blanket, making her entire person as if she were a snow fairy, but the fierce aura on her body was daunting. Speaking of this, as if she had remembered something, Huama Shang hurriedly stood up and walked to the center of all the small objects. There was a candy place there, a candy with blood. Huama Shang reached out her jade hand and took it down, the fire of hope flaring up in her eyes, but after thinking about it, she put it down again. She couldn't eat it. If she ate it and Night Baishan hadn't returned yet, she would break down, this candy had to wait until the last moment. Torture. Huama Shang was lying in the middle of the room like a doll that had lost its soul, staring blankly at the black robe in her hands. Just at this moment, footsteps appeared in the room, the kind of footsteps that were extremely casual, Huama Shang was instantly alerted. Who? Indifferently opened her mouth. She was in an extremely bad mood right now, killing people was nothing but a headache. On the day of the wedding, you put yourself in such a state? You've really opened my father's eyes. A voice as cold as the white moon rang out with an imposing aura. Huama Shang raised her dark golden eyes and saw a stunningly beautiful woman leaning against the doorway, a green gourd in her left hand, her right hand embraced in her chest, a look of an unquestioning exiled immortal. The woman was very tall, a head taller than Huama Shang, her green silk was casually resting on her white silk robe, and there was still a trace of fragrance at her fiery red lips. What's it to you? Now get the hell out of here, otherwise shoot on sight. Huama Shang did not have a half good face. Shoot to kill? Can you do that? The woman drank a mouthful of strong wine, and then, a half-saint aura burst out from her body. That back to basics aura, all the things in the room, became shadowless. Huama Shang's eyes were dark. Facing the half-saint without even half a bit of fear, the jade hand to the table a clap, all the things are once again returned to the position. Turning to the tall woman, she slowly said, How do you want to die? Yun Zun. Yun Zun. The owner of the Yuanzhou Myriad Heart Workshop, his identity was unparalleled, his strength was unrivaled, and he was the only half-saint that existed in the world that was known to people. Even when the empress saw it, she had to be courteous. How to die? I haven't lived long enough. Yun Zun sat himself across from Huama Shang as if he didn't see Huama Shang's face that was as gloomy as water. Get lost at once. Huama Shang also didn't want to talk nonsense with this person, and immediately expelled the guest. Scram? Yun Zun narrowed his eyes slightly, sent another mouthful of wine into his jade mouth, put away his casualness, and said with a grave expression, you're hanging such a big thing in the sky, and it's still expanding. What do you want? He he. For the first time, Huama Shang came to be interested. Of course it's to make the entire Yuan continent cultivators bury my senior brother, isn't that normal? Huama Shang's tone was without any semblance of color, as if she was the one who was normal. When she came over, Yun Zun also understood about the whole thing, at this time, she said with a helpless expression, your senior brother's death, why should it involve other people? Huama Shang stood up and slowly walked around the room, her long snow white hair fluttering, other than my senior brother, I don't care what happens to other people. If my senior brother is alive, I can still use the lives of everyone in Yuan Zhou as a threat, so that my senior brother can't go anywhere. But, Yun Zun heard the meaning in Huama Shang's words. You mean, you didn't do this to vent your anger? Then what do you want? Hua Ma Sang smiled, though it was a hard smile. The soul drawing technique. I want to use the lives of all the cultivators in the Yuan continent as a lure, and then use the seven star lamp as a carrier to resurrect my senior brother. Hua Ma Shang's face sank. Yun Zun's face became even more ugly. To actually know even such ancient evil arts? This gave her a new perception of flower mesmerizing Shuang's inheritance. Regardless of what you're up to, I advise you to take back that black chi right away, or else. Yun Zun's green gourd stopped between her lips, tomorrow, all the forces of the righteous path will attack the broken dragon cliff together. Sun and moon sect, will also cease to exist. Righteous forces? When did I, Huama Shang, ever put you in my eyes? If you want to come, why do you need to wait until tomorrow? If you have the ability to come now, I'll just draw out your essence blood to refine human oil and light the seven star lantern. Wild. What an arrogant statement. The Yuan continent was full of strong people, even a great saint realm powerhouse would definitely not dare to say such words. But strangely enough, Yun Zun, who was a half saint, was hardened and did not have an attack, but only breathed a sigh of relief and said in a deep voice, so there's no more to talk about? Hurry up and get lost. 
With a wave of her jade hand, Huama Shan turned around, leaving only a head of long snow white hair against Yun Zun. Yun Zun's seductive figure slowly stood up. Your senior brother is most likely not dead, I advise you not to mess around until you confirm it, or your senior brother will most likely hate you oh. After saying that, he left straight away. Huama Shang stood in place and didn't react much, as long as the news that Night Bei Shen was alive wasn't confirmed, then she wouldn't go expecting that Night Bei Shen wasn't dead, otherwise. When the time came for the expectation to turn into despair, she might not be able to accept it straight away, thus becoming even more insane. Yun Zun walked out of the air pavilion, two little beauties were waiting outside, one red and one green, holding fine swords in their hands, uniformly dressed in myriad hearts workshop, the Master Fong, how was the talk? Is that devil willing to withdraw his black chi? One of the disciples asked. Back to the myriad heart workshop. Yun Zun just said this with a bland expression and drove the flying carriage far away. None of the three spoke in the middle of the journey. After another period of silence, when they were almost at the myriad heart place, the disciple in the red lotus skirt couldn't help but ask. That black chi is gathering more and more, and it's still spreading, it's obvious that the devil doesn't intend to stop, why doesn't the workshop master just kill it? That devil is only a Zun sure. Zun Yin pulled himself out of his closed eyes. He said gruffly, the devil's own strength isn't good, but there's an extremely powerful inheritance, but for some reason, she's been suppressing this power all these years, or else she'd be far more powerful than that. Then why don't we take this opportunity to directly kill her? The disciple on the side asked suspiciously. Her inheritance is hidden underneath her lotus platform, so if you want it, you can draw it out at any time. This father also has no certainty that he can kill her. Yun Zun said in a grave tone. What can we do then? The two asked at the same time, their tones laced with panic. Even the ostensibly strongest person in the Yuan continent said that he wasn't sure, wouldn't that mean that the entire Yuan continent was doomed? Go back and think about it in the long run. The mouth replied. Yun Zun's slender jade hand propped up the side of her face like a jade jade jade, but her thoughts were drifting far away. A few times, she also for a certain person like this crazy, Huama Shang's behavior, all of a sudden evoked her memories. Sun and Moon Divine Sect, Air Pavilion. Under the oppressive atmosphere, Huama Shang's stunningly beautiful figure paced around the room, waiting for the slightest glimmer of possible hope. The entire sky pavilion was a formation I, the root of the formation, so Hua Masang had to stay here. The moment it was confirmed that Night Baixian was truly dead, then the Black Chi will envelop the entire Yuan Zhou. As for whether the soul drawing technique was real or not, she didn't know, it was researched by the master of the inheritance. She had thought that she wouldn't be able to use it in this lifetime. Just at this moment. My lord. My subordinate reports. Blood Pearl's labored, yet somewhat excited voice came. Hearing this voice, Huama Shan's eyes brightened a bit, and she asked with a strong breath, Is there news of my senior brother? My subordinate deserves to die, and did not find anything of Lord Husband's. Blood Pearl continued, her head lowered. Before Huama Shang turned pale, Blood Bead immediately added, But we found some traces of Lord Husband, and a used amulet. Continue. Huama Shang's beautiful eyes stared at Blood Bead dead in the face, her heart beating violently, hoping that it was really coming. That trace extended all the way, and broke off when it passed a river. But my subordinate can roughly determine that after falling down the cliff, Lord Husband used the protective amulet, so there were no serious injuries. Blood Pearl finished in one breath. Huama Shang let out a long breath, her eyes became clearer and clearer, her black aura became less and less, and her dark golden pupils changed to a bright golden color again. Very good. Keep looking for me, after you find it, keep it quiet and come back to report to me, go. Huama Shang froze and commanded. Yes. After waiting for the people to leave, Huama Shang dove headfirst into the pile of clothes. Elder brother. Elder brother. Smiling, a fresh tear flowed out. Please comment more, good or bad. Pain. Back as if on fire. Thirst. But his stomach was bloated and uncomfortable, and then a sense of weightlessness hit him, as if he had fallen off a cliff. Night Baishian jolted awake. Where? Is this? Night Baishian looked around, there was a guanine statue with a corner missing next to it, and he himself was lying on a pile of weeds at the guanine's feet. A headache. Night Baishian patted his handsome face, somewhat confused about the situation, only remembering that after he jumped off the cliff, he crushed the protective amulet, but the cliff was too much higher than he had imagined, and he fainted in the air. It's still too risky, next time things that aren't certain definitely won't be done. Night Baishian was somewhat chagrined by his decision, almost burying himself in order to kill Lin Xia, although he also escaped along with it, but after all, the planning was mainly to get back at Lin Xia. Thinking about this. Night Baixian smiled faintly again, it looks like a day has already passed, Lin Xia probably can't even find a complete bone. Just at this moment, a mechanical beep suddenly sounded in his head. Ding. Congratulations to the host for completing the hidden mission, Escape from Sick Girl. Receive reward, spatial talent, gold color. 
Hearing the words in his head, Night Bei Xian was shocked for a long time and could not return to his senses. What is the concept of spatial talent? That was a superior talent bloodline. It's hard to come up with one in 10,000 years. Killing people in an invisible way, even better, it could also change the spatial architecture, allowing people to be trapped in a certain place forever. I go, the system is really not stingy. This kind of thing is given away just by saying so. Night Beixian was frenzied inwardly, but he also knew that escaping the flower room ranges would be difficult. It was accompanied by death at all times. Thinking about it this way, the spatial talents seemed to be just fine. This was because although spatial talent was powerful, it was useless without a gong method. After all, people with spatial talent itself were few and far between, not to mention those with the ability to create merit laws. But coincidentally, he, Knight Bei Xian, had a merit law. Back when he was at Mount Infinite, within his mother's attic, there were all sorts of merit laws for any gifted bloodline, and he had read them all when he was bored. Knight Bei Xian recalled the memorized technique. Performing it on a wooden stick in front of him, he saw that under Knight Bei Xuan's burning gaze, his right hand twisted, and the wooden stick that was a few feet away actually began to twist as well, slowly turning into a twist. Ha 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 ha, little master I really am a genius. Knight Bei Xian laughed narcissistically, but this sentence really wasn't nonsense. This kind of enlightenment, even if it was placed in the Yuan continent where strong people were like clouds, it definitely belonged to a phoenix-like existence. But right at this moment, a tiny surprised voice rang out from the back of the broken temple. Ah, demon, who? Knight Beixian immediately turned around and saw a dirty little head behind the statue of the goddess of mercy, staring at himself in terror. Little brat, come out. Knight Beixian wasn't polite at all, and after leaving the flowery dress, it was as if he had let himself go. There was silence for a while. Then a dirty, pudgy little girl tiptoed out from behind the mutilated statue of the goddess of mercy. Timidly pointing at Knight Beixian, you you you, don't hurt me, I don't taste good. Sniffing. Knight Beixian knew that this little girl was treating herself as a demon, but he didn't blame people, that hand just now would be unbelievable in front of a cultivator. It was you who saved me? Knight Beixian asked. Yes. The little girl replied in a small voice. Knight Beixian felt happy in his heart, after all, a place where beggars knew the most things. It just so happened that he could inquire about the news. Come here, I'll ask you something. Knight Beixian sat down. Beckoning, he said with a smile. The words landed. Instead of going over, the little girl hid behind the statue of the goddess of mercy once again, only revealing a small head. Behave. Come over quickly. Knight Beixian said in a deep voice. The little girl shook her head, so anxious that she was on the verge of crying. Come over quickly, or I'll wash you white and eat you later. Knight Beixian took out the method he used to deal with Hua Ma Shan when he was a child. Only after some intimidation did the little girl reluctantly walk out, her feet stumbling as if they didn't belong to her. Just like that. On the haystack, a small and large person sat amongst them. What's your name? Knight Beixian looked at the little girl and asked, deciding to take it one step at a time. Chi, Chi Menger. The little girl replied timidly, always wary of Knight Beixian. Knight Beixian revealed a thoughtful look on his face. Chi Chi Menger, this didn't seem like a beggar's name, but now is not the time to ask about this. Where is this place? How far is it from the broken dragon cliff? Knight Beixian spoke again. This is called Clearwater Town, about half a day's journey from Broken Dragon Cliff. The little girl gradually realized that Knight Beixian had no malicious intent and became less nervous. Subsequently, Knight Beixian learned from the little girl's mouth that she had escaped because she had been abducted and sold, then escaped midway, but because she had to settle for food and clothing, she had taken up a job here as a haymaker. It had already been several years. On her way to beat hay, she bumped into him who was unconscious, and the rest of the people didn't care, so Imanel took pity. So it was you alone who brought me back? Somewhat less convinced, Knight Beixian asked in a long drawn out tone. The little girl didn't speak, but nodded her head obediently, as if she was a bit embarrassed. How could it be possible with a little bitty girl like you? Knight Beixian skimmed his face, clearly not believing it. It's true, I'm the one who dragged you back. Chi Menger argued, her dirty little face flushed. Drag? The corner of Knight Beixuan's mouth twitched. Then he remembered his stinging back and subconsciously touched it with his hand. The clothes had all been worn off. There was still a heel of sash attached, and his back had been bloodied, it was good that he had high cultivation in the past, and his body had been tempered by aura, so it wasn't too fragile. If he were a different person, at least the whole person would have to be worn down by half. But after all, it was someone who had saved him, so Knight Beixian couldn't say anything, feeling a surge of the urge to vomit. Once again asked, then how is this stomach of mine so bulging? Fell into the river midway. Oh. Emenger's reply left Knight Beixian speechless for a while, thinking, are you saving people or killing them? However, a thousand words, in the face of a little girl, eventually turned into an O. About an incense stick of time. Knight Beixian organized himself, 
threw away his shirt, and spit out the water in his stomach. Naked, he sat down with Emanger. Big brother, are you hungry? Emanger, however, was not afraid this time and took the initiative to show her kindness. Hungry, do you have any food? Knight Baixian had the intention to see what this little beggar would do. After all, he didn't look at who he was. Even if he was down and out, he wouldn't be able to afford to eat. The words landed. Chiminger revealed a smile, then took out a black and steamed bun from her coat pocket before splitting off a chunk to give it to Knight Baixian for you to eat. Knight Baixuan's heart was a bit unfavorable. Is it enough for you to eat this much? Playing Hay is not an easy job. This Knight Baixian didn't talk nonsense. Beating Hay was very hard, some strong men couldn't hold on to it, let alone a little girl. Beating Hay that was enough for three meals a day was already remarkable. It's fine. I see that Big Brother hasn't eaten for a day and a night, and I only ate in the morning. Knight Baixian smiled. Eat? A large and a small, two dirty people, looked at each other and smiled, sitting together to nibble on pitch black steamed buns. The steamed buns were hard, biting into their mouths like rocks, and compared to those delicacies that Knight Baixian usually ate, this thing was a rock. But Knight Baixian is not what pampered son, what living method can accept, good good over, bad bad over. Eating this put a few days of steamed bread, Knight Baixian heart can't help but secretly think, if you let your own sister know that she ate this, afraid not to die of heartache ah? Big brother. This steamed bun is white flour, it's delicious right? E Menger ate very slowly, as if she couldn't afford to eat too much in one bite, savoring. Knight Baixian casually replied, difficult to eat. There wasn't any thought of protecting E Menger's young heart. Straight to the point, not even blinking an eye. Ah. E Menger's mouth opened wide in surprise. She usually ate some chaff grains, and fine grains like white flour could only be eaten once every few days, so steamed buns were what she considered the best thing to eat, and for the word delicious, she no longer had any room for imagination. After all, it wasn't like there was work every day. What's wrong? Knight Baixian asked uncertainly as he stuffed the last piece of steamed bun into his mouth. This is already the best thing I have. Thought Big Brother would like it. Imenga nibbled on the small pieces of black steamed bread like a little bird pecking at its food. After all, she had been trafficked at a very young age, with only a jade pendant with her name engraved on it, and the best thing she had ever eaten while growing up was white bread. She shared what she thought was the best thing, thinking that the night Baixian would like it, but she did not expect. Gloomy. Menger, I can call you this, right? Night Baixian leaned against the wall, the firm muscles of his upper body relaxing. Can. Menger's voice was as thin as a mosquito fly. Because no one had ever called her by her name, they were all called little beggars. Menger you have to know that you can eat black and steamed buns, but you can't enjoy eating them, because that will feed your inertia and make you settle for the status quo with no motivation. Knight Beishuan's thoughts fell into reminiscence. He had also said these words to Hua Ma Shang. Then you're still eating. Menger obviously didn't like these didactic words, after all, big words of truth would be said by anyone, but the hairy black steamed buns that anyone looked down on were the ones that could fill up their stomachs. Air. Knight Beishuan some surprise, did not expect this girl also quite choke will people. Continued. Special circumstances, special treatment. E Manger. Just like this, the broken temple once again fell into silence. Shi Mang Air did not want to listen to these have-nots, Knight Beishan also realized that his sermon, for a small beggar who could not eat enough food, useless. It would be better to have one less bite of steamed bread. Just at this moment, a loud noise came from the street. It was the sound of two iron pots crashing together, very striking and piercing. As the sound fell, E Menger froze for a moment, then took a big bite of the black and steamed bun in her hand. In the strange eyes of Knight Baixian, E Menger walked out with a homemade scythe and trotted about to leave. Hey, what are you doing? Knight Baixian also stood up, staring at E Menger's petite back and said, Working, or else I'll have to go hungry tomorrow. Chi Mangya only paused for a moment and rushed out without caring about Knight Baixian. Knight Baixian sighed, Do I look that unreliable? After all, as a general rule, it was up to him at this time. Afterwards, he no longer thought much about it, and also in order to ask for more information, he chased after them, after all, he still didn't know, what exactly was the situation of the Sun Moon Divine Sect right now, as soon as he went out. Knight Baixian realized that this town was quite large, and the surrounding buildings were quite prosperous, behind himself was a Guanin temple, only it had been deserted, and no one had made offerings for years. Along with the flow of people, Knight Baixian followed to the sounding of the drums, where it was already full of people, each one of them dressed in rags and holding a scythe, just like Chi Menger. E Menger's petite body kept squeezing forward, but because she was too young and a daughter, her strength was insufficient, she could not squeeze in, and could only stand on the periphery with her head hanging down. On the stage, a neatly dressed, eight-bearded middle-aged man, mortar and pestle cane, standing quietly, completely ignoring the chattering crowd under the stage. Knight Baixian leaned aside to sort of see that this guy should be the steward of some chamber of commerce, or family, coming here to recruit laborers and beat the hay. 
He for this kind of person is not half a good feeling, bully, fox fake tiger, in addition to mix the years longer, when a steward, nothing, about half an incense stick of time, as if it had been practiced countless times, in an instant, the crowd below was quiet, at this time, the steward on the stage, touched his eight road beard, said in an accent, the hay that was recently recovered is full of weeds, what, hey hey hey, do you guys really think it's hay, at the words, the crowd immediately appeared to object, we all hit it according to the requirements, your people have inspected it and said it's fine, what do you mean by saying this now, is it hard to return the labor money, that's right, it's all according to the standard, when you cut it, how can you not touch any weeds at all, you're being unreasonable, in the face of the reason arguments from below, the housekeeper smiled skinlessly, with no change in expression at all, as if he had anticipated this current situation, he he, the quality is just problematic, and we are losing money when this kind of goods are sold, so from today onwards, the wages are cut in half, and the quality has to be raised upwards for me. When these words came out, they immediately caused dissatisfaction among the crowd. But the butler just lightly said, that's the standard, those who want to do it will do it, and those who don't will leave. This Clearwater town lacks everything, just not people. After saying that, he turned around and sat on the chair, not even taking a proper look at the crowd below. There was silence. None of the people who came to make hay were desperate people. Home bottom of the rice bowl, waiting to feed the child, look forward to the wife, they are waiting for their own men with silver back. Although tired, although the wages are small, but at least to be able to eat, not to starve to death at home. Just like that. The voices on the stage became smaller and smaller, until finally all of them compromised. E. Menger's small face wrinkled together. Originally, she could only get two white bread buns in exchange for a day's work, and now she was missing another one. It seems like I can only let Big Brother eat half of it. Until now Yi Meng Er still thought that Night Bei Shen would think that the white flour steamed buns were hard to eat because they weren't freshly made. The butler on the stage laughed. The smile was extremely disgusting. Go. The crowd didn't have any way out and prepared to enter the mountain. Just at this moment, the butler opened his mouth again and pointed his finger at the crowd. That. Little beggar, you shouldn't go. It can't do anything all day. Yi Meng Er stopped her advancing steps and froze in place, foolishly pointing at herself. That's right. It's you. E. Menger's breathing began to become rapid, and her eyes had a little teardrop spinning before she trembled and asked. Then, then please, when can I come? Don't even come in the future. Boom. The scythe in E. Menger's hand fell off, and her entire body fell to the ground, the tears in her eyes finally overflowing. She usually worked less, but the wages she received were also less, there was no such thing as her not working properly, she didn't understand why this was. The path to her survival was gone. Don't talk about giving Night Baishian white flower buns, she didn't even know how she was going to live in the future. Two white flower buns a day, for other people is nothing, even some rich people, throw it to feed the dog do not feel heartache, but for her, that is the hope of living. Now hope is ruthlessly trampled on. Surrounding people constantly pass by E. Menger, but they all say nothing, even better, just now is still complaining about the unfairness of the people, but now it is glad that their jobs are still there. And the butler on the stage was all smiles from the beginning to the end, without even half a tangle. Just at this moment. What's sitting here for? Asking for food? At the time when Emenger was at her most helpless, a familiar voice came, and with it came a large, warm hand that lifted her up. Big brother. Emenger looked up, only to see a handsome face with sharp angles, smiling at herself. Didn't you say that white bread is the best? Then today, big brother will take you to eat, something that is a hundred times more delicious than white flour buns, how about it? Night Beishian said with a smile. Is there really something like that? Chi Menger didn't know what to say propping up her body and asking with some anticipation. When we came over just now, there was a restaurant there, so let's go eat there. Night Baishian said with a reminiscence. This sentence shocked the surrounding people. Don't look at being in this nook and cranny that was dilapidated, but the middle of the street was exceptionally prosperous, a restaurant in this neighborhood? That must refer to the drunken immortal restaurant in the middle of the street. The consumption of that place cannot be said to be not high ah, where to eat a meal, enough to a hay year's wages. E. Menger was similarly frozen in place. Of course she knew about the drunken immortal restaurant, the food there, even the leftovers from other people's meals were better than her regular meals by an unknown amount. Yet no one believed it. The crowd showed their contempt, all feeling that Night Baishian was bragging, and even Chi Menger subconsciously took a step back. What? Don't believe me? Night Baishian revealed an intriguing smile. No. No. E. Menger waved her hands back and forth. The two lines of tears in her eyes also retracted. Then let's go. Night Baishian pulled up Yi Meng Er's hand and was about to leave. Wait, my scythe. You won't even be able to use that in the future. Yi Meng Er still wanted to pick up the scythe on the ground, 
but when Knight Baishan said that, she reacted that she wouldn't have the chance to use it in the future, and then followed Knight Baishan to leave. But how could she know that Knight Baishan didn't mean this at all? Before leaving, the butler sneered madly at Knight Baishan on the stage. Kid who doesn't know the heights of heaven, do you know that the drunken immortal mansion has to spend at least 50 tails of silver? You can't pull out a large sum of money on you with that poor look? The butler felt offended, so he left no room to undermine Knight Baishan, except for not using profanity, he said everything that should be said and shouldn't be said. Some of the reckless men who were hitting the hay, in order to flatter the housekeeper, were also saying what Knight Baishan was in one way or the other. Yi Menger's legs were a bit soft when she heard these words, and if it wasn't for Knight Baishan pulling her along, she probably wouldn't have been able to walk. However, Knight Baishan was walking straight, unaffected by the filthy words behind him. That housekeeper's play of killing the chicken to warn the monkey and knocking down the mountain to shake the tiger, he was too familiar with it, and for this kind of person, he had nothing to say. It wasn't that he didn't have money. Although he didn't have any silver on his body, what treasures didn't he have in his spatial ring? The heavenly treasures were piled up into mountains, and taking out just any one of them could shock the entire audience. There was also the space spell that he had just learned. With these, it was no problem to make everyone kneel down and apologize to him. But who is he? He was Knight Baishan. He didn't care to pretend to be this kind of pussy yet. Afterwards, leading Chi Menor out of that nook and cranny and onto the street, Chi Menor's mood was clearly off, and Knight Baishan didn't try to persuade her too much. The best way was to take her through the experience. Sermons were meaningless, likewise, words of comfort, the effect brought about was also limited, bring her to feel, that would be the most effective. Big brother, we're going to be hungry. After Yi Menger reacted, she said timidly, Is that so? Knight Baishan wasn't too concerned and only focused on walking, saying perfunctorily, We've messed with the Lin family's housekeeper, there won't be a place for us in this town. Yi Menger said with a sobbing voice, her body unable to stop trembling, Is that so? Knight Baishan replied in the same manner, We're going to starve to death. Yi Menger, who had just eaten black and steamed buns, said so. Is that so? Knight Baishan remained with these words. Shi Menger's small face was colored with anger, she didn't understand what Knight Baishan kept saying this for, she only thought that Knight Baishan was perfunctory, and just when she wanted to loudly and angrily denounce Knight Baishan for being a heartless person, she found that the hand holding her stopped. What's wrong? Yi Menger asked suspiciously. It's here. Requesting for gifts. Ask for a favorable review. Drunken immortal building. A restaurant that looked out of place with the buildings next to it, with carved dragons, painted phoenixes, exotic colors, fluorescent powdered stone in it, and white orchid jade pillars on it, it was so grand. Dressed in gorgeous dignitaries in and out, but are a look of the marketplace, and no worldly origin of the style and cultivation. Standing in front of this kind of restaurant, Shi Menger's legs were shaking, she would never have dreamed that she would be standing here one day. But what was even more unexpected to her was still at the back. Go, what are you waiting for? Knight Baishan tugged on Yi Menger's small hand and smiled faintly. Do we really have to go in? If you eat a king's dinner you'll be killed. Shi Mengye's small face was horrified. She knew that this restaurant was owned by a few big families in Qing Shui town, and was purely used for enjoyment and ostentation, not to mention going in to eat a king's dinner, even picking up a little bit of what others had left to eat, one would have to be served with a stick. This is not something that hasn't happened before. He he. Something tastier than steamed buns can be up there, if you're scared, then we'll leave now but you won't have the chance to eat something tastier than steamed buns for the rest of your life. Knight Baishan was still smiling. Yi Menger's small face revealed a tangle of colors. But if you don't have any money, how can you eat ah? The tone had loosened up a bit, and it was clear that the delicious ones were still very tempting to her. Eat first. Seeing this situation, Knight Baishan pulled Yi Menger forward as he walked into the drunken immortal building. He didn't give Chi Menor any material security, just to get her used to charging and facing the unknown. Both of them were dressed in tattered clothes, and seemed out of place with the people coming in and out around them, but Knight Baishan did not feel even the slightest bit rushed or uneasy. He just steadily moved forward. Chi Menor was miserable, she had never seen such a luxurious place in her life, and was afraid that she would dirty the place. The treatment was also vastly different from the others. The other people came in, the steward immediately came up to fawn on the inquiry, gesture put extremely low, and Knight Baishan two people, came in although not driven, but also no one came up to greet. The two of them, although they were not driven away, no one came up to greet them. Knight Baishan even more do not care, with Chi Mingye sitting on an empty seat, pouring tea and water for themselves. Big brother, let's just go. It's not too late to leave now. Yi Menger's little feet didn't even dare to touch the ground. She was afraid of dirtying the animal skin blanket under her feet. However, Knight Baishan was drinking tea on his own, without the slightest intention to pay attention to Yi Menger. A cup of tea was consumed. Only then did Knight Baishan slowly raise his head. 
In the midst of Chi Menair's frightened, puzzled, and doubtful eyes, he slammed the table and shouted and cried out. Are all the stewards of this restaurant dead? This cry also drew the gazes of the surrounding scantily clad diners, and the steward's fellows. The steward of course saw the night Baishi and two people, but a look at the ragged and shabby clothes, thought it was to ask for food. Ignore, will dare to speak naturally have guards to serve them. But did not think it is a hard stub, after all, even if there is really silver, also dare not roar so loud. Although the heart is still disdain, but the housekeeper or hurry forward to entertain. After all, the visitor is a guest. At that time if there is no money, eat in, also can let them spit out again. Guest. This drunken immortal house's food is very expensive, how about some steamed buns with pickles? The steward deliberately sarcastically said, the words were that you don't have money to hurry up and leave. After all, how could this restaurant have steamed buns with pickles? Blind your dog's eyes. Don't look at who the little master is, hurry up and put you guys this, on the stage of the food, all give me up, not less than a son of you. Night Beishuan's voice was loud, filled with confidence and unrivaled momentum, pressing the steward to death. The steward's eyes dripped. Young master, if you have silver on you, you might as well take it out and let everyone take a look, after all, we're a small business and can't afford to lose money ah. The steward's words attracted the surrounding people's onlookers, waiting to see Night Beishuan's jokes, Yi Mengret this time also gave her hand to stir into a twist, her small head lowered. Heard. Night Beishuan calmly drinking tea. You are when the dog went stupid? Really think of yourself as a dog? That there is eating first pay silver reasoning? Hurry up and serve me food, or else I'll smash your building. This word came out. The surrounding spectators withdrew their gazes, and Yi Menger also relaxed her body, staring blankly at Night Beixian. The steward pondered in place, and saw that although Night Beixian was dressed in rags, his aura and face were extraordinary, and instinctively thought that he was a downtrodden young master from somewhere. The first thing you need to do is to get a good deal of money to pay for it. Master wait a moment, small this will go to order food. The restaurant steward smiled lewdly and left. Chi Meng Er looked dumbfounded. Only three words, not only let others for their own on the wine on the food, even the name is changed, while the night Beixian is even half a son did not take out. At this time, she finally realized what night Beixian meant when he said, do it before you think about it. A seed of first do then think took root in her heart. Not long after, the restaurant fellows came with the dishes. A large four square table was set up to the brim with all sorts of mountain food and seafood. However, to night Beixian, these things couldn't even be considered pre-dinner snacks, and could only be said to be barely edible. But for Yi Menger, these things were more appealing to her than any delicacies, just smelling that fragrance, her mouth couldn't stop. Eat? What are you waiting for? Night Beixian grabbed the nearby green mouth brew and took a sip. Seeing that Night Beixian drank it with gusto, Yi Menger gulped a mouthful of saliva and couldn't help herself, thinking that after eating this meal, it would be worth it to be beaten to death. So she didn't hold back, and ate at the food on the table, her speed startling even Night Beixian. Then he laughed again and didn't say anything. In fact, doing all of this is to teach Imanger the way to survive, this world the people are being squeezed too hard, the gentry squeezed and finished, and then to the local officials. So ordinary to go to work, that at the end of the day may just not starve to death, dare to fight and dare to break through, death is also dead, but also better than suffering in the world. But once spelled out, that can be the glory and wealth, a lifetime of enjoyment. Just at this moment, Night Beishuan's ears twitched slightly, hearing a familiar word from the dining table not far away. Do you know that the tournament in Yujing is about to start again, and the rewards for the top list have an additional sleeping compass Dan, and I don't know why. What? Wasn't it just said to be cancelled two days ago? Saying that it's some kind of demonic sect that's raging and needs to be cleaned up? That's unknown, but I heard that it was because the empress made a deal with that sun and moon god sex devil, and that devil stopped. When you say it like that, it does seem to be the case. That black mass in the sky to the south is indeed getting smaller and smaller. Yes. To fight is to lose both so this is quite good, ha ha ha, it's none of our business, let's not chat about this, eat eat eat, gathering all the information into his ears, Night Beishuan's eyes narrowed slightly, his heart surging with excitement, sleep compass Dan, that was something he needed very much right now, sleeping compulsion Dan, the Dan, as its name suggests, could cause the compulsion to fall into a deep sleep for a period of time that depended on the quality of the Dan, the longest it could be could be one to two years, thinking for a moment, this Dan seems like it was intentionally prepared for me ah. Night Beishian sipped a mouthful of chinko brew, his face uncharacteristically pale as he muttered. These words were not nonsense. He was currently suffering from the past life compulsion, and he needed to take a large amount of heavenly treasures every once in a while in order to preserve his life. In the past, there was still Huama Shan worrying about heavenly treasures for him, but now it was all on his head. Although he still had several blind boxes that he hadn't opened yet, there wasn't much of the heavenly materials and geomatches that he had opened left after taking them. To sustain the parasites, it would take years and months. 
What's more, when this sleeping compulsion Dan was consumed and the compulsion fell into a deep sleep, it was very likely that he would be able to regain a portion of his cultivation. This is the key. At that time, casually robbed, robbed the treasury of the great Qian, will be the heavenly treasures in the bag. Still afraid that the parasites won't last? But the more so, the more he felt that there is a fraud. And I do not know if it is not an illusion. He always felt that this thing with the flowers between the dress cannot get out of the relationship. And the relationship is very big. Although there was always a bad feeling, and it was even possible that Hua Ma Shang was fishing for her own fish, but he still had to go to Yu Jing, even if it wasn't for the sleeping compass Dan, he still had to go. The capital of you is so big that there are a lot of capable people, maybe there are other people who can remove the past life parasites? And he also has a sister-in-law in the capital, I heard is in the business, at that time they can also go to defection, after all, although this is considered to be the great Qian, but in the vicinity of the broken dragon cliff, the land of the flowers between the dress. The first thing that you need to do is to make sure that you have a good idea of what you want to do. Night Bei Xian once again opened belly ready to eat, after all, he is immortal without cultivation, two days without food, certainly will be hungry. But look at the table, where is there anything on it? A porcelain bowl rubbing light, as if it was just taken out of the workshop, a little oil flour is not left. Look at Yimeng air, eat full of mouth flowing oil, small stomach rolled round, as if eating a broken meal in general. Are you, so able to eat? For the first time, Night Bei Xian faced Qi Menor with a different emotion. Wade will most likely be killed, can eat more to eat more ah, death also do a full dead ghost. Qi Meng Er said vaguely, really as if severed head rice to eat. Hearing this, Night Bei Xian let out a bitter smile, also did not say anything more, just pick up some of the remaining things to eat. Just like that. It didn't take long for a table of dishes to be swept away, and the porcelain bowl could be used as a bronze mirror when picked up. Yimengar sat on a chair, touching her stomach, not knowing what she was thinking, Night Bei Xian held a pot of chinko brew in his hand, pouring it down one bite at a time. Seeing that the food was almost done, the steward's fawning bowed his waist and walked up, this master, do you see that the food is okay? I'll make do. Night Bei Xian didn't even look the steward in the eye, just drinking his own wine. The steward who was choking was not angry, but instead was happy, after all, the person who was so picky and hadn't eaten a few mouthfuls must have been non-rich or noble in the past. Unlike some who have not eaten good food, see this table of food, really hate to swallow the porcelain bowl together. E Menger silently bowed her head. The hospitality is not good, it's off season now, the ingredients are rather poor. Next time master comes back, the restaurant guarantees to entertain with the best ingredients. This was not a compliment to Night Bei Xian. Whenever a guest was dissatisfied, the steward would respond with the same words and techniques, this was called stringing words. Good. Night Bei Xian still didn't care. Which, eat also eat, drink also drink, this meal money. Is not the time to end it? The butler smiled flatteringly, a large gold tooth showing. Hearing the words. Emenger shivered, knowing that what should come cannot be avoided, a pair of small hands grasped the dirty hem of the skirt with a death grip. Night Bei Xian also lost his calmness from earlier, his brows furrowed in anger, he slapped the wine pot in his hand and said drunkenly, Are you afraid that little master will underpay for your meal? The butler hastened to appease. No no, just eating also ate, the check is not natural? Then the painting style turned and said icily, Doesn't it mean that brother is planning to eat a king's dinner? The steward had dealt with this kind of thing for years, so his aura was taken very well, and ordinary people definitely couldn't withstand it, but Night Bei Xian wasn't an ordinary person, and stood up. You see that piece of meat on little master's body is worth money, so you cut it off with a knife and take it to settle the bill. The robust muscles wiggled slightly, a look of full disinterest. That dare not that dare not. The steward waved his hands repeatedly, before confirming his identity, he would never dare to ah, there are many big families here, it is not possible to say that it is the son of that family. After all, the chi is so sufficient, dare to in other people's territory, let other people take the knife to cut him, not have absolute confidence, that is a fool. And Night Bei Xian was clearly the former. The butler then bent down and did a no, retreating and leaving, disappearing into the lobby. E Menger had little stars in her eyes. Big brother, why didn't you say earlier if you had money? Night Bei Xian smiled faintly. When did I say I was rich? Begging for some gifts. Begging for five-star reviews. The moment these words came out. Originally, Imenger's slightly eased little face, wrinkled into a ball again. Ah, you actually. Imenger just wanted to say out loud, but immediately realized that something was wrong. A hand covered her small mouth, hard to hold back the word no money. Yeah, I don't have any money. Night Bei Xian, however, looked indifferent and said with a smile. Shu Imenger hurriedly made a gesture to shut up, and also looked around, seeing that no one was paying attention before saying, then what do we do? Hearing. Night Bei Xian did not answer. Then made a look of drunkenness, drunkenly said, the wine, is too much, help the little master to go to the outhouse. E Menger was puzzled. 
What time is it? Still need to go to the outhouse? But the night Beixian request, she is not good to refuse, then walked over to help the night Beixian to go to the outhouse. The surrounding fellows have seen, but also did not say anything, after all, this drunken ferry building everywhere are guards, and thatched room is also brick stone tile cover up, absolutely no escape possible. However, the steward is still not assured, the thief s eyes, signaling a few guards to go over to the stakeout. At this time, Night Bei Xian, Xi Ming Ye two people, walking on the road to the outhouse, Xi Ming Ye's petite body, tiptoe supporting Night Bei Xian looked a little funny. Had enough? Night Bei Xian asked soberly. Full. Yi Menger's small face was speechless, she knew that Night Bei Xian was pretending to be drunk. If we're full, then let's go. But we don't have any money ah. Uh. Night Bei Xian laughed twice with a debonair look, I, Night Bei Xian, have never given money for a meal. Not giving money? Then they can spare us? Yi Menger asked as she stared at Night Bei Xuan's handsome face. Whether they let us go or not, what does it have to do with us? Just walk away. Night Bei Xian said disdainfully. But, Qi Menger looked around at the unreachable walls, there was absolutely no chance of escape. But right at this moment, Night Bei Xian just slowly raised his hand and snapped his fingers, and the surrounding space began to become distorted, countless images flashed by, and the two of them disappeared in place. Seeing this scene, the few guards following behind them were all shocked. They rubbed their eyes, unable to believe that two large living people had actually disappeared like that right in front of their eyes. Crouching. Stop lying down and hurry back to tell the steward. A few guards ran to the steward's current and whispered a few words in his ear, followed by. The steward also revealed an unbelievable expression. Two big living people, just like that gone? Are you guys sure you saw it clearly? The steward said with obvious disbelief. Thinking that these two had enriched themselves and received favors. It's true. Several brothers saw it. The guards tried their best to explain. His expression was tearless. Go take a look. The words landed. The steward immediately brought a few guards and went to check. And at this time, in the VIP box on the second floor of the drunken immortal building, it's a spatial talent. The voice was mature and calm, but the tone was one of suppressed surprise. I didn't expect that this small Ching Shui town would actually have this kind of heavenly talent. The woman's voice was extremely soft and beautiful, just like a slowly flowing stream. Wearing a light white satin hat on her head, a small face is hidden in it, so that people can't peek at its true face. But even so, the outline revealed by the light veil brushing over the cheeks is enough to let people get addicted to it. The woman spoke again. Aunt you, if we can get this man to help, then things will be much simpler. The charming woman named Aunt Moon nodded slightly. But this man is obviously a scoundrel, I'm afraid that it's not good to deal with ah, although the long face. Some pity shook his head, gently blowing the tea in his hand. In order to sister's disease, can't care so much. The light veil woman's words revealed determination. Outside of Ching Shui town. Beside a small stream, Night Bei Xian was scrubbing his own body. Nowadays what is the situation of the current situation? Also probably understand almost, have to change clothes. I need to change my clothes and head to Yu Jing. If possible, that sleeping compass Dan he didn't want to miss out on. After all, as long as he got it, it was basically the solution to the past life compass. This was the solution to a big problem. Although his cultivation is all gone, but with his understanding of cultivation, as well as spatial talent, it is not difficult to take the top spot, afraid of the flowers between the dresses fishing. So now he was also torn. But no matter what, Yu Jing was a must go. Tidied himself up a bit, and took a set of black robes out of the spatial ring and put them on, a familiar scent came to his nose, it was left by the person who made the clothes for him. E Menger, who was hiding behind a rock, hadn't even gotten over from the shock yet, the scene just now simply shattered her three views. Is big brother a fairy? Did he come to save me? Yi Menger shrank behind a rock and muttered. At this time, Night Bei Xian had already dressed and walked over, and when he saw that Yi Menger was in a daze, he smacked her little head. What gods, hurry up and go wash, look at how dirty you are. Night Bei Xian said with disgust. Oh, the two of them cleaned up and once again returned to Clearwater Town. Night Bei Xian planned to find a merchant group that sold goods and then follow along to enter the Yujing, it would be more inconspicuous and convenient. Big brother, we didn't pay, isn't that not good? Shi Minger said halfway through her brewing on the side. Still dwelling on what happened just now. It's true that it's not good to eat without paying, but that's for others. Night Bei Xian looked around to see if there were any travelers who were preparing to depart or were passing by to rest their feet. Then did we do something bad? As if seeking an answer, Yi Menger looked at Night Bei Xian with wide eyes. No. The reason for that is for you to figure out on your own. Night Bei Xian didn't want to bother with this little girl anymore. He hadn't gone and founded the demon sect for the sake of not paying for his meals, but it was one of the reasons, right? What's more, Night Bei Xian had long since seen how this town operated. This clearwater town was surrounded by mountains on all sides and was very rich in resources, so merchants came here to mine supplies to send to the rich lands. 
a few cents worth of hay here, once it was shipped to places such as the Yujing and Jiangnan, the price would just go up dozens of times, and it wouldn't matter. So how can Qiminger be regarded as eating for free? It can only be regarded as collecting interest, ask him why he wants to eat? He did not eat it, just a few sips of wine. Just as the two of them were looking around on the street, the sound of steps behind them suddenly sounded like thunder. Loud shouts. Stop right there. Night Beixian and Yimenger turned their heads at the same time to see a group of big men, looking at the two of them with angry eyes. The middle-aged man who was tired and panting in the lead they also recognized. It was the steward of the drunken immortal mansion. You too, you actually didn't run after eating a king's dinner, and you still fucking dare to come back? Really looking for death. The steward then called out to the big man behind him. Go! How did they eat? Let them spit it out how they want. His voice was hoarse, clearly having been admonished just now. Knight Baishian was a bit surprised that it was actually possible to find this place after less than an hour. After all, this was a place of rest and recuperation, there weren't many people. However, he had no intention of continuing to waste time. Either roll or die. Knight Baishian exited icily, an ancient majestic aura instantly pressing down on the chests of the crowd. The crowd froze slightly. Immediately, a few big men blew up their cave heaven realm cultivation, dispersing this aura that was tangible and without substance. Boom! It's just a paper tiger, go. The one leading the group bellowed. The entire body directly bounced out. Then, several big men also pounced up together. In the middle of the inn, a lightly veiled woman silently watched all of this, and then sipped a mouthful of tea, her immortal voice curling up. Don't let me down ah. Today is the debut, has been looking at the results, the heart is both nervous and excited, really do not have the heart to write a book, you may not understand this mood, anyway, oh a chapter. In addition the plot. Originally, there was a plot in Qing Shui Town, but after some reader's suggestions, the author decided to skip it and go directly to the female lead. So this chapter seems a bit abrupt. One more. This author hates things like masks, doppelgangers, and disguises. So the male lead won't have any of those, so there will be a bit of a drop in intelligence and some people won't recognize the male lead as the former head of the demon sect. No rating yet. Ask for a 5-star review. Yesterday night. Sun and Moon Sect, the Sky Dome. The black gas above the dome was still spreading, with a tendency to engulf the entire Yuanzhou, and the entire sky was covered by the sun, with wild thunder churning. Connected to it are the strands of black silk emanating from the air pavilion. Within the pavilion, absolute colorful cold and clear flowers between the Zen sitting in the lotus platform, golden eyes slightly closed, a black silk robe eye-catching, snow-white hair windless automatic. The bracelet on her slender white beard shines brightly. However, she is not cultivating, but is using the demonic chi under the lotus platform to suppress the anxiety and thoughts in her heart, but the slight trembling of her petite body obviously has little effect. Right at this moment, a thin and inaudible sound of footsteps came from outside the door, and in an instant, the absolute beauty of the dark golden eyes of Hua Shang opened. Blood Pearl hurriedly came, and before she could kneel on one knee to report, she saw that Hua Shang was already suspended in midair, standing on the lotus platform imprinted by the golden ghost pattern. Have you found my senior brother? Hua Ma Sang tried to maintain her majesty as much as possible, but the worry in her tone was as bare as it could be. Sweating like rain and panting with exhaustion, Blood Pearl hurried back as soon as she found news of Night Beixian, and at this moment, her expression was relaxed as she replied. Report Lord. Lord Husband has been found. He was saved by a little girl, and is currently in Qing Shui Town, a few miles away from Broken Dragon Cliff. Blood Pearl kept in mind Hua Ma Shang's words, so she didn't disturb Night Beixian. A little girl. Hua Ma Shang's originally surprised face sank upon hearing this. Senior brother really doesn't let people worry. Hua Ma Shang's face changed dramatically. The extreme surprise and the ultimate killing chance were only in a split second. Feeling a gust of lingering wind blowing, Blood Pearl lowered her head even lower, not daring to have the slightest word. Of course she understood her master, and was also considering whether to tell the truth earlier, but in the end, forced by the majesty of Hua Ma Shang, she didn't dare to lie. A cold smile appeared on Hua Shan's absolutely beautiful face. Turning her back, without my permission, don't go looking for my senior brother's trouble first, let him recuperate for a while. The words landed, the whole person directly disappeared along with the lotus platform, leaving only a few petals that slowly fell and floated in the air, beautiful. The blood pearl made a respectful bow to the direction where Flower Shan had disappeared, and replied in a loud voice. Subordinate knows. I respectfully send my lord off. Ling Feng rustled, did not answer. Only then did Blood Pearl retreat and leave. Imperial Dynasty. In the night sky, the moon is cold and sparse, the color of ink is dyed, the imperial city is tightly guarded, the lights are bright, at 3 o'clock, the people on patrol are instead more than during the day. A phoenix robe of Qin Shuiang, walking back to the bedchamber of the road, very long tail drag in the white jade brick, 
a pair of jade feet on it is not stained dust. Willow eyebrows hooked very high under the pair of phoenix eyes, slightly tired, red lips like fire, a painting on the beauty mole is the eye-catching pen. The more Qin Shuayan walks, the more he feels wrong, why is there not a single palace made in this Taichu palace? Proud eyes narrowed slightly, came to the bedchamber door and pushed it open. This is how she is. Even though she knew there was a fraud, she was confident in her own strength and the preparations in the imperial city. So there was no first time to inform the guards. The door was opened, a stunningly beautiful person sat inside, lightly drinking tea, under the oil lamp, a face that was as beautiful as the country, and Qin Shuayue was in between, and even had to press the latter head to head. Seeing this person Qin Shuayue exclaimed in shock, Hua Ma Shang, you devil actually dared to be so bold? Trespassing into my Tai Chu palace, have you thought about the consequences? Qin Shuayue's figure lurched, fear rising in her heart. She regretted that she didn't go to Yun Zun at the first opportunity when she sensed something was wrong. The main reason was also because she felt that if Hua Mashang wanted to start a fight, it would be impossible for her to come first by herself, but she never expected it. Not only did Hua Mashang come, she was also the first to prepare to exterminate herself. I did not come today to kill you, it is to make a deal. Hua Mashang's aura was cold, and her black aura was rampant, displaying the ruthlessness and determination of a person from a demonic sect to the fullest. Qin Shuayue temporarily withdrew her mind. It was because she knew that Hua Mashang was a person who never lied and was straightforward, keeping his promises even though he was unusually brutal. Letting out a long breath, Qin Shuayue stabilized her mind and allowed herself to regain her aura as an empress, then entered inside the Tai Chu palace without closing the door. This way, if there was an abnormality, she could be the first to run and call Yun Zun. No wonder she was so cautious, it was mainly because the flower room raiment was simply too dangerous. You said you want to make a deal with me? What exactly? Qin Shuayue sat across from Hua Mashang and poured herself a cup of already cold tea. In order to appear sincere, Qin Shuayue referred to herself as I instead of this emperor. Hua Mashang also didn't make a fuss, pulling out a box from her sleeve, she smiled faintly and said, this seat will take back the demonic chi, and in exchange, you'll award this sleeping compulsion pill as a reward to the top ranker of the martial arts competition. Qin Shuayue saw that Hua Mashang really came to make a deal, and couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief after which he doubtfully opened his mouth, the competition has already been cancelled. This sentence was not a difficult one, but rather an attempt to trap Hua Mashang into saying something about the purpose of doing so. But Hua Mashang didn't eat this set of words at all. With a slight frown on her phoenix brows, she said flatly, it's cancelled, can't it be held again? These words came out. The entire Tai Chu palace was plunged into silence. Xin Shuayue, as a female emperor, was definitely eight-sided, but her methods were also definitely ruthless enough, or else she wouldn't be able to sit in this position. Now facing Hua Ma Shang this devil, but she is a little unsure of how to deal with the expression, seizure, he is not the opponent's opponent, not to mention that Hua Ma Shang is still here to negotiate peace, he cannot be seizure. But if you don't have a seizure, your own majesty as the great Qian Empress will be shattered all over the place. In the end, Qin Shuayue still chose to compromise, after all, she was different from Hua Ma Shang, she couldn't just ignore the people's deaths. Yes, I promise. Qin Shuayue's face was colorless, and she was also smart enough not to ask too much about the reason. Hua Ma Shang revealed an appreciative expression, before pouring out the tea and placing the teacup into her own sleeve. Standing up, it must be publicized outwardly in a big way, saying that this time, in the tournament in Yujing, the top prize will have a sleeping compass pill. Xin Shuayue looked at this scene with surprise, before realizing that the cup was Hua Ma Shang's own, and secretly thought in her heart that this Hua Ma Shang's cleanliness fetish was really serious. Then he replied, no problem. Although he didn't know what Hua Mashang's intentions were, but the unification agreed on the line, nothing else needed to be cared about, as long as Hua Mashang was able to withdraw the black chi, then everything would be fine. Aha! When Hua Mashang was about to leave, a penetrating immortal voice came, crisp, clear-hearted, not caring about anything in the world. You're trying to fish for that what's his name Night Beixian, aren't you? Yun Zun's tall and slender figure leaned against the gate of the Tai Chu Palace, the green jade gourd in his left hand never leaving his hand, drunk. Hua Ma Shang stopped her steps to leave and said coldly, Fishing for senior brother's fish? Oh, you have underestimated me, Hua Ma Shang, a little too much. If I want a fish, why don't I just go to Clearwater Town and catch fish? What's the point of laying bait? It was Yun Zun's turn to be confused. The fact that Night Beixian had been saved by a little girl in Clearwater Town was also told to her by her eyes, so she knew. Originally, she had thought that Hua Ma Shang had spread the news because she wanted to make an invitation, but now it seemed as if it wasn't the case. Qin Shuayue couldn't understand what the two were saying at all, only remembering the key name in there, the three words Night Beixian. Night Beixian? Shouldn't he be dead already? Could it be that he is still alive, and Hua Mashang is going to find and kill him? 
haphazard speculation could not get an answer, so no longer think about it, Yun Zun's arrival also let her sense of security doubled. Yun Zun's green silk fluttered. Don't tell me that you didn't do all this for your senior brother. His tone was certain, his eyes narrowed slightly. Of course it's for the sake of my senior brother, who in this world other than my senior brother could make me personally come here. Hua Ma Shang said rightfully. Knowing that he couldn't ask anything, Yun Zun simply stopped asking, all right. Since the deal is struck then there's nothing more to say, I'll leave first. Pouring down a mouthful of wine, he disappeared in place. Not a single breath was left behind, as if it had never come. A smile appeared at the corner of Hua Ma Shang's mouth. What she wanted was all of Night Bei Xian, any any, all, everything. This was the reason she was willing to endure loneliness. As for the function of the sleeping compulsion pill? Of course it was to destroy Night Bei Xian, to destroy everything about him, leaving only her, Hua Ma Shang. After Yun Zun left, Hua Ma Shang also no longer stayed, the golden ghost pattern petals of the lotus platform closed and gradually became smaller until they disappeared, the stunningly beautiful silhouette lost its trace. Xin Shui Yang let out a sigh of relief. Opening his palms, he found that they were full of beads of sweat. Facing Hua Ma Shang and Yun Zun, a leader of the righteous path and a devil of the evil cult, even if she was a female emperor, she still had to be inferior. Night Bei Xian. Slowed down Qin Shui Yue silently recited, their focus is on this person, it's necessary to investigate. Da Qian to the south. Qin Shui Town. Night Bei Xian knew nothing about these things that happened last night, looking at the big man who pounced up in front of him, his eyes turned cold and he shielded Qi Menger behind him. Things looking for death. Cursing darkly, instead of retreating, he advanced and grabbed a hand of the leader, followed by a kick to the stomach. He didn't have cultivation, so he was bound to be unable to fight hard at close range or be close quartered, and could only use his body strength and inertia to take on the enemy. The big man behind him rushed upwards with all his might, but he saw that the one leading him had already flown out upside down, and was surprised in his heart. But relying on the courage of many people, they wanted to charge forward again. Just at this moment, a heart-rending cry suddenly rang out. The crowd that was originally planning to go forward in hand tier night Bashian stopped and looked back, only to see the big man leading the charge sitting on the ground, howling at the top of his voice. There was nothing wrong with the person, but one hand was missing, not like a slash, not like an injury from any sharp weapon, as if that hand did not exist by nature. Roll at once. A calm, thick, cold and merciless voice rang out, followed by a strong arm. In the eyes of the crowd's surprise, the strong arm crossed the sky and landed at the feet of the steward, no longer alive. You. How did you do it? The originally victorious steward, who was sweating like rain at the moment, staggered and stumbled two steps, falling to the ground. Guess what makes me dare to eat a king's dinner? Night Bei Xian, however, was full of disinterest, staring at the steward with a smile. Distinguishing himself from jackals, wolves, tigers, and leopards, the steward felt like he was being stared at by an evil spirit. Sweat hair stood straight up all over his body, and goosebumps covered his body. Up, 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 kill him. The steward opened his mouth in terror, his body trembling and shrinking back. The crowd was silent, all of them not daring to go forward. What are you guys waiting for? If you don't go up now, when I report to the family head later, you guys will have to eat your words. The steward continued to supply fire and loudly scolded. The crowd was clearly extremely fearful of the family head in the steward's mouth, and they all looked towards Night Beixian. He doesn't have any aura on him at all, just now he was just playing some tricks, there's no need to be afraid. The lead shouted as another big man stepped forward. The crowd felt that the words were justified. Attack together. Don't give him the chance to play tricks. Good. The crowd agreed and wanted to go on again, but they were interrupted by Night Bei Xian. Wait. What? Are you scared? Someone laughed. Night Bei Xian sneered and pointed at the big man with the broken arm who was leading the group, his eyes teasing. The crowd glanced at each other, all a bit puzzled as the leader had no more voice and turned around to watch. However, they saw that the big man with a broken arm, who was still fine, had a wooden look at this time. Suddenly, numerous lines of blood appeared on his body from top to bottom, and then a person turned into many pieces. This scene paralyzed the crowd with fear, and there were some timid ones that directly shat and urinated in unison, the stench was unbearable. At once, the scene was filled with cries of alarm. The lightly veiled woman within the inn, her jade hand holding the teacup tightened. Spatial cutting. Status is very poor. Please readers greatly reward gifts to alleviate it. In addition, trouble more more attention, to a thousand fans, you can open a fan group, then we can discuss the plot together. You on continent, and even the entire 3000 Dao states, people with spatial talent are rare, not to mention people with corresponding techniques and extreme enlightenment. And Night Bei Xian, who could use spatial cutting, was proof that he possessed exactly these two things. As long as he's willing to make a move then sister will be saved. Tai Ling Ching Shui muttered under her breath, and the teacup in her hand had a few more cracks in it. Miss, it's better to think about it. 
The scene where Knight Baishian used space cutting just now was also seen by Yu Zhu, which is why he spoke out to remind her. Upon hearing this, Tai Ling Xue snapped back from her shock and looked at Yu Zhu in surprise. Why? He has excellent enlightenment and the Gung Fu corresponding to his spatial talent, can't we just talk to him directly? Moon Bamboo's mature and charming face revealed a sad expression. He has an excellent talent and a peerless technique, but precisely that's why we should be careful in dealing with him. Xu Zhu pulled the curtain shut to block out the light. In Tai Ling Ching Shui's urgent eyes, he continued, How can this kind of person be a mere mortal? Hearing Yu Zhu's words, Tai Ling Ching Shui fell into deep thought. Yes, how could it be possible that a person with a spatial talent would be a strong man doing hard labor? Even if he wasn't the pride of a great family, he should be the treasure of a certain power. After all, on Night Beishuan's body, Tai Ling Ching Shui didn't feel any cultivation at all, judging from this, the other party's strength must be unfathomable. As a ghost cultivator himself, it would be fine if he was discovered by these people, but if he told the truth about his sister, then things would be a big deal. After all, if they let the people of the righteous forces know that their ghost cultivator's leader was in a state, then they would be swarmed the next day. But sister. Even so, Tai Ling Ching Shui was still a bit unwilling, the small face behind the light veil was a bit ugly. It's fine, you can try to make contact, just don't talk about the Lord's matter. Yu Zhu also knew that the Lord's matter was urgent, so he planned to take a risk. At those words, Tai Ling Ching Shui's small face eased. Okay, it's a deal. The crowd below the inn had yet to disperse. Knight Baishian stood beside it, standing with his hands in the air, a highborn man's demeanor, a cold smile spreading across his mouth. Good words were hard to persuade the ghost of that death, he, Knight Baishian, was not a good person, especially in this place of black eating black. Being strong enough and sufficiently powerful was the basis for gaining a foothold, this was something he had understood since he was a child. E Menger's small hand that was gripping the corner of Knight Beishuan's pants trembled slightly. Eyes were tightly closed, but the slightest smell of blood still entered his nostrils. One last word, hurry up and get lost. Otherwise, he is your downfall. Knight Beishuan took two steps forward and pointed at a streak of blood on the ground and said. The crowd's souls were scared to the skies, how could they dare to be half as arrogant at this point? The steward sat on the ground unable to get up for half a day, dumbfounded. Hearing this, the crowd flew like an escape, do not dare to look back to see, was two big man racked by the steward directly fainted, foaming at the mouth, no consciousness. Seeing that the people were all gone, Knight Beishian waved his hand in a bored manner, and then patted Chi Menger, who had her eyes tightly closed. Go away. Yi Menger responded and hurriedly followed, not daring to look back at the puddle of blood. Big brother, where are we going? Yi Menger swallowed a mouthful of saliva and asked. Menger. Knight Beishian intended to throw the question out, letting Yi Menger choose to stay or go on her own. What's wrong? Big brother. Knight Beishian organized his thoughts and said as he walked. I'll be leaving for the Yu Jing soon, what are you going to do? The tone of his voice was flat and waveless. Ha! Huh? Hearing this, Yi Menger directly froze in place, a little bit of light flickering in her eyes. But, but, wanting to leave Knight Beishian behind, she couldn't find any reason. For a moment a tearing sound came from the hem of her skirt, that was caused by Yi Menger exerting herself too hard. Although she had been with Knight Beishian for only two days, it was these two days that she felt a different kind of care. Distinguished from her elder brother and mother, it was more like a stern yet loving master, although he wouldn't comfort himself, but when he finished all the dishes at the restaurant, Knight Beishian only smiled gently. These two days, she really felt alive, not being trained around like a dog, but everything was her own master, even if it was wrong. Three breaths later. Then can big brother tell me? Yi Menger choked a little, who? Tell me where you go. Knight Beishian stopped with his back to Yi Menger, and the setting sun stretched the shadows of the two of them very, very long. Oh, why? Yi Menger lowered her head as a single teardrop rolled down. The small hand that clutched the hem of her skirt made an unpleasant rubbing sound. When I find my mother in the future, I'll go look for you, and at that time, I'll treat you to a delicious meal. Knight Beishian smiled. How delicious. More delicious than everything. Yi Menger's reply was a little stupid, a little stuttered, no longer knowing what to say, Knight Beishian nodded and turned to face Yi Menger. Then I haven't eaten it. After the words turned, he smiled slightly and said, in order to avoid you going back on your word, let me help you find it. Big brother. Yi Menger's tears flowed freely, like crystal clear starlight, blown by the wind, floating into the distance. Menger. Knight Beishian also made a very appropriate expression, isn't it very touching? You're so bad. Yi Menger rushed up and flung herself into Knight Beishuan's arms, teardrops rolling down her face and snot flowing out of her nose. Knight Beishian didn't say anything. Deliberately teasing her was to see how Yi Menger reacted, it was his habit to test others' reactions more when there was room to do so. In going to understand a person more based on that reaction, it wasn't intentional, but a subconscious behavior. Dirty. Knight Beishian said as he looked at Yi Menger, who was crying into tears in his arms. 
And as if he Menger was coming on, she even rubbed against Knight Beishuan's body, before opening her large eyes and looking at Knight Beishuan innocently. Knight Beishuan laughed from the bottom of his heart. Living in an environment of intrigue and scheming for too long had resulted in having such an innocent and cute little girl, he instead relaxed his mind for the first time in a long time. Although it was very troublesome to help Chi Menger find her parents, and he himself was in a lot of trouble and might suffer death and danger at any time, but, forget it. Think of it as repaying this little girl for saving her life. Thinking of this, Knight Beishian still opened his mouth and asked, Menger, if you follow me, the whole way will be extremely dangerous, I can't completely guarantee your safety. Before Yi Menger spoke out, Knight Beishian continued, if you want to stay, I can give you silver, enough to live for the rest of your life. It wasn't nonsense, if Knight Beishian wanted it, he could always go to a pawn store, take out a heavenly treasure, and buy the pawn store piece by piece. I'm not afraid. Yi Menger stubbornly opened her mouth, this is two days, Knight Beishian asked, Yi Menger answered the most determined time, there is no one. Continuing. I want to follow big brother. I don't want to live that kind of life of looking at other people's faces anymore. Listening. Knight Beishian spoke. Very well. Then I'll be your master from now on. Knight Beishian was already making plans for his future squad, although Chi Menger was unbearable, strength could be piled up with heavenly materials, dragon vein essence, and loyalty was something that couldn't be exchanged for anything. A dog that grew up would be hard to tame, let alone a human, of course, Knight Beishian and Chi Mengye were considered to have what they needed. In Knight Beishuan's worldview, feelings and interests could exist at the same time without any problems. Hearing these words, Chi Menor directly closed her mouth in happiness, her large eyes were greatly shocked. Really? Really? As the words landed, Yi Menger hurriedly jumped down and knelt on the ground, Master is above, receive a bow from my disciple. Get up, still have to catch up. Knight Beishian smiled somewhat helplessly and hurriedly raised his hand. Yes, Master. Yi Menger replied with a smile. The setting sun was a scene of joy and happiness. The sky had slowly darkened, and the surrounding lights had been lit up, the gurgling stream, the rustling cold wind blowing through, the swaying willow trees, all of these signaled that the outside was no longer suitable for people to wander around, driving them to hurry into the house. Knight Beishian held Yi Menger as he walked down the street. Here were some inns, no restaurants, some horse teams, hauling merchants' resting places. Some were rushing at night, some were resting during the day, so they must not be noisy. Master, where are we going now? Yi Menger looked at the increasingly dark environment and said with some fear. First go to the pawn store to exchange some silver. Knight Beishian replied, his eyes looking around, constantly changing directions. Just like that, the two walked for a while longer. Right at this moment, a well-dressed person, dressed as a traveling merchant, kept walking towards Knight Beishuan's direction under the illumination of a servant's lantern. Knight Beishian stopped his steps, and Yi Menger hid behind Knight Beishian, only revealing a small head. Great immortal, great immortal, I don't mean any harm. The traveling merchant was somewhat obese, sweating like a pig after a few steps. Seeing Knight Beishuan's icy eyes, he hurriedly explained. Great immortal? Knight Beishuan narrowed his eyes slightly, savoring these two words before asking, What are you guys doing? Blocking my way, and why? Looking at the behavior of the traveling merchant, he was probably able to guess why this person called himself a great immortal. The traveling merchant hurriedly stepped forward. Great immortal, it's like this. I was able to take in all of your divine tactics this afternoon. Those people bullying men and women, we've sold as ginseng, the death is not unfair, the great immortal is also for the people to get rid of harm. Seeing that this person bragged about it endlessly, Knight Beishian hurriedly interrupted. Stop stop stop. What in the end? Seeing Knight Beishian frown slightly, the businessman knew that he had gone a little too far, and hastily compensated for his mistake, before saying. Not to hide from the great immortal, we are the horse team of the imperial dynasty, to transport the three inches of freshness that has just been fished out of the Qingxue river back to Yujing, but the robbers on the road are too fierce. So, the traveling merchant received a heavy box from the servant behind him, and then opened it, and under the illumination of the candlelight, it was flooded with silver blank. With this one hundred tails of silver, please trouble the Sien to escort a dart for us ah, said, revealing an expectant look. One hundred tails of silver? Knight Beishian revealed a look of contempt and wrapped his hands around his chest. This was actually a good opportunity. The dart was not to make money, but to enter the Yujing, so that he also had an identity and would not be suspected. Agreeing would definitely be agreeable, but others had called themselves to Xian, if they were taken down by a mere hundred tails of silver, what would it be if there were no ghosts? Hearing this, the businessman gulped a mouthful of saliva, being stared at by Knight Beishian made him unable to move, and a warmth surged in the small of his back. I know that superior immortal can't look at this silver, but it's all I can take out, please help ah. The traveling merchant lifted the box up and the man bowed deeply. When they came, the guards had been killed by the robbers without a single one left, if this didn't invite a great power with cultivation, their return to the Yujing would be the same as going to Hades. 
Of course, the main thing was that he knew that people of cultivation didn't have a particular need for silver. He had watched Knight Baishan turn around here for half a day and realized that Knight Baishan wanted to find a caravan to hide his identity and enter the U capital. That was why he dared to go up and ask. After all, this Qingshui town was the center of a three-way intersection, to the south was the Sun and Moon Divine Sect, the number one demonic sect in the Yuan continent, to the west was the Ten Thousand Ghost Cave, the gathering place of ghost cultivators, and to the north was Dechen, the seat of the righteous forces. So anyone in Clearwater Town, any identity is possible, and it's too normal to want to hide one's identity. However, he did not make this explicit, because some cultivators, the thing they hate the most is to be probed for their identity. To summarize, inviting Knight Baishan to go along was more of a case of seeking skin with a tiger, and the slightest mishap would lead to the end of all lives. Seeing that Knight Baishan was indifferent, the businessman bowed once again. This three inches of fresh meat is extremely fresh, but the preservation time is also extremely short, if I can't transport it back to Yujing within three more days, then I won't be able to keep my head. Seeing that the time is almost up. Well, Knight Baishan made a difficult look and pondered for a moment, just as well. It just so happens that I'm also going to go to the Yujing, so consider it a favor for you guys. Thank you great immortal. The merchant's face showed joy as he thanked loudly, and the servants behind him did the same. Knight Baishan pocketed the 100 tails of silver, and agreed with the businessman to leave the next day and meet up here, before leaving with Chi Menger. Senior. We have money. Chi Mengye grasped onto Knight Baishuan's large hand, her heart was uncontrollably excited. He he. Correct me, it's me who's rich, nothing to do with you. Knight Baishan said mercilessly. Ah. In the sound of Chi Menger's complaints, the two of them once again went up the commercial street once again, this place was different from just now where it was full of inns and horses, it was bustling beyond compare. It was hard to imagine that in such a place surrounded by mountains on all sides, there would actually be such a bazaar, I'm afraid that it wasn't much inferior to the commercial streets of Yujing. He gave Yi Menger some clothes, and washed the little girl clean and dressed her up in style, not to mention, cute. Master, how do I look? Yi Menger was dressed in a small purple skirt with white tassels floating behind her, her green silk was unusually smooth and tied up in a double ponytail. Not bad. Knight Baishan looked and nodded in satisfaction before going to settle the bill again. It was true that people relied on clothes and horses relied on saddles, dressing up nicely, it was indeed a little bit of the meaning of a great lady. Subsequently, Knight Baishan brought Chi Menger to enter the drunken immortal house once again, that's right, he, Knight Baishan, is this kind of person, doing things without leaving a line, will not see each other in the future. This time and last time can be different, a large small two people went in, the steward immediately welcomed up, next to the dignitaries turned a blind eye, as if they did not see. Aya, Grandpa, ah, you are my own grandfather. Don't come messing around okay? It's almost time to eat a meal. The steward was still the original steward. He was also really stingy. If other people see such a powerful person, it is too late to bow to it, the steward cared about that little meal money. Still not afraid at all, think a life is almost. He he. Knight Baishan smiled and patted the steward's shoulder, serve the food is, not less you a son. After taking Chi Mang air strutted in. The steward secretly cursed, can only be to go to serve food, after all, come hard can not the inn next to the pile of. Still no one to collect the body it. Not a moment. A table of dishes came up, or the last time that configuration, absolutely no stealing caddy less too. Menger ripped open her small mouth and wanted to gorge herself, but was stopped by Knight Baishan. Menger, chew slowly. Swallowing your plate with hatred, that's the way beggars eat, are you a beggar? Knight Baishan knocked on the table and asked. Menger was stunned. Oh then chewed and swallowed slowly. Knight Baishan shook his head and no longer paid attention to Menger but turned aside with a smile and looked at the steward. Oh, the steward's goosebumps rose and he swallowed a mouthful of saliva, if there's nothing else. As he spoke, the stewards kept retreating, but was called back by Knight Baishan, there's no rush. The steward spat out a breath and once again stepped forward, fawningly asking, what else does the lord have to do? Knight Baishan pulled out three silver dollars from his pocket and placed them into the steward's hands. My lord, what do you mean by this? The stewards was a bit puzzled and had a dumbfounded look on his face. Last time's meal money, and this time's meal money, the extra well, consider it your hard-earned money. Knight Baishan grabbed the muscle brew on the table and dunked a mouthful. This this this, how can this be afforded? The steward was astonished. Saying so, he still put the silver into his pocket. Knight Baishan looked speechless for a while. This was the demeanor of a restaurant steward, a miser. Of course, the silver isn't given to you for nothing, you have to honestly explain one thing to me. Knight Baishan squinted at the steward, the corners of his mouth grinning. Of course, of course, no at all, no at all. The stewards thought it was something and was startled, but once he heard that it turned out to be a question, he collected his fear. Knight Baishan narrowed his eyes slightly. This afternoon, how did you guys learn that I was near the inn? Who? 
told you guys? Hearing this, the steward immediately sweated like a pig. Eh? This. Knight Baishan didn't directly ask the reason, instead he was certain that someone must have told the steward, it wasn't just intuition, it was also a judgment of the many strange phenomena. Just today, after going out from the drunken immortal mansion, he had felt a line of sight from time to time, but nay, he didn't have the cultivation to find the owner of the line of sight. The air froze. The steward seemed to be independent of, outside of the surrounding hot meals and boisterous guests, and didn't answer, but instead panicked and reached into his sleeve to fumble for something. Knight Baishan pressed the steward's fumbling hand down. Is there something you can't say? So eager to return the silver to me? Knight Baishan's eyes were extremely dangerous. He had never kept overnight grudges in his life, and suddenly realizing that he was being targeted, a feeling could be imagined. My lord, don't make it difficult for me, a small person, I can't say it. The steward had a dead horse look on his face and said with a crying voice. Can't say? I don't think there's anything I can't say ah? Knight Baishan smiled as he looked at the steward, his hand grasping his arm and slowly applying pressure. This this this. The steward was on the verge of crying. Knight Baishan didn't care half the time. If the steward continued to be obstinate, he didn't mind removing one of his hands first. A member of a devil's sect should do what a member of a devil's sect should do, not to mention that he was a former sect master. When he came across this kind of thing, the steward's desire to cry was tearless. This afternoon, the steward and the others really didn't know where Knight Baishan was going, and when they were annoyed, a charming and gossamer woman with green pheasants came and told the steward about Knight Baishan's location. The woman looks extremely bewitching, as if she was born with charming bones, the enchanting immortal voice that enters one's bone marrow, letting all the men present stay. The steward because he had to go to catch the Knight Baishan who ate the king's dinner, also did not bother about that light veil woman, but thought that the light veil woman will not end too well, after all, in the drunken immortal building, there are not a few people who have been charmed by her. But when the steward from the night Baishan hands survived, returned to the drunken immortal building when an odor of blood loomed within the building. He was the only steward left behind, which was why he still hadn't gone to rest after being so irritated and was still sticking to the drunken immortal building. Because there was no one else left in the press. Lord Ah, you immortals fight, so don't spill over to me and other mortals, I have an old man and a young man. The steward still kept bowing and apologizing. This scene also drew the attention of the surrounding people. The crowd revealed surprised expressions. Usually the steward that is the god Ah, relying on their own surname Lin today looked down on this, tomorrow Ian and Yang that. This how? To a young man kept bowing? And face all fear, mouth all flattering? You have an old man and a young man? Do you really have one? How come I don't know? Knight Baishan had already somewhat suppressed his hostility and said flatly, his expression smiling. My lord. My lord. Don't be like this. I. The steward couldn't wait to hit his head. Knight Baishan words in the meaning of where he could not hear. If he didn't let the other party be satisfied, then his family would be finished. Although he knew that it might be a threat, but with that he could tell that the young man in front of him was definitely not a righteous person. After all, the most taboo thing for a righteous person was to bring things to their family. One last question, to speak or not to speak. Knight Baishan let go of his arm and sipped his own wine. Not taking a proper look at the steward. I. The steward clenched his teeth and was planning to tell the whole story, but right at this moment, a mature voice rang out, pretending to be cool and charming. This gentleman, my sister invites you to the box. The tone was flat, yet curious. Knowing that this was probably the source, Knight Baishan glanced at the steward next to him who was about to pee in fear. Menger, go up and eat. Standing up between the words, he led E. Menger up the stairs. Seeing this, the stewards directly collapsed to the ground, letting out a long breath and the people around him waited until Knight Baishan had left before they dared to come up and take a look. Steward, are you alright? A customer asked. Old me almost lost my entire family, you tell me. The steward gave a cross cry. After getting up and leaving Gray, lead the way to the mature woman, a white veil, wearing although not exactly exposed, but compared to the average woman is still much cooler, pearl jade chain hanging in the ankle, veil skirt is extremely close to the body, and there is no general women's tassels. Some like the western region side of the dress. Knight Baishan avert his eyes, he now for women still have psychological shadow. Arrived, Gongzi please come in. The pretense of a cool voice rang out, echoing at the end of the long corridor. Aha! Without hesitation, Knight Baishan pulled Chi Menger into the private room, and the rear mature woman followed, closing the door gently. The box was large. A piece, a row of exquisite things decorated on both sides, rockery flowing water, green plants and fish shells, all of them, beautiful. In this kind of environment, people's appetite will be much better. In the center is a big long table, which is full of delicacies. Opposite there is a woman, green but charming full, light veil caressing the face, it can make people sink into it. Although the scenery and people are beautiful, but the night Bei Shen cannot have the heart to appreciate these, do not need to familiar woman opening, 
self-centered with Chi Meng Er sat opposite that light veil woman. Cooked woman reacted, and that light veil woman sat together. Tell me, what do you guys mean? Knight Beishuan's tone was unkind as he stared at the two. Ha! The laughter seduced the heart, like an elegy under the night that could invite people into death. I think the gentleman is mistaken. The little woman has no intention of offending. Knight Beishuan motionless, see the veil woman so attitude also came to the interest, reached out to take the veil woman handed over the fragrant tea, gently sip. E Menger looked a bit rushed, her cute little feet kept swaying, looking at the light veil woman a bit shy. Menger, eat. Night Bei Xian stroked Qi Menger's small head, the hair that was combed meticulously, popped out a few stray hairs. Oh, only after Qi Menger moved her chopsticks did Night Bei Xian look at the light veil woman again, signaling her to continue. The lightly veiled woman put her teacup down. My name is Tai Ling Xing Shui, a ghost cultivator of the 10,000 Ghost Cave, and this time, I am going to Yu Jing to participate in the competition. Afterward, she said to the mature woman. This is Yu Zhu, my sister. Knight Beixian also put down his teacup. HM. And then? Why did you tell that steward that I was near the inn? The tone was neither happy nor angry. Tai Ling Ching Shui was silent for a while, and Knight Beixian could imagine the woman's tangled face within the light veil. Afterward, he opened his mouth. My young lady really had no choice but to do this, because there was something I wanted to bother you with, so I came up with this plan to test if you have that ability. Defeating a few cave heaven realm cultivators wouldn't be enough to win the top spot in the tournament, but as long as Knight Beixian had made a move, it was evident in the pipe. Instead, Knight Beixian ignored the question. He spoke to himself. Tai Ling clear water? Well, the leader of the 10,000 ghost cave seems to be surnamed Tai Ling, right? Sipping tea in his mouth, he raised his eyes and surveyed Tai Ling Qing Shui, distrust in his eyes. The entire box fell into a dead silence. Lord Ghost King is indeed surnamed Tai Ling but my daughter does not have any relationship with her. Tai Ling Ching Shui froze slightly before replying in a charming voice. In that case, Knight Beixian once again put his teacup down, since Miss Ching Shui has no sincerity, then I see no point in talking about the next matter. Saying so, he was about to get up. Tai Ling Ching Shui, however, hurriedly reached out to stop her, a demonic flavor spreading all over the box. Your Excellency, stay back. Knight Beixian originally didn't intend to leave, after all, he could still extort a sum of money. It's just that if the other party didn't tell the truth, he would have concerns, so that's why he forced the other party a bit. Also did not answer, then sat down. At this time Yu Zhu put down his teacup and asked. Dare to ask your name? Night Bei Xian. Tentatively three words, but the sense of oppression is like a heavenly tripod. The Night North Xian who took out the green mouth brew slowly said. Ghost cultivators are even more unpopular than their demonic religion, he is not afraid to be these people know the true identity. And now sitting in the sun and moon god religion is not him, there is no need to cover up, do not let the righteous people know on the line. Hearing this, the box once again fell into a dead silence, Tu Ling Ching Shui, Yu as you two people through frozen place for a long time cannot return to God. This Yuan continent is full of all sorts of legends, capable people come and go, there is no lack of some Dao son, emperor son, taboo, and so on unicorn child, they command the young generation of Yuan continent. Pressing everyone down, they couldn't breathe. But there was just this one person. Cave Heaven at the age of 3, Spirit Transformation at the age of 7, and Marquis at the age of 9. At the age of 11, with the body of a mortal and the peak cultivation of a Marquis, he fought alone against the 10 peak demonic beasts of the illusory forests inscriptions, staining the sky with blood. The three days and three nights of fierce battle allowed him to be reborn in Nirvana. 11 years old, early stage of inscription. A single person, a cold figure, made all the young generation cultivators in the Yuan continent tremble with fear. No one dared to claim invincibility anymore. No one dares to say undefeated anymore. In the cold year of the winter moon, the head of Lysi, who was entrenched in the broken dragon cliff, specializing in alchemy with living people, as well as the twelve disciples under his seat, all of them were beheaded at the bottom of the broken dragon cliff. He was only seventeen that year. The blood flowed into a river, and the heavy rain washed over the bottom of the cliff, all the crimson blood water, which has not changed to this day. After this battle, he broke through to Zuni. With a wave of his hand, the sun and the moon changed the sky, sweeping away all the remaining forces of the broken dragon cliff, and establishing a new force. The sun and moon sect. It is often said in the mouth of Mr. Storyteller. Cultivators who were born in the same era as Knight Beixian are lucky and unfortunate. Fortunately, they could witness the rise of an amazing power. Unfortunately, as long as Knight Beixian was still around for a day, then the rest of the Yuan continent's cultivators would only be able to play supporting roles. Are you really Knight Beixian? Tai Ling Ching Shui slowed down for a long time before exiting to ask, his tone filled with incredulity. As good as fake, Knight Bei Xian replied. Talking business with the people of the 10,000 Ghost Cave was something he was quite interested in, or else he wouldn't have revealed his identity. 
That makes sense. Yushu said slowly, as if he had solved the confusion in his heart. Seeing that the two seemed to still have questions to ask, Knight Baishan frowned and spoke in a cold voice. Can you all be honest now? If there's any more concealment, I'll turn around and leave, never staying. Knight Baishan poured wine into his teacup and drank it down. Tai Ling Xingxue swallowed her doubts and, through the light veil, glanced at Yuzhu, who also looked at her, then Yuzhu sighed and nodded. Having received permission, Tai Ling Xingxue was obviously much happier, and her range of motion was not as restrained as earlier. I'm sorry, Mr. Knight, as a demonic sect, you should understand the difficulties of us ghost cultivators, right? So I also hope that your excellency will be generous and not affect our next cooperation. Knight Baishan didn't say anything, only nodding faintly. Of course he knew that as a ghost cultivator the more cautious he was outside the better for sure, if it wasn't because he wanted his help, otherwise Tai Ling Ching Shui was afraid that he wouldn't even say that he was from the 10,000 ghost cave. Reintroduce, my name is Tai Ling Ching Shui, this is Yu Zhu, my escort. Tai Ling Ching Shui introduced, like a girl who hadn't had much contact with the Red World. HM. What's your relationship with the leader of the 10,000 ghost cave? Knight Baixian interrupted Tai Ling Ching Shui and asked. I'm her sister. All right. Let's get straight to the point of what exactly do you want me to do? Solving the doubts in his mind, Knight Baixian went straight to the point without hesitation. Having already said this, Tai Ling Ching Shui also had no more worries and spoke out in her head. Lord Knight should know that we ghost cultivators have a very long lifespan, and my sister, who is the ghost king, has lived for tens of thousands of years, since the age of the end of the law. Tai Ling Ching Shui fell into reminiscence. A few thousand years ago, my sister suddenly said that she wanted to shut down, who knows what the reason was, the only thing that was wrong before that was that my sister, she spent the whole day holding a button and looking at it, and there was also a strand of hair inside. Speaking of this, Tai Ling Ching Shui's tone was hard to suppress her anger. It's a man's. Knight Baixian nodded and yawned. I didn't realize that Tai Ling Ching Shui was still a sister controller. During my sister's slumber it was Anchu and I who were managing the 10,000 ghost cave, but the ghost cultivators didn't really listen to us, and after my sister slumbered for too long, the many ghost cultivators all left and set up their own mountains, no longer returning to the 10,000 ghost cave. Now that my sister has awakened, the numerous ghost cultivators have also returned, originally everything was going in the right direction, but my sister is a bit off. Tai Ling Ching Shui sounded worried. If we let the righteous path, or if we let the ghost cultivators within the 10,000 ghost cave notice that something is wrong with sister, then everything is over. Knight Baixian nodded in understanding. Ghost cultivators do or some of the anger of the heavens and people, its own is nothing humane to speak of, all believe in the supremacy of strength, if you let them know that the chief has a problem, then the consequences can be imagined. Killing the master usurping the throne is light. Then what exactly is the problem with your sister? Tai Ling Ching Shui organized his language before slowly saying, my sister she. Hysteria? Knight Baixian narrowed his eyes slightly and swallowed a mouthful of wine, somewhat incredulous. How could a person who had lived for 10,000 years get hysteria? Shouldn't that kind of thing be something that only people who were not strong-willed and lived in fantasies all day would get? Yes. Tai Ling Ching Shui's expression was also very helpless, having a huge headache about it. Sister she would talk nonsense from time to time since she woke up, and she also spoke to the air, saying something like little Shinner, don't leave her? Speaking here, Tai Ling Ching Shui's tone was already vaguely off. It was followed by a sigh. What remains unchanged is that that button is still being collected by my sister as if it were a treasure, taking it out from time to time to look at it, and revealing a happy smile. Tai Ling Ching Shui had never seen her parents, her sister was all she had, and now that her sister was pining for someone like this, she was both worried and jealous. After all, she had never seen her sister smile before, let alone smile happily. For some reason, hearing this, Knight Beishuan's heart thumped, but quickly recovered. Shook his head, only thought it was because of Hua Ma Shang, he had a natural fear of this kind of obsessive extremely deep woman. No longer paying attention, he stroked the small head of Emanger who was feasting next to him. All right, probably I already know the matter. Tell me what you want. Knight Beixian went straight to the point. The meditation mirror. It's our goal this time, and it's in the Great Qian Treasury. The top prize winner of the tournament will have a chance to enter the treasury and pick something inside. So, so you want me to help you guys take the meditation mirror? Knight Beixian finished for Tai Ling Ching Shui. At those words. Tai Ling Ching Shui retracted his body that was leaning forward due to excitement and slowed down a bit. Yes. Only the divine artifact meditation mirror can get my sister out of hysteria, and with time running out, it has to be taken care of before anyone else realizes that there's something wrong with my sister. Otherwise, Tai Ling Ching Shui lowered her head, a light veil separating her face, Knight Bei Xian could still feel the helplessness. Otherwise the 10,000 ghost cave will be finished. At this time Yuazhu also stood up. The close-fitting white veil slowly creased at the waist, about a please. 
As long as I can get Lord Ghost King out of hysteria, on a mountain of swords and in the sea of fire, I, Moon Bamboo, am obliged to do so. Seeing this, Tai Ling Xing Shui also followed suit, standing up and bowing deeply. A flirtatious mature woman, a young girl whose coolness was mixed with charm, the request of such two people, in this world, few men could refuse. But not coincidentally, he Knight Bei Xian was one of them, after all, in beauty can be beautiful than his senior sister? So the beauty plan is the most useless to him. Lightly sip a mouthful of tea. Help no problem, but don't draw me a big cake, put the benefits in advance to understand, so also let me some motivation is. Knight Bei Xian said so. Tai Ling Qing Shui and Yu Zhu sat down. I don't know what kind of things do you want, mister? Knight? Tai Ling Qing Shui asked, her voice carrying a hint of seduction. Knight Bei Xian didn't eat this. Heavenly materials and treasures, lots of heavenly materials and treasures, I want all the heavenly materials and treasures in your 10,000 ghost cave. Boom! The lion opened his mouth. The two didn't agree the first time, glancing at each other as if making eye contact through the light veil. Knight Bei Xian didn't rush, he just waited patiently, he believed that the two wouldn't refuse, after all, even more heavenly materials and geomancers had to be preserved. Now the ghost king hysteria is getting more and more serious, when the time comes to be discovered by the traitor, after the transmission back to the great Qian, then everything is finished. Maybe hit the 10,000 ghost cave, the ghost king is still in their own fantasies cannot be extricated. Not surprisingly, Knight Bei Xian expected. Tai Ling Ching Shui nodded. No problem, as long as we can get the meditation mirror, all the heavenly treasures in the 10,000 ghost cave will be given with our hands. Although it was extremely painful but it couldn't be helped, curing his sister's hysteria was the top priority. Other than that, let's talk about it later, I don't have time to pay attention to it now. It's also helpless. If it wasn't for the age restriction of this martial arts competition, she would have been able to compete on her own, thus taking the top spot. Good. It's decided. Knight Beixian also appeared happy and pushed his teacup out, clinking it with the two as a sign of cooperation. Originally, he had planned to move the national treasury. But there were too many secret treasures in the Great Qian's treasury that were too deeply involved, so he could not move as much as he could, of course, if at the end of the day, adding the heavenly treasures from the 10,000 ghost cave was still not enough. Then, he could not care less about the depth of the involvement. Great Qian's treasury is just as daring to rob. Happy cooperation. The three of them drank tea. Tai Ling Ching Shui lifted the light veil, revealing only a dot of starlight flickering pink lips, gently drinking the fragrant tea. Only revealing a jade-like chin, Knight Bei Xian retracted the thought of his just now, Tai Ling Ching Shui's posture definitely had the capital to use the beauty trick on himself. Seeing that Knight Bei Xian kept staring at himself, Tai Ling Ching Shui revealed a meaningful smile. Miss Ching Shui, since we're all cooperating, don't cover up, let Knight Mao take a look at you, or else we won't even know who we're cooperating with. Knight Bei Xuan's curiosity about beautiful women wasn't considered heavy, but there was no such thing as a man who wasn't curious about beautiful women. Another thing was what was said just now, if one didn't even see the face, it was inevitable that the follow-up would be fearful, and the cooperation wouldn't be smooth and suspicious. After all, bring a light veil. Who knows if it's the same person behind it. He he. Laughter clear and charming. Since Mr. Knight wants to see, there is no reason for the little woman not to be satisfied. Said the fragrant light veil, slowly removed, white ribbon fluttering. Just a glance, is 10,000 years. Knight Bei Xian stayed. Please gift ah, recently the data is so bad, the author can barely catch up with the warmth. If you want to enter the mysterious organization, there is a mysterious code at the end of the last chapter, so you can enter it. Tai Ling Ching Shui was as if she was a natural beauty, only slightly green because she was still young, and her face appeared much sharper than the softness of Hua Ma Shang. That kind of extremely aggressive beauty was like a sharp arrow, seeing it plunged into one's heart. That charming full of beautiful eyes, just like the seductive soul of the treasure pearl, let a person upside down, let a person sink, cannot extricate themselves. Pink lips and the illumination of the oil lamp flooded with a little bright light, like a ripe cherry in the fall, presenting the most natural state in the sun, beautiful. One breath. Two breaths. It took a full three breaths for Night Bei Xian to get out of that nightmarish demonic spell. I've heard many times that ghost cultivator women are unstoppable in their charm, and when I see them today, I'm not exaggerating. Knight Beixian drank a mouthful of herbal tea and suppressed the fire in his heart. These years, ghost cultivators did not make a lot of noise, so this is also counted as his first real contact with ghost cultivators, but it was a lesson for him. Don't say those mysterious and unpredictable ghost art, just by virtue of appearance can kill in the invisible. If it is not his determination is strong enough, and for the beauty of immunity is also strong, otherwise it is really not good from the detachment out, other people, may really become a puppet. He he. Little woman bushy willow posture, and how can it compare to the sun and moon divine sex sect master, the flower between thee? Tai Ling Ching Shui looked happy, twirling her fingers and laughing lightly. 
She was also very interested in Knight Bei Xian, a legend of the Yuan continent, and to be able to rely on her looks to mesmerize such a person, her sense of accomplishment could be imagined. Miss Qing Shuei is modest. Knight Bei Xian shook his head with a bitter smile and said modestly. Truly comparing her looks, Flora Xuan could be considered the best in the Yuan continent, and even the 3000 Dao states. However, that flirtatious and enchanting, soul-capturing temperament, and posture was something that Hua Ma Shang did not possess. Tai Ling Xingxue put the white silk bucket hat back on, the light veil brushed her face, and her jade face was hidden. There is no modesty. My sister can look much better than me, is Mr. Knight interested? Tai Ling Xingxue said with some playful seduction. Only the technique was a bit clumsy. Heard. Knight Bei Xian snorted. Let's talk about it later. Tai Ling Xingxue didn't continue to say anything but started to dine under Yu Xu's hospitality. In roughly three incense sticks of time, there were only some bones and vegetable leaves left on the table from the mountain food and seafood. Most of it was for Night Bei Xian and Qi Menger to eat. The way Tai Ling Qing Shui ate was similar to the way she looked, with a beautiful color, a lady's style, chewing slowly, and eating without missing a tooth. Looking at the food almost done, Night Bei Xian put down the muscle brew in his hand and said to the crowd at the table, Since it's all been decided, how about leaving tomorrow? Is it a direct departure to Yu Jing? The tournament is still some days away, there's no need to be in such a hurry. Yu Zhu opened his mouth and asked, voicing his thoughts. It's like this. Knight Bei Xian spoke of his matter with the shipping merchant, and hoped that Tai Ling Qing Shui and the others, could travel with him. After all, that meditation mirror was just a show of hands, and all of the heavenly materials in the 10,000 ghost cave, that was a real one, so they mustn't be allowed to get lost. Tai Ling Qing Shui pondered for a moment. Also good, so that entering the city will not expose the identity, but also convenient to follow up the action. The tone was cold. The main thing was that it didn't matter if they were exposed or not. After all, the news of the awakening of the ghost king of the 10,000 ghost cave was only known by the ghost cultivators, and the forces of the righteous path would not be too full to find the trouble of the ghost cultivators of the 10,000 ghost cave. After all, in the right way to think, because of a small matter, will be the ghost king woke up, the loss is not worth it. Right now, a sun moon divine sect was enough of a headache for the righteous path, and it definitely wouldn't be willing to cause any extra trouble. Night Prince you have to be careful ah, now it is the stage when the righteous path and your demonic religion are fighting, the slightest scuffling, I'm afraid you. Yu Zhu didn't say the rest, because it is hard to hear. If at this juncture, Night Bei Xian's former demon sect master's identity was discovered in Yu Jing, then it could be said to be certain death. Unless Hua Ma Shan was willing to fight with everything she had, only then would there be that slight possibility of being saved. Night Bei Xuan's face also became ugly. How could he not know that the righteous path wanted to get rid of him? But the Yu Jing he had to go to, and now there was even less of a choice. Sighing, I, Knight Bei Xian, started killing demonic beasts at the age of three, and at seventeen, I beheaded the head of the refined life demon monarch, which time wasn't a dance at the tip of a sword. I still didn't survive. As the crowd stared, Knight Bei Xian took a sip of Chinko brew and continued. Three years of peaceful life is somewhat rubbing out my sharpness, I actually hesitated just now, it's really ridiculous. With a despondent expression, he took another large sip. The room was silent for a while. After resounding applause. Indeed, only someone like you who is indomitable and dares to break through regardless of whether or not there is a mountain of blades and a sea of flames in front of you will be able to manage to steadily suppress the heavenly pride of an era. Tai Ling Ching Shui said with slight admiration and applauded. Yi Menger also stopped eating and looked at her own master with a face of admiration, with little stars in her eyes. Let's not talk about this, let me take you to the inn and tell that businessman to leave another carriage out. Knight Bei Xian smiled and said, It just so happens that we are also going back to the inn. As they spoke, the crowd got up and left. Within a few moments, a group of four people arrived at the inn. The surrounding lights were dim, the sound of horses neighing sounded from time to time, and all sorts of goods were laid out in a way that made people overwhelmed. Knight Bei Xian found a merchant named Wang Fortune inside an inn, their party had bought some food because they were afraid that the goods would be stolen, so they stood guard next to the carriage and didn't move an inch. Seeing that the visitor was Knight Bei Xian, Wang Fortune immediately stood up and greeted him. Great immortal, coming to find me so late, is there something wrong? Wang Fortune wiped his mouth and said, Ah, nothing much. Knight Bei Xian followed along and walked into the inn, just wanted to ask if there are any more carriages? I have two more people here. The words reached here. Only then did Wang Fortune and the people behind him notice that there were two more people behind Knight Bei Xian, like fairies. The crowd was dumbfounded by what they saw, although Tai Ling Ching Shui was lightly veiled but that temperament, and body was enough to call it the only one in the world. A group of mortals were to see such beauty fairy. They were close to having their mouths watering. Yu Xu slightly owed her body in greeting, while Tai Ling Ching Shui stood in place without making a move. She herself was an extremely proud person, 
Facing Knight Bashian she could greet him with a smile and even go so far as to put her body down to seduce him, but other people? One could only say that they didn't care. Shang head? How is it? Knight Bashian shook Wang Fortune's shoulders and asked. Eh? Oh oh. Wang Fortune slowed down and sighed in his heart what a bewitching woman. It must be a woman of the great immortal, so he didn't dare to be looking around. Carry jaw. Sorry to Sien, this is really no, the other are used to load three inches of fresh, de Sien's that carriage are vacated. Wang Fortune said with a bitter face, his tone extremely sincere, afraid of upsetting Knight Baixian. This way ah. Knight Baixian for a moment also feels some difficult to do, after all, with him a carriage then, it is a bit crowded, the daughter's ultimately inappropriate. Thinking about it. Just as he wanted to ask Tai Ling Ching Shui's opinion, a voice with a slightly positive color rang out. How about letting this fairy share a carriage with me? If you are in a compartment with a great immortal, four people would seem crowded, and I happen to have only one person here. As the words left his mouth, a young guy with an eight-character beard imprinted on his thick lips walked out, his physique was not considered obese, but his head was large. His eyes were clear and the corners of his mouth carried a smile. Upon hearing this, Wang Fortune immediately turned his head to stare at his son and made a strong wink, while Wang Er returned a reassuring expression and continued to smile. Tai Ling Ching Shui stood in place without the slightest movement or opening his mouth to speak, and Knight Bei Xian's eyes narrowed slightly as a smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. This one is? Wang Fortune immediately walked up and replied. This is my indisputable son. Named Wang Er, not too young, thought of bringing him out to experience. Although the words were unpleasant, in his tone was a pride that could not be hidden. After all, this son of his, from a young age, was very resourceful, and was very good at finding opportunities, and his vision of things was never wrong, playing small was his pride. Wang Er. Knight Bei Xian shouted. The teasing intent in his tone was overflowing, precisely under me. Although Wang Er was ugly, his cultivation and behavior were extraordinary. This made Knight Bei Xian look twice. Nodding, he clasped his hands. You want her to sit in a carriage with you? Knight Bei Xian pointed at Tai Ling Ching Shui and snorted a little. Ha! Wang Er was all but unaffected, just smilingly answering. I don't have any other thoughts, it's just that this is the best solution for now. The compartment sitting four people is really a bit too crowded. Trying his best to suppress greed, he said. Wang Fortune was so anxious that he wanted to slap Wang Er to death. So smart before, how come he's so stupid now? Can't you see that De Sien is angry? However, Knight Baixian really wasn't angry, he just found it interesting, this kind of thing wasn't often encountered. Honestly speaking, his life has been pretending to be too much, and are big. When he encountered this kind of small, he didn't know how to pretend. He then turned his head to look at Tai Ling Ching Shui and asked with some smiles, Fairy, what do you think? Tai Ling Ching Shui stood in place, the light veil fell to the waist, milky white ribbons messy in the night wind, a stream of a fragrance was also brought up to the sky. The original charming and enchanting temperament, but at this moment it was more icy cold, a kind of indifference that no one should approach. When Wang Er made this proposal, Tai Ling Ching Shui's first reaction was not to reject it, but to look at Knight Bei Xian's reaction, the first two times were quite satisfactory. But what did it mean to come and ask her now? Shouldn't it be a strong refusal followed by an invitation to sit in a carriage with him? And then she coyly agreed, the plot should be like this ah? Thinking of this, Tai Ling Ching Shui's heart instantly flared up with nameless fire, never having been so angry. Then slightly petulant said, My little girl is all at the mercy of your son. May. The extreme charming sound penetrated the bone marrow of everyone present, arriving at their hearts and minds, wanting to reject and welcome. Like a fine wine, let a person drunkenly dream of death, but also like endless death, let a person fear, but cannot stop. Other people are still so, that as the main knight Bei Xian, who was attacked by the charming sound, but, but half of the things did not matter. After all, some things, once is enough. Let me be the master. Knight Bei Xian looked at that icy figure with a slight smile, then. The official lord, rich hold a money field, no money hold a personal field, do not send gifts also come a five star praise, the author is grateful. It's not easy to be a full time author. I'm sure you'll be able to find a good deal more than just a few of them. Please look forward to. In addition, to enter the mysterious organization, the first few chapters at the end of the mysterious code, very mysterious. Knight Baixian deliberately raised the tone of voice, delayed the following, leaving enough suspense, but also hung up the appetite. Tai Ling Ching Shui somewhat regretted saying that, and secretly thought in her heart, later on, no matter what Knight Bei Xian said, she would have to be in a compartment with Knight Bei Xian. Wang Er's eyes were glowing at this time, his breathing became rapid, and he just stared blankly at Knight Bei Xian. Wang Fortune, who had an ugly face on the side, was also vaguely revealing the color of anticipation. Knight Bei Xian saw that the emotions had been induced more or less, so he slowly said, since there aren't enough carriage positions, then I'll work hard and drive the horse in the front. Right, right, right. There's such a way ah. 
Wang Fortune said happily, but if you look closely, you will find that he sighed vaguely. Wang Er, on the other hand, didn't say anything, but his face was already ironic, and his smile was undiminished. Night Baixian walked out of the inn. That's it, the three of them sitting in the carriage shouldn't be too crowded, it's just bitter for me. In the midst of Night Baixuan's complaints, a group of four people, three large and one small, left the inn. Take care, great immortal. Seeing the people leave, Wang Fortune exhaled a breath, wiped the non-existent cold sweat on his forehead, walked over to Wang Er, and split his head. Little brat your guts are really fat ah, do you know that woman you can't touch? While Wang Er was looking at the direction where several people left for a long time and could not return to his senses, to be precise, he was looking at Tai Ling Ching Shui. Father, you don't understand. This level of women, we cannot touch in a lifetime, this time encountered, is an opportunity ah. Words meaningful. Oh, what opportunity? Given the cleverness of his own son, Wang Fortune suppressed his anger and asked. If I can take this fairy general character, not only can I hold the beauty, but I can also let her teach our whole family the cultivation method. The more Wang Er spoke, the more excited he became. The greed in his eyes was already overflowing and he was breathing heavily. And the power behind her will also protect us, what business won't be a profitable one in the future? Wang Fortune lowered his head and pondered for a moment. But what makes people look at you? He is not a blindly confident fool, how many kilograms of his own son he still does not know. Although the brain is still smart, but the long really is not to be complimented. He he. Wang Er cut the bottom of the collection of positive color, exposed the treacherous side, the moonlight shining face, appeared to the other side of the face darkness cannot be seen, after slowly said. If the raw rice is cooked, did not go on to say, but the king wealth has understood, only feel a great opportunity, in front of himself, eyes gradually become greedy. On the other side, Night Bei Xian went to the inn where Tai Ling Ching Shui was staying and opened a room, all the way Tai Ling Ching Shui walked in front, as if he was still dissatisfied with the teasing just now. Rest well, we'll depart tomorrow morning when the rooster crows. At the entrance of his room, Night Bei Xian barked at Tai Ling Ching Shui next to him. But Tai Ling Ching Shui was ignoring it, humming and directly entering the room, or Yu Zhu came out to round up the situation. Mrs. Still Small, hope the night gentleman more tolerance. The tone of voice is soft, listen as if lying in the arms of a mother. It's fine. Night Baixian said with a smile, and exchanged good nights with Yu Zhu, closing the door. Master, why is that sister so old and still throwing tantrums like a child? Yi Menger, who was only as tall as Night Baixian's thigh, asked. How would I know, little kids shouldn't ask so many questions. Night Baixian spat in his heart, I'm afraid Tai Ling Ching Shui is several thousand years old and still so petty. It seemed to have been spoiled by his own sister. Oh. Yi Menger agreed and blew out the oil lamp and went to bed, two beds of course. The room is quiet. The moon is dark and the wind is high, today's night sky, as if dyed with a layer of ink, extraordinarily black, giving people an extremely dangerous feeling, let people look at the fear. South of Yuanzhou, not far from the sun and moon divine sect, a human skull-like place, ghost fire gushing around, white bones everywhere, dried blood, green fluorescence, made this place filled with eeriness. A crow skipped by, leaving a burst of unpleasant strange cries, piercing the ears. There is not a single living soul within ten miles, a dry and broken scene, depressed and incomparable, the river is thirsty, and there is not a single tender leaf on the trees, only a blood-stained stone reeds, cave of ten thousand ghosts. Within the back hall of that spewing green fluorescent skull, a stunningly beautiful woman was walking around. The woman was extremely tall, wearing a red robe, her small slender hands like crystal products were folded at the small of her back, and her sexy and enchanting large red lips were muttering something. The face was covered by a piece of black veil that could not be seen. But that charming and innate posture and movement, it is enough to make all men's blood veins swell and moisture flow backwards. Subsequently, the bewitching woman walked into a room and came in front of a large box, on which dust had accumulated in unknown thickness. Oh, between the charming voice curls, the demonic woman opened the dusty box for a long time. Inside is a whole set of gorgeous phoenix crown shoppy, in the oil lamp shining with golden light. Then the demonic charming woman from the cloud sleeve, carefully took out a button, the button also clamped a hair, looks like the age of a long time. Ten thousand years ago the slave was married to you, where are you now? The demonic woman's face turned red, no matter where you are, the slave will find you and then be with you forever, husband. In an instant, Night Bei Xian, who was far away in Qing Shui town, directly woke up, sitting up straight, sweating profusely. What's the situation? Cold sweat flowed across his cheeks as Night Baixian looked at the next bed, sleeping on all fours, Chi Menger, before letting out a long breath. He then laid down again. Just now, in his dream, a beautiful city-loving woman without an ounce of vitality and with an incomparably cold entire body, wearing a phoenix crown on her head in big red bridal makeup, winkingly called out to him as her husband. Night Baixian could swear. That feeling was extremely real, as if it was right in front of his eyes. 
and one's own heart also vaguely gave birth to a sense of guilt. But Night Baixian could be certain that that woman was definitely not Flower Ma Shang, because that woman didn't look like a living person. It was literally. The lips that had just been kissed now still had an icy, bone-piercing coldness to them. Although he didn't see what the woman looked like, he remembered that the woman was extremely tall. I'm afraid that it was similar to Yun Zun, and the flirtatious intent was even better than Tai Ling Ching Shui, with a female hooligan-like, holding him on the nibble, while nibbling, but also shouted his husband. A thought of that burning bone-charming voice, Night Baixian feel like body over electricity, tingling. Thinking about it, because too tired, Night Baixian once again fell asleep. I don't know how long I slept. Snap step. Snap tap. Snap tap. The sound of a small leather shoe landing on the white jade stone woke up Night Baixian. What is this place? Night Baixian opened his eyes in a daze and saw that his surroundings were pitch black. His mind was beyond confused, wasn't he sleeping in an inn? Originally, he was still a bit confused, but the next voice shocked him out of his sleepiness. Brother Weedy did you miss me? Boom. How could he not hear this voice, a voice carved into his bone marrow? With that, he raised his head. Di Chiong? It's really you? Night Baixian opened his mouth and looked at Di Chiong in front of him. Still with that little devil smile, her black and smooth green silk was bundled into a double ponytail and draped behind her back, and she was wearing a short black veil skirt, revealing a different kind of temptation. A change in the past pure white silk, but changed into a seductive black silk, thin and transparent and comparable, coupled with pure black small leather shoes, proper dark knight small queen. Fish brother see people so happy? Could it be that you want to be bad to people? Di Chiong's tone was shy, but his expression was extremely dark. Aren't you already? Night Baixian said with some doubt, after all, Di Chiang's head was on the mountain of the dead, this was what he had seen with his own eyes, it wouldn't be false. This miscellaneous fish brother don't need to care. Di Chiang said while holding his hands, walking towards Night Baixian. What are you doing? It was only then that Night Baixian realized that his limbs were all tied up and he couldn't move halfway. After using a spatial secret technique, he tried to cut off the chains, but found that it was of no use at all, as if he had never been given a spatial talent. What is this situation? Night Baixian said as he tugged at the chains, his expression unsightly. In just a few moments, Di Chiang's smaller figure had traveled closer, looking down at Night Baixian, who was seated on a chair, with his trademark smile on his face. Brother Weed Fish how pathetic. Let my master teach you how you should treat a reunion. As he spoke, Di Chiang's petite and soft body climbed onto Night Baixian's legs. Night Baixian only felt an ethereal scent come over him, the scent of gardenia was both familiar and unfamiliar, as well as fearful. What did you do with that bad woman last time? Tell master. Di Chiang's small face was red, sitting on Night Baixuan's legs, his black silk jade feet folded together. No, didn't do anything. Where did Night Baixian dare to tell the truth ah, otherwise he wouldn't be tortured to death by Di Chiang. An emperor dome is too fragrant, come close and close, Night North Xian slightly breathe, is a large share of aroma surging into the body, so that his flood of power is difficult to suppress. Dare to lie to your master? Di Chiang beamed her little mouth, took off her little leather shoes, fell back, and directly pressed her black silk jade feet onto Night Baixuan's face. Night Baixuan truly didn't dare to breathe at all, or else a smell with desire would enter his nostrils. I say. I'll say. Night Baixuan really had no choice but to compromise. Hmph this is the master's good puppy. Di Chung's face was a little red, but it was normal. Thereupon. The entire person sat cross-legged on Night Baixuan's legs, jade hands clasping her flat chest as she looked up at Night Baixuan with a face of disgust. Waiting for an answer. Night Baixuan said. Kissing. What? You wanted me to say it. Damn it. Di Chiong looked angry, his ears scarlet at the roots, not knowing if it was caused by being angry or shyness. Night Baixian was greeted with a pink fist, hitting the body not only did not hurt, but instead, Di Chiong shaking around, but also made his own body even more hot, difficult to the extreme. After messing around for a while, Di Chiong also stopped her pink fist. Skimming his head, he arrogantly said, Today you are allowed to kiss your master. Voice trembling, tone shy plus expectant. Happy reading, give the author a gift, a comment, thanks. In the dark environment, the atmosphere began to become ambiguous, and the heavy breathing between each other was like a charm, catalyzing the emotions of the two. Di Chong's cute toes, which were like silkworm babies, hid under the black veil, gathering and opening up, appearing as if the owner was very nervous and shy. What? Night Baixian somewhat didn't hear clearly, his ears were as if they were stuffed with cotton. Upon hearing this, Di Chiang's eyes changed, and he exasperatedly tugged at Night Baixuan's handsome face, somewhat less than satisfied. Let you kiss me. After saying that, Di Chiang's face turned even redder, just like a little girl who had first fallen in love and stolen the forbidden fruit, although its own age was already unknown. Night Baixuan swallowed a mouthful of saliva. He could swear that he was definitely not a lowly controller, but Di Chiang, a legitimate lowly, 
Now had a different kind of temptation that made it a little difficult for him to hold himself. Then can you first tell us why you didn't die? Knight Beishuan's heart was curious to the extreme, so much so that even in this situation, he was still asking. This young lady let you kiss. Where did you get so many questions? Di Chiong was like a little cat that had exploded its fur. It was a pity that there were no tiger teeth at the corners of her mouth, or else she would be more like it. What? Are you jealous of Raccoon Creek Sand? Knight Beishuan looked at Di Chiong with some amusement. He was getting more and more skillful in dealing with this person. Who's jealous? Di Chiong blushed, propped up her slender neck, clenched her small pink fists, and said loudly. Afterward, he lowered his head again. This young lady. This young lady is just exercising her rights as a master. It's not being jealous. Knight Beishuan then laughed. Is it? Di Chiong replied with a shy face. Of course it is. The words landed, Knight Beixian directly closed his eyes, not moving a muscle, the meaning was obvious, if you want a kiss, then come yourself. But, evil mongrel brother, this young lady orders you to hurry up and kiss me. Di Chiong tooted her little mouth, extremely cute. A small one, it didn't seem crowded even as it fidgeted in Knight Beixian's arms. Knight Beixian was unmoved. Damn. Don't think that this young lady can't take you. Di Chiong said, revealing an extremely diabolical limp smile and leaning back again. Either kiss me or kiss it, stupid brother choose one. The exquisite black silk jade feet drew a circle in the air, the ghostly fragrance overflowing. Hiss. Although this is also very nice, it's better not to do this because the mouth is prone to fungal infections. Okay. Then you put me down. How else am I going to kiss you? Night Bei Xian tugged on the chain, revealing a helpless expression, the meaning of which was obvious. At those words, Di Chiong clasped his arms and squinted at Night Bei Xian, making a face like you're not going to try to trick me. It's not like you don't need your hands for kissing, it's not like this young lady has sealed your mouth shut. The tone was bland. Knight Bei Xian, on the other hand, shook his head, with the appearance that Di Chiong didn't understand anything at all. Shaking your head for what? Di Chiong said suspiciously, his large eyes that seemed to be equipped with a roiling river of stars fluttering. As soon as I heard you, you've never kissed before. Knight Bei Xuan's old and spicy tone, scornfully looking at the human child in front of him. Saying it like this, Di Chiong's face turned even redder. Because it was said. So what if I didn't? If you're not there, who is this young lady going to kiss with? Other men this young lady can't look at. This sentence was indeed the actual truth. They were a group of sisters. What big power inheritor, holy land holy son, Dao Tabu, the crazy pursuit of them never stopped, but they never looked at them more than once. Because of Knight Beishuan's existence. Knight Beishuan was somewhat speechless by what was said. You don't understand, aren't I teaching you? Sincerity said, come, hurry up and untie my chains. District mongrel brother, amount you can't play any tricks, there's no harm in letting you go. Di Chion looked confident, her petite and delicate little hand stood up and snapped her fingers. The next second. Those chains were like frightened snakes, scrambling to shrink into the darkness and disappearing. Knight Beishian stood up and looked around, realizing that it was very similar to the space where he had been teleported after matching the secret signals back in the Sun Moon Divine Sect. It was thought that it should be the special space of the Imperial Vault. Of course. It was also possible that he was dreaming. Knight Beishian twisted his wrist and moved his line of sight down again, looking at Di Chiong, who was only up to his abdomen, and was currently hugging his chest, angling his legs, and looking up at himself with a tugging look on his face. On top of that, there was also a hint of shyness and anticipation mixed in. The dark space quieted down, both of them didn't speak, Knight Beixian was thinking about how to take down this little lowly, must give some lessons. And Di Chiong's brain is full of pulp. Will I get pregnant if I get kissed? Yikes. Too shy. Should I respond later? If we respond, won't it make him even more arrogant? There's also the dead woman, Raccoon Creek Sand, who actually dared to kiss my mongrel brother. I have to kill her in the future. If she gets pregnant. What will the child be called hashtag and at asterisk equals? Knight Beishian mobilized the power of space and found that he couldn't sense it at all, and his cultivation was even not there at all. He let out a long breath. There was no choice. Subsequently, in the frightened, expectant, and shy eyes of Di Chiong, Knight Beishian slowly bent down and kissed up against Di Chiong's pink lips. The ambiguous atmosphere within the dark space came to a peak, and it was as if the two of them had once again entered some sort of space that was free from outside interference, a space that was only for the two of them. D Dome vigorously tipped o black silk jade feet, bejeweled heel, all fell out of the small leather shoes. Sun Moon Divine Sect. In the middle of the back of the mountain, there is a pavilion and hall suspended, and the golden ghost pattern talisman around it is imprinted in the air, and a demonic sound cuts through the air and penetrates the four directions. Within a mile, no living mouth dares to breathe loudly. Beneath the pavilion, moss crawling on the weather-ravaged green stone slabs, a woman with a well-proportioned and powerful figure knelt on one knee, her hands clasped above her head. My lord, my subordinate comes to report. 
Blood Pearl's voice was no longer as restrained as it had been some time ago, and even the sky had become a little brighter. Although it was a dark night, a closer look would reveal that the black gas above the dome was slowly becoming less. Say, the voice is moving and incomparable, like a bloodthirsty fairy that has fallen to the mortal world, cold and unearthly. Fierce, like a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood. Violent aesthetics. Lord Husband is already about to depart for Yu Jing, and according to the report from the members of the Flower K, Lord Husband will be going to participate in the competition, aiming for the sleeping compulsion Dan. Sniffing. The beautiful silhouette in the pavilion in the air revealed a smile that was enough to charm the entire world. Very well, continue to send people to monitor. Remember to always send strong people who can block death for senior brother in times of danger. Saying this, Huama Shang retracted the slender little hand that was propping up her jade jowls. The tone of her voice changed. If this senior brother has a long or short, you and the entire flower K, can change a batch of people. Although the words were not directly singled out, it was already obvious that if Knight Baixian had another problem, then not a single member of the Flower K would be left behind. Even if they were Hua Ma Shan's beloved ones. Yes. At a time like this, Blood Pearl could only answer. She wouldn't think that Hua Ma Sang was joking, after all, but anything that involved Knight Bei Xian, it was impossible to leave any room for maneuver. Right at this moment, a small golden lotus slowly descended, roughly only as big as a cherry, but the aura of law attached to it was something one couldn't ignore. A stream of haze light rose up to the sky. When it fell, it was as if space was distorted, and its power could be imagined. The immortal voice of Hua Shan continued to emanate. Whoever is responsible for monitoring senior brother will carry the small lotus flower, inside there is a dharma body of this ancestor, it can be used three times, under the Zunshu realm, it can be killed instantly. Blood Pearl gulped a mouthful of saliva and tremblingly received the small lotus flower whose breath was churning, his heart was shocked beyond measure. This kind of thing is usually made by the refining person's essence blood for the stereotypes, the production is difficult not to mention, for the refining person damage is also particularly large, after all, it is equivalent to tearing the cultivation. The blood bead still underestimated Hua Ma Shan's love for Knight Bei Xian, and somehow, she felt particularly envious. Elder brother has already died once, this honored one doesn't want to see it happen a second time, do you understand? Seeing blood pearl frozen in place, Hua Ma Sang spoke out. Understood. After the blood pearl answered, he said again, there is one more thing that my subordinate doesn't know when to speak or not to speak. Huama Shang heard something wrong in it, her tone became cold, and the slightly curved corners of her mouth on her immortal face also retracted. Speak. Blood pearl organized her words. Somewhat nervously, she adjusted her posture. Lord husband made friends with ghost king Tai Ling Mises sister Tai Ling Qingxue in Qingxue town, and the two of them planned to go to Yujing together, but it was a trade and Lord Husband promised to help Tai Ling Ching Shui get the meditation mirror, which is, boom, boom. The blood beads spoke faster and faster, but before the words were finished, an extremely strong aura burst out from the air tower. It surged in all directions, shattering everything it touched. The people within the Sun Moon Divine Sect were terrified. This half-day Godmaster mood only a little better, do not know what happened again, have looked into the pavilion in the air. Within the air pavilion was quiet for a while. The blood beads also just kneeling, and did not make a sound to disturb, or rather did not dare to make a sound. After slowing down for a while, Huama Shang's dark golden pupils finally stopped flowing out demonic chi, and the demonic chi on her body also retracted, her jade hands putting down the small skirt she was weaving. Elder brother, another account, don't be anxious, it's all memorized for you. Huama Shang's face was extremely beautiful and extremely demonic, and at this moment, although it was dark, it was tinged with a smile. What she wants is the final victory. After the victory, all this account will be slowly counted. I hope that senior brother won't do something too much, that will make me unable to resist and catch senior brother back in advance. Senior brother. I don't know how long it took. Stand down. Hearing this, Blood Pearl let out a huge sigh of relief. However, it didn't leave, still kneeling on one knee in the same spot. What? Is there something else? The immortal voice of Flower Shuang curled up like an oriole bird above the nine heavens. There is one more thing. The blood bead slowly said the matter of Qing Shui Town, there is a Lin family in Qing Shui Town, a local landlord, who was taught a lesson by Lord Husband, so they are premeditating to take revenge on Lord Husband. Hua Ma Shang re-picked up the silk thread and began to continue weaving the small skirt, do what you should do. Yes, Blood Pearl understood and retreated. This kind of thing was definitely no problem for Knight Bei Xin to solve, and of course Hua Ma Sang knew that, but unluckily, Hua Ma Sang just happened to need to vent her anger. Naturally. The Lin family became the object of anger. Hua Ma Sang touched her still not bulging belly, but there was already life, already conceived and born inside. That's right, she was pregnant, it was a girl. Sienner, don't be misbehaved like your father. Hua Ma Shang said to herself with a smile on her face. In fact, she didn't like children, 
But there was no way around it, a child was definitely the best weapon to ensnare a man and there wasn't one, because of the responsibility. Senior brother, how are you going to escape from me now? The words are full of playfulness. Those who have money hold a money field, those who do not have money hold a personal field. The comment comment is also good ah. Early in the morning in the town of Qingshui as if covered with a layer of white veil, hazy and fresh, slowly flowing river, fiddling with the willow branches along the river, the cycle is repeated. The resting place of the inn was crowded with people. The various traders had all set up their horses to make their way, and Knight Beixian and the others were no exception, all having already arrived outside. Fairy, how about letting me help you carry it? Wang Er specially dressed up today, the clothes he wore were also brand new, what he did was known to all. Tai Ling Ching Shui in the face of ordinary people, still the same immortal, untainted look, there is a box at his feet, it is estimated that there are 20 to 30 pounds of weight. Yu Xu stood aside and wanted to move the box, but was Tai Ling Ching Shui stopped, and also ignored the next out of voice Wang Er, just so straight looked at the knight just out of the room Bei Xian, the meaning is self-evident. Knight Bei Xian was dressed in light clothes and nothing, covering his mouth and yawning, appearing somewhat depressed, and didn't notice Tai Ling Ching Shui at first. He still didn't dare to determine even now whether what happened last night was a dream or a tactic of D-Dome. There was an overall sense of unreality. But that touch was very real, and when he thought about it now, he felt sweetness in his mouth and a clear scent filled his mouth. Master. Master. Chi Menger saw her own master froze there, with absolutely no intention of taking care of Tai Ling Ching Shui, and hurriedly tugged at the corner of its coat. Ha! Huh? Only then did Knight Bei Xian come back to his senses. Looking at the direction that Qi Menner kept signaling Tai Ling Ching Shui, Knight Bei Xian subconsciously raised his head and saw Tai Ling Ching Shui's slender jade-like figure shivering a bit. Looking at Tai Ling Ching Shui's eyes again, they were filled with rage, as if they would explode in the next second. Continuing to look at Wang Er who was not far away with an attentive face, and glancing at the box on the ground, Knight Bei Xian finally did understand what was going on, and in his heart, he spat out that this personnel was so many. Nor did he want to waste time. I say you're such a big man, can't even move a box? Knight Bei Xian blankly walked over and picked up the box directly. Tai Ling Ching Shui didn't care what Knight Bei Xian said, seeing Knight Bei Xian move the box, her heart was very happy. The smile on her jade face was almost uncontrollable. Fear in front of the Knight Bei Xian reveal happy look, hummed a sound, straight to the carriage. Looking at that stunningly beautiful back, Knight Bei Xian shook his head and touched Yi Menger's small head again. Menger, if you become like that in the future, don't blame the master for being ruthless. Apprentice child. Apprentice child knows. Then Yi Menger's eyes revealed determination. Master, let the disciple take it. Knight Bei Xian smiled and nodded, handing the box to Yi Menger again. This is your first step in cultivation. Although Yi Menger was young, she worked all year round and her strength wasn't small, so 20 to 30 pounds was nothing to worry about. Master, when can I learn spells? Regarding Knight Bei Xuan's abilities, she was extremely eager. There's no rush. As the two of them headed to the carriage, Wang Er also retreated to his own carriage without losing his decency. Although his face was gloomy, he didn't say anything. Right at this moment, Yu Xu, who had originally followed Tai Ling Ching Shui to the carriage, returned and snatched away the box that Yi Menger was tugging at with her two small hands. It's better to let me take it. Yu Xu smiled beautifully, although her looks were not as good as Tai Ling Ching Shui's, but that mature big sister's aura was very appealing. It's just a few steps, whoever takes it is the same, hurry up. Knight Bei Xian voiced out, taking the lead to walk towards the carriage. Yu Xu smiled and touched Yi Menger's little head, then followed Knight Bei Xian. Seeing this scene, Tai Ling Ching Shui sighed in relief. She had originally wanted Knight Bei Xian to get the box for herself to avenge the teasing she received yesterday, but it wouldn't be right if it involved someone else, or a child. So she sent Moon Bamboo to get the box, at least she couldn't let Knight Bei Xian misunderstand her character. Just like that. Knight Bei Xian drove in front of the carriage, and in the back carriage sat three people, Tai Ling Ching Shui, Yu Xu, and Shi Menger. The caravan traveled all the way around, going out of Qing Shui town. But not yet traveled out far, the center of the town, a cloud of black smoke rose to the midair, the bottom is still rolling up thick smoke, there is a growing trend. Knight Bei Xian holding a driving whip, looked up and also felt strange, asked backward. Menger, what is that place? The three within the carriage were also watching, hearing Knight Bei Xian ask, Yi Menger poked out a small head and said, The center of the town is where some wealthy people live, I don't know the specifics. Knight Bei Xuan's heart was filled with thoughts. Whatever, it has nothing to do with us. Said continued to drive away, the surrounding people were also running towards the smoking place. After a while, the horse team coincidentally passed by there. Getting close to take a look. The scene there made Knight Bei Xian's whole body shook. A huge mansion engraved with lin, door beams dozens of large and small heads hanging above, both male and female, bloody, and still smoking hot. The fire in the back of the mansion was getting more and more fierce. I don't know how, there is also a trace of black gas coming out. 
The surrounding spectators don't dare to get close, only dare to take a look from afar. The night North Xian look indifferent, the heart is the same overturning river. This kind of is not seeking revenge so simple, purely to kill his art, means extremely ferocious. Have to hurry up and go. Drive forward. Suddenly, Yi Menger exclaimed in alarm. It's the steward. Knight Baixian immediately pulled the curtain shut and instructed that he was not allowed to look again, then shifted his gaze over. However, he saw that amongst the many heads on the beams of the room, there was a familiar face of whichever steward who had recruited people to beat the hay. At this moment, where was he still in his old demeanor? With a terrified face and a head full of blood, he couldn't be more dead. Ride. Knight Baixian drove his fast horse, quickly leaving this place of wrongdoing, and had arrived in front of the horse team. A few incense sticks of time. Knight Baixian drove the carriage quickly away from Qing Shui town, and only after leaving the town did his heart calm down a little. It wasn't he that he, Knight Baixian, was afraid of those heads, or implicating himself, but, he smelled a very familiar odor. The smell of the devil. That smell, ever since he left the Sun Moon Divine Sect, he hadn't smelled it again, and now it had reappeared, which had to make him suspect that Hua Shang had come. At the thought of this, the blue sky, the hot sun at noon, also cannot drive away the coolness of the heart. It was as if there was a huge hand in the sky that was manipulating all of this, and there was nowhere for himself to hide. Have to hurry to enter the Yujing. This is Knight Baishuan's only thought at the moment, although in the Yujing exposed, he will also be very dangerous. But after all, there are quite a few strong people in the Yujing, and there are also iron riders sitting in the town, Huama Shang is more or less concerned. Now what made Knight Baishuan's heart palpitate the most was that he couldn't guess Huama Shang's thoughts, and that was the most fatal. Under the broken dragon cliff, it was obvious that Hua Mazhang had let him go, and although he had chopped off the heads of Di Chiong and Rumpelstiltskin to terrorize himself, he himself had not manifested himself. That is to say, all of this was calculated by Hua Ma Shang. No longer thinking randomly, wiping off the last drop of cold sweat, his eyes began to become sharp, even if Hua Ma Shang really had a big conspiracy, he himself could still find a way to break the situation. Night Prince, what's wrong with you? Didn't say much all the way. Yu Zhu asked with some concern. The heart was also strange. After all, for cultivators, dozens of human heads were nothing to be afraid of, besides, the 10,000 ghost cave was filled with white bones, so they had long since gotten used to it. Nothing, thinking about something. Knight Baishan calmed down and waved the driving whip in his hand and said, N. The little girl was scared to death. Yu Xu said while helping Qi Minner smooth her back, and Tai Ling Qing Shui didn't even bother to look. After being quiet for a while, Yu Xu coldly spoke. Night Prince, we've gotten along quite well in the past two days, we're still in a cooperative relationship, so if you have any concerns, it's better for you to speak up. The tone of voice was not cold. At those words, Night Bei Xian glanced backward at the curtain that was being dangled about by the iron beads. Why do you say this? Yu Zhu organized his words, ignoring the stopping of Tai Ling Qing Shui's eyes, he still continued to ask. Two days, I was paying attention to your breath, not a single fluctuation, at first I thought it was you hiding but then the more I thought about it, the more wrong it was. Yu Zhu changed from the tenderness of a mature big sister to a cold, dark and imperial sister look. Your cultivation is gone, right? Knight Baixian didn't answer and didn't make the rest of his movements, just continuing to drive the horse. Seeing Knight Baixian behave like this, Tai Ling Qing Shui, who originally didn't believe it, but her eyes widened, because not speaking at such a time was tantamount to acquiescence. You really? Tone trembled, as if it was a great pity that such a peerless heavenly pride had fallen. This you guys don't care. Anyway, meditation mirror, I will bring it to hand over to you guys on the line. Knight Baixian coldly said. He didn't intend to hide it in the first place. Yu Zhu, however, did not reply. Instead, he continued to analyze. To go to the Yu Jing even at the risk of being discovered. Your goal is the sleeping compulsion Dan, right? And to have so many heavenly materials. Yu Zhu tapped his chin. If I'm not wrong, you should be suffering from the past life compulsion, right? The tone of his voice was soft, his eyes were sharp, and his words were shocking. Tai Ling Qing Shui already didn't know how to describe her feelings, no wonder Knight Bei Xian wanted to go to the Yu Jing, no wonder Knight Bei Xian wanted so many heavenly treasures. Originally, it was intended to hold up the past life compass in the body ah, but that was a legend, who knew if it was true, and even if it was true, there was no telling how much of that heavenly material and treasure would be consumed. Therefore, in the eyes of the general public, Knight Baixian was already considered a living dead man, and death would come sooner or later. The past life compass sucked in life force, thus strengthening itself, and strengthening itself could in turn suck in life force even faster, so the life force would drain away faster and faster. Tai Ling Qing Shui's stunningly beautiful brows wrinkled, pulling open the curtain, looking at the lonesome figure driving the horse, and for a while she couldn't say anything. Knight Prince, am I right? Yu Zhu continued to ask, surprisingly extremely strong. 
There's no need for you guys to understand this, I'll complete the deal, and there's no need for you guys to worry about the rest. Knight Baixian was incomparably lonely and arrogant, his tone cold and indifferent. Ha! Yu Zhu's tone became even more disdainful, Tai Ling Ching Shui opened her eyes wide and wanted to stop Yu Zhu from continuing, but Yu Zhu simply ignored it and said to herself, You don't even have your cultivation anymore and your life force is still dwindling, how can I believe that you can fulfill the contract? Tai Ling Ching Shui's eyes widened as she looked at Yu Zhu with a puzzled expression, why was she able to say such harsh words? Moreover, Knight Baishuan's strength was obvious to all, that even without cultivation, with his spatial talent, he could still sweep the party, so how could he not be able to take down, a small competition ranking? Stopped. The carriage stopped. This time, Knight Baishian did not choose to remain silent, but instead responded positively to Yu Zhu. I can prove it to you now. Yu Zhu narrowed her eyes slightly. Prove it how? Knight Baishian slowly turned back, his eyes streaked with indifference. Kill you. Requesting gifts, the author is going to be unable to afford to eat. The carriage leading the way in front stopped, and the team of horses behind it followed suit, and the crowd raised their heads to look. The carriage that led the way, the atmosphere within the carriage was frozen, as if it was a cold pool in the third nine days, dead and cold. Do you need me to prove it? Knight Beishuan's way of making a name for himself was more of a hard and fast approach, so he had a bad temper. But there had to be a prerequisite, and that was that others were clearly targeting him, and if there was no malicious intent, he would laugh it off, his temperament adjusting at will. Hearing this, Yu Zhu didn't say anything, only silently staring at Knight Beishian with subtle eyes. Tai Ling Ching Shui hurriedly rounded up the conversation. No, Auntie Yu has no malicious intent, she's just worried about the Knight Prince's body having problems with whether or not he'll be able to get his hands on the meditation mirror, after all, it's about my sister, so I have to be cautious. Knight Beishian still didn't choose to drive the horse, but stood up, I'm also very skeptical about this. Then jump down from the carriage, come and try and you won't know? The aura was natural, that sense of oppression, definitely practiced by killing for a long time. Knight Prince, why is this necessary? Tai Ling Ching Shui also looked a little angry. The beautiful eyebrows were slightly wrinkled. She felt that this wasn't too big of a deal, just make it clear, and why make a scene like this? Yu Zhu, on the other hand, never spoke. Shut up. Knight Beishian snapped back, not giving Tai Ling Ching Shui any face at all. Mr. Knight, would you be a little too arrogant? Tai Ling Ching Shui hadn't been treated like this before, and couldn't help but become enraged, followed by a wisp of violet chi wrapping around his entire body, his peak seal marquee cultivation pouring out. Knight Beishuan's long black hair was blown around, and his gold-rimmed black robe was also blown around, but in the face of such a powerful aura, he didn't take half a step back. The indifference in his eyes increased. Menger come over. The tone was icy cold. Chi Mingye couldn't understand what was happening, but still took two steps and jogged to Knight Beishuan's side, who smoothly swept Chi Mingye behind him. The atmosphere immediately became tense. Seeing this, Tai Ling Ching Shui's heart went cold. She hadn't thought that she'd gotten out of her own way to round up the situation but things had gotten worse instead, and with this kind of momentum, she probably wouldn't be able to stop until she saw blood today. Mr. Knight, why do you need to make a scene like this again? What can't we talk about properly? Tai Ling Ching Shui put away her aura, and her tone was much softer. Talk properly? You didn't look like you wanted to have a good talk with me just now. Knight Baishian said with a cold smile, derision overflowing. I. Tai Ling Ching Shui didn't know what to say for a moment, cursing himself for being so impulsive just now. Just as Tai Ling Ching Shui's aura weakened, a discordant voice came. De Xian, it's not too good to bully a girl like that, right? Wang Er walked over righteously, with Wang Fortune and numerous fellows behind him. Knight Beishuan's eyes narrowed slightly. What does it have to do with you guys? If you don't want to die, get back. At these words, instead of being afraid, Wang Er's folding fan was withdrawn, revealing a cynical appearance. You bullied fairy Tai Ling today for no reason, I, Wang Er, will still manage this. How? His tone was firm, and his eyes glanced at Tai Ling Ching Shui from time to time. The large group of people behind him also took a step forward, imposing with an obvious meaning. Right great immortal, the other fairy has already admitted her mistake, so why are you holding on to it? Wang Fortune also stepped forward and said bitterly. Knight Beishuan's face completely darkened. The most taboo thing about walking outside was revealing the bottom, because it was equivalent to grasping someone's lifeblood, even if you knew, you had to pretend you didn't know, or else they would have to fight for their lives. Why did you turn your face? Because just his body in the past life compulsion this matter, that can make a big article, if not to see soon can see sleep compulsion Dan, otherwise he absolutely immediately slaughtered two people. Hesitation for a second, he is not surnamed Knight. Wang Er was confident, since he dared to come out and speak to refute Knight Beixian, then he had enough backbone. The people behind him were the backbone, and the Tai Ling Ching Shui that Knight Beixian was opposing was also his backbone. You, Knight Beixian, couldn't possibly dare to kill dozens of people at once, could you? 
Besides, he was speaking for Tai Ling Ching Shui, if Knight Bei Xian wanted to make a move, wouldn't Tai Ling Ching Shui stand idly by? They were all cultivators, how much difference could they make? From a certain perspective, he kinda hoped that Knight Bei Xian would make a move against him, then Tai Ling Ching Shui would stop it, and the two would formally break, and his own opportunity would come. Thinking of this, he laughed evilly in his heart, but on his face, he didn't move and looked indignant. Fairy don't be afraid, with us, he can't help you. With that, he wanted to go forward to pull Tai Ling Ching Shui. Wang Er's intention was to pull Tai Ling Ching Shui to his side so that it would be all of them against Knight Bei Xian, but he didn't expect his hand to be gone before he could reach out. Eh? Wang Er tried hard to raise his hand, but it had already fallen to the ground, and he couldn't raise it no matter how hard he tried. This also stunned the crowd behind him, none of them expecting such an outcome. Shouldn't Tai Ling Ching Shui be on his side? Why would it still be on their own side? The crowd froze, was unable to return to their senses for a long time. Ah! After three breaths, Wang Er's miserable scream finally struck, resounding through the sky, collapsed on the ground. The crowd originally thought that this was bad enough, but what Tai Ling Ching Shui said next directly scared the crowd to the core. Shitting and pissing in unison. If you want to relieve your anger, then you can kill them to take the edge off. Tai Ling Ching Shui didn't care if these people had spoken for him or not. Indifferently, he said. This merciless attitude of Tai Ling Ching Shui had caused Knight Bei Xian to be somewhat at a loss for words. Of course. Killing was definitely not an option, otherwise why would one bother to look for the horse team? It was supposed to be used to hide their identities, so killing them at this point would be a waste of effort. But giving a little lesson is still possible. Knight Bei Xian didn't even look at Wang Er, but his aura surged. Although there was no cultivation, but a strand of Law's breath continuously surged out. Afterwards, he stretched out a hand, and his fist, which was originally clenched tightly, was violently opened. Five-fingered lotus flower. Pying. Lying on the ground, Wang Er's other hand was also gone, this time he didn't even scream, he directly fainted. The crowd behind him had their mouths wide open, and after reacting, they all knelt down towards Knight Bei Xian and begged for forgiveness. Wang Er, who was like a dead dog, was ignored. They are Wang Er and Wang Fortune flung over to press the battlefield, there will be pay afterward, originally thought that there were many people Knight Bei Xian did not dare to really do it, also came, but did not expect. Wang Fortune is the one who regretted the most, his own son was broken two hands, but he himself didn't dare to go up to take a look, he could only kneel on the ground and keep kowtowing. They have been very cautious. As soon as they appeared on the scene, they directly took sides. In the original plan, even if Tai Ling Ching Shui and Knight Bei Xian couldn't break up, at least there was a disconnect, and then they invited Tai Ling Ching Shui to go to their own son's carriage, and some things would fall into place. But I can't count on it. I can't count on Tai Ling Ching Shui to be a fairy-like character with such a vicious heart. But no matter how much remorse, at this time are useless, all turned into knocking down the ringing head. Is Mr. Knight relieved of his anger? Tai Ling Ching Shui didn't even look at the people next to him and said with some sorrow. It was also at this moment. Yu Xu, who hadn't spoken for a long time, spoke out. Knight Prince, just now it's all my fault. It's me who committed a taboo between cultivators, after getting the meditation mirror, as compensation, all the heavenly treasures on my body and in the 10,000 ghosts cave will be handed over to Knight Prince at that time. The apology was extremely sincere, and his eyes were no longer as aggressive as they were just now, but rather guilty. Upon hearing this, the happiest person was none other than Tai Ling Ching Shui, who was the last to wish for a conflict. There were also questions in her mind, the usual Yu Zhu was very smart, helping her manage the 10,000 ghost cave with a meticulous mind, why did she behave like this today? Couldn't figure it out and stopped thinking about it. Night Prince, I also apologize to you for what happened just now. Tai Ling Ching Shui slightly owed her body. Knight Baixian looked deeply at Yu Zhu. After the deal is done, you are you and I am me, so don't come back and forth. Saying so, he brought Qi Menger to sit in front and drive. Tai Ling Ching Shui froze in place. She thought that they were already friends. It was originally a transactional relationship, but for some reason, Knight Baixuan's words were like a needle that pierced into her heart, a slight stinging sensation that prevented her from breathing. At this moment, regret also came to the highest, points of tears in the eyes surging. Perhaps thousands of years have not been someone like this to her, perhaps her first time to make friends, but it is a failure. Miss, get on the car. Yuezhu's words awakened the contemplation of the two Ling Qingxue, slowly loosened the pinch tight skirt, promised a sound, on the carriage. Yuezhu handed out to pull Tai Ling Qingxue's hand, was ignored, Yuezhu smiled bitterly, the heart is not good, but she is aware of some gossip. Heart secretly said, Miss, Night North Xian is absolutely can't like on the man, sadness is always better than lost life. Flower Devil has already stared at us. She didn't expect Tai Ling Ching Shui to understand her good intentions, it didn't matter even if she held a grudge against her, as long as Tai Ling Ching Shui was fine, then everything would be fine. 
Wang Er was dragged onto the carriage as if he were a dead dog, and the crowd returned to their positions, the horse team set off again, but they hadn't traveled more than a few steps. Suddenly the thunder raged. Rumble. A large mountain in the distance, as if it had been cut off by a heavenly god with a sword, slid straight down and shattered into tens of thousands of pieces. Dust flew and the mountain crumbled. Not to mention regular people, even the powerful moon bamboo in the middle stage of the inscription realm looked confused. Such a big mountain. It was enough to build a dynasty on top of it, yet it was easily cut across and truncated, and the mouth was extremely smooth, clearly the person who broke the mountain. Very easy. In all fairness, letting her do it could be done, but it definitely couldn't be done so beautifully. This. Yu Xu secretly pondered, her eyebrows slightly knitted. But when she saw Wang Er's blood on the ground, she snapped out of it. The bloodstains followed the fluctuations in the air, extending all the way to the large mountain that had been cut off. Yushu swallowed a mouthful of saliva and slowly turned her gaze towards Night Baishan who was driving the horse outside the carriage. She felt like she had taken a trip from the gates of hell. Request for gifts ah. Recent grades are so bad ah. The horse caravan was traveling through the mountains and fields, the scenery was beautiful, the birds and flowers were fragrant, but the people did not have the time to appreciate it. Wang Er's hands were simply bandaged, already stopped the blood, but the hands have not been able to connect, the person is still in a coma. Wang Wealth all thoughts in the sight of the old tears. He is only a son, but now hands are wasted, can be said to have no future to speak of, life is ruined, heart despair can be imagined. Boss, those people are so unreasonable, wait until we get to Yu Jing, let's directly poke to the top and let the president make a decision for us. The fellow next to him said. The words were echoed by many fellows. Thinking for a moment. Wang Fortune stood up, his face extremely ugly. Originally, I didn't want to look for trouble, but these people are really bullying people too much even if it means fighting to the same death. I will also make them look good. He originally knew that these people had mysterious identities, so he didn't intend to get in too much contact, and only after being moved to greet by his own son's words did he end up in such a situation. But things had already happened, he couldn't pretend not to see it. He always ran clear water town, for the pedestrians there more or less understand some, so can be sure that Night North Shen, Two Spirit Clear Water and so on, absolutely not a good person. Their identities were also definitely not to be seen. In the past, he was afraid of being retaliated against, but nowadays, he couldn't care less, stabbing the Chamber of Commerce, definitely making Night Baixian and the others suffer. Don't show any differences, wait until we enter the city, I will report it to the Chamber of Commerce. Wang Fortune looked at the unconscious Wang Er and said with a fierce face. The fellows nodded their heads. Within the carriage at the forefront leading the way, it was also unusually quiet, Tai Ling Ching Shui and Yu Zhu were sitting inside, Night Baixian was driving the horse outside, and Shi Meng Er it's sitting next to him. No one was speaking. Master, will my parents be in the Yujing? Chi Menger wiggled her short little legs, picking the flowers and plants skimming beside her while asking, but her face wasn't very concerned. I don't know either. But looking at that piece of jade of yours it should be of top quality, odds are that it came from a large family, the possibility of it being in Yujing is not low. Night Beixian replied. Then if we find our parents, do we have to leave Master Teacher? I don't want to. The current Chi Menger, finding her parents was more about accomplishing her heart's desire. You're still young, I can't bring you to run around, if you can't find them, it's just that, if you find them, then you'll stay by your parents' side. Night Baixian replied with a light smile. Ha! Huh? Emanger's small mouth slightly opened as she looked to the side at Night Baixian, feeling so handsome in her heart. But I don't want to leave Master Teacher. Night Baixian eyed ahead. Then you'll grow up and be strong to the point where, if you want to follow me, you don't need my consent. In his heart, he thought that his squad had to be strong enough. This was also to provoke Emanger a bit. Suddenly. Emenger threw away the flowers and grasses in her hands, her cute little face with a bit of baby fat staring at Night Baixian with a serious face, her large eyes as if they were ablaze with fire. I will definitely do it. Hee hee, cheer up. No one could have imagined that just this light sentence from Night Baixian had created a great saint. What Night Baixian hadn't expected was that this sentence of his own, years later, had caused himself pain, both physically and mentally. If time could be turned back, he would definitely choose not to go to Clearwater Town for the rest of his life. Mister. Knight, are you looking for relatives for your little sister? I can help inquire. Inside the carriage, Tai Ling Ching Shui interjected, her voice soft and charming. Then I'll trouble Miss Ching Shui. Good. Knight Beishuan's reply made Tai Ling Ching Shui extremely happy, thinking that Knight Beishuan was no longer angry, her heart felt much more comfortable, and the bouts of tingling pain disappeared. But Tai Ling Ching Shui had completely thought wrong. Night Beixian is an extremely egotistical person, in some places and flowers between the dresses very similar, he never cared to be angry, and talk about forgiveness? It's not like he's a kid anymore, so if something happens, you won't play with me and I won't play with you? It's too childish. 
There was no expectation of Tai Ling Ching Shui, so there would be even less of such things as gambling, and if Night Bei Xin got upset, then he would directly slaughter the two people behind him. He also wasn't trying to use this topic of finding his parents to make peace between himself and Tai Ling Ching Shui, but it was necessary to help Qi Menger find her parents, so there was no reason to refuse. Why not be happy about it? To summarize, it was that Night Bei Xian didn't care what happened to Tai Ling Ching Shui, but helping out was acceptable. The journey went out a long way. Soon it was already dusk, but no one got off the carriage to cook and rest. Night Bei Xian wanted to hurry to Yujing. Qi Mengye ate some dry food. While Tai Ling Ching Shui, two people had already started to eat. Behind the horse team because the Night Bei Xian did not stop, so also dare not stop, of course, also happy to do so, after all, cannot have to contact with the Night Bei Xian, they begged for it. At this moment, ahead of the path, a few big men suddenly appeared. Holding a big sword with a curved moon in their hands, they were clad in tiger skins, their beards were bearded, and their bodies were covered in scars. Stop for me. Leave all the women, goods and treasures in the car and you will be let go, if not, it's one person, one knife, kill or bury. The leader of the big man will be curved moon sword on the shoulder, a face skittish smile, mouth reciting words. This group of people is the mountain gathering of horse thieves, specializing in robbing some passing merchants, passers-by, anyway, the sky is high and the emperor is far away, the king's law can't control this place. But this horse team is different from other passing horse teams, it did not stop. The burly man at the head frowned. Hurry the fuck up and stop. Otherwise, two steps forward, but stopped halfway, words stopped, together with his body. The horse team is still traveling forward. What's wrong with big brother? Why isn't it moving? A ringing horse next to the burly man behind him, raised his voice to inquire. Go up and take a look. As the words landed, a few big men paired up and went up to survey the big brother in the lead. Walking closer. Big brother, what's wrong with you? One man gave a gentle push. It doesn't matter if this doesn't push, this push, the body of the leading big brother directly fell straight to the ground, an extremely conspicuous blood mark printed out on his stomach. This this this. What's going on? The people who touched it, sat down on their asses in fear pointing at the person who had already become two halves and exclaimed in shock. They had never seen such a subtle means, and for a moment they were scared out of their wits, and knew that this time they had met a hard opponent. Under the moonlight, Belly gradually flowed out of the leading brother, no one for him to collect his body, the rest of the bandits a smoke all ran away. From start to finish, the horse troop didn't stop, and Night Bei Xian, who was driving the horse, never gave these people a second glance. Mr. Knight has good tactics. Tai Ling Ching Shui spoke softly, having been looking for a topic of conversation this entire time. It's just a small carving skill, no better than the girl. Knight Bei Xian waved the horsewhip in his hand, his mouth saying perfunctorily. Tai Ling Ching Shui pursed her lips, her eyes seemed to have flowing water turning, imprinting the stars in the sky. If you don't mind, you can call me Ching Shui. The woman's strange desire to win and lose made her extremely want to return to her former state with Knight Bei Xian. No need. He he. Is Ching Shui being abrupt? Yu Xu looked at the deflated Tai Ling Ching Shui with some heartache, this little princess, who never had anything she wanted, hadn't had anyone treat her like this. Although she seems to have everything, she doesn't have a friend, let alone a lover. Yu Xu admitted that Knight Bei Xian is extremely excellent, all aspects in his own young lady is extremely compatible, whether it is all the origin of the devil religion, or appearance, as well as talent. The two are excellent top. Unfortunately, Knight Bei Xian was the flower demon's man. If Tai Ling Ching Shui dared to move a little bit of love towards Night Bei Xian, then even with the identity of the second miss of the 10,000 Ghost Cave, it would still be very dangerous. Therefore, Yu Xu had to cut off this relationship when it was still in its infancy, and it had to be cut off completely. Tai Ling Ching Shui that aggrieved breath, Yu Xu through the light veil can be felt, tender white slender small hand tugging the hem of the skirt, jade feet unnatural twisting. Miss! Yu Xu finally opened her mouth, but she didn't know what to say. Tai Ling Ching Shui turned her head away, simply ignoring Yu Zhu, obviously gambling. A thousand words can only be turned into a long sigh. The night didn't stop, the horse troop was still on its way to Yu Jing, and by early morning, it was already out of the mountains and forests, passing through one village after another. As the female emperor's territory, the construction of the Yu Jing is extremely luxurious, the incessant sound of hawking, pedestrians dressed are extraordinary, jeweled buildings, carved beams and painted buildings. Night Bei Xian looked at immediately will enter the city, the heart pondered later will go to find his sister-in-law, Xin Yuxian, the author of the two days to save some manuscripts, next month to eat full time, so it is a little less, forgive me. Yu Jing. It is the female emperor's lair, but again in Night Bei Xuan's understanding of the previous life is different, not the female emperor a person say, but divided into many forces. In the general view of the people of the world, Yuanzhou is a chessboard, half of the devil's way, half of the righteous way, the south of the devil's religion, but also the sun and moon god religion, the ghost cave is the most famous. 
The north side is mostly the righteous path, the imperial dynasty, the myriad heart workshop, and various clan forces. But this is only an extremely one-sided view, because the righteous path of the devil, to do anything does not leave a profit word, only the means of some difference. There are so many people. E. Menger looked at the bustling crowd outside, her eyes darting about. Knight Beishan also looked around and realized that there were indeed a lot of people, presumably because the martial arts competition was coming up soon, and various sects and factions had sent people to participate. As the horses arrived at the city gates, Knight Beishan put on a mask that he had prepared in advance, after all, although he was still quite mysterious, there was no guarantee that no one would recognize him. But what he didn't expect was that there wasn't a single guard at the city gates, the originally imagined tight inspection didn't exist at all, allowing people to pass through. What is this situation? Knight Beishwan's brows furrowed slightly as a wave of unease inexplicably surged in his heart. He was usually reckless, but could he be truly reckless if he was able to create the sun-moon divine sect that terrorized the righteous path all by himself? Recklessness was only his appearance, but in reality, he was extremely cautious. Yojing city gates, in Knight Beishwan's view is a huge blood mouth, as long as one goes in, then one will be stirred to the bone. Knight Prince, what's wrong with you? Seeing that Knight Beishan was lost in thought, Tai Ling Xing Shui spoke out to remind him. Nothing, let's go in. Knight Beishan put the mask on his face a little tighter. After all, he had come, even if the front was really a dragon's den, then he had to break through. Suddenly, a clamor came from the side. Wow! Quickly look! It's the sword sex senior brother, Lu Changha who is known to break all laws with one sword. Where where, quickly let me see. It's actually really Lu Changha. Knight Beishan pulled back the curtain and swept towards the direction the voice came from, a young man in white clothes with a stunning face was walking head on towards the city gates. Behind his back was a long sword, glittering under the light of daylight. The whole person had the appearance of a sword immortal. Behind him were a man and a woman, two little sword children, who should be Lu Changha's senior brothers and sisters. Lu Changha is the sword sex once in a century supreme genius, it is said that he was born with a sword heart, and I'm afraid that his strength has already reached the peak of seal marquee. Yu Zhu said. His tone was stiff and filled with worry. He's very powerful? Knight Beixian didn't recognize this person, but he was still familiar with the sword sex grand elder. Very powerful, can be said to be the best of the younger generation, I didn't expect that he would actually participate in the martial arts competition himself. Yu Zhu continued to say, his worry unabated. Knight Beixian was silent. As the carriage continued on, Yu Zhu asked. Knight Prince, it's not that I doubt your strength, but facing Lu Changha, are you really sure of yourself? Yu Zhu's tone of voice was well held and wouldn't make anyone feel uncomfortable. This time, Tai Ling Ching Shui didn't speak and also looked at Knight Beishin with some concern. After all, the meditation mirror was too important for them, everything else was fine, but this matter was something that absolutely couldn't go wrong, or else Tai Ling Charming Veil. It's fine. Knight Beishin waved the horse whip in his hand to speed up some. What I promised you guys, I will naturally do it, there's no need to worry about that. Yu Zhu Tai Ling Ching Shui and the two of them glanced at each other, the worry in each other's eyes unabated, but there was nothing else to do right now other than trusting Knight Bei Xian. After all, Lu Changha was the leader of the younger generation, those under the age of 30 who could steadily defeat him could be counted on one hand, but how could that kind of character help them? Just at this moment, a cry of alarm resounded once again from outside the carriage. It's actually the holy son of the Tai Chu Holy Land, Yi Fan, and the ice fairy of Falling Snow Mountain, Gu Qinghan. What's going on today? Why are all the usually rare supreme celestial pride gathering at the ghost? Knight Bei Xian, who had witnessed everything, had the same question, why were all these supreme prides, who were usually hidden in the deep mountains for cultivation, out today? How could a small martial arts competition blow up so many heavenly prides taboo? Knight Bei Xuan's tone had a playfulness to it and didn't feel anything. These supreme heavenly prides in the eyes of commoners, and even cultivators, in his Knight Bei Xuan's eyes, could only be said to be just okay. Barely enough to look at. However, Yu Zhu was completely nonplussed. How is it possible that the Martial arts competition is held once every three years, but such a spectacle is unheard of ah. Could it be that there is some secret story? Outside the various parties of the pride of heaven is already on the acquaintance, some of the first time out of the world, prefer to make friends, for hitchhiking are all to come. But the body of that arrogance is not hidden, the various heavens pride regardless of what is said, the only thing that has not changed. Knight Beixian is already lost interest, squeeze away from the crowd of onlookers into the city. Four people got off the carriage, looked around, originally some psychological preparation, but still was inside the degree of prosperity to a ruthless shock. Other than Knight Beixian, after all, the only thing that could be compared to the Sun Moon Divine Sex splendid buildings was the Imperial City. Standing in the center of Qing Shui Town, the most upscale location in the entire town, the drunken immortal building, was everywhere in this part of the Yujing, with a clear breeze and flowing water, dazzling the eyes. This trip, 
thanks to the great immortal's hand, I, Wang Fortune, can't thank you enough. Since we have already arrived at the place, let's say goodbye. Wang Fortune walked forward and said with a clasped fist. Wang Er was standing next to him, his face was extremely ugly, as if he was trying his best to endure something, his hands were already gone, and the only thing he had was a few pieces of gauze wrapped around them. He he. Knight Baixian gently laughed, walked to Wang Fortune's front, and patted at the shoulder. It's just a matter of each taking what they need. Since I received your silver, then naturally I have to do what I say, don't you think so? Facing Knight Baishuan's somewhat belabored smile, Wang Fortune's mouth opened and reopened, never able to laugh, and finally stifled a bitter smile. What the great immortal said is, what the great immortal said is. Knight Baishian patted Wang Fortune's shoulder again. HM. Farewell with destiny. After saying that, he led the three people to leave the resting place, waiting for the people to walk away. Father. I want them to die. I want to cut off his hands as well. And that woman, too, will be sent to my bed. Wang Er screamed hysterically. Knight Baixian and the others had already traveled out far enough that they couldn't possibly hear them, so the people around them didn't stop them. Wang Er's angry outbursts, coupled with his ragged panting, never drew comfort from his father, Wang Fortune, sensing that something was not well. Father, what's wrong with you? Wang Fortune opened his mouth wide and a sneeze came out. Who? Don't know how, it seems like there is something drilling into my nostrils, it's hard. Sugar gourd, selling sugar gourd yo. Baklova dash. Big brother come one? Just out of the pot, still hot. Cooling down the Yujing, has begun to have the flavor of winter, hawking people have put on a thick cotton clothes, just this small details, can reflect the most real people's situation in the Yujing. Night Bei Xian line of four people walking in the street, or rich god handsome, extraordinary, or cool as immortal, light veil brush face, or gentle and generous, or petite cute. Except for Yi Menger, each of them had an extraordinary aura. Therefore also attracted the surrounding passing pedestrians, have side eye, ton back rate is extremely high. A day and a night's journey, let a few people feel a little tired, all proposed to take a rest, Knight Baixian also agreed. Finding a reasonably good restaurant, he asked for another private room, plus a table of food. For a cultivator who was resting from the valley, drinking alcohol was the cheapest means of relaxation, but in many cases, it was the most useful. While waiting for the food to be served. Knight Baixian pulled out a small bottle from his pocket and handed it back to Tai Ling Qingxue. Does this thing really work? Don't miss the boat when the time comes. Tai Ling Qingxue put the small bottle away, her light veil shaking slightly as she emitted a laugh. This is a corpse powder refined from human bones, once a person inhales it, they absolutely can't speak in this lifetime, and they move like a corpse, and their limbs can't move. Knight Baixian was somewhat baffled. Then since it was made to kill, why is it so ineffective? The tone of his voice questioned. Tai Ling Ching Shui was somewhat dissatisfied with Knight Baishuan's underestimation, and hurriedly explained, wasn't it you who requested not to take lives? If you kill someone, then you definitely aren't using this bottle. Hearing this, Knight Baishuan didn't have much of a reaction, and just now, he had only been looking for words without words. A horse team of people are dead, then the movement is too big, soon can be investigated to our head, so seal their mouth, break their hands, this is enough, do things to leave a line well. Drinking a mouthful of tea on the table, Knight Baishuan's eyes became sharp, the corner of his mouth unconsciously upturned. He always understands that the strong dragon does not suppress the reasoning of the ground snake, although Wang Fortune is afraid of him, afraid of him, but after all, cut the son of two arms. So it is inevitable that Wang Fortune will not jump over the wall in a hurry and do some snitching out, all without saying anything more, just need to tell some of the higher-ups. From the town of Qing Shui came a few suspicious people, Tu Ling Qing Shui and other people still nothing, they can be finished. After all, the people were now on edge, all because of the Sun Moon Divine sect. Isn't the Night Prince a bit too cautious? Even if they chopped off both hands of that stupid son of his, they shouldn't dare to talk nonsense, right? Tai Ling Ching Shui felt that the strength displayed by Night Baixian was enough to deter the curmudgeons, so there was no need to be superfluous. The words landed. Yu Zhu was the one who spoke first. Miss, you're too naive, some people jump over the wall when they're anxious, what can't they do? It's better to prevent it early or be caught off guard when the time comes. For Knight Bei Xian's approach, Yu Zhu was raising her hands in favor, after all, she had traveled in Yuan Zhou and experienced a lot of things, so she was well aware of the reasoning behind cutting off the roots, and even felt that Knight Bei Xian hadn't done enough. A cup of tea went down. Knight Bei Xian took a long breath. Without cultivation he was immortal, and the long bumpy ride had made him a bit overwhelmed as well. Seeing that the two actually argued over this, he sighed and said helplessly. Things have already been done, so why bother dwelling on whether it's reasonable or not? He then glanced his head towards Tai Ling Ching Shui. If I don't do it, things might not happen, but if I do it, then things will definitely not happen. Understand? This I certainly know. Tai Ling Ching Shui somewhat depressedly picked up her cup and drank tea. 
She wasn't any kind of soft-hearted, just now she also just wanted to talk to Night Baishan more, but she didn't expect to be lectured, feeling so aggrieved. Within the private room, only Chi Menger didn't say anything, only waiting for the delicious food to be served. Everyone was a bit tired from the bumpy ride, so they quickly quieted down, and the dishes were brought up one after another, a dazzling array of food. Eat? As the words left his mouth, Night Baishan began to wolf down the food, 90% of the table's dishes were finished off by him and Yi Menger, scaring Tai Ling Ching Shui who didn't dare to move her chopsticks. The meal was quickly finished. Tai Ling Ching Shui put down her teacup, Mr. Knight, where do you plan to go next? They could go anywhere they wanted, but not Night Baishan, it had to be an extremely secluded place. That's not something you guys should bother with. You guys can leave after settling the bill. Night Baishan leaned his back against the chair, his eyes closed and tranquil. Yu Xu stopped Tai Ling Ching Shui, who wanted to curse, and asked, then where are we going to find you? The grand competition is just around the corner, if we can't find you at that time, wouldn't it be? The Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce. Hearing this, both of them were a bit surprised. The Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce belonged to the level of the righteous facade, how could it be related to Night North Xian, the devil? Seeing the two people's incomprehension, Night Baishan stood up, the president of the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce is my sister-in-law, so you guys don't have to worry about that. He then intended to leave. Ah, uh, wait. Yu Zhu was a bit surprised and stopped Night Baishan with his hand. You said that the president of the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce is your sister-in-law? Qin Yu Xian? Yes? What's wrong? Night Baishan was a bit baffled. Wasn't it just a Chamber of Commerce president? To put it bluntly, it's just a businessman, is there a need to be so surprised? Yu Zhu stabilized her breathing. You haven't understood the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce. You probably don't know the energy of this Chamber of Commerce. As if knowing that explaining it would be a long-winded speech, Yu Zhu stopped. Forget it, if Qin Yuxian is really your sister-in-law, then some things are much better, at least your identity problem is solved. Yu Zhu said with some excitement, this was considered the only good news in these few days. HM. Then I'll leave first. Night Baixian didn't seem too concerned, after all, he had the mindset of going forward with any difficulty. So it didn't matter to him whether or not there were conveniences available. Because whether there was or not, his ultimate goal would not change. Just like that, Yu Zhu settled the bill and the four of them stood at the entrance of the restaurant. Just come find me if there's anything. After Night Baixian finished speaking, he pulled Yi Menger and walked towards the city. However, after taking two steps, he realized that Tai Ling Ching Shui and Yu Zhu were following him, and Night Baixian didn't care too much, thinking that he was just passing by. As a result, after walking for two blocks, Tai Ling Ching Shui's immortal, untainted aura, and the charming, ripe as a peach Yu Zhu were still following him. Night Baixian simply stood still. I said, what are you two following me for? The tone was a bit dissatisfied, after all, it was already conspicuous, and with this kind of mess, it became the center of attention of the crowd. He he. I also happen to want to pay a visit to the famous strange woman of Yu Jing, I also hope that the night gentleman will make it convenient. Yu Zhu said quietly, Happy National Day everyone. There is only one day off this month, and it's a bit difficult to have two shifts a day, and each chapter must be 2000 words, but luckily I saved some drafts in the past two days. Request for gifts. Request for gifts. I'd like to ask for a gift. Five star praise is also okay. People come and go on the street, and then look at the moon bamboo as a kind of do not achieve the goal, vow not to stop the momentum. Night Beishin can only will refuse the words to hold back, helplessly said. Bringing you guys along is fine, but don't talk nonsense. After all, the impact is not big, so bring along can also, the main thing is that the refusal seems to be useless. After all, the leg is on people, to follow their own no way, it's impossible to beat them up, right? He, Night Beixian, was his sister-in-law's good boy. That's natural. Yu Xu smiled in response, mesmerizing the men watching on the street. Pulling the stiff Tai Ling Ching Shui, miss? Oh, Tai Ling Ching Shui actually wanted to go, but for some reason, there was a feeling of an ugly daughter-in-law meeting her in-laws, making her squirm a bit. The originally separated line of four people converged here and set off towards the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce in the city. Night Prince, how is your relationship with your sister-in-law? On the road, Yu Zhu asked curiously. Eh? Night Baixian held Qi Menger with one hand, while one hand reached out to scratch his handsome face. Thinking back to the past when he was at Mount Immeasurable, he often dragged Hua Ma Shang to peek at Qin Yuxian's bath, it's really nostalgic ah. Ah shucks. Still really young and unintelligent ah. The relationship is definitely good. Other than my mother, my sister-in-law is the best elder to me. Night Baixian said with some warmth on his face as memories filled his brain. Seeing Night Baixian reveal this expression for the first time, whether it was Yu Zhu or Tai Ling Ching Shui, who was in a hurry at the side, all of them were stunned and slightly surprised. 
After all, a demon like Knight Baishan with a ferocious reputation, the common impression was that he was cold-blooded and merciless, killing like a man, and it was impossible for him to recite emotions. That's good. Yu Xu replied in a slow voice. Tai Cho Palace. In the Dragon Pond Immortal Mist, a slender and absolutely beautiful figure was resting and nourishing in it. A little bit of white immortal chi lingered in it, wrapping the human child in a ball. Seems to be almost nourished. The calm water surface ushered in the shaking, the mist is like a white veil, will be naked out of the bath of the stunning Tian Xian hidden in which. Walked up the steps, jade feet tricky up the big red robe next to the dragon pool, draped on the body. Walked to the bed. What is it? The tone of voice was lazy and elegant, half-assed, but noble and incomparable. The woman waiting outside the door received permission and pushed the door in, but her eyes did not dare to look around, kneeling on one knee. The previous Sun Moon Divine Sex Sect Master, Knight Bei Xian, has already arrived in Yujing, and is currently on his way to the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce. The words were unassuming and calm. Coming? Xin Shueyue raised her phoenix eyes, putting down the cool tea blowing in her hands once again, her complexion grave. Is. This person's movements extremely secretive, posing as a dark master to a merchant team to escort darts, this identity into the city, if not known in advance, took advantage of the opportunity, I'm afraid. This did not go on to say, but the tone of the person who came to report can be judged to be not simple. This is not strange. Qin Shueyue shook her head slightly, appearing to cry and laugh a little. The kind of person, Knight Bei Xian, had too good of a mental quality to panic when things went wrong, and according to the incoming report, the masks were all put on only after entering the city. This was very different from the other people of the demon cult, the others were wrapping themselves up tightly for fear of others recognizing them, this was instead easy to expose. Should we capture him next? The woman kneeling on one knee asked. No one is allowed to move him. The expression on Qin Shuei's face was unprecedentedly serious and oppressive. The black chi in the southern sky had only dispersed with great difficulty, and with this kind of mess, it was feared that it would not gather once more. You are only responsible for surveillance, nothing else is allowed, if you are discovered, then go to the supervisory heavenly division yourself to receive punishment. Come back to report if you have important information, go. Qin Shuei's snow white like fine lotus root small hands propped up her jade face. Yes. A silence once again descended within the Taicho Palace, ending with a sigh from Qin Shuiyue. Knight Bei Xian. What kind of magic power do you have that can make the two most outstanding women in Yuan Zhou look forward and backward for you? Qin Shuiyue muttered to herself. Ever since the last time Hua Ma Shan came to her and made a deal, she didn't think anything of it at the time, but then she went back and thought about it properly before realizing that there was something strange about it. Or perhaps the whole thing was too much of a child's play. Because she knew the ins and outs, she felt that the whole thing was just playing house. Hua Ma Shang was the one who organized the family game, Yun Zun was the participant, and Knight Bei Xian was the core of the family game. All the people and cultivators in Yuanzhou were the bargaining chips to force Knight Bei Xian and Yun Zun to play house. Once the core of the Knight Bei Xian out of the problem, or Yun Zun did not make the right decision, then the entire Yuanzhou will be all doomed. And the reason is not how great the reason, or how cruel the reason, is simple, for one person. Knight Bei Xian. The more I think about it, the more curious I feel. Xiao Chan. Qin Shuiyue propped up her jade face like an exiled immortal for a long time, and then crisply shouted. Slave girl is here. Just a short two breaths of time, a well-dressed palace maid walked in. Although it wasn't like Qin Shuiyue's excellent temperament and face value, it was still considered a beautiful woman who was good in all aspects. This emperor is going to make a trip out of the palace. You will be the one to take care of the court during this period of time when this emperor is away. Qin Shuiyue finished speaking and lifted her slender jade legs to leave. Slave servant accepts the order, your majesty take your time. In dynastic politics, strength was king. That's why all the emperors of Yuan Zhou since ancient times would have a beloved as their spokesperson, not needing to be strong or proficient in politics and law. The only thing needed was loyalty. The emperors, on the other hand, were cultivating or looking for a chance, and unless there was a big event that had to come out, they basically rarely showed up throughout the year. Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce a prosperous place in the city of Yujing, the gold location inch of gold, and the night cloud chamber of commerce is covering an area of 100 miles, exquisite decoration, can be said to be a beautiful scenery line. One incense stick of time. Knight Baishan tried his best to take the less crowded places, so he came a bit slower, and when he arrived at the place, he saw a bejeweled and colorful building. There were four words engraved on it. Night cloud chamber of commerce. Looking at the attic where people come and go, E. Manger was the first to speak, how many bad things must this have done to have such a building ah? Speaking words that didn't match her age Knight Baishan understood, after all, Shi Mengye grew up eating her own food, but to be able to say such words, what was going on? Nonsense what? Ha ha ha. Little sister, who taught you this? Moon Bamboo laughed out loud without any regard for his image. 
Tai Ling Qing Shui's light veil shook slightly, so she must have been amused by Qi Menger's sentence as well. In the face of the two's inquiries, Yi Menger, embarrassed with a small face, still answered her own master's question first. Wasn't it Master Zun who said that those who do business are all bad people? Then if you make business so big, aren't you a big bad guy? Reasoned and convincing. Master did say. Knight Baixian felt that it was a bit troublesome to explain, and finally admonished. No talking nonsense later, or else you'll be spanked. Oh. Just as a few people were finishing up and preparing to enter the Chamber of Commerce, a steward came out to yell. Yell what? What's all the yelling about? The stewards of small chambers of commerce had no brains and couldn't look at anyone after mixing up. The stewards of large chambers of commerce weren't this stupid, seeing Knight Baixian and his party dressed in bright clothes, with an extraordinary aura, and even more so, a dangerous aura. The words turned. Yo. Are small and eyeless, rushing a few people. The tone of voice is taken just right, a few people come to my nightcloud chamber of commerce, can there be something ah? Uh? If you want to buy or sell something, you can go to the point store at the corner. Don't look at this chamber of commerce, although it was big, but unless it was some big deal, or an extremely rare heavenly material, it did not take customers. To consume, the restaurants, tea houses, and study rooms on this street are all owned by the night cloud chamber of commerce, so where can one go? No need, just stay here. Night Beishuan's aura was taken with sufficient force, knowing that this place was all about looking at people and pretending to have an aura. Walking forward, pulling out a spirit flower from his shirt. In an instant, golden light shone, a roar belonging to an ancient ferocious beast, shaking the clouds, followed by an aroma that filled the air, refreshingly light and elegant, yet extremely aggressive. This, this, this. The steward was incoherent, his eyes were straight as he watched, his mouth was wide open, but he couldn't speak half the words. Red dragon amber grease? Yushu was obviously also very literate, and exited in surprise, this level of heavenly treasures, even the 10,000 ghost cave was not available. Of course, this was also related to the withering of the 10,000 ghost cave in the last thousand years, when it was in its heyday 10,000 years ago, it was not as if there was no equivalent divine item of red dragon amber scent. Tai Ling Qing Shui looked deeply at Night Bei Xian. In the age of the end, aura gradually withered, and by now it had become extremely rare, because even if a high-grade heavenly material treasure took root, it didn't have enough aura to feed it. Red Dragon Ambergris. There was once a bead in the broken dragon cliff, which was later plucked by the head of Lizy, and then later when Knight Baixian was alone and alone and breaking into the broken dragon cliff, he killed the head of Lizy and got the last bead. Such divine objects. Where did your excellency get it from? The steward's face was cloudy, both elated and feeling embarrassed, after all, this thing was a hot potato. Knight Baixian put the red dragon saliva back. Is this thing qualified enough? The steward knew that this was sarcasm at his own slight just now, and didn't dare to get angry, after all, those who could take out this kind of thing couldn't be good. I have no eyes, I have offended his excellency. Saying that, he gave himself a slap, there are many people outside, and it's still cold. Why don't we go into the chamber of commerce to have a good discussion? Hum. Knight Beishuan's high nose, let out a low hum, holding Chi Menor, followed the steward into the night cloud chamber of commerce. Surrounding people see no drama to see, also have dispersed, mouth marveled repeatedly. After all, the first time to see the night cloud chamber of commerce's steward, so lowly. Into the house, and to the second floor. On the way, Tai Ling Ching Shui trotted two steps, and Night Bei Xian walked side by side, extremely whispered and asked, This is what you got from killing the head of Lizy back then, right? Ah. Night Bei Xian had a moment of confusion because this red dragon amber scent was opened from the system, and he still had several blind boxes that he hadn't opened yet. Oh. Yes. Then reacted and catered, after all, there was this in the past. But the strain of red dragon saliva that he got from killing the head of Lizy had already been used by his senior sister, Huama Shang, and this was his main purpose of robbing the red dragon saliva. However, the world only knows that he killed the broken dragon cliff, swept everything, and finally got a strain of red dragon salivary incense, but does not know the exact whereabouts of the red dragon salivary incense. So he could say whatever he wanted. Why did you kill your way up to the broken dragon cliff in the first place? And also wiped out Lizy too and the others? As if he was extremely interested in this, Tai Ling Ching Shui continued to ask. Eh? Knight Baixian was a little unsure of how to answer. After all, back then, it was purely for the sake of getting the red dragon ambergris sent and giving Hua Ma Shang to improve her physique, and he didn't care about anything else. Is it for the sake of the world's people? Tai Ling Ching Shui couldn't wait to continue asking. Back then, the Lizy Tu and his group who were perched on top of the broken dragon cliff could be considered the tumor of the tumors in the Yuan continent. Notorious and infamous, the 10,000 ghost cave of the same period was like a famous sect compared to them. Broken Dragon Cliff was ravaged at that time, with thousands of miles of bare ground, and even today, it still looks the same, with the sky always gray. Back then, gathered above the head of Lizy and the seat of the twelve disciples, 
formed a sect called Human Door. Twelve disciples are practicing evil methods, combat strength in the same realm of people to be much more powerful, the task is from the four corners of the continent to jerk people to the dragon cliff, and then hand it over to the head of Lysi. Catch over the people, must be a bond, the more people close to the better, orphans, beggars do not want. Sent into the refining corpse cave. The man will be tied up, and then every close person of the man, tortured to death in front of his eyes. When the man is the most broken, the most angry, the most helpless, thrown into the refining furnace. At this time, the man's negative emotions are at their highest and have not been dissipated. Once the body is lost to the fire, all the negative emotions will be transformed into a wisp of ghostly energy, which is where Lizy too and the others come in. Once this matter came out, the world was shocked. The righteous people crusade against Broken Dragon Cliff one after another, but they all ended up losing, because the mountain of Broken Dragon Cliff is dangerous and its location is too remote, with many formation ambushes. Just when the righteousness of the headache, the people of the time, a young man came out of nowhere. He killed the longtime evil mange head, removed a major tumor in Yuanjo, no one knows what his name is, only know that he is from the immeasurable mountain. The world thought he would become a great hero, but what they didn't expect was that. He became the next lazy head. Thoughts returned. The self that Knight Baixian remembered was a bit handsome. Miss Ching Shue, if you think that the Sun Moon Divine Sect is a righteous force, then everything I do is for the sake of the world's people. Knight Baixian smiled. Tai Ling Ching Shue's footsteps stopped, as if something had broken, looking at the gradually distant Knight Baixian, slightly stunned, before being led by Yu Zhu. Arriving at the lounge on the second floor, it was luxurious and incomparable, next to it, there were two dexterous maids waiting around, it looked like it was used to receive honored guests. A few of you take a short rest, I'll go inform the shopkeeper. The steward clasped a fist and backed away. Aha! Knight Baixian agreed, bringing Chi Menor to sit on a chair, the fur blanket was slightly warm, but it was especially important in this season of winter. Tai Ling Ching Shui was silent, Yu Zhu comforted from the side, and Knight Baixian drank tea by himself. Yi Menger grabbed the pastries and stuffed them into her mouth. From time to time, all of you go down. A cold and lonely voice rang out, with the gentle consideration of a noblewoman. It was as if a flower wrapped within a layer of ice. This voice Knight Baixian was too familiar to be familiar, his breathing was slightly rushed, since his mother left, his sister-in-law was his only relative in name. Unexpectedly meeting again would be such a scene. After the subordinates all left, Knight Baixian stood up. There were two stunning beauties standing at the doorway but Knight Baixian simply didn't have the time to pay attention to the other one. Little. Auntie. Before he could see Qin Yuxian's face, Knight Baixuan's face was wrapped in an extremely soft mass, and a milky scent scurried into his nostrils with it. Personally, I like invincible literature, so the male lead will be designed to be very powerful, I don't know if you like it? Lastly, I'm asking for a gift to add to the author's favor. Five-star reviews are fine too. Dots of smoky incense within the room, a cold noblewoman, dressed in purple lace dress, tall and shapely, lavender beauty eyes cold frost dense. However, after the servants and fellows left, they blossomed with an absolutely unique warmth. Xian'er. It's good that you're alright. Qin Yuxian hugged the still unresponsive Knight Bei Xian and kept squeezing the person into her arms, releasing the thoughts of all these years. The young girl who followed looked dumbfounded. The usually noble and cold President Qin would actually show this kind of gesture. It was like a gentle elder. Moreover, it was the first time she had seen Qin Yuxian have contact with a man, before, not to mention hugging, there had never been a man around. Yu Zhu also froze. She had heard a lot about the strange woman Qin Yuxian of Yu Jing, who, with a mortal body, had fought for 10,000 miles and sat as the lord of a while in the man-eating realm of Yu Jing. Its means outsiders do not know, but can guess is, must be thunder and lightning. Cruel and bloodthirsty. Otherwise it is absolutely impossible to sit on the top seat. But today see, it seems to be a little unexpected. The two Ling Ching Shui is a bit tasteless moved away from the line of sight, listen carefully, you can also hear hum a sound. Similarly confused was Knight Baixian. He didn't expect his sister-in-law to be so enthusiastic, mainly because he wasn't mentally prepared, after all, the steward said he was going to look for the shopkeeper, but he didn't expect his sister-in-law to come directly. Although Qin Yuxian was tall, but compared to Knight Baixian it was a bit inadequate, so Qin Yuxian hugged Knight Baixuan's head, and her posture looked a bit strange. Knight Baixian can't stand up, can't sit down, his head is still in someone else's arms, ruthlessly strangled, can't half breathe. Little. Sister-in-law. Knight Baixian some breathing difficulties, a strand of milk fragrance surged into the nasal cavity. Shinner, do you know how much Auntie has missed you all these years? What a bad boy, running out for so long, not coming to see Auntie. Qin Yuxian said to herself, although it was a reproach, but it made people listen without any semblance of discomfort. Whirlwind. Knight Baixian was really suffocating so he took the initiative to break free from Qin Yuxian's embrace. A handsome and tragic face was somewhat flushed. Gasping for air, he said, Auntie, 
It's not that I didn't come to see you, but I couldn't come. After all, he was the sect leader of the Sun and Moon sect, and was technically hostile to the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce. Xin Yuxian's violet eyes twinkled and points of tears tumbled. Would Auntie be afraid of all this? After your mother left, I'm your only relative, you're still a child, I have to take care of you, said with a sobbing voice. Night Baixian was silent. Although it couldn't be talked about as wanting to cry, this feeling of being cared for by a loved one was really good, as if all of a sudden he relaxed, and his body was no longer on guard. He he. I'm not here to find my sister-in-law? Night Baixian said gently, reaching out again to wipe away the teardrops on Qin Yuxian's jade-like cheeks. Little heartless. Qin Yuxian's emotions became even more uncontrollable and she was directly crying out. Night Baixian also didn't bother wiping away the tears anymore, but smiled and watched, he knew that his sister-in-law missed him, because he was so too, so the emotions needed to be released. Crying was almost over. Yu Zhu handed over a handkerchief, and Night Baixian took it to wipe away Qin Yuxian's tears. Auntie, the rouge is all blurred from crying, it's not even pretty anymore. Night Baixian said fervently. Rouge is all purely natural spirit flower extracts, how could it be blossomed from crying? Qin Yuxian touched the corners of her eyes, confident in her own product. Night Baixian assisted Qin Yuxian to sit on a chair, and the two of them had a good time catching up, treating the surrounding people as nothing. Luckily, the cold girl who just came in knew the importance of the situation and could see that Tai Ling Qing Shui and Night Baixian had a great relationship, so she took the initiative to entertain them and went out of the room. Yu Zhu had wanted to befriend Qin Yuxian, but looking at the intimate image of Night Baixian being nudged in the nose by Qin Yuxian under the sunlight, she felt that it would be better for her not to disturb. There would be plenty of opportunities in the future, so why stick to one moment, so she also followed the young girl out of the room. Night Baixian and Qin Yuxian chatted a lot, from the time they were in the immeasurable mountain, to Night Baixuan's mother leaving, to the broken dragon cliff, to Qin Yuxian coming to the Yujing. Brat, you peeked at my bath back then with your mesmerizing clothes, don't think I don't know. Qin Yuxian somewhat blamefully grabbed Night Baixuan's ears. Wrong wrong. Ears are going to fall off. Night Baixian exclaimed in an exaggerated manner. Knowing that Night Baixian was pretending, Qin Yuxian still let go of her hand in pain, and even touched Night Baixuan's somewhat reddened earlobes with her hand, does it hurt? It doesn't hurt. Night Baixian smiled playfully. This kind of gesture hadn't been seen in a long time. That's it, still sect leader, just like a little kid. Qin Yuxian laughed and teased. Mainly, I'm not a sect master anymore either. The current sect master is my senior sister. Talking about business. Shinner, do you know that I was worried to death when I heard that you fell off the broken dragon cliff? Qin Yuxian said with some afterthought, caressing Night Baixuan's face. I can't help it, that girl, Moss Hang, gave me the past life compulsion, wanting to detain me for the rest of my life, if I don't run, I really won't be able to run anymore. Night Baixuan's words, Qin Yuxian unexpectedly did not react much, as if she had already known that there would be such a day. You can try to tolerate her a little more. She is your senior sister after all, it's impossible for her to harm you. Qin Yuxian's tone was filled with tenderness and worry. Auntie you don't understand, this isn't a matter of hurting or not hurting me. This was a matter of his knight Baishuan's dignity. Shinner, what are you going to do now? Qin Yuxian didn't want to chat about these things that had already happened. Top of the list for this Eugene competition. I need the sleeping compassion pill from the reward. Knight Baishuan replied. Qin Yuxian sighed, her graceful and gorgeous body slightly lying on its side, perhaps because of her poor health, she was a bit tired. The matter of cultivation, I don't understand it either. Is there anything auntie can help you with? I need a reasonable identity to participate in the tournament, then a place to stay, and nothing else. Knight Baixian said truthfully. There was nothing to be embarrassed about when facing his sister-in-law. Moreover, these weren't even difficult enough to be troublesome for Qin Yuxian. These are no problem, in terms of identity, you are my Qin Yuxian's nephew. Qin Yuxian was a little tired, but stiffened his spirit and smiled faintly. That's not lying. Either, Night Baixian followed with a smile, feeling very proper. Perhaps it really couldn't hold on anymore, one hour let this, the woman who made the business world scared to death tired, slowly propping up her waist limbs that were as thin as weak willows. Shenner, you first go and find Xiaoyu for dinner, it is the young girl who just came in with me, auntie still has some things. The tone of her voice was already somewhat lax. Night Baixian of course saw the clues. What's wrong with you, sister-in-law? As he spoke, he pulled Qin Yuxian to a halt, just now, that steward clearly went to call the shopkeeper, why did sister-in-law come over? When this query was asked, Night Baixian himself had already guessed the answer, because of the red dragon amber grease incense. Auntie needed this, and it just so happened that when the steward went to report just now, Auntie was by the side of the shopkeeper Xiaoyu, and as soon as she heard about the red dragon salivary incense, she hurriedly ran over. But as soon as she saw that the seller was him, a moment of longing broke the dam inside, and she forgot about it. 
As for why it wasn't mentioned for an hour in the conversation, it was probably because the red dragon saliva was too precious, and his sister-in-law wanted to leave it for him to use. Little aunt? Knight Baixian held that smooth and delicate little hand, shivering slightly. Shinner, this you don't care about, hurry up and go eat, Shao you should have arranged for top quality wine and food to be waiting for you. Qin Yuxian was anxious to leave. All these years she had a mortal body, busy and hooked up, so her body was getting worse by the day, after sitting for a long time if she didn't soak in a medicinal bath, she would get more and more tired, and at the back of the room, she couldn't even stand up. It is rumored that the top grade heavily material treasure can improve the physique and revitalize the whole person, but that kind of godly thing is simply priced out of the market and can't be bought. Even if it was the most inferior, improving the constitution type of heavenly materials and geomancers, one would need to pay a great price. Originally thought that today had delivered good luck, someone had brought the red dragon ambergris, and she could finally get rid of her illness, but who knew that it was her chien air? Such a precious thing, she absolutely can't want it, although she knows that if she opens her mouth, the probability is that night Bay chien won't be stingy, but precisely so. That was why she could not want it even more. Shenner, let sister-in-law go. Qin Yuxian changed her steadiness from earlier and said with some begging, as she didn't want to be unable to stand up in front of Night Bei Xian. However, Night Bei Xian had no intention of letting her leave. Auntie, you can tell me if you have any difficulties, I'm not an outsider. Although he had already guessed it in his heart, Night Bei Xian wanted to inquire about the uses. It's nothing. Qin Yuxian was silent for a while, still didn't say anything, she always thought that this kind of divine object, in the Night Bei Xian must have a great use. She couldn't take. Time passed minute by minute. Qin Yuxian's body began to become more and more soft, as if the bones were softened, slowly. Fragrant soft glutinous body pasted on the Night Baixian body. Because of the lack of energy, most of the weight of the body was pressed on Night Baixian, and his breathing began to rush, exhaling like an orchid, with a scent of purple clouds and flowers. Seeing that his sister-in-law would rather endure it than say anything, Night Baixian was also afraid that something would go wrong, taking Qin Yuxian's waist, his other hand took out the red dragon ambergris incense from his shirt. Auntie, you want this? Night Bei Xian didn't have the slightest distraction, his tone was frank. However, Qin Yuxian's somewhat tired face was tinted with a bright red color, and feeling the big hot hand on her slender waist, Qin Yuxian was a bit squirmy. Unconsciously, Xian'er is already an adult, so tall, already not the naughty child at the beginning, have learned to care about sister-in-law. This kind of divine object, it should be more useful to you, right? Little aunt is just some physical problems, but not in the way, your things for the important. Qin Yuxian felt the concern from Night Bei Xian, so she no longer hid it and spilled the beans. After hearing this, heartache flowed from Night Bei Xuan's eyes. A mere red dragon ambergris, how can it compare to sister-in-law? If there's anything in the future, be sure to say it. Night Bei Xian said with a solemn expression. In the face of Night Bei Xuan's somewhat ferocious tone, Qin Yuxian was smiling, but her emotions were a bit unsteady. A mere plant? As the president of the largest chamber of commerce in Yujing, he knew a great deal about the value of all items. Red dragon ambergris, a spiritual flower that has existed since ancient times, can improve a person's physique and turn a loser into a proud son of heaven, its value can be imagined. So the more precious the item was, the more it appeared to be the rare and precious knight Baixian who had given it away. Brat, still lecturing me. Qin Yuxian steadied herself from shedding tears, after all, as an elder, crying twice in one day seemed a little less stable. Knight Baixian sent the red dragon amber sent into Qin Yuxian's fair hand and made it hold it again. Auntie, no matter how precious these things are, they are ultimately things outside of the body, don't be so foolish in the future. Night Baixian knew that Qin Yuxian was doing this all for herself. Hearing these words, Qin Yuxian opened her mouth, but nothing came out, swallowing back her long speech. Hum. The jade hand holding the red dragon amber scent tightened. How do I use it? Night Baixian asked as he watched Qin Yuxian's body getting weaker and weaker. This. I don't know why, Qin Yuxian's face blushed a little, this you don't need to care, I'll go back first. I'll come back to chat with you at night. As if anxious to leave Knight Beishuan's embrace, Xin Yuxian staggered and tried to stand up. But then she knew that her body had already gone limp. Just now, her center of gravity was all on Knight Beishuan's body. Xin Yuxian was still unaware of it, but at this moment, she suddenly had no one to rely on, and her body went limp, bringing up a gust of fragrant wind as she collapsed at great speed. It's over. Xin Yuxian closed her eyes, but the pain was delayed, but felt fell into a warm embrace, slightly opened with a panic purple eyes. Only to see a handsome and incomparable young man, was smilingly looking at himself. Ah, Shenner I'm your sister-in-law, quickly put me down. Xin Yuxian's face turned red as she struggled. I'll go. Don't move. Night Bei Xian did not expect Qin Yuxian to react so strongly and was somewhat caught off guard. After Qin Yuxian really didn't have the strength, she could only lean on Night Bei Xuan's arms, a sandalwood fragrance mixed with the scent of purple cloudflowers permeating the luxurious room. 
Shinner, I'm your sister-in-law, hurry up and put me down. If your mother finds out, she will definitely beat you to death. Shin Yuxian's face was getting redder and redder. Night Beixian wondered in his heart, why is my mother hitting me for this good reason? Auntie, why are you reacting so strongly? It's not just a hug, it's not like you haven't hugged before when you were a child. Night Beixian appeared indifferent and somewhat puzzled. This, that, oops, you quickly put me down. Be obedient, hurry up. Xin Yuxian stayed in Night Beixuan's arms, only feeling uncomfortable all over. The heart welled up, a throbbing if anything. I'm not going to let go, unless Auntie tells me why my mother wants to beat me when she finds out. Night Beixuan's mixed up devil character came up and asked with a smirk. You even ate my sister-in-law's tofu, you'll see if your mother doesn't beat you into a pig's head. Xin Yuxian was indeed a bit anxious, her usual steady and dignified demeanor gone, even saying words like pig's head. What's this? It's not considered eating tofu at all. Night Beixian said indifferently, what's more, even if my mother wants to beat me up, I believe that my sister-in-law will also stop it. Xin Yuxian was somewhat speechless. It was because what Night Beixian said was true in every sense. But that manly aura made her, an older yellow girl who had never touched a man before, feel her heart throb more than ever, a deer banging wildly like it had never felt before. Behave yourself and go call Xiao Yu over. If I don't soak in the medicinal bath again, my illness will worsen. Xin Yuxian now desperately wanted to get rid of Night Beixuan's embrace, so she played the emotion card, originally thinking that this would make Night Beixuan put her down, but who knew? This isn't simple? And why bother people, I'll hug my sister-in-law. Night Beixuan finished. In Xin Yuxian's confused eyes, he stepped out of the room with one foot. Following the sound, he looked out. The crowd outside the door was in an uproar. Invincible text is not superficially invincible, the essence is that no matter who you face, there is a way to win. Request for gifts. Ask for a gift. Five star reviews are fine. Finally posted the mysterious code. It's 42 umbrella umbrella 2 it's 1. Xin Yuxian was ashamed of not having the face to see others, tugging the veil to cover her face. Her body was stiff and incomparable, but Night Beixian was heartless, didn't care about anything, and directly walked past the people. Auntie, where is your room? I'll take you there now. Night Beixian asked out loud. Xin Yuxian also wanted to hurry up and leave this place, so he pointed in a direction, and Night Beixian followed where Xin Yuxian pointed all the way to the topmost floor of the Chamber of Commerce. A light fragrance floats in the air. Into the Qin Yuxian boudoir, it can be seen that usually do not live here, although the environment is luxurious, but less some fireworks. Auntie, what's next? Night Beixian laid Qin Yuxian flat on the bed couch and spoke. All right Xianer, go get Xiaoyu to come over, she'll do the rest for me. The back of Qin Yuxian's jade smooth hands hit her violet eyes as if she was hiding from something. Knowing that he would need to take off his clothes if he took a medicinal bath later, he, Night Beixian, was not a denizen, so it was useless to stay, so he also said I'm leaving, and then left. Until the moment the door closed, Qin Yuxian's mouthful of aroma only spit out, originally covered by the small hands of the purple eyes, at this moment seems to have a small stream in the flow of. Qin Yuxian, you're really a bad woman who can't control herself, you would actually treat your own nephew. Qin Yuxian's pretty red little face, the smoldering haze was even better than just now. After Night Beixian left, the shame and throbbing gradually eased, and the original exhaustion crept into her heart. But Qin Yuxian's thoughts were half on this. After Night Beixian left the house, he went directly to the place where he had picked up the guests, where the shopkeeper, Mu Xiaoyu, was entertaining a few people from Tai Ling Qingshui. Boss, my sister-in-law asked you to come over. Night Beixian walked over to the table and said to the unusually silent table, Just call me Little Rain. The voice was relatively light and pleasant, and she should be around the same age as Night Beixian. Mu Xiaoyu was no stranger to this sort of thing, and after hearing it went straight towards the top. Night Beixian joined on top of the table, but after all, he had only just eaten when he arrived and wasn't very hungry at this time, so he casually drank some wine and pastries. With the addition of Night Beixian, the table immediately became lively. Night Prince, are you and your sister-in-law close to this extent? When the two of them came out just now, Yu Xu saw the red dragon saliva incense in Qin Yuxian's hand. He he. Something as good as it is, it's ultimately something outside of the body. It doesn't prove my relationship with my sister-in-law. Night Beixian replied as he took a sip of wine. The red dragon ambergris was certainly precious, but it wasn't of much use to him, after all, he might need a thousand plants, or even tens of thousands of plants. One less plant wouldn't matter at all. This kind of thinking from Mr. Night is a rare thing in the world. Yu Zhu flirted like a seasoned man, and between words, raised his wine cup. Night Beixian returned the toast and downed it in one drink. Mr. Knight, if another devil comes out of Yuanzhou, would you be willing to kill him for the people again? Tai Ling Xingxue held his tongue for a while before asking again. Hearing this, Knight Beixian was somewhat speechless. How could a ghost cultivator of the 10,000 Ghost Cave actually worship a great hero? 
It was really true that her sister had protected her too well and didn't know the dangers and evils of the world. Miss Qing Shuei especially wants me to be the great hero who saves the world? Knight Baixian sipped a mouthful of spirits and asked in a somewhat meaningful manner. But you were originally. After Tai Ling Qing Shuei had meticulously understood what Knight Baixian had done in the past, the image of that great hero in her mind had a proper face. Yu Zhu sighed from the side. Somewhat regretting telling Tai Ling Qing Shui about Knight Bei Xian's deeds, her intention was to tell Tai Ling Qing Shui that this person, Knight Bei Xian, was very powerful and deeply hidden. But, things seem to be moving somewhat in an unpredictable direction. Ha ha ha. It's the first time I've heard someone say that. Knight Bei Xian couldn't help but laugh. Anyway, this was his sister-in-law's territory and there was no one else. Speaking freely. Even if I, Knight Bei Xian, am a hero, it's a certain person's hero, not the hero of the living world. One didn't need to guess to know who the one person in Knight Beishuan's mouth was. One person's hero. Tai Ling Ching Shui chanted to herself, and in the crowd's puzzled gazes, she removed the light veil that she had been wearing all the way, revealing that peerless siren-like face. Show face a smile. As if the blood flower crossed the Qingfeng Harbor, the fog dissipated infinite mountain. At this moment, she figured out that since Knight Beishuan could not become a great hero of the world, it would be great to be her hero alone, and it was decided. Miss Ching Shui. What are you? Knight Beixian asked, somewhat puzzled. Mr. Knight, just call someone Ching Shui from now on. The tone of his voice was mixed with provocation if nothing else. Yu Zhu was truly flustered. She didn't expect things to turn out like this. She did know that Tai Ling Ching Shui worshipped great heroes in the past, but in recent years, Tai Ling Ching Shui had never shown it, so much so that she had forgotten about it. But what Yu Zhu didn't know was that it wasn't that Tai Ling Ching Shui was holding back or pretending not to care, but that there had never been any real heroes appearing. Knight Baixian stopped talking. He was very clear about what kind of person he was, and the position of beauty in his heart was not ranked first, but also the first few. So a stunningly beautiful and demonic, and with a childish young girl, to his own pleasing, and said something about wanting himself to be her alone hero, this kind of let a person misunderstand the words. He really didn't know how to reply back. Alright, let's not chat about this. Let's talk about the tournament. Knight Baixian didn't want to dwell on Tai Ling Ching Shui anymore and turned to ask Yu Zhu, who had an ugly face. Yu Zhu silently glanced at Tai Ling Ching Shui, calculating in his heart to privately say a little something bad about Knight Bei Xian, thus making Tai Ling Ching Shui lose interest in Knight Bei Xian. Otherwise, Hua Ma Shang wasn't a vegetarian. Hearing Knight Bei Xian talk about business, Yu Zhu cleared his throat and spoke. The rules of the competition will be announced tomorrow when the contestants are introduced, but the odds are that it'll just be divided into two rounds. Yu Zhu knew more and continued. The first round is the chaotic fight, the specifics of which are unknown but it's used to drastically cut down on the number of contestants, so it'll be a bit more brutal. Yu Zhu stood up. Several hundred people in the first round, there can only be 16 spots to advance to the second round, then 8 into 4, 4 into 2, and so on, and the opponents are decided by drawing lots. The specifics of how Yu Zhu did not know, but for the meditation mirror, she had done her homework before coming, based on the format of previous competitions held. A conclusion was made. Knight Beishuan's mouthful of wine lingered on his lips, his eyes fluttering, somewhat uncertain. According to the rules, there is a risk of being besieged in the first round? Yu Zhu smiled and shook his head. The contestants are all representing one side of the power, as well as contestants from other states, so there's absolutely no chance of this kind of self-defeating situation. The latter's face changed, and she said with a straight face, This year's contestants are all the best of the younger generation, it's them you should be worried about. I know you're strong and have a spatial talent, but everything is still better if you're cautious. Seeing that Knight Baixian didn't speak, Yu Zhu once again added, that I know, but what I'm curious about is why those so-called pride of the heavens, the heartthrobs of the powerful Dao lineages, would come to the competition this year. These words also spoke to Yu Zhu's heart. Logically speaking, a competition of this level shouldn't send a power's strongest young generation to come, and it had always been like this in the past, but this year, the sword sect's eldest senior brother, the holy son of the Tai Chu Holy Land, and the ice fairy of the falling snow mountain. These known ones are so strong, what about the unknown ones? It's estimated that something big is about to happen. Knight Bei Shen couldn't guess the mystery even after thinking about it, but there was no need to guess, as his goal was only the sleeping compassion pill. This thing was a waste dan in the eyes of others, so there was no conflict in goals. There's no need to think anymore, anyway, even if there's a conspiracy, it has nothing to do with us, the sleeping compassion dan and the meditation mirror aren't something marvelous, it's just that it happens to be something we need. Knight Bei Shen thought it through and said blandly, Yu Zhu put down her teacup. What you said is also right, it's just. Before Yu Zhu's words left his mouth, he was interrupted by Knight Bei Xian. Don't worry, as long as it's what I promised you, I'll do it no matter what. 
Seeing Knight Beishuan's lazy but highly confident appearance, Yushu was slightly relieved, and it was no wonder she was so cautious, mainly because the meditation mirror was really too important to her. After hearing this, Tai Ling Ching Shui, however, looked at Knight Bei Xian with a face of adoration, little stars appearing in her eyes. Inside, over and over again, fantasizing, Knight Bei Xian rushed up the broken dragon cliff, even cut the twelve disciples under the seat of the head of Lizi, and then fought with the head of Lizi soundly. Finally saved the people. For Tai Ling Ching Shui who had unconsciously turned into his own fangirl, Knight Bei Xian was somewhat helpless, but there was also some sense of accomplishment in his heart, after all, Tai Ling Ching Shui's condition was too good. Not only is its own long extremely beautiful, identity is also extraordinary, one ghost cave second miss, sister is one ghost cave ghost king, can be said to be white rich beauty. Tai Ling Ching Shui's eyes Yu Zhu had also noticed, so she was even more determined to make sure to give Tai Ling Ching Shui, to fabricate some of Night Bei Xian's 10 unforgivable things out. Master, I'm a little tired. After chatting for half a day, finally stopping, Yi Menger found the right opportunity and said it, after all, she really couldn't hold on anymore. When Knight Bei Xian heard this, he also felt that he was too careless, a little girl running uphill for a long distance should have gotten tired long ago, yet she kept insisting until now. Menger first go to the chair to sleep for a while, when Xiaoyu comes out, let her arrange the room. Knight Bei Xian was also unfamiliar with this place. Aha! Yi Menger nodded obediently, took off her small shoes, got on the chair, and slightly squinted as she slept. Yu Zhu thoughtfully covered her with a shawl blanket. Quiet for a long time. Tai Ling Ching Shui stood up and walked over to sit beside Night Bei Xian, and without speaking, she used the demonic face that was enough to mesmerize the world, and turned to Night Bei Xian. Truth be told, Night Bei Xian was a bit embarrassed, but fortunately, no one was around, so he drank to ease it. Long term to this face, not good for the heart. Just at this moment, a sound roar suddenly came from the doorway, and even Yi Menger, who had just fallen asleep, was woken up, her small eyes fluttering as if she couldn't open them. Knight Beishuan's face instantly changed, his eyes narrowed slightly, killing intent appearing within. Master Ah, can't go in, can't go in Ah. At first listen, it was the voice of the steward from earlier. Get lost. The person who cursed, his voice was extremely strong, obviously with some cultivation, I heard that there is a man here cuddling with Jade Fairy? I have to kill him. In no time, that voice had reached the second floor. A handheld folding fan, white-faced scholar like youth stood fixed here, the body brocade silk are extremely expensive, at a glance is everyone's son. The steward's ass followed behind. One young master, the chamber of commerce has rules, cannot just enter and exit ah, this if the boss of the shopkeeper to pursue the blame up. Steward looks a little helpless, begged. What are you responsible for? If the JD mortal pursues the matter, you can say that it is permitted by my Wang Chang. After saying this, he pushed the stewards away, his heart burning with anger. A moment ago, he was still at home urging his father to go and ask the female emperor for a bestowed marriage for himself, that is, between him, Wang Cheng and Qin Yuxian. But suddenly an underling came to report that Qin Yuxian was at the night cloud chamber of commerce, cuddling with a man of unknown origin, and the man was also extremely handsome. This caused him to be on fire for a moment. One must know that he had been chasing after Qin Yuxian for so long, not to mention contact, he hadn't even given himself a proper look. Originally, Qin Yuxian was like this to anyone, and his heart was balanced a little, but who knows. The more you think about it, the more angry you get. Recognize for me, who the hell is that man? Wang Chang grabbed an underling's neck collar and roared. The rest of the people in the room were attracted out by the sound, and cast curious gazes. The subordinate hissed in pain, and immediately pointed at the silent knight Bei Xian, after all, his gaze was too obvious, the most handsome person on the scene was him, there was no difficulty in identifying him. Wang Chang grumbled in anger and pushed the subordinate away, walking to Knight Beishuan's side, what kind of thing are you? How dare you touch Yu Xian? Do you know that she is my fiancé? After seeing Knight Beishuan's face clearly, he was also shocked by the knife-like handsome face and continued. Yo ho, little white boy ah. Lousy told you today, own that hand touch the jade fairy, cut yourself, I big mercy today let you go, otherwise. Knight Beishuan put down the teacup. It made a crisp ringing sound, stopping Wang Cheng's words. Finished? Facing that blood-surging aura. Wang Chang was instantly dumbfounded and took two steps back. Swallowing his saliva, he replied. How? The thought that not only did he hold Qin Yuxian's lifesaver in his hand, he was also the junior president of the Wang Guild, whose own strength had also reached the spirit transformation realm. The fear from just now instantly dissipated as he clasped his hands and locked eyes with Knight Bei Xian. But suddenly, Wang Chang felt that he could not breathe, and his feet gradually left the ground, and when he looked in a daze, he only saw that a large hand was choking his neck. The threat of death made him instantly panic, and the cultivation that he had cultivated in the past, he could not use half of it at this time. Not only that big hand, but also that monstrous bloodbath aura, pressurizing him to not be able to breathe.
The guards saw this situation, they were all shocked, they didn't expect Knight Bei Shin to dare to directly strike, they all copied up their guys, exploded their cultivation, and rushed forward. Tai Ling Qingxue's beautiful eyes were frosty, she wanted to strike, but was stopped by Yu Zhu, the latter shook her head, Tai Ling Qingxue also felt that she had overreacted a bit, a few shrimp soldiers were nothing at all. But the next scene, but let Tai Ling Qingxue and the originally calm Yu Zhu were more than surprised. Only to see the guards rushed up, the knife has not yet swung up, people back to the original place. This repeatedly, made the guards are also confused. Ignoring the guards beside him as if they were playing backwards, Knight Baixian stared at Wang Chang, you like to make a lot of noise? And said that Qin Yuxian is your fiancé? Knight Baixian then lowered his head and smiled. Your tongue likes to cause trouble for you so much, before it causes you a killing disaster, let me help you cut it out. As the words fell, Knight Baixuan's other hand lifted up, gesturing some sort of hand signal, and Wang Chang's face was horrified, constantly struggling, wanting to escape from the tiger's claws. But everything is in vain. Just in the nick of time, a clear and cold young girl's voice came. Knight Bei Xian. Let go of Wang Gongzi. Seeking gifts. Request for gifts. Request for gifts. I'll have a thousand fans soon. Help the author point attention, you can open the fan group. Inside the noisy and depressing room, this female voice was particularly clear, the crowd looked up to the door, where stood a young girl with an ugly face. The person who came was none other than the one who had taken care of the medication for Qin Yuxian, the Nightcloud Chamber of Commerce's headquarter treasurer, Mu Xiaoyu. Release him? Knight Beishuan's face was cold as a fierce aura rose to the sky. Yes, release him. Mu Xiaoyu was shaken and retreated two steps, but she still clenched her teeth. Do you realize that he slurred the moment he came in just now and was planning to kill me? Knight Beishuan saw that the person was his sister-in-law's man, so he held back his killing intent. However, Mu Xiaoyu's next words were out of everyone's expectation. Even so, you have to let him go, otherwise even if you're President Qin's nephew, President Qin will never let you go. Mu Xiaoyu's face turned vicious, as if he hated Knight Beixian very much. Laughing. Knight Beixian was hardened by this woman and laughed. His sister-in-law wouldn't let him go? This was definitely the funniest joke that Knight Beixian had heard this year. Is that so? Then I really want to see if my sister-in-law will clean me up for this person. Knight Beixian could tell that Mu Xiaoyu had a brain problem and didn't want to bullshit. Knight Beixian. President Qin is your sister-in-law no matter what, are you going to cut her life short just for a moment of pain? Mu Xiaoyu said in a crying voice, I, Knight Bei Xian, will naturally be responsible for anything that happens to my sister-in-law, but do you realize that it wasn't me who killed him, it was you who killed him? Knight Bei Xian stared at Mu Xiaoyu with a burning gaze, and the hand that was strangling Wang Chang's neck tightened once again. Knight Bei Xian. Wang Chang who was desperately struggling heard this name and his heart suddenly went cold, although not many people knew this name, he counted as one. It was definitely a taboo. Many people had heard of the deeds in the beginning but few knew the real name of that teenager. If he wasn't the young master of the Wang clan chamber of commerce, these things would also be unknown. The murderous, bloodthirsty and brutal Sun Moon Divine Sex Sect Master, Knight Beixian, was at this moment strangling his own neck? Extreme regret flooded his heart for a moment, how could his mouth be so cheap? Now that he knew the other party's true identity, how could he, Wang Chang, still have a life? Looking at Wang Chang who suddenly stopped struggling, his pupils filled with panic, Knight Beixian smiled. Looks like you guessed out who I am ah, really not lucky enough, can only send you to your death. Knight Beixian raised his hand, wisps of Tao rhythms came out horizontally in the air. Me so. A ripple surged in the air, but strangely enough, Knight Beixian actually released Wang Chang. The crowd was dumbfounded. Wang Chang landed on the ground panting heavily, felt all over his body and realized that there was not a single wound, immediately stood up and said. Wait. Wang Chang thought that Knight Beixian didn't dare to move himself, so he still made the mistake of leaving a harsh sentence but he was also afraid that Knight Bei Xian would really do it, and ran as fast as he could. Tai Ling Qingxue was a little puzzled as to why Knight Bei Xian let the other party go despite saying that he wanted to kill, it was also not in line with Knight Bei Xian's character awe. However, with Yu Zhu casting a reassuring look, Tai Ling Qingxue then stopped paying attention. After the guards had all left, Mu Xiaoyu walked into the room and bowed an apology to Knight Bei Xian, who had once again sat down to drink tea. Duke Knight, I apologize to you for what happened just now, but there was a reason for what happened. Mu Xiaoyu changed her expression, her tone sincere and her attitude proper. No need to say it. Knight Beixian sipped a mouthful of tea, he probably knew the reason why Mu Xiaoyu did all this, but he extremely hated stupid people, so he didn't want to chat. Anyone with discerning eyes could see that Wang Cheng's idea was not the gold, silver and jewels, but Qin Yuxian is a person, so if Qin Yuxian didn't hand herself over, then Wang Cheng definitely wouldn't take out the thing that saved Qin Yuxian. This is a deadlock, but Mu Xiaoyu is still hoping to mediate from it, although the starting point is good but the brain is too stupid. 
Even if he had someone go to the Wang Chamber of Commerce and steal heavenly treasures, it would still be more useful than doing this. Mr. Knight will naturally understand my difficulties in the future, so I won't say any more. Mu Xiaoyu was a bit aggrieved, she wasn't all for Qin Yuxian. Knight Baixian no longer paid attention. Everyone's residences are on Peach Blossom Street, where there is a mansion of President Qin. Originally, President Qin asked me to take you all there, but I have to go to the Wang Chamber of Commerce right now and apologize to them, so I'll be a bit late. Mu Xiaoyu said in a somewhat helpless tone, like he had to go wipe his own ass after someone else had gotten into trouble. As she left, she was stopped by Knight Baixian. Wait a moment. What are your son's orders? Mu Xiaoyu thought that Knight Baixian was realizing the seriousness of the matter and wanted to go with her to the Wang Chamber of Commerce to make amends and apologize. However, the next words from Knight Baixian almost shocked her jaw off. It's best if you don't go, I'm afraid that the people from the Wang Chamber of Commerce will kill you outright. Knight Baixian said to Mu Xiaoyu with an indifferent expression as he admired the Tai Ling Qing water. Kill me? Why? These words made Mu Xiaoyu a little puzzled. Because Wang Chang is already dead. What? Wang Chang, who had left the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce, ran furiously all the way towards the Wang Clan Chamber of Commerce, feeling both suffocated and excited in his heart, with the guards unable to catch up. He was suffocated because he had just been choked by Knight Baixian, unable to move halfway, humiliated. Excited because he knew Knight Baixuan's secret and was now going back to tell his father. The founder of the Sun Moon Divine Sect was at the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce at this very moment, and as long as the news was spread, not only would Knight Baixian himself be immediately taken down and put to death. Along with that, the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce would also be affected in no small way, and one's own Wang Chamber of Commerce would be able to take advantage of the chaos to rise to the top and become the largest chamber of commerce in Yujing and even the Yuan continent. And at that time, the pressure from the outside world, the pressure from the imperial dynasty, the pressure from the chamber of commerce, plus the spirit herb that could save her life. Wouldn't Qin Yuxian be able to get her hands on it? Ha 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 ha. On the main street, a scantily clad, yet slightly wretched youth laughed while running wildly. The surrounding people were unable to avoid it. The few guards behind him were also unable to catch up. In the time it took to burn incense, Wang Chang ran to the south of the city, stopped in front of an incomparably luxurious building, and without caring about much, ran up. Ignoring the flattery on the road, he rushed up into the room on the topmost floor. Father. The door opened, and behind the table, a middle-aged man with gray hair but high spirits sat there. This man was the president of the Wang Chamber of Commerce. Wang Fushan. What's the point of yelling? Wang Fushan glanced at his beloved son with a doting tone. Wang Chang said while breathing heavily, Father, our chance has come. What opportunity? The chance to squeeze out the night cloud chamber of commerce and become number one. Oh, Wang Fushan put down the matter in his hands and was obviously interested, looking like he was all ears. Father, I just went to the night cloud chamber of commerce, do you know who Qin Yuxian's nephew is? Don't sell the story, hurry up and say it. Wang Chang smiled and said word by word, Night. But just after saying one word, he felt that his whole body could not use any strength, he could not feel anything at all, his vision was falling down, no matter what, he could not lift it up. Bang! Wang Chung shattered into countless pieces. After a moment of silence, Sun Ah! A cry resounded throughout the entire Wang Chamber of Commerce. Wang Chang's death quickly spread throughout the entire Yujing, the people were terrified, according to the inspection of the supervisory heavenly division plus Wang Fushan's confession. Even more so, this all becomes confusing. Wang Chang, without warning, his body gradually appeared blood marks, and then died on the spot. When Mu Xiaoyu learned of all this, she only felt a burst of fear, originally had not put Knight Baishuan's words in her heart, now she realized the power of it, and the gift in her hand that she was preparing to make amends for her sins fell to the ground. Night, Peach Blossom Street, Qin Family Residence After Qin Yuxian had soaked in the medicinal bath, the entire person seemed to be even more dainty, not to mention her vitality, her breath also became more and more steady. Shenner, did you do what happened in Wang Chang? Qin Yuxian personally made a pot of tea and poured it for Knight Baixian. Yes, auntie won't blame me. Knight Baixuan's face was indifferent and didn't react much. He he, how would sister-in-law blame you? I also have long looked at him unfavorably, killing it is also killing it. Qin Yuxian's jade mouth moved slightly, her words were amazing. Would Xiaoyu who stood next to her ready to watch the show was frozen on the spot, she did not expect Qin Yuxian to dote on Knight Baixuan so much that something so big had happened. Not to mention kicking him out of the house after scolding him, he actually didn't even reprimand him. It also echoed it. It really made her dumbfounded for a moment. Xiao Yu, you go back first, the Chamber of Commerce needs people over there. Qin Yuxian's tone lightened. Yes. Mu Xiaoyu walked to the door and turned back again, wanting to say something, but was interrupted by Qin Yuxian. Go. Yes. Only after reaching here did Mu Xiaoyu leave. 
This afternoon at the night cloud chamber of commerce, Qin Yuxian also heard about it, talk about not how angry, but also definitely not easy, if it is not Mu Xiaoyu followed her for many years, definitely rolled away in the afternoon, her obedient little baby, actually in her territory, by her people to the anger? Qin Yuxian, who had just heard this news, had the heart to kill, but then she realized the situation, it was because Mu Xiaoyu was thinking about her own illness, that's why she didn't scold her and punish her, but a good face was definitely not there. Auntie, don't blame her either, those who don't know are not guilty. Knight Baixian still decided to speak for Mu Xiaoyu, Xin Yuxian he knew, doting on him even more than his mother. If it wasn't for the fact that there was a reason for what happened, would she still be able to stay in the night cloud chamber of commerce now? She would have been told to get lost a long time ago. Xin Yuxian's tone was laced with anger. Auntie don't get angry, it's not good if you get angry, and this will spoil me. Knight Baixian sipped a mouthful of tea and said with a smile. Your mother asked me to take good care of you, and you're already bad completely, even eating sister-in-law's tofu, how bad can you be? Qin Yuxian chided. She also blanked on Knight Baixian. In the middle of the spacious main hall, Qin Yuxian and Knight Baixian chatted, and other than the two of them, there was only the light smoke mist floating out of the tea. Wang Cheng's death, they won't be able to find out about me no matter what, even if they guessed that it was me, they definitely won't be able to get any evidence, Knight Baixian said with a straight face. What are you afraid of, even if something does go wrong, isn't there still little ant here? Qin Yuxian said with slightly narrowed eyes. The two chatted idly for a while longer. By the way, you brat going to compete, you won't be using your real name, right? Qin Yuxian asked worriedly. Of course I won't, although there are very few people who know my identity, it's not like there aren't any, when the time comes, a nickname is just that, it doesn't matter. Knight Baixian said. Tomorrow afternoon is the day when the contestants will be introduced and the schedule will be announced, hurry up and think about it. As always, Qin Yuxian worried about Knight Baishuan's bits and pieces. Let's call it. Black Knight King, what does Auntie think? Knight Baishuan pondered for a moment and uttered this somewhat stupid name. Qin Yuxian didn't reply and snorted out a laugh, her petite body fluttering with flowers, not caring about her image at all, if others saw it, they would definitely be shocked to drop their jaws. Sure enough, still a child, this is similar to what? Tyrannosaurus Rex warrior you took when you were 10 years old. Qin Yuxian covered her lips with her jade hand and said with a smile. Knight Baishuan's face went black. Can you not take out the embarrassing things from your childhood to say ah, it really hurts your self-esteem? Luckily there was no one else. How can it be, if I let me take it now, I definitely won't take any justice messenger, just call it. Knight Baishuan did a pondering look. And Qin Yuxian is half a bit of face, also do not give the second largest devil in the Yuan continent, as if coaxing a small child. Yes yes yes. Xian er takes a good name, already not a child. This time the name that Knight Bei Xian wanted to say got stuck in his stomach, and he couldn't say a word. He originally also wanted to say, Invincible War God. After the joke was almost over, Xin Yuxian slowed her breath, patted her face, which had become a bit flushed due to her laughter, and said with a straight face. Alright, it's not too early, quickly go and rest. Remember to enter the Imperial City early tomorrow morning, all the participants will go early. Xin Yuxian left after saying that because conditioning the body was a very slow process, at this point, she was already a bit tired and didn't want to make Knight Baixian worry. Go to. Go for what three words, Knight Baixian did not ask, he also saw Qin Yuxian's fatigue, not good to do more to disturb, can only be back to his room. Thinking of asking Yu Zhu in the morning. Knight Baixian did not rest, but sat cross-legged on top of the bed, he was an extremely cautious person, if he was not 100% sure, he definitely did not make a move. Although it was somewhat humiliating, he still had to admit that his peers from the various sects and factions had already given to him a certain amount of pressure, or uncertainty. Though this was in the context of his cultivation being sealed. After feeding you so many heavenly materials and treasures, you have to squeeze some cultivation into me again, right? Knight Baixian closed his eyes and muttered. Heavenly Materia Medica. The ones he had opened up by himself, plus the ones that Huama Shang had prepared for him, were already enough for a person to cultivate from moving blood to sealing a marquee so it was evident that the quantity was huge. Taking out all the heavenly materials, Knight Bei Xian ate them all in one go, the vigorous energy crashing around in his body only to dissipate immediately. Just now the body feels better, Knight Bei Xian continued to eat the heavenly material treasures, and so on over and over again. If it was an ordinary person, this kind of eating method, was already dead through and through, but Knight Bei Xian had a past life compass in his body, these were nothing at all. About an hour. Knight Bei Xian had already eaten all the heavenly treasures, and a golden light appeared in his eyes. He was so happy in his heart that he hastened to luck. A trace of aura broke through the past life compass and converged on the Dantian. Success! Knight Baixian was pleasantly surprised, although it was slow, the aura was indeed there, and he, Knight Baixian, would no longer be a mortal. 
Because he was originally at the Zunshur realm cultivation, as long as he had the aura to add to it, he would be able to regain his original cultivation. After an unknown amount of time again, the small slit that had been propped open by countless heavenly treasures was again covered by the past life compass, the aura no longer flowed, and Knight Beishan also opened his eyes, taking a long breath. It's not much, but it should be enough. At this moment, Knight Beishwan's aura became extremely terrifying. The energy broke through the clouds and reached the ninth heaven. The winds outside the window were raging, as if a great saint was here to cross the threshold. Within the U capital city, the heavenly prides of the major powers were shocked. Go out and watch. This was still the result of taking the initiative to collect the sword, if Knight Beishan didn't collect, then the next second this entire mansion would turn into ashes and not exist in the world. While Knight Beishan was adapting, a lowly voice that seemed to be smiling if not laughing came. Yo puppy dog will bite. Requesting a gift. A 5 star review is fine. A click to follow would be nice too. In addition, I would like to say a word of thanks to all of you who have sent gifts, and have not yet owned has been super god. Knight Beishan suddenly opened his eyes, this voice was too familiar, every tortured knight started with this petite voice with mockery. Raising his eyes to look, unsurprisingly, it was none other than Di Chiong. At this time she, body wrapped in black gauze skirt, tassels are also black translucent crystal, smooth as silk like green silk was tied into a double ponytail, a pair of thin transparent black silk wrapped around the slender jade feet, as always, a pair of black small leather shoes. Knight Beishan often questioned, why this fantasy world, there will be black silk, small leather shoes these things. But once he thought of his own crossing, he felt that it made a lot more sense. Weedy brother how did you recover your cultivation? Di Chiong walked to Knight Beishuan's side, covering his mouth and mocking. Pfft, but it's still so weak, Weedy brother is so weak oh. Hearing this, Knight Beishuan did not respond, making a headache look, wanting to take the clothes next to him and put them on, just now the aura fluctuation was too big, afraid of bursting the clothes. But before his hand could reach over, the clothes disappeared in place, not a single breath, as if they never existed. Stop it. Knight Beishan said somewhat helplessly, this kind of tactic was known to be D-Dome at a glance. Brother Weedfish is really disgusting, liking to go without clothes in front of his own master. Di Chong Chien Jade Finger, twisted a corner of the clothes, making a disgusted appearance. Then give me the clothes, I'll wear them right away. Knight Beishan covered his chest with one hand, while one hand reached out to grab the clothes. But every time, he came up short, and the next moment he was about to touch the clothes, it would be pulled even farther away, as if Di Chong was really teasing his own puppy. Stop it, I don't have time to play with you, I still have to go to the Imperial City tomorrow. Knight Beishan said seriously, hoping that Di Chiong, who had heard this, would leave. Just don't give, just don't give, weak and scrappy brother, have the ability to come and get it yourself ah can you do it he he. So pitiful. Di Chiong seemed to come on strong. Excessive ah. Knight Beishan forced a look of anger, his aura was awe inspiring and steady as a mountain. A weedfish brother angry, really weak, really weak, not ashamed to be a weedfish, but... Who let this young lady is your master? Call a master and give it to you. Di Chong's petite face flushed slightly, her small hand covering her mouth, mocking Knight Beishuan. Knight Beishuan's breathing was a little short, not because he wanted to do anything to Di Chong. He simply felt that this person was too difficult to deal with, and liked to tease himself. Fine, then you can play by yourself. Seeing that Di Chong didn't want to give him clothes, Knight Beishuan directly clasped his hands to his chest and slept on top of the bed. Closed his eyes, thinking that as long as he didn't bother with Di Chong, she would leave when she got tired of playing by herself, after all, this kind of brats are all like this, and he was very experienced. Really boring. Miscellaneous fish brother is really too weak, so meaningless on Emperor Dome's slightly spoiled voice came, along with the sound of clothes falling to the ground. Night Bei Xian saw that this move was really effective, continued to pretend to be asleep, just ignore Emperor Dome. Hey hey, get up ah, not allowed to sleep. Di Dome's small hand was a little cold, pressed on top of Knight Beishuan's arm, pushed, and under the moonlight, a small tiger tooth was revealed in his mouth. Knight Beishuan closed his eyes tightly, thinking that the last time Emperor Dome seems to be no tiger teeth, this time how to have an extra tiger teeth too? Or was it put on to fit the persona? I'm going to continue to pretend to be asleep. Let Emperor Dome how to push and shove, Knight North Shen just do not agree, but also self-concerned to snore exaggeratedly to show that he has fallen asleep. After a while, Although the fragrance of gardenia still lingered on the tip of his nose, the movement beside him was no longer there. Knight Beishan thought that Di Chiong had left, after all, the aura was too little to supply and to open his divine sense, he could only rely on basic judgment, and waited for a while more. He slowly opened his eyes, but he saw a cute and belabored lowly little face, was smiling and looking at himself, a mouthful of snowy teeth, hidden in the pink like cherry meat general lips, tantalizing incomparable. If there wasn't that mocking smile, Knight Beishan would definitely like it more, but there was no if. Weedfish brother so soon out of patience? Really? 
Di Dong lifted his ear hair, slowly leaned down, got close to Night Bei Xian, and whispered in his ear, Good week yo, eat. Night Bei Xuan's body rose a layer of goosebumps, his body a shiver, his scalp was like an electric shock. What was going on with today's Di Chiong? How did it feel even more cerebral and infuriating than before? It was as if he had practiced specifically for himself. Di Chiong, what kind of nerves are you having? Hurry up and leave, I'm begging you. Night Bei Xian really couldn't stand Di Chiong anymore and said in an extremely helpless tone. But the more this happened, the more excited Di Chiong seemed to get. His face became more and more flushed. Not right oh you should say, please master, stop teasing the puppy dog, the puppy dog is not master's opponent. That's the only way. Di Chiong clamped his voice on the side, illustrating a colorful rendition with a high level of interest and an orderly rise and fall in tone. Night Bei Xian looked directly dumbfounded. He also knew that it was a waste of time to say anything else, so he simply did not do anything, and directly did the same as just now, swinging to sleep, closing his eyes afterward and ignoring Di Chiong. He felt that as long as he stayed up long enough, Di Xian would eventually get bored and leave. Anyway, Di Chiong and Hua Ma Shang were not the same, they wanted to eat but did not mean to eat their own flesh, and there was no need to worry that Di Chiong would come hard and do something to himself. Just like this, within the luxurious room, an extremely coarse snoring sound, once again appeared. But this time it was out of the night Bei Xian expected, he had just started to pretend to sleep, he felt a soft wind coming, toward his chest. Although he is not a woman, but some parts of the chest also belongs to the private parts, so that others touch to go, this is not to eat his tofu? Night Bei Xian quickly opened his eyes and opened the small hand that attacked him, covering his chest. What are you doing? Hooliganism ah? Words once exported Night Bei Xian regretted, he knew the Emperor Dome character, that is, the more not let her do what, the more she wants to do what, which does not let her play hooligan. As expected, we brother's body is still quite good well. Emperor Dome some sickly beautiful eyes, in the Night Bei Xian sturdy muscles swept through, and then the target to the chest. Then stretching out her small hand, she went to pull Night Bei Xuan's arm, her small cherry mouth always smiling. Hey, don't be a hooligan, I'm warning you. Night Bei Xian stretched out one hand to defend against Di Chong's attack, while the other hand protected his chest. But how could one hand be better than two? Soon, Night Bei Xian lost the battle, and could only protect his chest with both hands, so that Di Chong's disruptive jade hand couldn't move an inch further. Take a look take a look at what's wrong brother fish really. Di Chong said extremely darkly as he pulled back Night Bei Xuan's hand. Feeling the coldness of his small hands on his chest, Night Bei Xian was sweating profusely and couldn't help but want to use the little bit of aura that he had just obtained. But in the end, he still held back. After all, spiritual chi is hard to come by, must wait until the most critical time to use. Right now it could only be. Help! When Di Chong heard Night Bei Xuan's cries for help, his excitement grew even higher. Accompanied by the incessant pounding of his two small hands, he uttered that one classic line. He 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 he. Call out no one will come to save you even if you scream your throat out. On the small, round, jade-like face, drops of fragrant sweat float out, very tantalizing. It's really deceptive. Enough. Night Baishian slightly induced some aura, shocking Di Dome away. Di Chong don't go too far, I'm putting up with you, don't think I can't beat you. Night Baishian stood up and stared at Di Chong, saying coldly. However, Di Chong was heatedly laughing. Weedy brother is weedy brother, a little hard not eat, just like to eat soft. Di Dome black silk jade feet inside eight slightly squat, small hand stroked on the mesmerizing jade face. But, I like it so much. Looked at the front of the Emperor Dome a look of extreme sickly petite, Night North Shin in her for no reason a shock, the next second is associated with the flowers between the forehead oozing cold sweat. D Dome? Are you alright? The tone slowed down without realizing it. This young lady has been away for so long, did Brother Weedfish not miss me? Or, does Brother Weedfish not love me at all? D Chion's eyes became terrifying. Night Bei Shin created a feeling of having a heart, danger was coming, subconsciously he was about to open the space law, but before the strong wind blew, there was no trace of it anymore. Buzz. Darkness shrouded the entire room, as if it was in some kind of void, and there was no other movement in the surroundings except for D-Dome's slightly rushed breathing. It's this again. Night Bei Xuan's face was ugly, for this place, it was both familiar and unfamiliar. What was Brother Weedfish trying to do just now? Was he trying to kill this young lady? Or is it? Di Chong moved to Night Bei Xian in an instant, do you hate me? A sense of suffocation came. Obviously, Di Chong hadn't done anything to him yet, but he didn't know if it was fear for Hua Ma Shan, when Di Chong also revealed a sickly look. Night Bei Xian panicked a little. How? How could it be? Night Bei Xian stroked Di Chong's head like he was stroking a small child. Then just now, brother Weedfish, why did you use the spatial laws? Di Chong's eyes became dark, like a shooting star crossing a silent planet. That was my carelessness, don't be angry, Xiang'er, okay? Night Bei Xian forced a smile on his face, beads of sweat already slipping down his handsome side. He knew a lot about Sik Jiao. 
He hadn't practiced many means of dealing with sick lady, but Knight Baixian knew too much about what would happen after upsetting sick lady. The lightest of the lightest of the lightest was to break both legs. Then which bitchy woman surnamed Raccoon does brother Weedfish like, or does he like me? Di Chon's eyes cleared a bit, and his small body sat on Knight Baishuan's lap. How could I like her? Kissing her was only forced by the situation. My favorite is definitely you ah, my dome child. Knight Baishian said shamelessly. Di Dome face color unchanged, but in the place where Knight Baishian could not see, the corner of Di Dome's mouth a smile, a flash, and then recovered, small hands holding chest. Then, compared to the words of the flower devil, do you like her more, or do you like me? Di Chong sat in Knight Baishian's arms and twisted, tilting his head and asking, his face ventriloquized. Knight Baishian was instantly stopped by the question. This couldn't be said indiscriminately. He was aware of Hua Mashang's ability, and he was right in the middle of her chessboard, presuming to win the heavenly half-sun to break the game and become the chess player. So if he said anything nonsense now, who knows if it would penetrate into Hua Mashang's ears. If Hua Mashang didn't want to play with herself anymore and wanted to come out to catch herself, then it would be more trouble than it was worth. Like, like, Knight Baixian wanted to say something, and Di Chong looked at him as if being able to outperform Hua Mashang was an extremely happy thing. Emperor Dome Jade Mouth swallowed saliva. Who do you love more? Staring at Knight Baixian, the tone is not even controlled, apprehension, overflowing. Love. Eating burritos. Ah, really especially delicious, tomorrow I will take you to eat okay? Fresh out of the pot is still hot, there is a little bit of oil, but it's okay, it doesn't grow meat. Knight Baishuan's arms wrapped around a petite and cute young girl, non-stop nonsense, trying to use this to put off over this matter, mouth does not stop. D Dome face speechless. Eating baklava? What the hell is that? She had never seen it in her entire life, plus her entire life. She also knew that this was an excuse for Knight Baishin to prevaricate, so she no longer looked into it deeply, after all, she was already happy when she was able to compare to Raccoon Creek Sand, and Hua Shan was just too strong. In every sense of the word. Brother Weedfish is really pitiful ah Di Chiong squinted his eyes, seemingly smiling as he sized up Knight Baixian. For some reason, Knight Baixian had a faint feeling of being spoiled, like Di Chiong was spoiling himself. Domer, can you leave now? I really have things to do tomorrow, I'll play with you later. Knight Baixuan's hand, unconsciously moved to Di Chiong's jade foot. Yikes. Stinky brother, scrappy brother, miscellaneous fish. Miscellaneous fish? Weedy fish. Who told you to touch it indiscriminately? Di Chiong exploded a little her little tiger teeth showing once again. She wasn't prepared at all, even if it was Knight Baixian, he couldn't be touched, or else. It's just touching the leg, it's not going to do anything. Knight Baixian said in Di Chiong's tone, you still say, this young lady bites you to death. Di Chiong bit down on Knight Baixian's arm that was wrapped around her. Hiss, you're a dog, it's bleeding. Knight Baixian looked at his arm, a row of small teeth marks, and where the tiger's teeth were, there were threads of blood coming out. Poof. This is the slave seal that the master has imposed on you, with this seal in place, you'll be my puppy for the rest of your life, of course, if there's danger, you can also call me. This young lady will help you out. D Dome said with a haughty face. With that look, it was as if she was saying, being bitten and bleeding by me is something you've earned, don't be ungrateful. Alright, little ancestor, enough playing, can we go now? Shedding a little blood was nothing, as long as D Chion could walk, Knight Baixian said helplessly. Di Chiong's playfulness was exactly when he was on fire, there were still many, many things he wanted to do with Knight Baixian, but when he thought of someone's reaction to seeing the shadow retaining stone later, he was a bit impatient again. At the same time, a shadow retaining stone on the ground, entered the void space of the emperor's dome and disappeared. Alas hey, really poor stray fish brother it but just this small request then, the master can still be merciful and satisfy you oh. Emperor dome's small left palm, resting on his left pink shoulder, said in a rewarding tone. Thank this master. Ah uh, at asterisk hashtag forward slash plus underscore, then you go. Knight Baixian babbled, mixing up the word master. What a misbehavior, but this master will forgive your rudeness for now, who asked you to be someone's dearest mongrel brother, so that they can't do anything with you. Knight Baixian. Alright, just finish the parting kiss. After Di Chiong finished speaking, he slowly lowered his hands, and his eyes also slightly closed, making an appearance of being at the mercy of the king. Seeing this situation. Knight Baixian, however, was dumbfounded. What? If you like it, please send a gift to support it, a 5 star review is fine, and a point of attention is fine. Thank you thank you thank you. The next morning, the street noise, has spread far away, once every 3 years then the martial arts conference, is in the beginning of the winter season to start, street stalls, restaurants early closed the door, has gone forward to the imperial city to see the fun. This is also the most lively time of the year in Eugene excluding the spring festival. Peach Blossom Street Willow Harbor, a luxurious mansion. On top of the dining table, Tai Ling Ching Shui, Qi Meng Er, Yu Zhu, and Knight Bei Xian's sister-in-law Qin Yu Xian, 
were all having their breakfast on the table, chatting at first, but afterward it was quiet. Several women from time to time look at the door, every time, but are disappointed low eyes, after a long time, porcelain spoon bowls and chopsticks collide between, Qin Yuxian took the lead and stood up, I'll go and see what Shen Er is doing, not getting up so late, really. Qin Yuxian let the subordinate bring a hot porridge, his tone of helplessness said. Tai Ling Qingxue glanced at the purple silhouette that was traveling farther and farther away, and in her heart she cursed herself for being too reserved, if she had gotten up earlier, she would have been the one who went to call Night Bei Shen. Qin Yuxian brought her maid to the backyard, a place of birdsong and flowers, and a resounding stream, and pushed open the door to Night Bei Xuan's room, her mouth softly saying, Shen Er, why aren't you up yet? It's time to go to the imperial city soon. Pushing the door, but smelled a strange flavor. What flavor? Muttering in a small voice, her eyes narrowed slightly, her jade-like nose sniffed. Hearing the ringing, above the bed, Night Bei Xian hurriedly opened his own eyes, yesterday and Di Dong messed around until the latter part of the night before going to sleep, the spirit is a little confused. It wasn't that he had done anything with Di Chong, it was just that Di Chong was getting more and more excessive, so he kissed a little more. Auntie, why are you here? Night Bei Xian tied up his top and said with a yawn, Damn kid, why does your room smell like a woman? Qin Yuxian quickly walked over to Night Bei Xian and grabbed his ears and asked, Which is? Night Bei Xian had just said, and had already responded, It's Qin Shui, she came over last night to talk to me about the rules of the competition. The dead kid's body is quite good. Qin Yuxian's face flushed a bit slightly, and after coughing, she reprimanded, Fooling auntie, huh? Yesterday, I chatted with Qin Shui and Yu Zhu at night, is it the flavor of Qin Shui that I can't tell? Night Bei Xian, eh? Nothing to say, huh? You dead kid, which girl is it? Qin Yuxian's face showed anger. Night Bei Xian was a bit confused. He was an adult who didn't steal or rob, so even if he had a relationship with any woman, it didn't seem to be a problem, right? This was said as if he had killed someone. Auntie, I'm an adult. Qin Yuxian also felt that he managed a little wide, after surprised at his own reaction, but could not lose the majesty as an elder, some stuttering said. You, your mother let me take care of you. What kind of woman is it? You have to let your sister-in-law look at it first, in case it's some kind of unsavory woman, that's not good. Su felt that the reason was a bit untenable, Qin Yuxian carried the type like a weak willow body over. All right, next time there's a chance. Night Bei Xian didn't want to explain more, after all, it was really too complicated, so he planned to muddle through first. As a result, before the words were finished, a fragrant wind swept through, and a stinging sensation came from the back of his ears. Little heartless, you're really looking for a woman? You can't look for a woman now, do you know that? Qin Yuxian angrily rebuked Night Bei Xian. Why? Night Bei Xian was a bit puzzled, what's wrong with looking for a woman on his own, he was so outstanding. Because, because, Qin Yuxian put down Night Bei Xuan's ears again, pondered for a moment, and replied, because, your mother said so. Hmm, that's right, your mother said you're not allowed to find it. Night Bei Xian rubbed his ears and looked at Qin Yuxian nodding with conviction, feeling a bit puzzled, there was this matter, how did he not know? Did my mother say that? How come I don't know? Of course you don't know, that's what your mother specially explained to me before she left, asking me to keep a good eye on you. Qin Yuxian was as if she had found a winning formula and was full of energy. Night Bei Xian didn't want to dwell on this kind of thing, after all, there were many things he didn't want either, being passive. Right at this moment, a sultry young girl's voice rang out from the doorway, Night Prince, let's hurry up and go to the Imperial City, if we're late, there's no room. Good. Seeing the opportunity come. Night Bei Xian agreed and drank the hot porridge in the maid's hand in one gulp, put on a black robe, put on a mask, and left the room, following Tai Ling Qing Shui. Shen Er Dash, be careful. Got it. Qin Yuxian watched Night Bei Xian leave until he disappeared, but she didn't leave, instead, she walked into Night Bei Xuan's room and sat on top of the bed. Shen Er, you won't blame little auntie right. Qin Yuxian was also afraid that if she managed too broadly, Night Bei Xian would hate her, but there were times when she just couldn't control it. On the way to the Imperial City. Yuzhu, Tai Ling Qing Shui walks both sides, Night Bei Xian walks in the middle, 3F2 are seeking face, Tai Ling Qing Shui is light veil, while Night Bei Xian's is a mask. Those who go to participate will still not have a place? Night Bei Xian recalled what had just happened and inquired. I was seeing that you wouldn't be able to get away for a while, so I found an excuse for you. Tai Ling Qing Shui lowered her head and said, looking at her attire with considerable satisfaction. Elders are all like this. Night Prince, why is your mouth shiny? Tai Ling Qing Shui's words of reply were blocked. Her sight was attracted by the shiny thing on Night Bei Xian's mouth. Ha! Huh? Is it? Night Bei Xian used his hand to wipe it with a scent, and instantly realized that it should be Di Chong's rouge, after casually finding an excuse. It should be the grains of rice that accidentally rubbed up when I drank kanji just now. Mister! Night is too careless, if others see this later, they will definitely underestimate Mister! Night! 
Tai Ling Ching Shu Wei was convinced of Knight Beishuan's words. On the other hand, Yu Zhu, who was on the side, revealed a meaningful smile. I'm really worried that I won't be able to find a handle on you, Knight Beishuan, to make the young lady die, but I actually sent it up myself. A small episode, also almost almost to the imperial city. Around the same way a lot of people, there is no lack of some family disciples, clan elders, but those people's row is much too big, demonic beasts pull whisk, people cannot see. This competition is the entire 3000 Dao state can participate, as long as the age meets, even if you are just a pig killer, can carry a knife on the field. But there is a risk of death, the general public do not dare to join in the fun. Yesterday, Xin Yuxian had already found someone to go and enroll Knight Bei Xian, so today, just go directly to the contestant area, and don't worry about anything else. In no time, a city as vast as a sea of smoke appeared in front of Knight Bei Xuan's eyes, it stood in the very center of the Yujing, and on every stage, there were soldiers guarding it. Above the city gate, in the very center, a hissing white dragon was carved. It was very grand. Without stopping too much, Knight Bei Xian three people walked all the way into the side of the imperial city, because the preliminaries will not officially start until the afternoon, the morning is a tea party between the players. The beautiful name, let the players get along with each other for a period of time, to achieve the purpose of friendship first, competition second. Knight Beishi and three people in the steward's hospitality, entered into an empty location, there are about a few hundred people there, but it is also well organized, the haze is full of the sky. Here were all the contestants, and among these hundreds of people, the top ranker of this year's martial arts competition would be born. A glance sweeps over. Sword sect senior brother Lu Changha, Ice Fairy Gu Qinghan, Sacred Sun Yi Yuntian of the Taichu Sacred Land. All of them are star-crossed characters, standing in the middle of the crowd, they are still as dazzling as ever. Whether it was their temperament or their cultivation, they were in stark contrast to the people next to them. It was as if they were born to enjoy all this. This place belonged to the players themselves to communicate, the people couldn't see, Knight Beishian didn't want to attract attention, also didn't care about what friendship first, competition second. This was just an illusion of harmony, wanting to give the people and ordinary people, creating a difference between the righteous path and the devil's religion, simply put, fooling the people. Knight Beixian brought Tai Ling Ching Shu Wei into the arena. Because of the general cultivators, dare not sit next to those pride, so the bottom has been full, Knight Beixian also not twisted, the three went up to the top. This act is to cause a lot of people's attention, but wear a mask, and imposing, so also have withdrawn the line of sight. Yi Yuntian was surrounded by a few senior brothers and sisters, took a deep look at Tai Ling Ching Shui, a flash of amazement flashed in his eyes, and squared his body, making himself look even more upright. Gu Qinghan also glanced at Knight Beixian, but immediately retracted it, lowering his eyebrows and blowing tea. The three of Knight Beixian were at a table, heavily made up dancing girls, immediately came up to pour tea, lotus steps, walking with a sense of elegance of dance. Sweeping around stealthily, Knight Bei Xin slightly opened his divine sense, and found some if any breath, was locking himself, not too strong and not too weak. He didn't want to look for trouble, so he didn't pay any attention to it. He also knew that the probability was because of the enchanting young girl next to him, after all, a hero is hard to beat. However, the people present, there is absolutely no one who can see through his own cultivation, and there is no need to worry about these pride of heaven coming to look for trouble, after all, the unknown, is the most intimidating. Don't move so gracefully, don't draw attention to yourself. Knight Beixian had always been flamboyant, but currently with the past life compass in his body, it was better to keep a low profile. Sorry, this probably can't be done. It's because no matter what movements I make, I'll attract others. Tai Ling Ching Shu Wei said as she elegantly added tea for Knight Beixian. With just this, Knight Beixian felt that the gazes staring at him had increased by a few more. Just as the scene cleared, a loud, annoying voice rang out. Lu Changha. You are the sword sex senior brother Lu Changha, aren't you? Someone who will have a chance to become a sword immortal in the future. Knight Beishan looked around at the voice, and a person with a big grin and some second generation style was chanting excitedly beside Lu Changha, his hands dancing, his excitement visible. Although it was a bit noisy, but there is a saying, reach out and don't hit a smiling person, others complimented themselves, Lu Changha is really not good to say that people are not. Lu Changha stood up the long sword in his arms. Exactly. Seeing that Lu Changha was quite good at talking, the people who were a little timid just now, also gathered around and bragged about Lu Changha. Lu Changha's senior brothers and sisters, all of them were all proud, after all, their eldest senior brother was their idol, and the feeling of their idol being recognized could be imagined. Sword Immortal Changha, I heard that you have already caved in at the age of seven, and that you are the purest sword cultivator, and have not taken any heavenly treasures? Lu Changha considered himself modest and said, born with a sword heart, this life needs to cultivate the purest sword path, heavenly materials, and earthly treasures, that's for those who need them. Senior brother Lu is indeed formidable. 
The faces of the surrounding people had already pulled down, Lu Changha had never been out of the world and knew nothing about the human affairs of the mortal world, that sentence just now was considered to have offended all those who had used heavenly materials and treasures, it meant that mediocre people used it for themselves. Saint Chi, there's no need to take it too much to heart, anything can be resolved on the dragon beheading stage. A young girl, who was quite passable, reminded. A blonde-haired Yi Yuntian's frown slightly loosened, and the teacup in his hand, which had already shattered, was as good as new in the next second. If it wasn't for the Holy Lord's admonition to the Saint Sun, how could this sword-playing brat have a life? Saint Sun calmed down, the Holy Lord Lord said that he must win the top of the martial arts competition, at this time to make enemies, not a wise move ah. Under the young girl's dissuasion, Yi Yuntian no longer pays attention to Lu Changha, drinking tea on his own, but his line of sight drifted, if at all, to the Tai Ling Qingshui not far away, blowing up again for a while. Lu Changha was also a bit fluttery, and no longer denied those words that were half true or false. Sword Immortal Changha, you're so powerful, the top of the list of this tournament is yours. The second generation young master, not knowing if he was arching fire or not, asked in surprise. It could be clearly felt that as soon as these words were asked, everyone around held their breath. Lu Changha also frowned slightly and didn't answer for a while, and second generation wasn't in a hurry, just waiting with a smile on his face as if he was doing it on purpose. On the side, Knight Baishian put his teacup down and took a deep look at the somewhat unkempt young master of the second generation. This is not a simple commodity ah. What's wrong? For the first time, Tai Ling Qingshui took his eyes off of Knight Baishian and looked over at Lu Changha. Knight Baishian smiled. This sword sect brat, who has never been down a mountain in his life, doesn't know that people's hearts are treacherous. Once this trap is drilled in, then it will be impossible to come out again. Yu Xu chimed in from the side. Sword heart. The purest thing, at this time Lu Changha, is absolutely unable to go against the pure way of the sword heart. If he doesn't dare to admit it, the sword heart will be shattered. There were times that were just strange, obviously everyone was gathered here for the top spot in the tournament, but everyone had to act as if they weren't interested. Once someone reveals their selfishness, then they will be attacked by the group. What you guys are saying is that Lu Changha will be mobbed in the first round if he says that the top spot is his or something like that. Tai Ling Ching Shuei was surprised. This was the first time she had come to the north, she had been in the south before, dealing with the devil cult, and there were many plots and tricks but there weren't that many twists and turns. This was the first time she felt the righteous culture, and it felt not quite the same as she had imagined. As expected by Knight Baixian, after hesitating for a moment, Lu Chang has stood up and said in a loud voice, I promised my family master. So the top of the list of this martial arts competition. I Lu Chang ha booked it. The eyes did not slant, and there was a momentum of one against a thousand. Boom. This was a big deal, the eyes all looked back and forth on Lu Chang ha, as if they wanted to remember this person. Ragged second generation, as if completing the task, applauded and left. On this occasion, Lu Chengha indifferently sat down. Quiet for not a moment, the upper seat, a red dress, headlong two horns of the teenager, stood up. Lu Chengha, blowing a little big, right? Lu Chengha, who had been prepared to respond since he had uttered that passage, rose again. I, Lu Chengha, practiced swords at the age of three, climbed to the top of the twelfth floor of the White Jade Building at the age of seven, peaked at the age of nine at the Cave Heaven, killed a spirit transformation demon beast at the age of eleven, broke through the spirit transformation at the age of fifteen, and now I've reached the early stage of the Seal of Marquis. At this moment, a sword chi rose up from within Lu Chengha's body. Ten thousand miles of clear sky was sliced in half. Not to mention the top of the competition ranking, I'll be the leader of the younger generation even if I'm the leader of the younger generation. Immediately, cheers rang out from the gloomy crowd, and it was clear that most people recognized Lu Changha's words. The red-haired teenager's face was ugly, he didn't expect a person like Lu Changha who practiced sword to be so talkative, and he couldn't refute it, he could only sit down unwillingly. The red-haired teenager's retreat, moreover, drew cheers from the crowd below, which showed how popular Lu Changha was. Changha sword immortal. I love you, I want to give you a monkey. Changha sword immortal. Such an exaggerated battle record. The number one person of the younger generation, well deserved. First person. First person. Number one. But just at this moment, an extremely discordant voice faintly sounded, not big, but it was transmitted into the ears of everyone at the scene. First person? Have you not forgotten that there was once a monster in the Yuan continent, and before he died, who could claim to be the first person? Who dares? Jing. Thanks to my student ID is 19947444 Big Brother for the King of Gifts. The author was happy for a long time and wanted to add more, but the weather turned cold and I caught a cold. Both chapters are almost 2,500, that's two and a half, right? Maybe. Nothing else to say, just wish big brother every day happy. Finally beg for gifts. Ask for five-star reviews.
By the way, there's also asterisk never had you dash who sent gifts to the author for several days in a row, thanks. Of course, thanks to all of you who sent gifts, with you, the author's heart is warm. The whole room is silent. Because no matter whether it is a crop farmer working in the fields or a high and mighty Taoist heir, all of them have heard of this person's deeds in one way or another. There was also no second person. Knight Baishan sighed, putting the teacup down and tightening the mask on his face again, minimizing his presence as much as possible, hoping that the topic would hurry up and pass. Tai Ling Ching Shui's eyes were glowing with some excitement. A person dressed as a fluttering gentleman below that stood up, his folding fan in his hand withdrawn. Lu Chanha, your little bit of Tao may be considered to have this ability in the eyes of others, but in front of that person, what are you? The person who spoke had a somewhat slightly grimace on his face, and was overall rather thin and eerie, speaking in an unhurried tone, as if there was nothing in the world that could make him panic. Among the crowd, someone quickly recognized him. Isn't this the young master of the Shadow Pavilion, Shan Qingfeng? Is it? I said how did he dare to say such words, so it turns out that he has a backbone. He's here too? Why are there so many demons this year? Lu Changha froze in place, not making any sound for a long time. The fine sweat left on the side of his face showed that he wasn't relaxed. Seeing this, Lu Changha's senior brothers and sisters became anxious. They were always on the mountain and knew very little about many things, so they didn't understand. As Lu Changha's senior sister, Li Xiaoxi stood up and retorted, Monster? I haven't heard of any monsters coming out of Yuanzhou, I think you guys made it up, right? Shan Qingfeng smiled blandly, as if he had come to be interested, opened his folding fan and left his seat. You guys haven't heard of his name even if you say it, but his nickname, which I believe everyone here is familiar with, is called a, a Demon Teenager. Boom! This time, in addition to those big family heirs and clan powerhouses, some ordinary cultivators who had just looked confused were also shocked. Although they vaguely guessed it, but when they actually heard it, it was still another matter. Demon Teenager. That is definitely the existence of Yuanjo Taboo, do not look at many Taoist Kirin Z, are sealed the Taboo, but that is the people themselves sealed, while the Devil Teenager's Taboo, but the cultivation world is recognized, the gold content is too much difference. Is that the one that killed the broken dragon cliff, beheaded the head of Lizy Witch, the Devil Teenager? A person asked. Shang Qingfeng sat back to his seat once again. Not bad, it's him. When these words came out, the entire room was in an uproar. Even Gu Qinghan, who had never uttered a word and whose face was covered with a snow veil, spoke up. It is said that this person has never taken any heavenly materials and treasures, but his strength is far beyond his peers, and he has acted according to his heart all his life, without any distinction between good and evil. The voice is as cold as a cold pool of bone-crushing springs, but that tone of voice, also mixed with a slight yearning. The field was completely quiet, the people who cheered for Lu Changha just now, after hearing the three words of demonic youngster, they all looked like defeated roosters, hanging their heads in shame. Knight Baixian was somewhat speechless as he listened. What do you mean he won't eat? Is there something to eat? Although there were numerous techniques within his mother's pavilion, there weren't any heavenly materials or treasures, otherwise it wouldn't have been the same as when he was a child, when he went into the mountains to look for spirit essence for the flower room dress, and was almost eaten by the wolf king. Lu Changna stood in the middle of the field, extremely conspicuous. How radiant it was just now, how unbearable it was at this moment, like he had clearly broken through to the strongest, but found that he couldn't even see the back of the person in front of him. Indifferently said, he spent the rest of his life hiding on the broken dragon cliff, who knows what his strength is like, using him to pressure me, Lu Changha, I'm afraid that he's not qualified enough. Lu Changha's face was ice cold. The original excellent cultivation in heart, under the disdainful sight of the people, it all turned into a pool of clear water and went down the drain. Only strong words remained. Eldest senior brother. Li Xiaoxi pulled Lu Changha's sleeve, trying to calm him down a bit, but Lu Changha had long been overwhelmed by the contempt of the crowd and couldn't care less about the bystanders to dissuade him. What's more, how can he, Knight Bei Xian, a member of a demonic sect, be compared to me? Speaking here, Lu Changha seemed to have found the winning formula. All of you have been bragging about the greatness of that devilish sect member, do you not think that my righteous lineage is inferior to his devilish sect? Lu Changha said with a smile. No one dared to answer. Knight Bei Xian took a sip of tea and didn't participate, anyway, he was now the Dark Knight Lord. Who is Knight Bei Xian? Didn't recognize. Tai Ling Ching Shui blinked her big watery eyes, shocked at Lu Changha's learning ability. Or, how are all the righteous people? Facing the silence of the crowd, Lu Changha came to be vengeful and said even more arrogantly. Knight Bei Xian just isn't here, if he comes, I'll invite him to a battle, and we'll naturally see whether we win or lose. Lu Changha said confidently. However, it drew the displeasure of the crowd below. They all felt that Lu Changha's heart was really too weak, and it was only after casually provoking him that he revealed his winning and greedy mentality he really didn't deserve to be the number one person. 
It was said that victory and defeat would be revealed, but everyone knew that Knight Baishan was already an honored one, and for Lu Changha to say so was no different from putting gold on his own face. But it is not good to say anything, because the matter of the devil teenager being the master of the devil sect, that was known to everyone, speaking for someone in the devil sect, that was asking for death, even if that person was once a hero. The devil teenager was originally called the demon removing teenager. In the night Baishan killed on the broken dragon cliff, beheaded the head of Lizy Head, and killed its twelve disciples, the title, is the people's most cordial name. After all, Lizy Head is really evil too fierce. And the imperial dynasty did not take him half away, the righteous crowd helpless, but was a young man to kill. From then on, the eyes of the people and ordinary cultivators, a talented young man to remove the devil and defend the way was born, until the boy who removed the devil founded the sun and moon divine sect. The crowd sighs. Although sad, but had to accept this thing, but also can only remove the devil teenager, renamed the devil teenager, implying that, remove the devil who became a devil also. Ha ha ha. Saying big words are not afraid to flash your tongue? Yi Yuntian stood up, had long been unable to look at Lu Changha, at this time finally could not help it. The Holy Land disciples next to him wanted to stop them, but it was no longer helpful, opening their mouths now would serve no purpose other than causing Yi Yuntian to lose face. Lu Changha knew that this was directed at him and didn't back down, he had already said so much anyway. Who at the scene has personally met Knight Baixian? How do you know that he isn't blown out of the water? And a 17-year-old supreme? It's simply a travesty. Truth be told, the crowd at the scene also had their doubts. 17-year-old supreme, that would truly be unprecedented and unmatched, even the myriad heart workshops workshop master, who was known as the first person in the righteous path, was also a 120-year-old supreme. Hearing this, Gu Qinghan let out a disdainful sound from his nostrils. Lu Changha, your eyesight is a bit too low, isn't it? Just because you can't, doesn't mean others can't. Oh, Lu Changha had always been quite fond of Gu Qinghan, and at this moment, when he saw the other party refuting himself for the sake of other men, his anger went straight to the back door beam. So Fairy Qinghan thinks that all those rumors are true? The tone trembled slightly. After rumors have been passed around for a long time, it's inevitable that there will be some mythological processing, but the matter of Night Baixian is definitely true, even more so than ever before. Although it was light, Gu Qinghan's tone did carry a slight adoration. This was for Lu Changha. It was even more fuel on the fire. Then according to what Fairy said, she has met that Night Baixian? Lu Changha was certain that Gu Qinghan definitely hadn't met Night Baixian and asked confidently. That's not true. Gu Qinghan graciously admitted. So it's still true that no one can prove that all of Night Baixian's deeds are true. Lu Changha nodded to himself. Everyone. Although everyone has heard, more or less, about the legend of the demon youth, perhaps it is just a kind of foolish people's rhetoric that can't be believed to be true. Lu Changha put his sword down and spun around and said. The tone of his voice was believable. Yi Yuntian actually just wanted to choke Lu Changha, and himself did not believe in the deeds of Night Baixian. Because he himself was a heavenly pride, he naturally knew how difficult the path of cultivation was. It was like traveling at night without a light and crossing a river without a boat. After Lu Changha's seemingly justified statement, the crowd below also began to somewhat doubt their judgment, after all, Lu Changha was still very prestigious. Even this kind of person said that Night Baixuan's deeds couldn't be taken as true, so it was probably true. Night Baixian had been drinking tea silently since the beginning, and had paid no attention to everything that had happened in the arena, even if it was all about himself, because there was no need to fight and win on the field, what is the use of verbal arguments? Suddenly, his left arm was pushed by someone, Night Baixian put down his teacup and looked over, only to see Tai Ling Ching Shui staring at himself in exasperation, seemingly not too happy. What's wrong? Aren't you going to say something? They said that all those experiences of yours were fake. Tai Ling Cheng Shui's light veil shifted, obviously in a somewhat angry mood. Let them say it, the truth won't change just because of what they say, and it's a bit of an old-fashioned thing to bring up things that have already passed. Knight Baixian once again picked up his teacup. Besides, we can't draw attention to the fact that going up to argue now has back plans. All right. Tai Ling Ching Shui gently nodded, but for the skeptical voices that were gradually bubbling up from below, she always felt uncomfortable and simply put away her divine sense. Does the fairy have anything else to say? Lu Changha looked as if he was giving way to Gu Qinghan. He he. Gu Qinghan did not say anything, but laughed, mocked to be precise, and then immediately disappeared. Lu Changha frowned slightly. Why is the fairy laughing? As the words landed, Gu Qinghan stood up in a silver outfit, dazzlingly snow white, and under the sun's rays, it was like a peach blossom wrapped in snow. Are all of you people from the sword sect as stupid as you are? Self-deceiving, extremely poor mindset, and with two or three random words from others, it makes you make countless enemies. This sentence of Gu Qinghan's could be described as rubbing salt into Lu Changha's wounds. Not waiting for Lu Changha to speak, Gu Qinghan continued. 
All of you are the same great power heaven's pride, could it be that your master hasn't told you everything about Night Beixian? Gu Qinghan's words were sarcastic. For some of the old monsters in the Yuan continent, there might not be a need to inform them, but Night Beixian, some of the great powers, were definitely going to inform their great disciples not to be messed with. Because the matters of the younger generation were handled by the younger generation themselves, the taboo that was Night Beixian was an object that all of the younger generation were not allowed to mess with. And among the forces, and with the great disciples, holy daughters, holy sons, and young masters, being the most valuable, so these people must have learned about Night Beixuan's deeds from their own masters early on, and were definitely telling the truth. This was the only way to achieve an effect. Things were once again reversed, and the inference as to whether or not Night Beishuan's deeds were true had reached a white-hot stage. You don't think that your master is also a fool, do you? Gu Qinghan danced lightly with her lotus steps to Night Beishuan's side, picking up the teapot on the table and pouring it for Night Beixian. Night Beixian was confused. What kind of mess was this? Still, he immediately reacted. Thank you. You're welcome. After Gu Qinghan finished pouring the tea, he returned to his seat once again, his face unchanged, yet with a different expression. Bold. How dare you insult master. Master Lu Changha, slamming the table, stared at Gu Qinghan. However, no one at the scene cared. The line of sight glanced back and forth between Night Beixian and Gu Qinghan, as if they wanted to see something. Why didn't I pay attention just now? This person wearing a mask, seems to be a bit out of place ah. The following suddenly began to discuss, with a wide range of opinions. Shang Qingfeng smiled and did not speak. Legend has it that this ice fairy, with her extremely cold nature, why would she pour tea for a spirit transformation realm kid? The tone was sour, invisibly releasing his own breath. Yes. In order to hide his identity, Knight Baishian suppressed his cultivation, only at the spirit transformation realm, as for why he didn't go completely cultivationless? Because that would be more conspicuous. Suddenly. Bang. This sudden crunching sound directly drew the gazes of the crowd over. It was Lu Changha who slammed the sword in his hand heavily on the table, his face was iron blue and he was panting like a cow. Seemingly intentionally or unintentionally, he stared at Night Beixian, killing intent in his eyes. Sword heart was the purest thing, Lu Changha liked Gu Qinghan, so he would never allow Gu Qinghan to have any flaws, not even a little. The scene of Gu Qinghan pouring tea for Night Beixian just now had simply pierced Lu Changha's heart. It was murderous at this moment. Although all of this was nothing more than his imagination, as Gu Qinghan had nothing to do with him at all. Lu Changha remained silent for a long time. Are you alright, senior brother? Li Xiaoxi's face was ugly as she stood up to support Lu Changha. It was the same as what the crowd thought. They all thought that Lu Changha was furious at this moment because Gu Qinghan had insulted his senior just now. Gu Qinghan, as the person in question, but half ignored the eyes of the crowd and drank tea by himself. After a long time of slowing down, Lu Changha inserted his sword on his waist, walked out, stood in the center position, and said to Gu Qinghan, Even if my master has said it, it could still be false, after all, no one has ever seen Night Beixian. As if seeking some sort of victory, old matters were brought up again. The crowd watched as Lu Changha brought up this matter once again, they were all a bit puzzled, and they didn't even expect that Lu Changha would doubt his own master's father in order to be able to convince Gu Qinghan. This was no small matter. In the south, strength was king, but not in the north, honoring one's teacher above all else. Eldest senior brother. What are you talking about? How could master teacher, his old man, be wrong? Senior brother Lu Changha hurriedly said, his tone tinged with anger. But the furious Lu Changha couldn't care less about this much, and ignored his junior brother, looking towards Gu Qinghan. Does the fairy have anything else to say? In fact, everyone could already see that Lu Changha was out of sorts, as if he was seeking some sort of psychological comfort, not wanting everyone to believe it, as long as he was comfortable with himself. Under being pressed again and again, Gu Qinghan was also annoyed. Sword jugglers are all as dead-eyed as you? Since you seek psychological solace, I'm still partial to not giving it to you. Placing the snow sword on the table. You're saying that there's a possibility that Knight Beishuan's deeds are fabricated? Mythically processed by someone? It's possible that even what your own master said is false. That's right. Gu Qinghan asked, and Lu Chenghan Yanto answered. Gu Qinghan asked again. That Lizy Head's cultivation is always true, right? The number one scourge of the Yuan continent, it's always impossible to fake it, right? Lu Chengha vaguely felt that something was wrong, but still nodded, that's right. Then, a little cold, so a little this is not very good, hope everyone understands, thanks, cough 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 cough. All the people are silently listening to this argument. Only the table of Night Beixian, dead air. Listening to so many people discussing themselves, Night Beixian had an indescribably strange feeling. Gu Qinghan continued, since that mangy head who refined human bones and blood, his cultivation is real, then the Night Beixian who killed the mangy head, what is his cultivation? When these words came out, 
the entire room was dumbfounded. It wasn't that some people hadn't thought of it, but they were unwilling to admit it, after all, who wasn't a proud son of the heavens with a high heart? Someone who was so much stronger than the crowd. Who would be willing to believe it? Lu Changhai is just a lead, in fact, whether it is true or not, everyone has a clear idea in their hearts, supporting Lu Changhai is just deceiving themselves and others. Lu Changhai stood in place, a long time cannot return to God. Gu Qinghan but showed a very different attitude from Lu Changha, no longer pay attention to the voice of the field, just closed his eyes, seems to be in the cultivation of the body and mind. The questioning voices in the arena, also gradually disappeared. Finally Lu Changha long sigh, also do not say, sat down, the sword in the hand slightly shivering. Night Bei Xian sighed in relief. At the same time, a few kilometers away from the imperial city, Crane Mountain, a white-haired old man, sitting on top of a piece of green stone, eyes closed tightly, breath is completely absent, as if a piece of rotten wood, seems to have died for many years. At this time from the side came a middle-aged man, his face was a little ugly, but he was imposing. Changha this kid, his mind is too bad. Being distracted by just a few words from someone, it's simply an insult to my sword sect. Between the words, a sword chi came out horizontally. Not to mention the flowers and plants, even the air around them was sliced in half. The old man on the green stone opened his eyes. The eyes that should have been cloudy and incomparable were clear and translucent at this time, revealing a posture that was not angry and authoritative. He he. Changha originally lacked worldly experience, no one is perfect, it's better not to be too harsh. The old man laughed dryly twice and continued. This time, let him go down the mountain, to participate in the competition, take the top of the list at the same time, but also have the idea of letting him dip into the red dust, after all, pure sword cultivation, too difficult. Perhaps the old man's words made sense, the middle-aged man no longer dwelled on it, but sighed and asked. Grand Elder, just tell me, why is it that a martial arts competition, even you old man has to follow? The old man closed his eyes once again. That thing, it's not that good. The middle-aged man listened, revealing panic. In the middle of the imperial city, time passed by minute by minute, and it soon reached the afternoon, and it was time for the competition preliminaries to begin. The several hundred contestants, including Knight Bei Xian, arrived at the center of the field through and through. A huge oval-shaped field that would be surrounded by some grass and dead branches, with the ground being a muddy puddle of land. The outer circle was full of the people of Yujing, sitting there, on top of the high platform. A main seat and four secondary seats, extremely conspicuous. The main seat with a dragon disc and phoenix, obviously the position of the empress, next to a few vice seats, also extremely luxurious. But at this time, there was no one on top. The appearance of the crowd, so that the people who had waited all morning began to cheer, one after another, called all kinds of names, anyway, very lively. Knight Bei Xian raised his eyes and looked up to the high platform, the grandly dressed Qin Yuxian walked over to the main seat and sat down next to it, while Tai Ling Qing Shui, Yu Zhu, and Qi Menger were sitting behind him. This made him a bit puzzled, a chamber of commerce president, has the energy to sit next to the empress, and also able to carry family members? Making up his mind, he had to go back and ask his sister-in-law. Just at this moment, an immortal voice came from far to near. Silence. Then a young girl in white clothes like snow, from the high platform, walked to the forefront, standing above the line of sight of the crowd, suddenly the clamor came to an abrupt end. The woman's breath was very cold, as if she didn't care about anything in the world, her face was as frosty as frost, although she was extremely beautiful, but the general public never dared to approach. This was Knight Beishuan's first impression. She was not like Tai Ling Ching Shui's kind of cold, because Tai Ling Ching Shui herself was lively, a very playful kind. The woman on the stage was different, the kind of coldness in her bones, refusing to let others in, could not be faked. Later, Knight Beixian learned that this woman's name, Yunrin Poppy, is the disciple of Yun Zun, on this level of identity, in the entire Yujing city is the existence of horizontal walking. And the strength is also extremely strong. So at this time came out to pressure the scene, the crowd convinced. After quiet, Yunrin Poppy side came a little girl, in the cloud Rin Poppy nodded in response, the little girl began to those representative of the contestants, introduced once again. Previously, what is the battle record, did those shocking things, all take out to say once again? The audience was also mesmerized. After all, the characters that could only be heard in the commentary books before were present at this moment. Lu Changha, Yi Yuntian, Gu Qinghan, Shang Qingfeng, and that idiot second generation. Knight Beixian was a bit bored of listening, after all, this thing was definitely not going to have itself. So he just hid in the corner and squinted for a while. Every time a person was introduced, above the dome, a haze of light would fall down and cover that person, both indicating that it was that person who was being spoken about, and also highlighting the strength of the imperial dynasty. After an hour, that haze light unexpectedly landed on Knight Beixian. This is. The little girl's voice was amplified by her aura and was extremely loud. 
This is the president of the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce, Qin Yuxian's nephew, called A. The little girl scratched her head. The Black Knight Great King? Seeing Night Baixian lying on the ground and hearing such a name, the audience was laughing, and for the first time today, after all, they really couldn't help it. Night Baixian heard reading his name, also stood up, his heart slightly surprised. Eyes drifted towards Qin Yuxian on top of the high platform, who originally had a cold face, returned a smile. It seems like my own sister-in-law still has some secrets ah. Knight Baixian said thoughtfully. After all, as a person with no battle record, not even a name, with the identity of someone's nephew, can be introduced again. You can see that someone has a lot of energy. After the appetizers, the main event came next. This is also the reason why the crowd will be willing to wait so long, the tournament and the announcement of the final prize. On top of the high platform, the little girl bowed to Yunrin Poppy, and after receiving a response, she slowly left. Silence. Yunrin Poppy once again silenced the clamor. The introduction began. The schedule of this competition is no different from previous years, the preliminary round will begin early tomorrow morning, which is also known as the Great Chaos Battle, everyone enters the Dragon Chopping Platform, 3 incense sticks of time, the 16 people who are standing will enter the next round, if the number of people after 3 incense sticks of time is more than 16, then all people will be eliminated. The voice was cold, without a trace of emotion, and after reading it, he put the rice paper behind his back. Above the field, theoretically cannot kill, but if the life is endangered, or time is about to arrive, and other reasons lead to excessive force, are not considered a violation. The word kill exits, the entire imperial city begins to become solemn, people have held their breath. Yunrin Poppy Mouth theoretically cannot kill, in fact, is a kind of official statement, every year's martial arts competition, dead people are essential. After all, once on the field, it was a fight to the death, so how could there be any energy left to worry about whether or not someone would be killed? Besides, there were many experts this year. The entire Yuan continent's pride of nature had basically come, so if they fought, it could truly be described as a battle between dragons and tigers, and seeing blood was inevitable. Yunrin Poppy paused for a moment. I believe everyone has seen that this year, compared to previous years, there are an unknown number of experts, and the spectacle is unprecedented, and for this reason, my master has come up with an item worthy of all of you to serve as the final prize for the head rankings. Here comes the main event. The crowd had their ears perked up to listen for fear of missing a single word, even Knight Baixian had become interested. Yun Rinpio continued. In addition to the sleeping compulsion Dan, a drop of essence, and a snow rue plant, Yun Rinpio first read off some of the things that were originally announced. Then under the gaze of the crowd, he stretched out his right hand and unfolded. And then in the process, suddenly, the wind rose up in the sky, which was originally clear and bright, turned dark, as if to make way for something. At the same time, above the nine heavens, an immortal silhouette appeared, majestic and solemn. Knight Beishuan's black hair was scraped about, and his gaze was also fixed on Yun Rin Poppy's palm. In his heart, he vaguely guessed what it was, exhaled deeply, and his eyes became sharp. In the center of the imperial city where a needle could be heard, all eyes were gathered above Yun Rin Poppy's hand, only to see that the palm of the hand that was nothing one second, the next second a golden light appeared at first glance. Then a haze of light lingered, and Dao rhythms descended, landing in Yun Rin Poppy's hand. In an instant, a strand of pure green colored immortal chi converged in Yun Rin Pio's hand. The immortal chi was surging, as if it had a life of its own, the light green color all the way to the sky, but it was getting fainter and fainter until it disappeared, like a miracle of God. Boom! Only in this instant, dozens of sights with extremely strong breaths shot over, shrouding the entire field and fighting with each other. The hundreds of people were pressurized and couldn't breathe. A green-colored fluctuation then emanated from within the high platform, and all the auras were cleared away. Immediately, a tall woman in a cream-colored dress walked out. The aura of a half-saint was not concealed. The person who came was none other than the owner of the Myriad Heart Workshop, Yun Zun. This immortal chi can be obtained by winning, so why rush? Yun Zun's green jade gourd never left his hand, and at this moment, on a solemn occasion, he also took a sip. Once these words came out, those stupid breath, completely cut off, disappeared in the imperial city. Master. Whom? Knight Baixian was extremely surprised in his heart. I didn't expect that the final reward would actually be a strand of immortal chi. That was one of the three strands of origin immortal chi that were born within the body after breaking through to half saint. The degree of preciousness could not be described in words. There is no need to mention the role of immortal chi, if it is refined by an old monster who was stuck in cultivation and can no longer advance an inch, he can sense the immortal chi of heaven and earth, thus breaking through himself. Entering into the next realm. That is to say, those who are at the peak of the supreme realm cultivation 10,000 years shall not break through, will this wisp of immortal gas refining, then it will certainly be able to break through, and is not a probability. There was another function that was to increase combat power. 
If some of the pride of heaven will be this wisp of immortal gas, into the Dantian, then you can absorb the immortal gas for their own use, so that the combat power, more than dozens of times, cultivation speed, also by leaps and bounds. After all, it is the absorption of immortal chi, and ordinary cultivators absorbed aura, that difference can be imagined. However, for the person who had drawn out the immortal chi, the damage was also immense. Not only will the cultivation speed drop by a thousand percent, but their own fighting strength will also be greatly reduced. Night Bei Xian thought his head through, but he couldn't think of what Jun Zun's purpose was for doing this. Is it just to appear generous? It is also this time, Night Bei Xian figured out these proud son of heaven, why all to participate in the martial arts conference reason, must be for this immortal gas. Not surprisingly, Night Bei Xian expected. All around the proud son of heaven, although the eyes are in that immortal gas above, but not too much excitement, eyes more as greed, rather than surprised. Retracting their gazes. Taking a long breath, he suppressed the excitement in his heart. If he had obtained this strand of immortal chi, coupled with the sleeping compass Dan, the past life compass would not be a problem, after all, the compulsion that absorbed immortal chi had not yet appeared. But for some reason, Night Baishan always felt that there was a bigger vortex in here. Above the high platform. Yun Rin Poppy and Yun Zun talked for a few moments, then turned their heads and continued to begin. As everyone can see, this is a strand of immortal chi. As soon as the words left his mouth, a clamor resounded from below. This kind of thing that could change fate against the heavens, the crowd of contestants, none of them could remain reserved. Silence. Yun Rin Poppy chided with a cold face. Seeing silence, he continued. I won't introduce the ability of immortal chi too much, as for the origin, I believe everyone has guessed it, not bad, it's exactly my master, Yun Zun's origin immortal chi. As these words landed, a clamor once again came from the lower field, but this time, the sound of horror was greater than the surprise. How could this be? What is Master Yun Fong doing? Drawing out immortal chi is the equivalent of cutting off one's own future. This, Cloud Fong Master is really confused, how can this kind of thing be made possible? As the leader of our righteous path, Master Yun Fong has lost his fighting power, how can he do that? For a while, the people have wanted Yun Zun to recover the immortal energy, the reason is mostly Yun Zun lack of immortal energy, how to guard the Yujing in the future, how to fight against the demonic sect. However, these were all people who knew that the head list was hopeless before they spoke there, and those with a little bit of strength were silent and even scoffed at those people. Night Beishuan's eyes were on fire. Immortal Chi this thing for him, really can be said to be good in the snow. Ignoring the clamor below, Jun Zun lifted the green jade gourd and gave himself a sharp drink in the sound of Yun Rin Poppy's introduction, then revealed a satisfied smile. As he turned to leave, he caught a glimpse of a young man under the stage, dressed in black with a masked face. Yun Zun had a momentary freeze, eyes slightly open wide, unshod jade feet stopped. It seemed like, Master Zun? Whom? Being shouted by Yun Rin Poppy, Yun Zun then reacted and responded with an account. When he left, Yun Zun once again looked in that direction just now, and the masked teenager had already disappeared. Just, maybe he was drunk. Yun Zun staggered into the backstage in the middle, dressed in civilian clothes Qin Shuiyue came forward to assist. Coming up is questioning. Master Yun Fong, why did you take out your immortal chi as a reward for the top list of the competition? Qin Shuiyue rushed back when she heard the news. After all, Yun Zun was the guardian deity of the Yu Jing, and she couldn't afford to have anything go wrong with anyone. Facing Qin Shuiyue's question, Yun Zun suddenly stood up straight, his eyes becoming sharp. Half drunk and half laughing, he said. This Zun is going to use this strand of immortal chi as bait to lure the world's heroes into the game. Seek gift saw. Cough 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 cough. One day ago. Yu Jing, the top of Crane Mountain. In the middle of a cloudy peach blossom forest, there was a place that was almost like an immortal's mansion, the haze was filled with mist, but the houses were unusually plain, with green bricks and stone tiles. Inside the house, a wisp of sandalwood incense rose, causing the quiet and incomparable room to be covered in a veil of mystery. Yun Zun's tall figure, Zen sitting on top of a futon, green jade gourd on one side, exquisite and clear eyes slightly narrowed, mouth chanting something, then violently opened his eyes. Seems to have a diffuse star river in the eyes, a picture flashed, after the green jade gourd rose, gourd mouth automatically peeled off, a thick smoke spit out. Yun Zun is watching with a straight face. The thick smoke then transformed into a small smoky person, that small smoky person walking, was another small person embraced, the small smoky person annoyed, broke free from the embrace, ran out. After running, he knelt on the ground, covering his heart, and kept gasping for air. An extremely difficult look. Afterwards, he strengthened his spirit and trekked all the way to a city. Yun Zun had never been more serious, staring at the little smoky man without blinking half a time, as if he was cut off from the world. The little smoky man came to the middle of the city, participated in a competition, after winning the championship, obtained a wisp of chi, since then the little smoky man no longer morbid, happy, and happy. The next moment, 
The smoke dispersed, and the green jade gourd shook twice before falling and being steadily caught by Yun Zun. What is this trying to tell me? Could it be that Xianer has already arrived at the Yu capital? Yun Zun's expression became slightly dazed for a moment, as if it was unbelievable. What she had just used was, a kind of myriad heart workshops unique, heaven-peeping secret technique, which was used to maneuver a person's course of action and hint at it. And what Yun Zun was peering at was her eldest disciple. Because she was too cold in the past, she didn't know her eldest apprentice's name, so even the word Xian was the result of her countless peeping. The previous peeps didn't have any information at all, while this time, it gave such detail. Yun Zun recited thoughtfully, her complexion both surprised and grave. Xian'er where the hell are you? And what happened? Why don't you come to find master? Yun Zun was a little unstable, his burgundy face written with longing. The demonstration of the little smoky man just now made Yun Zun vaguely fearful, because she knew that the little smoky man was the incarnation of her own disciple, and there could be no mistake. According to the demonstration, his own disciple was currently being poisoned or was burdened with something more deadly, and was currently struggling to survive. That wisp of smoke that appeared at the end, is that immortal energy? The guidance of the demonstration, is it for me to take out a wisp of immortal chi? To rescue my disciple? Yun Zun made a thinking gesture. A wisp of immortal chi was indeed precious, but compared to her precious disciple, it was nothing. As long as she could save her disciple, she, Yun Zun, would do whatever she wanted. Then her heart crossed and her eyes became translucent. Boom! Peach blossoms filled the sky outside the house, a supreme aura rushed straight into the clouds, and where the sky was, a haze of light fell down, and a green-colored immortal aura lingered around the house. Master! What happened to you? In only a moment, Yun Rin Poppy smelled the commotion and rushed over. The house was pitch black, and the smoldering incense was extinguished. Yun Zun Zen sat on top of the futon, a head of green silk fluttering in the wind, the red ribbon that tied his hair, but it was firmly clutched in his hand, the other hand was still glowing. Coming just in time, wasn't it considering the final prize of the tournament, what to give? Just give this. After saying that, Yun Zun handed out the immortal chi. From the results of the snooping just now, his own disciple had participated in a competition and then obtained the immortal chi. And the most recent competition was the tournament in Yujing, one only needed to draw out the immortal chi as a prize for the tournament, and naturally, his disciple would be able to obtain it. And as long as whoever gets the immortal chi, then whoever is her disciple. Thinking about it, Yun Zun actually revealed a happy smile, recalling bits and pieces from 10,000 years ago. But he was interrupted by Yun Rin Poppy's voice. Master Zun, why is this ah? You've lost your immortal chi, it will be difficult for your cultivation to advance another inch, and your strength will be greatly reduced. The tone of his voice trembled a little. It then became angry. Is it related to that so-called senior brother of mine again? Eldest senior ah. Can you wake up, he's already dead. Yun Rin Poppy chortled in tears. In his heart, he hated to the extreme for which big senior brother he had never met. Once his own master engaged in something inexplicable that harmed him, it was guaranteed that it was related to which eldest senior brother, and it hadn't been once or twice. Yun Rin Poppy, do not be unreasonable to your senior brother. Yun Zun's aura suddenly rose, his face solemn. Elder Zun. Yun Rin Pio half-heartedly backed down, every time her senior elder harmed himself, she watched and was heartbroken, senior brother he died 10,000 years ago. Wake up! Seeing that Yun Rin Poppy was half unrepentant, Yun Zun laughed in anger and shook his head again. If you are always hostile to your senior brother, then you will no longer be my Yun Zun's disciple in the future. Yun Zun finished withdrawing his hand and turned around. Touch! The jade sword in Yun Rin Poppy's hand fell to the ground, standing dumbfounded in place, not making a sound for half a second. Spinning fiercely kneeling on the ground. Master! Apprentice is wrong! Apprentice. Apprentice shouldn't say bad things about his senior brother, I beg for forgiveness. Yun Rin Poppy's delicate and cold face, knocked on the ground. The peach blossoms outside the house, blown into the house by the wind, lifted Yun Zun's white robe, and fell, the peach blossoms introduced into it, beautiful. Yun Zun was silent. I beg for forgiveness from Master Zun. Yun Rin Poppy said with a sobbing voice, she didn't want to care about any senior brother anymore, she only wanted to stay by Yun Zun's side. That sentence of Yun Zun's just now directly struck her not knowing where she was, and a sense of panic spread rapidly. From the day she was picked up by Yun Zun, she had sworn to honor Yun Zun for the rest of her life, Yun Zun was more like a mother to her, taking care of her and nurturing her. Now she was asked to leave, how could she not panic? She was even more surprised at which senior brother she had, the weight in her master's heart. Heart hidden some jealousy, unaware of the birds of sorrow, flying over the roof. Get up! In the future you must not say anything bad about your senior brother. Yun Zun sighed, also feeling that she was a bit too harsh, and said in a soft voice. 
But regarding her eldest disciple, she really couldn't do it calmly, any bit of wind and grass can lead her to hold on to her heart and mind, eating without taste and sleeping without sleep. Yun Rin poppy like crystal products like small hand, touched the corner of the eye said, yes, after receiving, that a mass of somewhat warm immortal chi, did not dare to ask too many questions, Do. yes, since the beginning, Yun Zun had not turned around, tall and slender beauty, upright posture, bony beauty is more able to emphasize a woman's nobility and immortal chi. After Yun Rin Poppy left, Yun Zun turned his head to look at the empty room, once again leisurely sighed. Rin Poppy, don't blame this father. This is what this father owes your senior brother, and it's not nearly enough to pay back. Imperial City. In the middle of the back hall of the high platform, Xin Shu Aues saw that Yun Zun finished saying, we have to use a strand of immortal chi as bait to lure the world's heroes into the game. He froze afterward and pushed twice without any response. Master Yun Fong? Master Yun Fong? Xin Shu Aue was a little worried, thinking that something had gone wrong. Well, your majesty the empress, is there anything else? Yun Zun held his forehead and sighed as he replied. Seeing that Yun Zun seemed to be just a bit tired, Xin Shu Aue then put her heart at ease, then once again remembered the matter of immortal chi and asked with a frown. Master Yun Fong, why did you pull out the immortal energy? You know better than anyone how much of a drawback this act is. Qin Shu Aue chased after Yun Zun and inquired. The look of worry on his face was not faked. Qin Shu Aue's own talent was excellent, but now it was also a mid-inscription cultivation level, on the surface, it could still be a force to be reckoned with, but how big was the Yuan continent? A small inscription, is absolutely cannot attract the scruples of others, this many years of smooth weather, the country's prosperity and people's peace, absolutely cannot be separated from the deterrence of the cloud zone. Empress don't panic, this zone has his own measure, even if he draws out a strand of immortal chi, few people in the Yuan continent will be able to stand up to this zone. Yun Zun replied calmly. After all, she was a half saint 10,000 years ago, and if it wasn't for the death of her great disciple that caused her to develop a heart demon, I'm afraid that she would have already been in the great saint realm. Although it is not known, whether it is a heart demon, or a love disaster, but Yun Zun herself thinks it is a heart demon. So the precipitation of 10,000 years also made her much stronger than the average half saint. Hearing Yun Zun's affirmative answer, Qin Shu Aiyue's heart was a little more at ease, but still continued to ask, then what exactly is Master Yun Fong doing this for? After thinking about it, he once again said, it's not too late to withdraw your immortal energy, big deal. Too late. Yun Zun interrupted Qin Shu Aiyue's words, walked a few steps, a pot of spirits down, who? Words have been said, those old things have come, now want to take back the immortal energy, already impossible. Qin Shu Yang took two steps forward. What's impossible? Those old monsters from the forces haven't broken through to half saint either, so why should we care what they think? There was a desire to continue convincing Yun Zun. Yun Zun, on the other hand, smiled. It's not hard to take back the immortal chi, but it will be hard to gather these old monsters together again. Noticing something in Yun Zun's words, Qin Shu Aiyue opened the imperial city's forbidden system so that other people's divine sense could not sweep in, although it was a bit redundant, after all, Yun Zun was here. Pursuing the question, he said, did Master Yun Fang deliberately lure those old monsters of power over? What was the purpose? Qin Shu Aiyue really couldn't think of what kind of purpose could make Yun Zun use his body's immortal chi as a price to lure the neighboring force's great powers to come to Yujing. Yun Zun sat on the stone canvas with some drunkenness. Not bad. This Zun is intentionally luring them over, the reason, well, it has to do with the flower room dress. Qin Shu Aiyue didn't make a sound and silently listened. This person, Hua Man's Hang, moves to destroy the Yuan continent, causing the world to be in abundance, his danger far exceeds that of the Lizy head that was entrenched in the broken dragon cliff back then. Yun Zun sipped a mouthful of wine, but his eyes became brighter and brighter as he continued. When Hua Mashang came to make that deal in the first place, didn't it feel very inexplicable? Qin Shu Aiyue answered truthfully, yes. Yun Zun continued. There's no need to find out what Hua Masang wants to do, just know that she's a madman, a madman who cuts heads and tails. Since Hua Mashang has set her mind on the tournament, something will definitely go wrong with the tournament. The moment these words came out, Xin Shu Aiyue directly froze. Yes, why didn't she think of that? Still foolishly guessing what Hua Masang really wanted to do, thinking that Hua Masang had changed her ways, it was really stupid. Suddenly, Qin Shu Aiyue looked at Yun Zun's smiling face and instantly understood more than half of it, and immediately, bean-sized beads of sweat rolled. Shocked by Yun Zun's thoughts, it shouldn't be. Before Qin Shu Aiyue could finish her sentence, she was interrupted by Yun Zun. Not bad. With a strand of immortal chi, this father has lured the neighboring righteous forces, all the proud sons of heaven, to Yu Jing, just to think of a, holding the son of heaven hostage. Qin Shu Aiyue began to become agitated. Wonderful. If it's just the usual rewards, then those forces of the pride of heaven, definitely won't release it, 
and the reward if it's a wisp of immortal chi then. Qin Shuayue took a deep breath and continued. Even if the people of those forces have guessed that it's a pit, they must step in. This is because even if ordinary disciples come, they won't necessarily be able to get the top of the list, after all, they are all here to practice. But once the immortal chi came out, all the forces would definitely send whichever disciple was the strongest. And everyone thought that their own disciple was worthy of being number one in the world, with the greatest possibility of taking the top spot. If it is just the general disciples of those sects and forces, what happened in Yujing, give up and give up. But if it is the pride of the heavens, can be different. Those who are hailed as, unicorn sun, holy sun, forbidden people, are the existence of the majority of people who are favored by the sect power, and even some of them have already been appointed by the sect master, as the next sect master. How extensive was the involvement? Therefore, the protection of these people will definitely be the best, and they will generally not be allowed to come out of the mountain. But, it was on the contrary that they encountered the immortal chi that had to be taken. Therefore, the proud son of heaven came to the Yujing to participate in the competition, trying to take the immortal chi, while the old monsters within the power, for the sake of the safety of their own Qilin son, would definitely be hidden in the surroundings. After thinking through all of this, Qin Shuayue still continued to frown and said, but this price is a bit too big, right? If the whole thing is revealed, they shouldn't choose to stand by and watch, right? After all, they all belong to the same righteous path. Yun Zun, however, shook her head. More than 10,000 years of experience had made her realize that everything in the world sought the word prophet. Those people are too stupid, they never understand the reasoning behind the death of lips and teeth, they can't figure out that if Flower Room Shuang destroyed the Yujing, how could their forces possibly run away? Yun Zun shook his head, somewhat disappointed. That's why this honored one came up with this plan, tying all the Yuan continent powers and the Yujing together this time. They'll have to think about it even if they want to go it alone. Ha ha ha. Yun Zun's green silk was like a willow leaf, and when he laughed, only one red ribbon intersected, which appeared to be a bit unbearable, but the red ribbon was motionless. Even after knowing the cause and effect of everything, Qin Shuayue still felt that it was not right, Master Yun Feng, since those old monsters are here, why don't you take back the immortal energy, or wait until later and not honor it? Qin Shuayue looked a little anxious. Find an excuse to keep the immortal qi anyway. As long as the Yu Jing is safe, the immortal qi is retained. Just let them curse away, how about it? Yun Zun shook his head. If this Zun really goes back on his word, the Yu Jing will be plunged into another dangerous situation. Qin Shuayue was somewhat disdainful. Would they still dare to attack the Yu capital? Yun Zun smiled faintly, did not speak, stood up, swaying, wanting to leave. Master Yun Fong must think twice. Qin Shuayue made a final struggle and shouted loudly. Yun Zun, however, was walking further and further away, and did not respond, only reaching out her slender jade hand and waving it. Because what makes her truly determined to draw out her immortal energy is never the righteous path, the devil's path, or the world's living beings, but her shenner. Walking out of the attic and looking at the sky full of snow, Jun Zun came to be interested and picked up a few snowflakes with her hands, revealing the color of thought and memory. The snow back then, it was much bigger than this ah. Uh, winter snow had arrived. Under the sky of white snow, people have retired, the contestants in the middle of the venue, are also leaving one after another. The martial arts competition will officially begin tomorrow. Outside the imperial city, a woman wrapped in purple sable, graceful and luxurious to the extreme, was putting on a coat for a masked teenager. How is it? Feeling confident? Xin Yuxian organized her coat and looked up to ask. This top list, I'm bound to win. There's no need to worry about this. Knight Beishuan's mind hadn't slowed down yet, having just been given a stare by Yun Zun. He had thought that he had been exposed and wanted to vanish in the next second, but Yun Zun hadn't paid much attention, which made him think that it was just a coincidence. The truth was also true. Yun Zun's main target of attention was Hua Ma Shang, and everyone else, he didn't pay too much attention. Logically, Knight Bei Xian, who was the former sect master of the demon sect, should have been the target of attention, but unluckily, Yun Zun had recently been tinkering with her disciples' affairs. The heaven-prying mystic art, which was extremely mind-consuming, had also made her unable to spare time for other things. Auntie, let's hurry back. Knight Bei Xian broke away from Qin Yuxian's hand and wanted to leave. Staying in this place, the imperial city, never gave him a sense of security, as if there was a pair of eyes staring at him. Seeing that Knight Beixian appeared to be in a bit of a hurry, Qin Yuxian put away his furrowed brows and followed him up. You slow down. Beside him, Moon Bamboo Tai Ling Qing Shui and the others saw this and also followed, talking and laughing along the way, but Knight Beixian's face, however, was always grave. This time the appearance of this immortal gas, invariably, for us to add a lot of difficulty. Yu as you came to the side of the night Bei Xian, condensed whispered in a small voice. It's fine, as long as my identity isn't discovered, then the top list will definitely be mine. Night Bei Xian spoke confidently, after all, 
his body had already accumulated a certain amount of aura. Yu Zhu looked at Knight Baixian, slightly dumbfounded. She sought an unrivaled confidence from Knight Baixuan's body, and just happened to recall that Knight Baixian had gained cultivation just now, after asking, You recovered your cultivation? There was nothing to hide in this matter, so Knight Baixian honestly said, Recovered a little, but it's enough. That's good, that's good. Yu Zhu patted her chest, her entire body relaxed and opened up, the worry she had been feeling for several days had all dissipated at this point. Knight Baixian walked ahead, the matter of being glanced at by Yun Zun just now, he didn't say anything about it, not wanting to make Yu Zhu and the others worry too much, which would affect his mindset. Being honest with Yu Zhu, mainly because they were now partners, concealing too much would definitely lead to problems in the aftermath, that was why he vaguely stated it. A group of people sat on Qin Yuxian's gorgeous car chauffeur, all the way to the Peach Blossom Street Willow Lane and went. When they reached the Peach Blossom Street intersection, they were blocked by a group of people. Each and every one of them looked fierce. They had a fierce look on their faces. The steward who drove the horse, immediately went up to inquire, his attitude pressed extremely low, President Wang, what are you? The one who led the way was the president of the Wang Clan Chamber of Commerce, Wang Fushan. At this time, Wang Fushan, which still has the usual steadiness. His eyes were bloodshot, his entire body was trembling, and the clothes on his body were dirty with obvious holes. Qin Yuxian, get the hell out of here. Wang Fushan, holding a stick, walked to the front of the car whisk and screamed. After his son's unexplained death, Wang Fushan was having a hard time sleeping through the night, and the feeling of sending a white-haired person to a black-haired person really made him about to break down. He vowed to uncover the ghost behind it. After the multiple inquiries in the past day or two, as well as the guard's oral accounts, plus the strange words his son Wang Chang had said during his lifetime, there was a common point. That was the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce. To be more precise, it was a man inside the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce who was said to be Qin Yuxian's nephew. Although there was no evidence, all the fingers pointed to that teenager, and his own son had died after a conflict with that teenager. Although there was no evidence and he hadn't seen it with his own eyes, Wang Fushan had already decided that Knight Baixian was the murderer who killed his son. Seeing no response from within the carriage, Wang Fushan shouted again, Qin Yuxian, come out. You return my son's life. You ungrateful thing. Wang Fushan cursed more and more vigorously, as if venting the emotions of the past one or two days. The housekeeper was listening from the side, his heart was jumping ah. Within the Yujing city, no one has dared to scold Qin Yuxian like this ah, even when the female emperor met Qin Yuxian, she was treated with courtesy, is Wang Fushan looking for death? Finally there was a response from the carriage. Wang Fushan, are you looking for death? Or is it your Wan's estate that you're not used to staying in Yujing? Qin Yuxian's aura was awe-inspiring, no cultivation, yet her domineering aura was exposed. The icy and piercing words were like a splash of cool water, waking up the angry Wang Fushan. After all, Wang Fushan thought that Qin Yuxian's nephew was the murderer, so if he vented a few words, Qin Yuxian wouldn't talk back anymore, right? But the truth is, he has no evidence at all, ah. If Qin Yuxian wanted to eradicate all of his Wang Chamber of Commerce's properties in Yujing, although it would be self-inflicted damage, it would definitely be able to do it ah. Wang Fushan's cold sweat flowed out, if he didn't react, he was afraid that his entire life's fortune would be gone. But the thought of their hands still have Qin Yuxian handle, the mind again again produced a change. Qin Yuxian, your nephew killed my son, can't you still be justified? The tone of voice was angry. The surrounding melon eaters who didn't know the facts were getting more and more, all wanting to make a scene. My nephew didn't kill anyone. If you have evidence, go directly to sue the supervisory heavenly division, don't block my way here. Qin Yuxian's cold voice came out. Subsequently, under Qin Yuxian's urging, the stewards once again set up his horse, wanting to leave. But right at this moment, Wang Fushan, whose anger was completely ignited, roared out. Wait. He then stepped forward. Qin Yuxian, if you dare to leave today, don't blame me for wasting that heavenly plant, I'll directly take it and feed it to the dogs. The tone of his voice was ferocious, and his face was unkind. Wang Fushan was now furious to the extreme. He didn't understand where on earth Qin Yuxian got the nerve to shout at him. It was obvious that he was holding her in his hands, and he still didn't know how to back down. He was not afraid of Qin Yuxian not compromising as long as he had this heavenly treasure that could save her life in his possession, after all, his chamber of commerce was able to enter the Yujing, which was Qin Yuxian's territory, by relying on this heavenly treasure. The more he thought about it, the more feasible he felt, the more he felt that he occupied the dominant position, Wang Fushan became more and more arrogant. Qin Yuxian I tell you, that is, I don't want to, otherwise let you go to my son's plutonic marriage, you have to agree. When this was said, he himself froze a bit. I didn't expect that once I was angry, I would say the words so heavily. There is some fear in his heart. But when he remembered the heavenly treasures at home, he came back to his feet. Qin Yuxian is no longer powerful, not afraid of the sky, not afraid of the earth, but also not afraid of death? 
At this time, from the car chauffeur came down a, clad in a black snow fox coat of a teenager, face wearing a mask. I see that you have never died. Wang Fushan at a glance by that teenager's body's fury, was scared to freeze. Returning to his senses, he was also more convinced that the teenager in front of him, whose body was erect and whose ink hair was at his waist, was the murderer who had killed his son Wang Chang. Little brat. Wang Fushan's words had not yet fully exited, but his entire person flew out, knocking over the crowd behind him. Knight Beishuan's face was gloomy as he walked towards Wang Fushan step by step, his heart was filled with rage. It would be hard to dispel the fire in his heart without seeing blood today. You still dare to make a move. Wang Fushan covered the side of his face that was gradually swelling up, his heart was also greatly infuriated. His own son was killed by this person not to mention that he was also beaten, it was simply too much of a bully. Give me on. Whoever can kill him will be rewarded with 10,000 tails of gold. Wang Fushan shrunk to the back and shouted. As the words landed, a group of guards were drawing long swords in their hands and jumped up with a violent shout. Knight Bei Xian saw the incoming momentum, there seemed to be a scaly dragon swimming within his eyes, and then he resumed his indifference. Facing a group of cave heaven realm cultivators, Knight Bei Xian didn't draw out his aura at all, and relied on his physical body to carry him hard. Previously, it was a fleshly body of the Zunshu realm, now even though his cultivation was gone and his fleshly body was not as good as it was before, it was still good enough to face a group of rookies of the cave heaven realm. A group of people rushed up, Knight Bei Xian unhurriedly made a sidestep, grabbed the collar of the first person who rushed up, before snatching his knife and flinging it out in a smooth motion. A set of actions, all in one go. The surrounding people who were watching were dumbfounded, frozen in place, forgetting to run away, because Knight Beishuan's set of movements was too fluid and flowing. Not like fighting, like elegantly sipping tea. How many killings does this have to have gone through to develop such a high level of combat literacy? Yu Zhu lifted the curtains and looked on somewhat dumbfounded, chanting under her breath. She suddenly understood what Knight Bei Xian, who had been emphasizing earlier, had told them not to worry, that no matter what, the top spot in the competition would definitely be his. At first, she had always thought that Knight Bei Xian was bragging and talking big, and at one point, she thought that Knight Bei Xian was nothing more than that, but it wasn't until now that she realized. Knight Bei Xian wasn't lying. Although the opponent's strength was very weak, but a glimpse of a spot can be seen in the panorama, combat literacy is honed in blood, insiders, a glance can be seen. Knight Beishian eyes without waves and waves, slightly raised his head, a knife from his neck rubbed, one more point into, throat will be cut. But Knight Beishian was always half unconcerned, the entire battle, there is not a trace of superfluous action, even if every time on the death line hovering. Seeing the people around him gathering more and more, Knight Beishian shocked away the crowd. All of them get lost, if they dare to come forward again, they will never stay. Killing aura and indifference intertwined in Knight Beishuan's eyes as he looked at the guards around him who wanted to go up again. He had to teach Wang Fushan a lesson today, even if it would affect the next match. He was also controlling himself, trying not to kill as much as possible, but that guard was just like a dog's skin, knocking away and sticking up again, not afraid at all. Next, if those people still dared to come forward, then he, Knight Bei Xian, would make it so that they would never be able to stand up, even if that would attract the attention of the imperial dynasty. Hearing this, the guards with long swords in their hands looked at me and I looked at you, all a bit uncertain. They had just exchanged hands and could tell that they and the others were definitely not a match for this person, who didn't even have a trace of aura on his body. However, look behind Wang Fushan, but it's difficult, after all, they are eating this bowl of rice, the employer was beaten, if they do not do something. Can be a little to say. Froze for what? Within this Yu Jing, he still dares to kill you guys? Wang Fushan could see that although Knight Beixian was powerful, he had some concerns. 1000 tails per person. The guards were as if they had been beaten with chicken blood, their long swords pinched and creaked as they slowly stepped forward, eager to try. Hearing Wang Fushan's promise, coupled with the fact that the surrounding people were gathering more and more, they believed that this teenager in front of them would definitely not dare to kill people on the street. Gradually, the crowd of guards surrounded Knight Beixian into a ball, still walking around, seemingly looking for the best moment to attack, as a way to achieve a one-strike kill. Everyone at the scene held their breath. In that encircling circle surrounding Knight Beixian, as long as one blade fell, then countless blades would follow, and if Knight Beixian couldn't dodge in time, he would be hacked to death by the chaotic blades. The atmosphere was tense with swords. Xianer, come back. Qin Yuxian shouted with some anxiety, she was afraid that Knight Beixian would suffer, even if she knew that it was impossible, she was still worried beyond measure. Knight Beixian ignored. Xianer, if you enter the supervisory heavenly division, what about tomorrow's competition? Good boy, come back quickly. Qin Yuxian continued, trying to persuade Knight Beixian to come back. Upon hearing this, Tai Ling Qing Shui and Yu Zhu, who were originally still watching the show, widened their eyes and rushed to dissuade Knight Beixian. On the other hand, Knight Beixian smiled. Covered dreamer's eyes. After finishing a sentence, 
the entire person swayed and rushed towards the nearest guard. When the person reached close, he raised his sword and slashed. In the blink of an eye, that guard had fallen into a pool of blood, no longer half alive. After a short period of silence, thunderous howls rang out. Murder! The people dispersed in a flurry. Night Bei Xian, however, had slightly reddened eyes, as if the emotions of these days had been released, and without waiting for the guards to come forward, he dodged in a flash and rushed towards the crowd once again. If you look carefully, you can find the corners of Night Beishuan's bloodied mouth, slightly curved up. Search search search. Between the light of swords and shadows, half of the people have already fallen in a pool of blood, head and body, so that people cannot tell which part is which part, only blood and flesh. The scene of blood. Qin Yuxian watched this with her mouth wide open. She didn't expect her own good nephew to be so ruthless. It was as if she was recognizing Night Beishian for the first time, and after remembering his identity, she was relieved. There's something wrong with Lord Knight's state, ah, uh, why is the demonic aura so heavy? Tai Ling Qing Shui asked with some anxiety, not expecting things to go this way. Yu Xu, on the other hand, replied calmly. This is the original him. Qi Menger, who had her eyes covered by Tai Ling Qing Shui, could also smell a bloody odor at this moment. The blood dyed the snow red, intertwining a stunningly beautiful picture, which looked like this in Knight Beishuan's eyes. He smiled, regardless of the remaining guards around him, carrying his sword, he walked straight towards Wang Fushan. The surrounding guards that still had half a fighting spirit? One after another, they pulled their legs and ran, Wang Fushan was so scared, he once again sat down on his butt and kept begging for mercy, covering his body with his hands. Knight Beishuan evilly smiled and squatted down. Put his head down. Wang Cheng is the one I killed, because he knew too much. Knight Beixian continued to smile and whispered, is it curious why? Go ask your son. The heavy snow fell. When Wang Fushan heard the whisper in his ears, he only felt his heart's five viscera and six bowels shaking violently. He hadn't guessed wrong, his son's death was indeed related to this person. Shocked by Knight Beishuan's godlike means, fear arose at the same time. This person can let a person noiselessly turn into a pile of meat, then their own. Thinking clearly about this, cold sweat flowed all of a sudden. Slightly turning his stiff head to look at Knight Beixian, who had his head lowered and an evil smile on his face, Wang Fushan gulped down a mouthful of saliva, I won't pursue this, I won't pursue this. He now only hoped that Knight Beixian wouldn't do anything to him and survive. After all, he wasn't afraid in public, but secretly, even if he died, no one would be able to find out, just like his already dead son. Do not pursue? So, I still have to thank you? Knight Beixian rubbed the blood from the long knife in his hand onto the thick snow on the ground. I don't dare to dare to. Just beg your lordship to let it go. How could Wang Fushan have half a mind for anything else? Only want to hurry to leave, can live on it. But this plea for mercy, instead of letting Knight Beishuan let him go, on the contrary, Knight Beishuan's face was a sharp turn. Smile retracted, a face of indifference. Do you know what I'm most afraid of in my life? Knight Beishuan inserted the knife into the snow, not waiting for Wang Fushan to answer, said to himself, I'm most afraid that the people I care about will be hurt. Do you know who that woman in the car is? My sister-in-law. Knight Beishuan pointed at the luxury car behind him. Do you think you can still live? In the face of Knight Beishuan's series of words, Wang Fushan just cried and waved his hands all the time, unable to say a single word, really dropping a few tears. You can't kill me. Knight Beishuan slowly stood up. Why not? Wang Fushan stared at the carriage behind Knight Beishuan, forcing up his aura as he followed suit and stood up. Because I have something that can save your sister-in-law's life if you kill me. Bang! Before Wang Fushan could finish his sentence, he was punched in the face by Knight Beixian. He collapsed into a snow pile not far away. Knight Beishuan's anger intensified. Throwing the long knife in his hand away, he walked forward, grabbed Wang Fushan's collar, and punched down to his mouth. It wasn't that he didn't want to kill Wang Fushan, but given the current situation, killing Wang Fushan would be cheaper. It is necessary to get out enough gas before. Punch by punch. Slowly still struggling, Wang Fushan pinned his hopes on Qin Yuxian to call Knight Beixian to order. But as time slowly passed, there was nothing else but the cries of alarm from the people remaining around. Eventually Wang Fushan fainted. Knight Beixian stopped, exhaled a few mouthfuls of white smoke, and drew out his silk scarf, wiping his bloodied hand. Looking at the snowy ground, the faceless Wang Fushan, Knight Beixian gradually calmed down. Thoughts drifting. Why was he so impulsive? Just now within the carriage, heard Wang Fushan's insults, according to the original M, he should have passed, and then find an opportunity to slaughter Wang Fushan, but things were not like this. When he heard his sister-in-law being verbally abused, instantly his eyes had a sense of congestion, and extremely strong fury drove him, making him temporarily lose his mind. Although it is not regrettable, it is also somewhat troublesome. There were many corpses around, and the blood had melted the snow and flowed into the distance, narrowing his eyes slightly. Knight Beishian clenched his fists, pondering the next countermeasures in his mind. Killing someone at the feet of the Queen of Heaven, 
wouldn't that be slapping the queen of heaven's face? No matter what the reason, even if the bat can come out, entering the supervisory heavenly division is inevitable. But tomorrow was the martial arts competition, and if this went in, there would be no qualification to compete. Regret was absolutely impossible. He never dwelled on things in his life, there was no way to change things, since it had already happened, then go, and fix it, complaining to the heavens was not his character. It seems like it's only possible to run away, the sleeping compass Dan and the meditation mirror, we can only use the stolen ones, it's just a pity about that immortal chi. Knight Baishan muttered with some regret. His spatial talent had already been cultivated to a high level, tearing open a one-person-sized spatial crack and entering the great Qian's treasury should not be a problem. Having made up his mind, Knight Baishan walked towards the carriage, intending to explain a few words to Qin Yuxian, and then talk to Tai Ling Qing Shui about his plans, and then leave. However, unexpectedly, a rush of hoofbeats sounded in the streets, and Knight Baishan differed to look over. But suddenly, the hairs of sweat stood up at the base of his neck. That was his most instinctive foreknowledge of danger after years of traveling on the line of life and death, if it was a reaction that appeared, then it proved that someone was sneaking up on him. With just an extremely brief moment of daze, Knight Baishan reacted, pushing the karcha forward while turning his back to look. In midair, a person holding a sharp sword was slashing towards his face, and his speed was also extremely fast. Little thief, take your life. Knight Baishan just watched that person slash over, when it was about to come into contact with him. In different smile, his right hand drew a dragon, a little bit of golden haze shrouded, a hand will swing to the sword, grasped in the hands, hath not let it move. Li Sun was shocked. Just now, although it is not his full strength sword, but also almost, this looks only cave realm teenager, actually can catch empty handed? Shocked, but also knew that he was in danger, immediately wanted to pull out the sword and leave, but who knows, half of the pulling cannot move, the sword is like growing into the other hand. How is this possible? Seeing the other party's other hand grabbed over, Lee Sen knew that it was not good, and hurriedly broke his sword to escape. Landing on the ground, he immediately held his sword with both hands, this is a defensive stance, unless the pressure is very great, sword cultivators all hold their swords with one hand. Who the hell are you? Lee Sen asked gruffly, cold sweat breaking out on his forehead, his spirit transformation realm cultivation was being run to the extreme as he looked at Knight Baishan with extreme wariness. Knight Baishan waved his hand. Throwing away the tip of the sword in his hand, he then indifferently said, Are you questioning me? Eyes slightly red. In front of all the people, being treated like this by Knight Baishan, Li Sun's face was a bit unsettled, after all, on weekdays, he was in a state of invincibility in the world. I am from the supervisory heavenly division, my name is Li Sun, you devil, why don't you hurry up and tie your hands? Li Sun didn't dare to be careless and still decided to register his number first. He also hoped that he could use the name of the supervising heaven division to shock Knight Baishan. Due to Knight Beishuan's appearance at this moment, it made him subconsciously describe him as a devil. Never heard of it. Knight Beishuan said with a disinterested expression, not giving half a face. Damn it. Li Sun had never been belittled like this before. His heart was high and proud and he wanted to regain his face. What we just did doesn't count. Let's do it again. Just when Li Sun just wanted to use his stance, the sound of the horse's hooves from earlier had already arrived in front of him. Before the horse arrived, the sound arrived first. Leave him alive. The voice was strong and mixed with gusts of air, it seemed to be very anxious and out of control in general. Li Sun stopped his hand, knowing that it was the deputy thousand protectors of the supervisory heavenly division, Zhang Shangfeng had come, they were together, it was just that after receiving the report, he had come earlier himself. Zhang Shangfeng dismounted, behind him several constables also dismounted together and followed him. Looking at the ground full of mutilated limbs and broken arms, Zhang Shangfeng's face became more and more gloomy. In looking ahead, a teenager who was covered in unblemished dust was staring at himself with a disinterested face. Zhang Xiangfeng was looked at with some scalp numbness, his heart surprised that a teenager who looked just over 20 years old actually had such a strong aura. It was even stronger than the thousand protectors of the supervisory heavenly division. Just as he was about to open his mouth, Li Sun was the one who popped over and said loudly, Lord Zhang, my men have their own measure, and will not kill a prisoner who has not been interrogated alive. Li Sun said with some complacency, because when Zhang Shangfeng said that his men are merciful, he was referring to the fact that he was told not to use his stunts, so as not to mistakenly kill the prisoners who needed to be tortured. Zhang Shangfeng gouged out a glance at Li Sun, then looked down again, and without saying anything, he staggered in front of Knight Baixian. Many thanks for staying merciful. Although the words were words of thanks, but the tone was low and incomparable, as if a ferocious beast, if there was any aura surging from his body, seal marquee aura, deterred the whole field. Li Sun directly froze on the spot. What does it mean? Could it be that what Zhang Xiangfeng said just now about sparing his life, was sparing his life? For some reason, at the thought of this, Li Sun felt chills all over his body. Is it that cold? Li Sun felt that his hat had fallen off and tried to pull it, 
but he could no longer feel his hand, and his heart was horrified. When was it? Carefully looked and found that the shoulder was empty, there was no hand at all. Ah! When Li Sun realized that something was wrong, the cutoff, spraying out crimson blood, immediately suffered severe pain, kneeling in the snow. The fellow officers who followed him around also did not dare to come forward, and stared blankly from the sidelines. With the imprint of the snow, Xin Yuxian's carriage had been pushed to a safe place by Night Bei Xian. Inside the carriage. Be good, don't look. Yu Xu blindfolded Yi Menger's eyes and stared out the window with an ugly face. What the hell is wrong with Xian Er? Why is he so murderous? And so calm, what kind of life has he been living all these years? Xin Yuxian said with teary eyes. When she first went down the mountain, she didn't bring Night Bei Xian with her, and now it had become her greatest regret. I guess it's because it's been suppressed for too long. And then I just recently regained some strength and happened to be touched by someone, and all of a sudden, my demonic nature rose. Yu Zhu's eyes were sharp as she spoke. Xin Yuxian sighed after hearing this. There was both some relief and helplessness. Xin'er this child is like this, when he was a child, he didn't fight with people because of this kind of thing, and he's still like this when he's grown up, but Xin'er's nature isn't bad. Tai Ling Xing Shui had been silent without uttering a word, her light veil brushing her face so that others could not see what she was thinking. Only revealed a pair of star-like beautiful eyes, which is mixed with envy. Not wanting to spit out the question of whether Night Beishuan's nature was bad or not, Yuzhu continued, the most difficult thing to do now is how to end this, after all, so many people were killed. Speaking of this, Xin Yuxian was instead much more calm, she was only concerned about whether or not Night Beishuan was alright. I can arrange this matter, don't worry. Xin Yuxian's tone put away her softness and became steady. If it was just killing those few people, it would be fine. But it's obvious that Night Beishuan has killed Red-Eyed, and the one in front of him is at least a deputy thousand protector level. After listening to Yu Zhu's analysis, Xin Yuxian also read the seriousness within, you're saying that. Xin Er will most likely, along with Zhang Bai's thousand protectors, kill them together? That's right. Yu Xu wasn't talking nonsense without knowing the gravity of the situation, but he could see the state of Night Bei Xin, with his demonic nature in his head and being forced into a desperate situation, it was very likely that he would do such a thing. After all, how would it be possible to make Night Beixian obediently give in and follow Zhang Shengfeng back to the supervisory heavily division? This time Yu Zhu had to prepare for the worst. After all, the meditation mirror was too important. What should we do now? Something can't happen to Xian Er. Xin Yuxian frowned, she didn't have cultivation, otherwise she would have directly gone down to knock out Night Beixian and carry him back. There was a pause. As long as the deputy thousand protectors are persuaded away, there is still room for everything to maneuver. After all, Night Bei Xian is not a fool, as long as there is still a way to go, he won't mess around. Xin Yuxian listened and fell into deep thought. The snow, it was falling even more heavily. As if to make the dead more decent, the snow covered up the blood and covered up the corpses, but it was just a desire to cover them up, because the people were already dead. Did you kill all these people? Zhang Xiangfeng looked on guard, his right hand was hidden under the straw raincoat, ready to strike out and kill the person in front of him with a single blow. Yes. Night Bei Xian answered dryly. Why? After killing all of them, does the reason still matter? Suddenly, Zhang Xiangfeng laughed. Laughing loudly, he stopped only after a long time and said, That's right, after all, after killing so many people, no matter what the reason is, you must pay for your life. Reasons would be redundant, don't you think? Night Bei Xian replied, Do you think that I should take a few more lives before I vanish? I think that you should come when you are able. My answer is the same. The flavor of the conversation's gunpowder was extremely strong. At this point in time, Night Beishan already had no possibility of competing, other than going to steal the sleeping compass pill, there was already no other way, but before hiding away, why not kill this person? After all, it would be troublesome if a person in the early stages of the seal marquee stage kept chasing after him. Night Beishan wasn't murderous, but rather, he had been pushed to the point where he had no choice but to break the pot, blaming all the reasons why he couldn't compete on these people who were blocking him, even if they weren't so evil that they had to die. Zhang Xiangfeng had slowly pressed down, his body slightly bowed, a pair of eyes as sharp as eagles, staring dead at Night Bei Xian, the right side of the straw raincoat slightly warped. Seeing that the long knife under Zhang Xiangfeng's straw raincoat was about to be sheathed, Night Bei Xian once again drew out spiritual qi from his dantian, raising his cultivation to the peak of spirit transformation, his ink hair dancing wildly. The two extremely strong auras came into a collision. The surrounding snow was swept away, once again revealing the corpses that had frozen stiff. Wait! Just as the swords were drawn, a petulant voice came from not far away. Then a purple dress, like the beauty of a fairy under the moon, slowly walked over against the wind and snow. Night Beishian saw that it was his own sister-in-law, worrying that she would be harmed, he subconsciously put his breath into his sword. But it was this short lapse of concentration that was seized by Zhang Xiangfeng, drawing his sword and slashing, 
as fast as lightning while at the same time resembling a clear breeze, the peak of a sword. He doesn't care how others are doing, this kind of battle, can seize this kind of first opportunity, the chance of victory can be raised by 90%. Xian'er, be careful. Seeing this scene, Xin Yuxian cried out in alarm. Breaking away from her maid's support, she rushed forward with all her strength, wanting to block this blade for Night Bei Xian. But how could it be too late? Boom! Xin Yuxian followed the surrounding snow and was lifted off by an extremely strong wave of air, her entire body was directly thrown into midair, but fortunately, she was caught by Yu Zhu who rushed out. Landing on the ground, Xin Yuxian had already cried into tears. Xian'er, my Xian'er, said while creeping on the snow, wanting to go over. President Qin, calm down, it's too dangerous to go over now. Yu Zhu stopped Qin Yuxian. After all, when two experts collide, the aftermath left behind is not something that ordinary people can resist. Amidst the many noisy voices, the snow dispersed. There were two people standing in the field. Thank you for another king of gifts from my student ID is 19947444 big brother. Thanks big brother, this is the second one this month. Grateful for that. Keeps the little puffer's life full of motivation. I'll be sure to write well. The next will be wonderful. The aura fluctuations calmed down, and the snow was dispersed by the austere wind, and the two people in the field stood there. Zhang Shengfeng stood up, sheathed his bloodied long sword, shook the snow from his body, and turned around. What should we do now? Night Beixian was in somewhat of a bad shape, there was a deep wound on his chest, the blood and flesh of his robes had been sliced through, revealing the ghastly white bones within, and his face was somewhat pale. However, his expression was unchanged. It's been a long time since I've been injured, but... This has only just begun, what are you in a hurry for? Night Beixian walked slowly towards Zhang Xiangfeng, the cultivation of his body climbing up. The killing intent in his heart was monstrous. If he hadn't restrained his aura just now, and the two auras had collided, his sister-in-law would have been dead by now, I'm afraid. Fear and anger had already caused him to lose his mind. Early spirit transformation stage. Intermediate spirit transformation. Peak spiritualization. The cultivation level was still climbing up in a steady stream. This scene gave Zhang Xiangfeng a dumbfounded look. So this person has been hiding his cultivation to fight with himself? And by the looks of it, he was close to breaking through the seal marquee realm. You have to know, the supervisor of the heavenly division's thousand protectors is only at the early stage of the marquee. In the next second, the sense of oppression suddenly rose by a step, and the snow around them stopped in midair. Boom! Early seal marquee stage. Night Beixian arrived at the early stage of seal marquee, the blood in his entire body began to boil, and his long lost strength surged out, and instead of having any discomfort, he was able to do it with ease. Long lost strength, it's not much, but it's barely enough. Night Beixian clenched his fist, and the hideous wound on his chest moved with him. Zhang Xiangfeng held his long sword in his hand and kept retreating backwards, the wind and snow blew his cold sweat, solidifying it. Quickly go back and call Chen Gu. Knowing that he couldn't sit back and wait for death, Zhang Xiangfeng let out a bellowing cry, and was directly charging upwards, but in a conservative posture, wanting to tangle with Night Beixian to stall for time. The few people who followed just wanted to leave, but they were blocked by an invisible wall, clearly there was nothing in front of them, but no matter what, they couldn't get through. Night Beixian had utilized the laws of space to encircle the entire Peach Blossom Street Street, meaning that it had just become a gladiatorial arena. Facing a strike that was no less than the previous slash, but this time, in Night Beixuan's eyes, it was surprisingly slow, writhing slowly as if in slow motion. Too slow. He grabbed the tip of the knife and twisted it off, and Zhang Xiangfeng kicked out a few feet away, not stopping until he hit a wall of air, spitting out blood and bracing himself. Looking at the broken knife on the side, Zhang Xiangfeng knew that today was a fateful day. Do you really want to drive out all the people? If you do so, there will be no place for you in the sky and the earth? Zhang Xiangfeng's face was ugly and his words were threatening. And Night Beixian didn't listen at all, with a flash, a foot kicked Zhang Xiangfeng to the side once again. Aren't you quite the bully? What? Now you know you're scared? I'm telling you, it's too late. Night Beixuan's heart was determined to kill, after all, there was no turning back. One would be wanted whether one killed or not, so why not? Moreover, the other party had almost killed his sister-in-law, this alone was enough for him to die several times. But just at this moment, a man in an official uniform came to Zhang Xiangfeng's side, as if appearing out of thin air. He helped Zhang Xiangfeng up. Are you alright? Zhang Xiangfeng recognized the visitor. Lord Thousand Protector? Seeing that harmless, plain face, Zhang Xiangfeng knew that he would not have to die today, because Qi Gui Itsumo had sent him. It's Chenggua, it is this devil. Killed Wang Clan's family members without knowing how many, and also disabled the Li Sun kid, simply without the law of the land. Upon hearing this, it's Yunfa simply told Zhang Xiangfeng to sit to the side and did nothing. Night Beixian was just watching indifferently from the side, but his fists were clenched tightly, he could see that this it's Yunfa's cultivation had the middle stage of feudal marquee, 
and his Tao was not ordinary. If he wanted to kill, he had to raise his cultivation again, but then the consumption of aura in his body would be too great, affecting his next actions. But if you don't kill, it wasn't difficult to use the space law to vanish, but for the bad breath in Zhang Xiangfeng's heart, and the possible impact on his sister-in-law, it was something he couldn't accept. The wound is starting to hurt. Knight Beishuan's face became paler and paler, that cut, he was not easy, the longer he dragged it out, the more unfavorable it would be for him, thinking of this, his eyes became fierce. Just when he wanted to directly mention the late seal marquis stage, kill the person quickly and run away. The person in front of him, named its Yunfa, however, walked over in a friendly manner. My humble self, its Yunfa, is a thousand protector of the supervisory heavenly division of the Yu Jing imperial dynasty, please bear with me if I have offended. Its Yunfa arched his hand and saluted at Night Beixian. Night Beixian froze, the chilly wind making him wonder if he was hallucinating from the cold. Not to mention Night Beixian, Zhang Xiangfang's mouth was wide open, the word dumbfounded written on his face. What do you mean? Night Beixian was extremely suspicious, his eyes narrowed slightly as he stared at his Yunfa dead in the face. Night Prince, this is all a misunderstanding together. We'll leave now and directly make amends at our doorstep in some time, so please bear with us. It's Yunfa spoke with extreme sincerity. Hidden look, can also be found at some nervousness, forehead has silk beads of sweat rolling down. Hearing. Night Beixian didn't say anything, but was thinking about the authenticity of this matter, if the supervisory heavenly division really didn't pursue the matter, that would naturally be the best. Tomorrow's competition wouldn't be delayed, the immortal Qi wouldn't be missed, and Zhang Shengfen's words, when the competition was over, wouldn't it be all up to him to fiddle with it however he wanted? But how to tell if what he said was true? Xian Er. Qin Yuxian's voice came from behind, his breath somewhat confused against the wind and snow. With the support of her maid Yue next to her, she walked quickly towards Night Beishuan's side. Auntie quickly go back, don't come over. Night Beishuan shouted with a somewhat stern tone. The biggest bottom line in his life was his loved ones, and he could do whatever he wanted. But, never let the people he cared about, be harmed. Many times he wondered if he had become a devil because his obsession was too deep, causing him to think very differently from the decent people. Choosing between saving the world, and saving his lover. He will not hesitate to choose the latter, who dares to block, then he dares to kill. This was the devil in the eyes of the world. Hearing Knight Beishuan's stern voice of discouragement, Xin Yuxian, instead of stopping, quickened her pace. Coming to Knight Beishuan's side, she stood on her tiptoes and held Knight Beishuan's head in her arms, softly saying, It's, all right, it's all right, little auntie is here, said, but he himself cried out, little aunt I'm fine. Knight Beishuan was somewhat speechless, he is not a child anymore, still say it's fine. Qin Yuxian as if her heart was broken, gently touching Knight Beishuan's chest, that shocking wound, tears once again gushed out. How painful this must be ah. Bones are seen, go, auntie to take you home. Said, Xin Yuxian pulled the Knight Beishuan want to go, but not much pull. Xin Yuxian tearful eyes looked at Knight Beishuan, some doubts in his eyes. Knight Beishuan signaled its Yunfa and the others. Xin Yuxian, however, frowned slightly. Someone is cleaning them up, don't worry about it. Baby let's go home quickly, it won't be good if the wound gets infected. Until he reboarded the car whiskey, wrapped in Xin Yuxian's purple sable coat, Knight Beishuan was still in a daze, the coldness in his body slowly subsiding. Looking outside the car chauffeur, with his head lowered, respectfully waiting for the car chauffeur to leave, his Yunfa. Knight Beixian asked, Auntie, what is this situation? Xin Yuxian wrapped Knight Beixian into a dumpling, leaving only the location of the wound, and when she heard Knight Beixian ask, she was a little unsure of how to answer for a moment. Xian Er, don't ask this. In the future, when it's time for you to know, you will naturally know. Xin Yuxian obviously didn't really want to discuss this topic and said perfunctorily. Within the carriage, it was extremely comfortable, and it was only after a few words that Knight Beixian began to drift off to sleep, his aura dispersing, leaving behind only a tired shell. Yu Zhu pulled out a vial from the side and handed it over to Qin Yuxian, spread this on his wounds. What is this? Qin Yuxian squeezed the bottle. A small gadget. Not much use, just enough to stop the bleeding. Yu Zhu replied easily. This was actually a poisonous powder, but it had to be used with a special technique to work, and if it was used directly, it would be extremely irritating and serve to stop the bleeding. Xin Yuxian knew that Yu Zhu was with Knight Beixian all the way, so she didn't hesitate anymore and spread the powder on the wound. Prek La! A puff of white smoke rose. Knight Beishuan's face was also getting paler and paler, he was not like other cultivators who could nab the aura of heaven and earth for their own use, and the past life compass would truncate all of that. So now the cultivation faded, with the mortal no different, this knife wound for a mortal, is extremely fatal, a little inattention. Could be doomed to death. Xin Er, how do you feel now? Xin Yuxian held Knight Beishuan's hand with both hands, giving him as much warmth as possible, the color of worry in his eyes, intensifying. It's fine. Little auntie don't worry. 
Knight Baishan said with a strong hold, but anyone could hear the weakness in his words, and the gradually fading vitality. Tai Ling Qingxue watched from the sidelines, her small hands grasping the hem of her skirt, her face blocked by a light veil that no one could see. Her hero was suffering from an unprecedented crisis, was she going to stand by and do nothing? But what could be done to help Knight Bei Xian? Back at the mansion, Qin Yuxian immediately looked for the best physicians to come over and look at Knight Bei Xuan's injuries, but none of them were effective because Knight Bei Xuan's injuries were just too deep. At this time, the life force was extremely weak. Crane Mountain. Within the ancient room in the peach blossom forest, the sandalwood incense rose leisurely, but it broke off in the next second, and it was at this moment that Yun Zun opened his eyes, and unconsciously, beads of sweat crossed the delicate side of his face. Why does this honored one feel heartache? 10,000 Ghost Cave. Within the dark, ghostly wedding room, a bride with an extremely enchanting and charming appearance was stroking an ancient button, looking closely at the top of which was also entangled with a thread of hair, her expression intoxicated and mesmerized. But the next second, the face began to become horrible. Who moved my husband? Far away in the eastern domain. Above the choppy sea, on a magnificent and incomparable air platform with seven colored haze reflections, a stunningly beautiful young girl sitting in the very center with a turquoise blue gemstone hanging on her forehead slowly opened her blue eyes. The sea was also calm on this. Peach Blossom Street. Within Qin Yuxian's mansion, Qin Yuxian had already disappeared, and Yu Zhu walked out and asked, Miss, where is President Qin? Where did she go? Tai Ling Qingxue, who was sitting in the middle of the lobby, was distracted until Yu Zhu asked again, and only then did she react, I don't know, just now, it was like she made some sort of determination, and then without her attendance, she ran out alone. Then remembering something, he hurriedly asked, how is the situation of the night prince? Yu Zhu sighed and shook his head, closing the door again and walking over to Tai Ling Qingxue to sit down across from him. The situation is very bad, there is no aura in his body to support him, and he doesn't mobilize himself, so he probably wants to just push through. Shaking his head, he said. What's most worrying now is that if Knight Beixian is slow to mobilize his own spiritual chi, then when it comes down to it, it's estimated that he won't even be able to mobilize his spiritual chi. Tai Ling Ching Shui became anxious and directly stood up. Mobilizing his aura to save his life is ultimately only temporary. With the aura gone, he still has to die, isn't there any other way? Tai Ling Ching Shui asked. Yu Zhu shook his head. Tai Ling Ching Shui sat down helplessly. Miss, while there is still time. No way. Tai Ling Ching Shui directly interrupted Yu Zhu as she knew what Yu Zhu wanted to say. It was nothing more than that now that she saw that Knight Beixian couldn't make it, she wanted to find a new person who had a chance to take the head ranking and then make a deal to get the meditation error. Yu Zhu frowned, he also didn't expect Tai Ling Ching Shui to actually refuse so quickly. Miss, don't fool around. Lord Ghost King is still waiting for the meditation mirror in the cave of 10,000 ghosts, if we miss this opportunity, we'll have to wait for another three years. Speaking of the Tai Ling Phantom Veil, Tai Ling Ching Shui also struggled a bit, but thinking that she had already promised Knight Bei Xin that the deal and everything was done, and that she was breaking the contract at this time. Sir Knight said that we don't need to care about the rest, and that he would hand over the meditation mirror to us in the end. As if Tai Ling Ching Shui had some backbone, she answered thus. Miss, look at him lying inside the room. Does he look like he can compete? You believe whatever he says? Don't be silly, okay? Bitter said. I just believe it. A hero with a heart of gold will never go back on his word. Tai Ling Ching Shui strongly disliked back. Yu Zhu sneered twice. I'm going to put Lord Ghost King's safety first, since Miss thinks that Knight Beixian can, then just wait here, I have to go find someone who can take the head list. After saying that, Yu Zhu was about to leave, and before leaving, he once again persuaded, Miss, don't be obsessive, come with me and don't bother with Knight Beixian. I'm not leaving. I'm going to wait for Mr. Knight to give me the meditation mirror and then go back to cure my sister. Really? Hey. Yu Zhu seemed to be really exasperated. Wanting to say something that would hurt Tai Ling Ching Shui, such as Knight Bei Xin didn't pay much attention to you all the way, he hates you, it's impossible for him not to like you, and so on. Afterward, he still held back and didn't say anything. Sneeringly, he said. Someone who can't even get out of bed, I'd like to see how he can win the top ranking. After saying that, he left straight away. It was quiet for a while. Tai Ling Ching Shui pulled off the light veil, revealing the demonic face that was strong enough to pour over all beings, and said. Of course he can come down. After saying that, she headed towards Knight Beishuan's room. I can take a day off every month, and I already used it yesterday. Cry cry cry. Begging for gifts. Five star praise is also fine. Within the quiet room, the wound was wrapped up by the white cloth Knight Beishuan, quietly lying there, faded a ferocious, appeared extraordinarily showy. Knight Beixian actually had a feeling for his surroundings, it was just that his body suddenly possessed aura, and then suddenly dispersed, and he was also injured, so he couldn't slow down for a while. He had just been in his spatial ring, 
taking out a small box with an ethereal scent, which he had actually discovered since he escaped from the broken dragon cliff, only that he had delayed opening it, because he knew that it was put there by Hua Ma Shang. Just now, he held onto his trust in Hua Ma Shang and opened the box, and as expected, there were several spirit grasses inside, and a note was also attached. Knight Bei Xian couldn't care less and hurriedly took the spirit grass and looked at the note, only to see, the yellowish note, there is a line of beautiful handwriting, or intermittent, visible flowers between Thu and writing, its tangled mind, the content of the note, elder brother, it's very hard out there, there are many evil people, if you feel tired and can't hold out any longer, go back to the sun moon divine sect, the injuries you have suffered, senior sister will repay 10,000 times over, the suffering you have endured, senior sister will also listen to all of it, come back, let your wife love you well, love your flowery dress, after reading it, Knight Beishan let out a sigh and collapsed on top of the bed, and the note that was kneaded into a ball in his hands, he was not able to throw it out after all, and put it into his sleeve. Senior sister ah, you this let me how can I hate you? Knight Beishuan's mood was extremely complex. He knew that this was nothing more than a means for Hua Ma Shan to imprison herself, but, in this kind of situation where he was injured and there was no one else around him, seeing this note with a lot of living spirit grass attached to it, how could this make him not be moved? A sour feeling filled his heart, and he admitted that he had somewhat underestimated Hua Ma Shang. He also became even more determined to regain his strength, then become stronger, and in the end, he would be the one to control Hua Ma Shang, thus striking a balance, so that she would no longer casually hurt people. This was the only solution at the moment. It was also the optimal solution that Knight Beixian could think of. He would definitely not go back until he reached his goal, and let Hua Ma Shang use all sorts of tactics, it would be the same. Nor did he expect Hua Ma Shang to change because he wants to put all this on his own head, let himself alone to bear all this. Thinking about this, the medicinal effect of the Shang Ling grass began to take effect. The faculties restarted and fell into a void. Knight Beishuan's eyes couldn't see and his body couldn't move, but the strength of his perception of his surroundings had risen by more than one step. In less than a moment, the anxious voice of the sister-in-law sounded in the house, and it was bringing the physician, but unfortunately, how could a mortal possibly have seen the living spirit grass? So the foolish physician, told the sister-in-law, his body function shut down, I am afraid that his days are numbered. It was quiet for a while. Knight Beixian could imagine how agonizing his sister-in-law's reaction was when she heard this news. In half an hour, his sister-in-law had gone back and forth to change several physicians for him, but the results of the examinations were all general, allowing his sister-in-law to prepare for the aftermath. The sound of the door closing sounded. With a sobbing voice, the sister-in-law said, Shenner, don't be afraid. Little ant will definitely cure you, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Although he couldn't feel it, Knight Bei Xin knew that at this time, his sister-in-law, must have been lying on the bed, holding her hands in his own, where she was whispering and crying. After another moment of silence, as if she had made some sort of determination, little ant once again said, Shenner, sister-in-law will go find someone who can save you, you must hold on, without you, sister-in-law doesn't want to live. The crying that had originally stopped was now present afterward. After sister-in-law left. Yu Zhu came in again, did not say anything, just sighed continuously at him, perhaps checking his body, knowing it wouldn't work, and then left slightly. Immediately afterward, a quarrel erupted within the lobby. It was Tai Ling Qing Shui and Yu Zhu, arguing over whether to stay and wait for him to awaken. Yu Zhu left. Knight Bei Xian was somewhat high on Tai Ling Qing Shui at this point, this girl simply understood him too well and knew that no matter what the circumstances were, he would keep his word. But the last sentence, he would come down, what did it mean? Could it be that Tai Ling Ching Shui knew that he had merely taken the Shangling grass and would get up from time to time? The door to the room closed. Within the room, footsteps sounded. Knight Bei Xian sensed that Tai Ling Ching Shui was standing right next to him, silently watching him. Tai Ling Ching Shui, the sacrifice is necessary for you to save your sister, if you don't do something, Lord Knight will die. It was as if Tai Ling Ching Shui was convincing herself to do something extremely difficult. Actually, Ching Shui isn't stupid. But it's just that there's a feeling that Lord Knight is definitely able to win the top ranking of this tournament, for sure. So whether it's to save Lord Knight, or to save my sister, I have to do something. Hearing this, Knight Beishian was creeped out for a moment. What did this girl want? It can't be that she wants to. At this moment, Knight Beishian wanted to just wake up and tell Tai Ling Ching Shui that he was fine, so that she wouldn't do anything strange, but unfortunately, he couldn't do it. Mr. Knight, if you wake up, you don't need to be responsible for me, because this is all of my own free will. After Tai Ling Qing Shui said those words, she lost her movement, and from time to time, there was the sound of clothes falling off, followed by the sound of shoes being taken off. Then there was the sound of bare feet walking to the edge of the bed. Knight Beishuan's heart was pounding as he listened ah, 
It was as if he was trapped by dozens of thick chains, unable to move while at the same time, there was a woman who wanted to violate him, even though that woman was nationally beautiful. But, he didn't feel awe. What's the difference between this and a pig dick eating the fruit of life? A little flavor can not taste. Gradually, Night Bei Xian even dissipated his consciousness. The sky spins, everything is empty. I don't know how long it took, Night Bei Xian then woke up leisurely, the discomfort on his body, actually miraculously all disappeared. The Shangling grass alone couldn't do it. Thinking of the Tai Ling Qing water, Night Bei Xian's mind was restless, rushing to open his eyes with great effort, only to see an exquisite lowly face, looking at himself with a smile. Night Bei Xian reacted and pushed it away. Getting up, he put his clothes back on. Why are you here? That. Night Bei Xian wanted to ask about Tai Ling Qing Shui, but didn't open his mouth. You want to ask about that little girl? It's already gone. Di Chiong appeared to be lacking in interest today. Although he was still wearing that trademark smile, one could tell that there was some unhappiness. Gone? Night Baishian put his clothes back on, seemingly intentionally or unintentionally, of looking towards the bed. Brother Weedfish is disgusting, don't look for it, it's already been taken away. Di Chiong revealed an expression of wanting to vomit. You know what I am looking for? Falling Red Llama. How do you know? Night Baishian was a bit surprised. Of course I know, not only do I know, I also watched the entire process. Speaking of this, Di Chiong's small face was a little red, and she kept wiggling her black silk jade feet. Speaking of which, Night Baishian checked his body and found that not only had his injuries been cured, but within his dantian, a large mass of spiritual chi had surged in, having been ferried in, collecting his thoughts, narrowing his eyes slightly. These spiritual chi could be said to have helped him a great deal, if not for these spiritual chi, the martial arts competition, he would most likely have to squeeze his body functions again, thus falling ill. The aura that was squeezed out from eating all the heavenly materials last time wasn't retained too much, and the aura that poured in this time was almost three times as much as the last time. It was enough for him to use for a long time, but he didn't feel much joy, because this was something he had gotten on credit, or a love debt. Since ancient times, love debt is the most difficult to return, and it is still in his most critical time, the snow, that friendship. Let him how can return. At this time, next to the emperor dome some grudging voice rang out, you say, why all the excellent, beautiful women, all want to lean on you? Knight Baishan didn't know how to answer, so he only asked in return, and what are you doing it for? Don't talk nonsense, you're nothing more than this young lady's slave, if it was a great danger, this young lady wouldn't bother with you. The tone was a bit haughty. Well, it's good to wake up, this young lady is leaving. The petite body landed on the ground. Wait. For the first time, when Di Chiong was about to leave, Night Baishan spoke out to stop her, never before. Di Chiong laughed, somewhat playfully, and turned back to reveal that belabored, sickly smile. What? Can't bear to part with me? Night Baishan was however serious. Can you tell us what you're really here for this time? Curious, he asked. Di Chiong hugged his two little tender hands and skimmed his lips, somewhat dissatisfied with Night Baishan's question. However, he still said, protecting Yuan Zhou. What does that mean? It means that if this young lady doesn't come today, then Yuan Zhou can already go into the ground early, oh no, most likely the entire 3000 Dao state. Night Baishan lowered his head, almost having figured it out seven or eight times. It was probably because there was a certain part of his body that had a forbidden system, and as long as he did a certain behavior, the forbidden system would react, and thus Huama Shang would receive it. Thinking of this, Night Baishan couldn't help but have cold sweat seeping out from his back, only feeling that he had been too careless. If Di Chong didn't come today and utilize that void space of hers to isolate the forbidden system, thus preventing Hua Masang from receiving the message, then it would truly be the end of the world ah. Thanks ah, this time count me as owing you a favor. If you need anything in the future, you can look for me. Knight Baishan followed his usual routine and uttered this set of words. Really? But this young lady's needs, you might not be too willing to. Then tell me. Knight Baishan thought that Di Dong's needs were nothing more than about how to flirt. What other business could there be? But Di Chiang's next words froze him. Kill Hua Ma Shang. Ha! Huh? This young lady's demand is to kill Hua Ma Shang. How about it? Can you do it? Di Chiang looked at Knight Baishan with a straight face, then looked at him with a smile on her face as she re-emphasized. Knight Baishan didn't reply, just looked at Di Chiang that way, no expression on his face either, making it impossible to tell if he was angry, or dumbfounded, still as dead water. This wasn't the first time that Knight Baishan had heard this request, from Di Dong's mouth and was curious in his heart as to what kind of obsession it was that kept Di Dong clinging to it. Give me a reason. Night Baixian didn't reject it at first, but rather wanted to set up a conversation. On the other hand, Di Chiang saw through Night Baixian in general and shook his head helplessly, saying with a straight face, This person, Huama Shan, is described as perfect, no one is able to warp her, and you, Night Baixian, are her only weakness. 
You need to shoulder this responsibility of getting rid of the devil, not for the sake of the world's people, but also for yourself. Knight Bei Xian had never seen Di Chiong so serious, as if a little kid who had never known the importance of anything had grown taller than even himself overnight. Getting rid of demons? I myself am the devil, huh? Do I still have to get rid of myself? Knight Bei Xian said with a teasing smile, subconsciously avoiding the question. Di Chiong looked deeply at Knight Bei Xian, and Knight Bei Xian somehow felt a little weak and moved his eyes away. In the end, Knight Bei Xian still couldn't carry on and answered Di Chiong's question. As long as my senior sister doesn't raise a butcher's knife against me, then I won't kill her. But I will restrict her so that she has no way to kill. Knight Bei Xian spoke with extreme sincerity. It was as if Di Chiong had expected this. If that's your answer, then I know. But you'd better change your mind earlier. After saying that, Empery and Dome directly tore open a void rift. Before leaving, she gave another deep look at Knight Bei Xian, and only then did she let out a long sigh and leave. In that paragraph just now, she hadn't actually finished. The original words were, but you'd better change your mind earlier, or else when the time comes, you'll only suffer more and more. Above the Yu Jing, Di Chiong had his hands wrapped around his chest, revealing an aura that had unexpectedly reached half saint. That aura that overlooked the world and obliterated the universe was a far cry from her former self. The old monsters gathered around the Yu Jing couldn't detect it at all, they could only feel an extremely strong sense of oppression, only thinking that it was Yun Zun, and they didn't care. Di Chiong's face was ugly. Since brother loves the devil Huama Shang so much, then this young lady still has to kill her. The words were filled with a murderous aura, and the last few words were said word for word. The time is almost right to go find her. That woman being the empress of the empire is unpleasant, but it's better than Hanamashang, after all, she'll still share. And she's the one who really has the ability to fight against Huama Shang. Emperor Dome usually had some lack of confidence when he mentioned Huama Shang, but this time, there was some confidence, as if water was seeping out of a dry well. It's not much, but it's really there. Muttering in a low voice, the Emperor Dome flew toward the eastern domain. Above the sky, the sudden appearance of a half-saint's aura also turned Qin Shuiyue's face grave as she knew that it wasn't Yun Zun's aura. However, it disappeared in no time, and coupled with the fact that there was something going on right now, she no longer paid too much attention to it. Sister, please save Shenner. She was slashed by that Zhang Xiangfeng and is now in critical condition. At any moment, her life will be in danger. Qin Yuxian sat on the side and said with a sobbing voice. Qin Shuiyue signaled the surrounding people to disperse. Night Bei Xian, it was this person again. Although she had long known that her sister had this nephew, but it wasn't a relative. The heart was annoyed. Xian Er, you and your sister have been at odds for so many years, you didn't even say that there was something wrong with your body, and you wanted this emperor to look into it, but now it's for an outsider that you ran to the Taichu Palace to beg me? Ridiculous? Qin Yuxian, however, was in a hurry, her eyebrows slightly furrowed. Xian Er is not an outsider. He's not, I am? Perhaps some people had already guessed that Qin Yuxian, a mortal woman who appeared to have no power or influence in the pavilion capital, had a sister who was the great Qin's empress, Qin Shuiyue. Facing Qin Shuiyue's question, Qin Yuxian was silent for a moment, not knowing how to answer. Only in the end did she stubbornly say, I will return the favor to you later, right now Xian Er can't wait any longer and must be treated immediately. The tone of his voice was a bit understated and even a bit irrational. Qin Shuiyue was dressed in a phoenix robe, her willow eyebrows were drawn extremely high, her red lips were like blazing fire, but her face was as cold as water, a coldness bursting out, she didn't say anything. What kind of character is Knight Bei Xian? The tip of the flower devil's heart. He will die? The whole world is dead all, Knight North Xian or less a sweat hair, an angry Qin Yuxian's desperate, but then associated with the things of childhood. In the end, Qin Shuiyan loosened his hand. Who let this emperor owes you? After saying that, he lifted his jade hand up, and in the next second, an exquisite box appeared in the palm of his hand, and there were gusts of vitality gushing out. Take it, as long as your Xian Er is still alive, then it can be saved. Upon hearing this, Qin Yuxian wiped away the teardrops from the corner of her eyes, picked up the box, and hurriedly got up to leave. But before leaving, she still left behind a sentence. I never thought of blackmailing you with that previous incident. After saying that, the head does not even return to leave. It was quiet for a while. A sigh came out from the Tai Chu Palace. Not even calling out to a sister. Xin Yuxian hurried back to Peach Blossom Street Willow Lane, dusty all the way, not caring about her image at all, only wanting to hurry to give the things to Night Bei Xian. But as soon as she entered the mansion, but saw Night Bei Xian sitting in the lobby drinking tea, Xin Yuxian froze for a moment, not knowing how to react. Auntie, where have you been? Night Bei Xian said with a smile, his face not as pale and flushed as it was just now. Xian Er, you're fine. Knight Bei Xian stood up and walked over to Qin Yuxian, helping her to sit on a chair. I'm fine, in fact, it would have been nothing, it's just that the aura is coming in and out, 
the body is a bit overwhelmed, it's good to slow down for a while. Qin Yuxian had been staring at the night Beixian who was massaging himself, staring at that face with some warmth and smiles, his ears were always not able to hear any sound at all. See Qin Yuxian a straight froze looking at himself, eyes gradually lax, give the night Beixian hole won't be, with a hand waved, auntie? Are you okay? This sentence, like waking up Qin Yuxian from the sinking, and the first thing Qin Yuxian woke up is to cry, cry very loudly, like a child. Auntie, don't cry, aren't I fine? Night Beixian kept smoothing down Qin Yuxian's jade-like back, his face a little weepy as he lightly coaxed with his mouth. You brat! Qin Yuxian but the more she cried the louder she cried, half the image of the Chamber of Commerce president was not there, the usual dignified and noble temperament, also gone. You died, how do I do ah, after your mother left? I only have you so a relative, if something happens to you, I also do not live. Qin Yuxian became more and more agitated as she spoke. Night Beixian heart wondered, after all, his sister-in-law is not his own sister-in-law, how can he be the only one relative? A burst of cajoling and coaxing. Qin Yuxian herself was probably tired of crying, plus physical reasons. Just now it was because of Night Beixian. Nervous and anxious. So it hadn't been able to feel it, and as soon as she relaxed at this moment, Qin Yuxian's weak breath couldn't harden. Night Beixian picked up the cloud of purple silhouettes on the seat, wiping away the teardrops from the corners of his eyes, a nice floral scent filled the air, that tired face, coupled with an uneasy look. He looked a little heartbroken. Not yet two steps, Qin Yuxian hands a box fell out, Night Beixian felt the box emitted, the breath of life. With curiosity in his heart, Night Beixian freed a hand, and with a hook, the box arrived in his hand. The aura pushed open the lid. Inside was actually a creation Dan. The birth of all things, promoting their flesh and blood, and changing their destiny against the heavens. This kind of elixir, a high-grade elixir used to improve the physique, is extremely rare, and it can't be used directly when it is refined, there must be a strong person to raise the elixir. Sucking their blood to feed the Dan. The longer the Dan is raised, the higher the grade and the stronger the effect. And the box in the creation of this Dan, grade at least reached the sixth order. It could be called one of the few in the world. Auntie said that this is to find someone to beg to give it to me, but why do I feel that this is for Auntie? Night Beixian murmured as he hugged Qin Yuxian with one arm. Is this person who gave the elixir to my sister-in-law so sure that I will definitely give it to my sister-in-law? The more Night Beixian thought about it, the stranger he felt, never being able to solve it. Although the creation pill was of little use to him, after all, the heavenly indulgence, improving his physique, the improvement could only be downward, but other people were different. To be able to improve his physique, even if it was the current competition, the person who was claimed to be the strongest, Lu Changha, was definitely grabbing for it, and could even reach the point where he could reach the point where he could not recognize his six relatives. In this situation, there was only one possibility. That was, this person who gave Qin Yuxian the elixir knew him, Night Beixian, very well. At the thought that there was a person in Yujing who knew himself very well, Night Beixian narrowed his eyes slightly, a sense of insecurity surging through his heart, but then he thought about it carefully. Since the other party didn't make any other moves and wasn't afraid of finding out about himself, the probability indicated that there was no malicious intent, and he took the sleeping compass Dan and left. Shouldn't be a problem. Collecting his thoughts, Night Beixian used his aura and sent the creation Dan into Qin Yuxian's mouth, then carried it up to the second floor, into the boudoir, and set it down to leave. Night Beixian once again came to the lobby. For what happened yesterday, although there was no substantial benefit, it indirectly made him see many things clearly, this could be big or small. Come out, don't hide. Night Beixian looked to the side of the room's door, at the demonic silhouette hiding. The words landed. Tai Ling Qing Shui slowly walked out. At this moment, Tai Ling Qing Shui's face was flushed, and the plain emerald green gauze skirt on her body was somewhat thin. Her figure was slender and delicate, and her eyes contained spring and water, so she was tantalizing. Mr. Knight, you're looking for me. Tai Ling Qing Shui became extremely familiar and tender, but her expression was unchanged. Call me Bei Xian. Bei Xian. Supervisory Heavenly Division. The others are already hopeless, but although Li Sun has fallen into disability, it's good that his life is saved. In the middle of the dungeon, a stiff corpse was carried in, Zhang Shangfeng and its Yunfa were present, and an old man in the shape of a physician said to the field of corpses, Then I'll trouble you. Its Yunfa said to the physician, asking him to treat Li Sun. Saving people is my job. But, there is one thing that the old man does not know. The physician said as he smoothed his beard. However, he did not wait for its Yunfa's permission, but directly opened his mouth and asked, Why did you move this many corpses, within this dungeon? And also have to call the old man from the medical center to the supervisory heavenly division to come, is not there any unspeakable hidden? With these words, the temperature within the dungeon plummeted, as if wind and snow blew in, freezing the entire dungeon, making it difficult for people to breathe and uncomfortable. He he. This you don't need to care. It's Yunfa stood with his hands, 
although his face was smiling, but that ironic and grim look still betrayed him. See this situation. The physician did not dare to ask more questions and could only go about his own business, as its Yunfa and Zhang Shengfen went out of the dungeon. Zhang Shengfen closed the door behind him, and the doubts in his heart were not small. Just now that physician wanted to ask, is also what he wanted to ask. So many corpses, instead of pulling them to the mass grave, they were all transported into the dungeon. What in the world is this for? It's thousand protectors, what the hell is going on here? Why did you let that kid leave, and why did you transport all the corpses back? Zhang Shengfeng was somewhat questioning. Wasn't this clearly destroying the corpses? It's Yunfa didn't say anything, just kept moving forward, and finally came within a closed tea room, a place where they usually relaxed and rested. But because it is in the dungeon, humid and many insects and rats, so more closed. After the two entered, it's Yunfa signaled Zhang Shengfeng to sit on the opposite side, and personally made a pot of tea. While pouring, he said, you probably don't know who that person is, that's why you're asking. Zhang Shengfeng took the teacup. Hearing it's Yunfa say so, he was puzzled and asked, who is he? Don't know. Zhang Shengfeng. Both of them took a sip of tea. The tea that it's Yunfa personally brewed was not usually available, Zhang Shengfeng only thought that he was injured and did not think much about it. Turning to think of what just happened, I feel anger surging, regardless of the three said, no matter who, killed so many people, also should be executed. With the Empress as the backstage, I don't know what there is to be afraid of. The words were all about complaining about its Yunfa's inaction just now. Its Yunfa did not retort, but put the teacup down, rested his hands against his chin, and said. When I rushed to the streets of Peach Blossom Street, a woman with a black mask appeared, her cultivation had already reached inscription, and there was also a lotus seed in her hand. Its Yunfa's tone began to become trembling, and a cold sweat oozed from his forehead. The deterrent power of that lotus seed has directly reached the exalted realm. In other words, if that masked woman wanted to, she could kill the empress at any time. Zhang Shengfeng was a bit clouded. If there is really such a strong person in Yujing, then why is there no movement at all from the Myriad Heart Workshop? The tone was just puzzled, not too concerned. That's what makes her so terrifying. Her concealment ability is too strong for ordinary people to discover. It's Yunfa's eyes began to clear. So what does this have to do with you letting that person go? Zhang Xiangfeng asked with one eye cocked. It's Yunfa snapped back from his memories. The eyes that looked at Zhang Xiangfeng held some pity and some regret, but in the end, they all turned into a sigh that disappeared. You don't need to know the rest, you only need to know that if I don't let that teenager go, the supervisory heavenly division and even the entire Yujing, all will bleed to death. Seeing the fervor with which his Yunfa spoke, Zhang Xiangfeng couldn't help but be a little surprised. What kind of person, in the end, could have this kind of energy? Could make the Yujing bleed into a river? And who was that demonic-looking teenager? I can only try to cover up the truth as much as possible, so that this matter can be set aside as much as possible from that teenager, as a way to make the person behind the teenager stop there. Hearing this, Zhang Shengfeng just couldn't hold back any longer, slamming the table and roaring loudly, it's Yunfa. Back then when you were elected to be the thousand protectors, you had said that you don't fear power and only seek justice, but what about now? Zhang Xiangfang continued, an unknown origin, a rat in the gutter, scares you like this? Letting criminals go and destroying evidence? Why don't you just step down and let me be the thousand guardian? Zhang Xiangfang was very dissatisfied with his Yunfa, his actions in Peach Blossom Street just now, not to mention the fact that it was already a long-standing grudge, which finally erupted at this time. Its Yunfa just looked so quietly. Waiting until Zhang Xiangfang had vented enough, its Yunfa slowly stood up and walked to the door. I can only say, fortunately, it wasn't you who became a thousand protectors back then, otherwise, it would have become a thousand sins. After saying that, he closed the door behind him and left without a sound. Bang! Within the closed room, a chaotic sound rang out. It was the sound of tables and chairs being slammed, teapots breaking, plus Zhang Xiangfang shouting and cursing. Fuck it's Yunfa! Sooner or later, I will definitely kill you. Since you're such a coward, I'll go and report to the Empress and see what she's going to do about it. Zhang Xiangfeng firmly believed that the Empress would never condone the teenager's behavior, and even if there were really strong people, the people from the Myriad Hearts Workshop would take action on their own. The more he thought about it, the more he felt that that what masked woman was made up by his Yunfa, and what about that teenager was someone that his Yunfa knew. And so to say, so to do, just to harbor that teenager, exempt from the sentence of lynching. Good you it's Yunfa, I knew it. Saying that, Zhang Xiangfeng walked to the door and wanted to go out. Believe that with this matter, enough to pull its Yunfa off the stage, and he is on the stage, then it's Yunfa's good days. Will come. But a push, but found that the door of the room is as stable as Taishan, as if there are thousands of pounds of boulders blocking outside. Zhang Shengfeng frowned, and pushed harder, but the door of the room is still slightly unmoving. It's Yunfa. Let me out. Zhang Shengfeng took off his straw hat and shouted. 
Unfortunately there was no response at all. In the room, the oil lamp on the table had been knocked over by Zhang Xiangfeng, and only on the steps, a candle was struggling to support the light in the room. Zhang Xiangfeng slammed the door harder and harder, the strong wind blew out the last bit of light. The room became dark and ghostly all of a sudden. Zhang Xiangfeng sat down on the steps tiredly, his heart irritated to the extreme. He was sure that its Yunfa didn't dare to kill him, after all, he couldn't starve while locked in the room. It was just to disgust him. It's Yunfa. You son of a bitch, when I get out, you'll be waiting. Zhang Xiangfeng screamed for a while, gradually gasping for breath, looking at the surrounding black pressure, for some reason, some fear in his heart. Slowly, in the dark and blurred vision, it's Yunfa's compassionate eyes, once again into the eyes. It's Yunfa what does he want in the end? Zhang Xiangfeng quieted his mind before realizing that something was wrong with it's Yunfa, or rather, the whole thing was wrong. Suddenly, just when he was in between his thoughts, a green ghostly fire sprang out from the ground, lighting up the surroundings as well as incinerating everything around it. What is this thing? Zhang Xiangfeng continuously retreated, fear in his heart reaching the extreme. But just after taking two steps back, he could no longer move. It was because a bloody, bony hand grabbed his calf, causing Zhang Xiangfeng to be horrified beyond measure. Just when he wanted to luck out, he realized that the hand had absorbed all the aura in his body, and not only that, a black whirlpool had appeared under his feet. It was so deep that it seemed as if there were thousands of unjust and bitter ghosts wailing in it. Countless bone hands reached out and pulled him towards the black vortex, the scene was extremely terrifying. What are all these things? Ah! Zhang Xiangfeng couldn't break free even though he tried his best. The more he struggled, the deeper he would sink into the vortex. Just as he was about to lose his entire body into the vortex, another wave of killing intent followed, as if he was not satisfied with the bone hand as it tried to pull Zhang Xiangfeng out. Between the entanglement of the two forces, Zhang Xiangfeng was already dead, and the bone hand vortex faded away. Unfortunately, the other force was not satisfied, and after it drew out the soul from Zhang Xiangfeng's body, and then the entire room was set up as a ban, which left. Not long after that force left, the room was lit up with ferocious ghost fire, burning which strand of the divine soul banging around, because of the reason of the restriction, could not go anywhere. Can only send out small and sharp screams. That wisp of divine soul, as if once again reflected Zhang Xiangfeng's face, but was hissing helplessly. At this time, outside the door of the room. Seal this room to me. Quickly. After finishing this sentence, its Yunfa took a deep look at the door of the room, took a long breath and left. Only the busy jailers were left behind. The rooster chimed in early in the morning, more imposing than ever. I don't know if it's the reason why the tournament is coming, yes, the tournament is today. The wind and snow had lessened a bit, and the surrounding populace, in twos and threes, traveled to the imperial city in pairs, chatting about some gossip. Have you heard about it? Yesterday, on the streets of Peach Blossom Street, there was a masked man who killed many people. Even the president of the Wang Chamber of Commerce, Wang Fushan, died. I heard about it, but didn't the murderer already serve his sentence? I heard that he was sentenced on the same day and killed directly on the same day. On the way to the imperial city, two people, you and I were chatting idly. That's because you don't know. One of the people's face was grave, there are too many weird places in this matter. What's weird? That masked man who kills people is always the one that no one has seen, and the people who were spectators around yesterday all kept their mouths shut and even talked about the tiger. You say so. Seems to be indeed so, but still do not care, this matter with us also has nothing to do. Also, as the words landed, a luxurious carriage walked past the two, heading to the imperial city. On top of the carriage was Knight Bei Xian, who was currently resting with his eyes closed, one hand held by Qin Yuxian and the other against his forehead, as if he was extremely tired. Tailing Qing Shui had reattached her veil, hiding that peerless demonic face, but her large eyes were as bright as stars, revealing absolute confidence and yearning. Shinner, just do your best in everything, and always protect your body. Qin Yuxian's qi today was also exceptionally radiant, removing all the turbid qi. It's fine. I have the measure. Knight Bei Xian opened his eyes and looked at Qin Yuxian and said, Today was just a big messy battle, he just needed to keep a low profile in advance. According to his plan, it was definitely better to reveal his strength the later he did so that it wouldn't be easy to arouse suspicion and he wouldn't be easily targeted, but it still depended on the situation. Along the way, Qin Yuxian was urging Knight Bei Xian to be careful, never try to show off and give up when he couldn't, and also mentioned that he didn't need to worry about what happened yesterday. Knight Bei Xuan's heart was strange, but did not ask, thought that it must be the people behind Qin Yuxian who operated, although curious, but this matter, there is no hurry. The entrance to the imperial city. Knight Bei Xian tidied up his clothes and tightened his mask, he was about to separate from Qin Yuxian Tai Ling Qing Shui and the others, after all, he needed to enter the dragon slaying platform, while Qin Yuxian and the others were going up to the VIP seats. Alright, I'm leaving. 
Saying that, Knight Bei Xian was about to leave, but he was stopped by Tai Ling Ching Shui. Bei Xian, whom? Knight Bei Xian turned around to look at Tai Ling Ching Shui, that enchanting figure was getting off the carriage at this moment. Be careful, whom? Knight Bei Xian promised and without lingering, he entered the imperial city, while Qin Yuxian who witnessed everything, at this time, his face was a bit gloomy, and he didn't speak for half a day. Looking at his nephew, and then looking at Tai Ling Ching Shui beside him, he always felt that something wasn't right. Some wanted to say something, but in the end, he didn't say anything, the people around him were getting more and more, Qin Yuxian, as the man of the hour in Yujing, was naturally surrounded by spectators. Qin Yuxian frowned and put down his mind, guiding Tai Ling Ching Shui to the VIP seats. He might see blood today, so that little girl, Qi Menger, didn't follow him over. Knight Bei Xian entered the passageway and walked into the backfield of the dragon beheading stage, rumor had it that in this place, there really was a dragon buried, a demonic dragon that the emperor had beheaded. How true it was, no one knew. After entering the venue, all the contestants were amongst them, and Knight Bei Xian was already considered to have come late. Most of them were very high strung and didn't speak, they were all looking for a corner to themselves, leaning against the wall, resting their eyes and waiting for the match to begin. Seeing a bunch of people flattery around Lu Changha, Knight Bei Xian didn't pay too much attention, his goal was to be a little transparent, the more transparent the better. He casually found a place to lean. This place was similar to a rest area, when the match started, it would all be directly teleported to the field, and at that time, the big fight would begin. With indiscriminate attacks, only 16 would be left in the end anyway, not even one more. Black Knight Great King? In the quiet field, a loud and clear female voice suddenly rang out, seemingly searching for a certain person. Everyone's gazes were attracted to her, and Knight Bei Xian froze for a moment and looked over as well, realizing that Gu Qinghan, who was not far away, was currently looking at himself. Feeling the gazes gathering around him, Knight Bei Xian was speechless within his heart. Why was it that every time he tried to keep a low profile, it was not as good as he wanted it to be? Fairy calling me? Knight Bei Xian straightened up and responded, after all, his codename was the Dark Knight Lord. Gu Qinghan walked towards Knight Bei Xian in the crowd's puzzled gazes, and although her face was icy cold, a faint light smile hung at the corners of her mouth. Although it was extremely unnoticeable, it was still captured by Lu Changha, and it couldn't be helped, after all, from the moment Gu Qinghan came in, Lu Changha's attention, was on Gu Qinghan. The last time Gu Qinghan poured tea for Knight Bei Xian, Lu Changha was already about to explode. This time, seeing Gu Qinghan go and take the initiative to take care of Knight Bei Xian, Lu Changha's face became even more somber. However, yesterday, his master had already instructed him that he must be able to keep his joy and anger to himself. Only then did he hold back. Although he was chatting with the followers next to him, Lu Changha's attention was always on Gu Qinghan, and although his face was smiling, he was grimacing. Dare I ask what your honor's real name is? Gu Qinghan was dressed in silver, high and cold and not pretentious. It gave people the feeling that they would never lie. Ha ha ha. This fairy is joking. It's better to be cautious when walking outside, what's more, not using a code name to compete, that naturally means I don't want others to know my name. Knight Beishuan's these words, can be described as extremely ruthless, can be said to be directly cut off the follow-up possible development opportunities, let the surrounding people feel a burst of pity. After all, the ice fairy ah, one definitely can't get it for himself, but seeing her fall to mortal dust is also a beautiful thing ah. Although it had nothing to do with himself, Lu Changha was still secretly relieved when he heard Knight Beixian say this, but when he realized it, there was another burst of anger. He himself was better than that masked man in every aspect by an unknown amount, but Gu Qinghan preferred that masked man? And oneself also. And because of that masked man, his words that he didn't know what was good for him, he felt happy? It is simply a great shame. Lu Changha's face slowly turned gloomy, as if it could drip water, and scared the surrounding followers silly, not daring to say another word. After all, these followers were all weak and eager to pass Lu Chang'e and enter into the next round, after all, that would already be honorable. In the face of Knight Beishuan's merciless words, Gu Qinghan surprisingly did not turn her head and leave, but instead did something that was, well, out of everyone's expectation. I'm sorry, it was Qinghan who was abrupt. Not to mention the other people in the arena, even Knight Beixian, who had always been accustomed to seeing great storms, was also confused at this moment. Could it be that he had been recognized? But if he was recognized, Gu Qinghan, as a member of the Righteous Path, would absolutely kill himself, so how could he possibly be bluffing with himself here? It's fine, the match is about to start. Knight Bei Xian didn't want to continue pestering him, so he hinted that Gu Qinghan could leave. Gu Qinghan, on the other hand, hadn't heard it, or maybe he had heard it but wasn't willing to leave. The Dark Knight Lord. Snowy eyes narrowed slightly, eyelashes vaguely somewhat white, within Gu Qinghan's dark pupils, there was some doubt, and the entire person did a thinking form. Fairy Gu? 
Night Bei Xian saw the gazes of the crowd, had been staring at his side, inwardly some displeasure, perhaps yesterday broke the killing ring, let him now extremely want to kill. However, there was no color on the surface, the face under the mask was still in an amiable manner, and his body was also in a relaxed stance, not aggressive. Gu Qinghan pondered for some time. The words black and night, one of them is your surname, right? Gu Qinghan's words were still cold, and his face was as usual, as if he was guessing and flirting. Night Beishuan's face remained unchanged, even though his heart had already set off waves of shock, but his face was still calm, not even a little bit of subtle changes, how strong was his psychological quality? He he, it's just a code name, randomly taken. He was neither admitting nor denying. Gu Qinghan, on the other hand, was ignoring Night Beixian and continued to contemplate and think, the reason why his voice became smaller, so that the people around him could no longer hear the conversation between the two. But the gaze was never moved away. Great King. Gu Qinghan said in a somewhat less certain tone, can I understand that you have had the experience of occupying a mountain in the past? Night Beixian, truth be told. This code name, which he had casually and subconsciously taken, and all these things that Gu Qinghan had said, which he himself had not thought of, were not half wrong. Coincidence? Gu Qinghan's pleading eyes didn't look like he was pretending, but why would he be interested in himself? Time is running out, hurry up and get ready, we'll be on later. Night Beixian stood up, ignoring Gu Qinghan, and walked to the other side. Gu Qinghan, however, followed. But this time, she just leaned together with Night Beixian, closing her eyes and resting her mind, and didn't ask anything more, or perhaps there was already an answer in her heart, but only she knew. The imperial city on top of the high platform. Yun Zun in an extremely unladylike posture, sitting on top of the steps, eyes burning staring in one direction, the hands of the green jade gourd. It hadn't been raised for a long time. Xian Er. Looking down below, chatting with Gu Qinghan's Night Beixian, Yun Zun, for some reason, felt that figure, with the one in his memory, began to overlap. Is it Shinner? Is it really you? For the teacher, really really. Yun Zun eyes only Night Bei Xian, ignoring the other people in the field, mouth leisurely chanting. The feeling of longing was already overflowing from her eyes. But she didn't dare to be sure that this teenager was her Shinner, because the guidelines given by the Heaven Prying Secret technique was that whoever won the championship of the tournament was the one who would be 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 the winner. This hadn't even started yet, and Night Bei Xuan's breath was weak, not like he was very powerful but it really looks like. A lot of things had happened in the Yujing in the past two days. But because of the heaven prying secret technique, another strand of immortal chi was drawn, and coupled with the thought of becoming sick, it made Yun Zun's body have a big problem, and she had to be tempered. She didn't care about anything now, not even if she died, as long as she could still see her Xianer, she could give everything, even if it was all she had. As she looked at Gu Qinghan next to Night Bei Xian, Yun Zun's eyes began to become dangerous as she raised her green jade gourd and drank a mouthful of strong wine. Shinner, if it's really you, this Zun will help you and kill that woman who's harassing you. The meaning was obvious, if that masked teenager was really Night Bei Xian, then Yun Zun would not let Gu Qinghan go. Because, her disciples' gentleness, her disciples' patience, her disciples' love, she was going to possess all of them alone, and if anyone dared to come and grab them, she, Yun Zun, would never be soft. Shinner, love Master Zun once more, this time. Master Zun must cherish it. Although it is not yet certain that the masked teenager is her Shinner, but all aspects of the news combined, this probability is very high, and can even be said to be 90%. But just at this moment, above the doorway, there came a ringing sound as thin as a mosquito, Yun Zun what kind of cultivation? Of course, it was the first time to find out, from the memories back to God. Face grimly said, who? The voice is cold and incomparable, listening to it makes people fall into the ice pool of the severe cold of the waxing moon, and the bones of the body are creepy. Master, match is about to start. Yun Rin Poppy pretended that nothing happened and pushed the door. All heard? Seeing that the visitor was Yun Rin Pio, Yun Zun's tone was unknown whether he was happy or angry, and was flat. The disciple overheard it. Although Yun Rin Poppy's surface was unperturbed, his heart had already turned over. Unexpectedly, his own master, the guardian god of the Yu Jing, the number one explicitly strongest person in the Yuan continent, was actually in love with his own disciple? Or that kind of sick love? She had originally thought that her own master teacher might be guilty, that her already dead senior brother, but it was all out of the feelings of master and disciple, but she didn't expect awe. No wonder their own master, 10,000 years never accept male disciples, also never have a Tao couple, the original her that heart, has long been dusty, waiting for someone's arrival. He he. Yun Zun stood up, sorted out some messy robes, cream colored robes are a little wide, will be the figure of upright Yun Zun set off some petite. Hear it, hear it, this Zun's love for him has never wanted to hide it. Even if you don't hear it today, afterward this Zun retrieves him, it will be made known to the world. Saying that, Yun Zun left the inner hall. 
only leaving behind a surprised Yun Rin Poppy. She couldn't imagine just how much her master's father loved that man to be able to say these words, the moral issue of master and disciple, was there no regard for it at all? But what Yun Rin Poppy didn't know was, is the so-called teacher-disciple moral problem, Yun Zun has missed too much too much, now wanna make up, and how can care about moral problems? Moreover, in this life, there was no master yet. Yun Rin Poppy walked to the window, looking deeply at the night Beixian below, her heart was full of thoughts, she knew that man, the odds were that he was her own senior brother. What exactly is so good about you? To be able to let senior spend 10,000 years with wine, read you for 10,000 years, think about you for 10,000 years, and even draw out the immortal chi in his body. Yunrin Poppy's stunningly beautiful face carried the slightest hint of anger as she felt unworthy on behalf of her master. Because in her opinion, Knight Baixian was just an ordinary cave heaven cultivator, his strength was weak and unimpressive not to mention, he was probably also strangely ugly in his looks. Otherwise, he wouldn't be wearing a mask. I'll let you reveal your original form in front of Master Teacher. At that time, Master Teacher will naturally understand that everything is nothing but an obsession, and you don't matter at all. Yunrin Poppy said as she clenched her small fists, at the same time with it on the other side. Martial arts competition, now begin. When this competition begins resounded above the high platform, Knight Beixian and the other participants were wrapped in a pillar of lime green light, and then disappeared. Appeared again, has arrived above the dragon cutting platform, surrounded by the people, at this time have resounded cheers, but all very tacit understanding did not bring children. This era of dead people is not something rare, the streets and alleys, but also often have officials in order to kill a warning, deliberately in front of the people, lynching criminals. So today in the arena, even if someone really died, the people wouldn't find it too surprising. Knight Baixian watched the pillar of light in front of him slowly disappear, his eyes glanced upwards, and found that the great Qian's empress, at this time, was sitting on the main seat, with a face of majesty and solemnity. Her face was expressionless, but she appeared somewhat lazy. A phoenix robe will outline the posture of the beauty of the picturesque, face, and specialized maidservant, smeared on the expensive rouge, although some of the gaudy, is just right. Will that share of flaunting, aggressive temperament, embodied the most? Although it is so beautiful, but the woman next to her is not inferior to her, a purple fox ball gauze skirt Qin Yuxian, sitting next to the female emperor Qin Shuiyang. Still greeting Knight Beixian. Knight Beixian returned a look, so that it does not need to worry, the heart is somewhat puzzled, how to feel their sister-in-law, and the female emperor looks a bit like ah. The rules I believe everyone already understands, when the first incense is lit in the altar, then the match will begin. Yun Rin Poppy walked out and said to the crowd below. Yun Zun, on the other hand, walked over to the specialized location of the Myriad Heart Workshop, which was vaguely higher than Empress Qin Shuiyue's location, and lazily lay on top of it. Hearing this, under the dragon beheading stage, the scattered crowd, their gazes were all focused on that altar as Yun Rin Poppy counted down. 3, 2, 1, countdown to the end of the time, the altar incense suddenly burned, the fire rises up. It also signaled that the competition had begun, 3 incense burning time, this is the first incense. Some of the weaker players in the arena, at the moment the incense was lit, quickly retreated and found cover, hoping to pick up the pieces, Knight Baixian was among them. The strong ones, on the other hand, were different. Standing in place, their postures were high and proud, seeking out their opponents. Everyone around them held their breath, not wanting to miss anything that happened on the field, even Yun Zun had taken it seriously for two minutes, not to mention the dozens of supreme auras. Knight Baixian was experienced, plus his own plan was to keep a low profile, so when the first wave retreated, he hid at the corner and looked outside. As long as someone outside made the first move, then it would turn into pandemonium. Lu Changha is indeed worthy of the name of Sword Immortal, one person against several, also not losing the wind, a sword comes without a shadow and goes without a trace, single-handedly holding the sword, proudly looking at the crowd. But such a posture, but attracted the dissatisfaction of other people, among them was Yi Yuntian. Yi Yuntian was covered in gold color, with an exaggerated and incomparable look, and was already on the path of invincibility, all attacks were carried hard with his flesh, and his recovery ability was simply comparable to that of a demonic beast. He still has a grudge against what Lu Changha said yesterday, and at this time, his eyes were deadlocked on Lu Changha, first walking slowly, then trotting. Faster and faster. Seizing the opportunity, he jumped up violently. At once, he shook the rest of the cultivators who were pouncing on Lu Changha away, and raised his hand for a punch, Lu Changha, let this saint's son meet you and see if you deserve to be the first. Feeling the strong wind coming, Lu Changha was instantly alerted, knowing that the visitor was not good, and his cultivation at the early stage of seal marquee was exposed. Let's try it then. Reversing his body, he met it with a horizontal slash. This was the first time that the two heavens pride fought, and the crowd on the stage cast their gazes over, as did some of the powerful and influential great powers. Boom! 
Under the collision, the dragon beheading stage was lifted up in a puff of smoke and dust. After it dispersed, it was found that Lu Changha was still standing on the same spot, holding his sword with one hand, and although the hand holding the sword was slightly trembling, his face didn't change and he didn't take half a step back. On the contrary, Yi Yuntian, backward three and a half steps, face extremely ugly. The crowd was in an uproar. For the first time, someone was able to block Lu Changha's sword, but who was the other party? The holy son of the Tai Chu Holy Land, that is also a status, not less than Lu Changha's people, this gap. On the VIP seat, the main seat was the Empress Qin Shuiyue, next to the Night Cloud Chamber of Commerce, Qin Yuxian, and then next to Tai Ling Qing Shui, there was no one else. Their gazes weren't even on the battle between Lu Changha and Yi Yuntian, but were all locked onto Night Bei Xian, who was hiding in the corner. The same was true for Yun Zun and Yun Rin Papi. Several people had different thoughts. As for the seats on the next level down, many powerhouses, and dignitaries, and imperial court officials, their gazes were all on the battle of the century between Lu Changha and Yi Yuntian. It's a pity that Yi Yuntian is blessed with holy blood, and his flesh can be hardened against inscriptions, but when he met Lu Changha, his sword she transformed into a form, and it's already a pure fire. It's still a poor cultivation level. Yi Yuntian is only at the peak of spirit transformation at the moment, if he reaches the seal of Marquis, it's not known which is stronger or weaker ah. Lu Changha can truly be described as an astonishingly strange talent. Without taking any heavenly treasures, his cultivation level is actually higher than those who have taken them. Terrifying as hell. Sword heart is no joke. The upper discussion is in full swing, who is optimistic about all, and the people cannot understand these, only feel that the fight is good to see, have cheered, do not know the sadness. The game is still continuing. Lu Changha Yi Yuntian two people, undoubtedly became the center of attention in the field, but the other places did not stop, after all, they are all proud of the sky, who was not convinced by anyone. Yi Yuntian made a sneak attack and was knocked back in turn, the fiery gazes of the people around him, coupled with Lu Changha's disdainful eyes, were all spurring him on. You forced me to do this. Yi Yuntian lashed out violently. Green veins rippled all over his body. Golden hair exploded and his chi and blood continued to climb, as if he was an ancient demonic beast coming out of the world, shocking the surrounding players who were backing up one after another. Knowing that Yi Yuntian was getting real, Lu Changha took a defensive stance and his face became serious. Yi Yuntian directly rushed up, and the two fought into a ball, the fluctuations shaking the sky. Lu Changha didn't want to fight hard, so he was all about retreating and fighting at the same time, while Yi Yuntian relied on the fact that his qi and blood were unrivaled, and he was directly exchanging life for life, not dodging or dodging. Dozens of rounds came down. Lu Changha didn't have any injuries at all, and Yi Yuntian, there were only some tiny knife wounds on his body as if he was scratched by hard grass, so he didn't need to care, retreating violently backward. Lu Changha gasped for air, a little bit of sweat flowed down on his forehead, looking at the not far away, slowly walking Yi Yuntian, knowing that this was the trouble he had caused yesterday. Can't continue to wear down. Originally, in Lu Changha thought that Yi Yuntian's qi and blood was in the deep, and it would be the same if he came a few more times, but who knows, no matter how many swords came, Yi Yuntian was painless. He would be in danger himself if he dragged on any longer and he still had another person to take care of. Thinking of this, Lu Changha's aura changed abruptly. Sheathing his three-foot green blade, the sword qi in his body surged out crazily, causing the surrounding winds to blow furiously, and even the sun in the sky seemed to have darkened. Try this sword. Anyone could see that Lu Changha wanted to have a quick battle, while Yi Yuntian just defied him, the desolate ancient bloodline operated to the extreme, wanting to carry this hard. Audience seat. Yi Yuntian's fellow senior sisters and brothers were all showing helpless expressions, after all, before they went on the field, they had already been instructed to preserve their strength. But now, in the middle of the duel with Lu Changha, Yi Yuntian had clearly gotten a little carried away. Lu Changha was all in pitch black, as if only that pair of eyes were glowing, although the mentality displayed when being ridiculed was poor, but at this time there was indeed a sword immortal stance. Slowly holding the sword, slowly pulling out. Boom! Rumble! The sword was pulled out section by section, while the raging sword Qi, as if it had found an outlet, kept surging out of the scabbard, blowing Lu Changha's white clothes, dancing about. A sword opened the sky. That back to basic sword, seemed to be very slow, but it was as fast as lightning, and as if there was more than one sword, there was the momentum of 10,000 swords in one, which could cut the sky, sun and moon immortal. Yi Yuntian's face became ugly, knowing that he had underestimated Lu Changha, but now there was no way to retreat, so he could only carry it on. Then he roared furiously. The physical body and that white sword chi, clashed together, his body kept retreating backward, and in the end, he just couldn't carry it anymore, and directly flew backwards. Lu Changha didn't even bother to look at the fallen Yi Yuntian, slowly closing his sword into the sheath. After a short period of silence, unprecedented cheers erupted, shouting the name of the sword immortal in unison. 
On the dragon beheading stage, everyone's eyes were also attracted, no matter if they were the pride of heaven or ordinary cultivators. All the proud sons of heaven felt the pressure, seeing Lu Chang has strength for the first time, it was true that there was no falsehood in the name of the sword immortal, the name of the sword immortal, when it was like this, to say that the only one on the field who didn't care, that might be the knight Baishan hiding in the corner, the siege of many people, he was easily dodged, basically all of Lu Chang has lapdogs, after all, he only wanted to mix. In this battle, the gesture that Lu Changha had shown was indeed something that could be described as perfect, but in Knight Beishuan's eyes, it was no different from a child showing off his skills. Battles of life and death, he has experienced too much, real battles, is not such child's play. But as long as it didn't involve him, it was fine. Yi Yuntian slowly stood up from the rubble, his jacket was broken, and there was an extremely deep knife wound in his shoulder, blood and flesh, it was evident that his injury was not light. However, Yi Yuntian was unconcerned. Ha! is worthy of being called a sword immortal, it is true that his name is true. As he spoke, that wound was actually miraculously recovering. Blood and flesh intertwined, and in less than a moment, it was intact, and his breath was once again at its peak. Lu Changha frowned slightly. Of course he knew Yi Yuntian's ability, because of being burdened with the desolate ancient bloodline, his qi and blood was extremely deep, not to mention that he had also specialized in cultivating techniques in this area. But he didn't expect that it was actually so heaven-defying. In just a few blinks of an eye, he actually recovered directly as before, without even a single scar. This, once again, caused the surrounding audience to stir, after all, the matter of the living dead and white bones, which had just been staged right in front of their eyes, was really too shocking. Senior. These two are both very good, we can pay more attention to them in the future. Yun Rin Poppy stood beside Yun Zun, and seeing this scene, he lowered his head and said with an ear. The purpose was self-evident. It was to use the more outstanding younger generation to distract Yun Zun, and as long as she saw the more outstanding juniors, over time, she would forget about her so-called senior brother. He he. Yun Zun lay on his side above the seat, his gaze had been on Night Bei Shen, at this time was pulled back by Yun Rin Poppy's words, after listening to it, said with some disdain, there won't be anyone who can be more powerful and talented than your senior brother, what's the point of paying attention to others? Yun Rin Poppy was somewhat dissatisfied. The competition just now, senior also saw it, the younger generation, there is still someone who can beat Lu Chang huh? And if that masked man is my senior brother, that breath is too weak, it can't be compared at all. Yun Zun, on the other hand, smiled and shook his head. This is all a competition, and your senior brother is better at killing, there is a big difference between the two. Yun Rin Poppy didn't quite believe it. Competition is powerful, then killing must also be powerful ah, as long as the strength is strong, do anything is strong. Yun Zun did not want to argue, Yun Rin Poppy was after all her disciple, and did manage to honor her teacher, so Yun Zun was still tolerant of her. Or rather, the more Yun Rin Poppy hated Night Bei Xian, the happier she was, after all, she was going to be with her Xian'er in the future, and if Yun Rin Poppy liked her Xian'er, then, Yun Zun's silence made Yun Rin Pio feel excited as she felt that her battle was beginning to pay off. However, it did not speak again. Under the field, Yi Yuntian looked at Lu Changha, who was ready to attack at any time, and said, let's fight again in the finals. After saying that, he left. After that battle just now, all the people around were staying away from Yi Yuntian. Hearing this, Lu Changha secretly breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that if they fought on, it would be cheaper for the others, and exposing too much in advance would be unfavorable later on. After all, this round, for them, it could be said that they had passed steadily. There was no need for you to die. Of course, Yi Yuntian also thought the same way. Exposing too many cards in advance, that would be giving the other pride of heaven, intelligence. The surrounding fought fiercely, but Lu Changha's side is not a person, looked around, not a moment, saw, at the edge of the hiding night Beixian. He he. Found you. I will prove to Fairy Gu who was the right match for her. He himself didn't even notice that his heart and sword already carried a strong killing intent. Lu Changha drew his rapier and charged straight in the direction of night Beixian, leaving behind killing intent along the way, all of which caused the people next to him to chill. Knowing that this was about to kill, everyone, including those in the audience, could see that Lu Changha wanted to kill a man wearing a mask, and were puzzled in their hearts, but there was nothing they could do. After all, the rule was that you couldn't kill, but you could actually kill, it was just that you were looking for a reason afterward, besides, he was still the sword sex eldest senior brother. There was no need for a reason to kill someone. Everyone thought that Knight Bei Xian, the unlucky one, was going to be finished, and the few people who were originally entangled with Knight Bei Xian also retreated, waiting for Lu Changha to arrive. Of course, Knight Bei Xian had also sensed it. Such a strong killing intent, he is not a fool, the reason is not yet known, but, his principle was that anyone who revealed killing intent to him had to die, so it didn't matter if it was convenient now, if he would be exposed, and how he would deal with it after killing someone. 
All these things were not in his mind at the moment, only how to go about killing Lu Changha remained. His right hand was slightly lucky, his eyes became extremely cold, he wanted to kill him in one blow, not giving Lu Changha a chance to catch his breath, after all, letting Lu Changha react, will be very troublesome. Request for gifts, the author is going to die of hunger. This plot will be very combustible, the moment the tournament ends, then it's all sickly pampered, and the book is considered to have officially entered the main line. To be honest, the padding is a little too much, advancing a little slow, but it will be fine soon. The first thing you need to do is to get your hands dirty. The high platform above. Qin Shuiyue looked somewhat meaningfully to the side of Qin Yuxian, and it was no surprise that once Night Baixian was in danger, Qin Yuxian would grab the hem of his skirt. Yun Zun also frowned slightly. Facing Lu Chang's shocking sword, above Night Baishuan's left hand, the demonic skill operated to the extreme, his cultivation forcefully adding up, just waiting for Lu Changha to approach. This magic power, was found in Lizy Head's cave, subtle and incomparable, can be all the body's energy, gathered in one place, to achieve one to break 10,000. Killing Lu Changha might be a bit troublesome, but after all, it was on the field of play, and it was also a situation where Lu Changha was the first to try to kill someone, so it wouldn't be a big problem. Search. Sword Chi wrapped in dust and rushed in front of Night Bei Xian, who saw the hatred in Lu Changha's eyes and the jealousy in them, as well as the killing intent floating on the surface. The face underneath the mask, slightly tugged, and his eyes stared as he prepared to prance up. But just when everyone thought that Night Bei Xian would immediately die under Lu Changha's sword, a snow white silhouette blocked in front of Night Bei Xian. The entire dragon beheading stage was covered by an extremely cold frost, and an ice vortex appeared in the center of the field, shocking everyone. It was simply a divine miracle. Fairy Gu? When he saw that the one blocking him was none other than his beloved Gu Qinghan, Lu Changha was first stunned and then furious, but his strength was no match for Gu Qinghan, taking a few steps backward. What does Fairy Gu mean by this? Lu Changha's face could be described as gloomy to the extreme, his breath becoming chaotic and angry to the extreme. Gu Qinghan pulled out a thin white sword from its scabbard, and the ice and snow around him once again increased by a few points as she said with a cold, impersonal expression. There's something you can come at me for and why bother to make things difficult for him? A silver dress Gu Qinghan, jade bone ice muscle small hand holding a thin sword, skirt tassel flying in the air, can be described as ice like jade, beauty like flowers. Seeing such a perfect woman, Lu Changha's heart throbbed once again, a big part of the reason why he could like Gu Qinghan was because, Gu Qinghan also used a sword. He thought it was a perfect match for him. But now, the more flawless Gu Qinghan was, the more his anger was going to rise. Taking another look behind Gu Qinghan at Night Bei Xian, who had a disinterested look on his face, Lu Changha felt his entire body was in pain. Mask wearer. If you're still a man, come out, one on one, don't hide behind a woman. Lu Changha was ready to provoke Night Bei Xian. One would think that as long as one was a man, most of them wouldn't be able to stand this kind of mockery, right? However, what Night Bei Xian did was to ruthlessly hit everyone present in the face. Only his eyes rolled for a moment, and he shrank back towards Gu Qinghan's back, in a soft-eating manner. You. This action, although it caused Lu Changha's dissatisfaction, it also amused many people present. Night Bei Xian shrank behind Gu Qinghan. Would he go out? Of course he wouldn't. He wasn't a child, and being used a clumsy provocation could cause him to storm out, and he blissfully didn't care. And from a certain point of view, he really is a soft eat. Lu Changha drew his sword, but he had no way to start, after all, Gu Qinghan was not weak, and he still had thoughts about him, so he definitely could not make a move. But just go straight away. Fairy Gu are you really not allowing it? Gu Qinghan flipped the fine sword on its side and used the sharp-edged one to face Lu Changha, the meaning was self-evident. Good good good. Lu Changha said three good words in a row, and if the weather had been any colder, his head would have been smoking. From here. With this farce, the crowd was finally able to see some clues and felt that it was really dramatic. A proud son of heaven, who could be called the number one person of the younger generation of the righteous path, and another iceberg fairy, who also had a noble status and strong strength, and both used swords. By all rights, the two should be a perfect match, but unfortunately, Gu Qinghan seemed to be half-hearted towards Lu Changha, and instead, she was somewhat attracted to the weak man wearing a mask. This is really not to blame Lu Changha. It's not good to put it on anyone. Kid. Fairy Gu saved your life, but will you have such good luck next time? Lu Changha's eyes burned with anger as he sheathed his sword and said, Then let's talk about it next time. Night Bei Xian, on the contrary, appeared to be generous and decent, with a steadiness and calmness that did not belong to this cultivation level. There wasn't much of a reaction to Lu Changha's words, after all, if Gu Qinghan hadn't come out, Lu Changha would have been a corpse by now. Of course, he, Night Bei Xian, was a person who knew what was important, and didn't mind killing Lu Changha a little later. Lu Changha took a deep look at Gu Qinghan, who was still at sword point, then turned around and shouted, no one, no one is allowed to touch him. As soon as these words came out, 
the crowd that was originally leaping next to Knight Baixian retreated. And Lu Chang's purpose was obvious, it was to let Knight Baixian advance, then he could personally kill Knight Baixian in the ring, after all, the ring would be a life and death fight. Both sides whispered. This what's his name Black Knight Lord, he's really lucky. Not only did he escape death, but he can also advance to the next round without pressure, so he can honor his ancestors. Good for what? The one who can advance to the next round is not a powerful party taboo? Not to mention the chance to meet Lu Changha, that result. That's also true. This masked kid has messed with someone he shouldn't have messed with, and after escaping today, he'll still show his face during the life and death fight. And it's still hard to escape death. Above the high platform. Yun Rin Poppy said with some pride, Master, that person who only hides behind a woman, you said that he's unrivaled and has unmatched talent, how can that be? Patiently watch on. Isn't he still out? Yun Zun's tone was confident. Yun Rin Poppy was somewhat baffled. He didn't know what kind of mesmerizing soup that man, in the end, had given to his own master teacher, and at such a time, he was still speaking for him with a stiff upper lip. Also no more words. She would like to see, wait until that masked one is out of the game, what else does master teacher have to say? And she believed that that day would not come too late. Why is that person so annoying? Why is he always targeting Shinner? And who is that young girl? And what is her relationship with Shinner? Xin Yuxian frowned slightly. She didn't understand these things either and could only see the most superficial surface. Call sister and I'll tell you. Xin Shuayu's eyes were slightly doting, her jade hand propping up her phoenix face. No need. Xin Yuxian was somewhat less appreciative. Although despondent, Xin Shuayu didn't force herself, but turned her gaze to the field. Thanks. After Lu Changha left, Knight Baixian said thanks to Gu Qinghan. Although he hadn't saved his life, it was considered a big favor to him, otherwise the trouble that would be caused by killing Lu Changha would probably not be too small. He wasn't someone who was afraid of trouble, it was just that he was really distracted right now, there were too many things to do, and he also had to be on guard against Hua Ma Shang at all times, so he didn't want to ask for trouble. But it was still the same sentence. If Lu Changha really dared to rush over, then he, Knight Baixian, would dare to slap him to death. Nothing. Gu Qinghan appeared a bit high and cold. Perhaps it was because she was not good at socializing with people, and her proactive gesture of goodwill towards Knight Baixian just now did not fetch a good result, and all reverted back to its original state. After saying that, he left. Knight Baixian actually wanted to ask why in the world she was taking such good care of herself, was there any other reason? Or maybe it was some secret fortune. But looking at the Snow White figure that flew away, thought that it would not work, and would ask again later when there was an opportunity. Knight Baixian found a place to sit down. After what happened just now, there was no one around who dared to come over, and the rest of the pride of heaven, as if they were giving face to Lu Changha, were also not coming here. It led to, in the center of the imperial city, on the huge dragon beheading stage, there was a corner where only one person sat. This scene gave the crowd in the audience a lot of anger. This person's strength is not good, but his luck is too good, actually letting him advance like this, while others need to fight to the death, it's too unfair. Yeah, this kid, lying there alone with no one else going over at all, is simply too good. I could even advance if this puts me on. As long as I make it to the next round, then the rewards will be extremely generous, letting this kid pick up the slack, it's really hateful. Why doesn't he go to hell? Don't be anxious, as long as he advances to the next round and is met by Lu Jianxian, this kid definitely won't last more than one round and will die violently on the stage. That's right. Let this kid be arrogant for a while first. Since an unknown time, Knight Baixian had turned into a public enemy of the entire nation, and everyone in the audience was not satisfied with his behavior like this, both angry and helpless. Soft rice man. I don't know who shouted out, after which everyone shouted at Knight Baixian, saying that he was a soft rice eater for Gu Qinghan. This could be said to be extremely unpleasant words at the time, describing a man who was incapable would be said like this, and at this time, they described Knight Baixian like this. To quench their hatred. Silence. Yun Rinpio's slightly majestic voice rang out shocking the entire room and shutting up the crowd. After quieting down, the crowd wanted to go see Knight Baishuan's joke, but Knight Baishuan simply didn't care, sitting there, not even moving, let alone getting angry. After all, this appellation, for Knight Baishuan, it was really nothing. Being able to eat soft food was also a strength, others wanted to eat, could he eat it? At this time, Yun Zun's lazy posture sat up, green jade gourd placed on the table, brows locked, face very ugly, dead staring at the Knight Baishuan below, but did not say a word. Yun Rin Poppy obviously noticed this. In her heart, she was ecstatic, after all, what her master teacher disliked the most, was that kind of sneaky person, so she thought that her master teacher must have already changed his mind about that so-called senior brother of hers, right? Senior. That masked man is truly shameless, hiding behind a woman. Shut up. Yun Rin Pio opened her mouth with a slight sneer, and anyway, in her words, she was looking down on Knight Baixian. Yun Zun, on the other hand, chortled. 
Normally how it was was fine, and it was true that the more Yin Rinpio hated her Xianer, the happier she was. But everything has a degree, too much is not enough, what goes around comes around. Yun Rinpio bit her lip, looking a little aggrieved. She was clearly all for the good of her master, why in the end, was she still inferior to a senior brother who had been dead for 10,000 years? In the past, senior would use the heaven prying secret technique every once in a while, and that was extremely exhausting of the origin essence, and an average cultivator, using it once, would be empty of chi. Serious ones would even be left with permanent roots. And although Yun Zun is extremely strong, but also cannot withstand this mess ah, every few days to use once, every few days to use once again, Yun Rin popular kartik. Yun Zun often wash his face with tears. Under the peach blossom tree, he can only borrow wine to dispel his sorrows, even drew out his immortal energy. And to do all this, just for the sake of, to redeem a senior brother who died 10,000 years ago and was reborn? It was simply incomprehensible, and could be said to be, stupid. Rin Poppy. You can dislike your senior brother, or even hate him, it's fine but you can't disrespect him, understand? Yun Zun looked serious. Apprentice knows. Hmm. After reprimanding Yun Rin Poppy, Yun Zun once again picked up the green jade gourd and swept his gaze downwards. If Shinner wanted to eat soft rice, it was also to eat his own, that little girl from Falling Snow Mountain, it was a bit superfluous, right? But still wait a little longer. From a series of news, the probability that the masked man is her Shinner is as high as 99 layers, but not until the moment he takes the head list, Yun Zun does not dare to recognize each other. She had to be sure that this man was Shinner. After all, the heaven prying secret technique could not be wrong. Shinner don't be in a hurry, I'll let you have enough soft food in the future. Yun Zun muttered. After all, with her Shinner back, it was very likely that she would be able to break through the love tribulation and break through to the great sage. Time flew by. Soon there was only half a pillar of incense left, and there were 16 people under the field including Lu Changha, Yi Yuntian, Gu Qinghan, Shang Qingfeng, Dirt Second Generation Wang Entropy, Red-Haired Teenager Chuyu, Tianji Pavilion's Young Master Su Ruffing, and Night Bei Xin. The number of people decreased slowly in the first half of the match, but in the second half, everyone had a sense of crisis, after all, after three incense sticks, if there were 17 people standing in the field, then everyone would be eliminated. Those who fainted to death, or those who were seriously injured would be passed out by the lime green light pillars of the spell formation. There were currently exactly 16 in the field. Yun Rin Poppy walked on top of the high platform, nodded, and was about to announce tomorrow's race. Suddenly, in the sky above the imperial city, sky shadowing demonic dragons, pulling a luxurious carriage, sped in from the void in a tremendous row. Wait. As he spoke, a group of people walked out from the giant dragon's car chauffeur, their bodies incomparably huge, as if every muscle contained endless power. Compared to everyone else in the field, they were half a body taller, and their sense of oppression was self-evident. Demon race? You're from Qingzhou? Yun Zun stood out at this moment and pressed his aura back. This scene was indeed extremely shocking to the crowd. The crowd of the demon race landed on the dragon beheading stage and faced off with the contestants from Yuan Zhou, smiling. The one leading the group came out to answer Yun Zun's question. Not bad, we, the demon clan of Qingzhou, also want to participate in the tournament, no problem? The tone was arrogant to the extreme, making the surrounding people angry. The demon race is great, huh? Beat you all to death. Roll back. Yun Zun's aura was awe-inspiring as he leisurely said, the match is over, everyone please return. The one leading the demon race, however, said, isn't there still half a pillar of incense left? How can it be over? At a glance, Yun Zun realized that there was indeed still half a pillar of incense, so that meant that the competition was still continuing and if he himself didn't give in to the participation, he would easily leave a trail of words. Saying that they, Yuan Zhou, were afraid of the cultivators from Qingzhou. Seeing Yun Zun acquiescing. The demon race led the way, the strong man with two horns on his head and wings on his back was directly flying towards the ordinary cultivators in the field, go and grab the quota. Yes. The crowd of demons behind them responded. Seeking gifts. Seek five star praise. The demons were rampant and relying on their own stronger flesh and blood and bodies, against the attacks of Yuanzhou cultivators, they rushed up and killed for a while, and all of a sudden, the venue became a river of blood. The demon clan's leader did not charge up, but was confronting the Yuan continent's side of the heaven's pride, both sides did not move, the demon clan as if they knew who had the backstage. By way of introduction, my name is Long Chong. It's from the hundred thousand mountains of Qingzhou, and I've come here for the ultimate reward, immortal Qi. Long Chong said with arrogance, Lu Changna's face was extremely ugly. Watching his compatriots around him being brutally killed without being able to do anything about it himself was really degrading to his cultivation path, but there was nothing he could do about it. After all, if he went down at this time, then all of his cards would be exposed, and in the next round, it would be very unfavorable for him, as far as he was concerned, 
compared to the lives of his compatriots, Immortal Chi would definitely be more important. The rest of the powerful heavens pride obviously thought the same way, although it was hard in their hearts, they turned their heads away, pretending that they didn't see it, deceiving themselves and others. Just these two or three sentences of effort, the cultivators without backgrounds below, there are only two or three left, their despairing hissing, attracting the entire audience to be silent. Whirlwind. An unprecedented outcry broke out. For the demon race's accusations, the words were unpleasant to the extreme, but unfortunately, Long Chong just scratched his ears, half concerned, and with an extremely indebted expression. Lu Jianxian. Kill them. Can't let them demon race be so arrogant. Lu Jianxian. Do it. Kill them. Kill them. In the face of the crowd's expectations, Lu Changha never made any half-assed movements, not even giving his sight. There were also some words that were urging the other heavens pride to make a move, but it was just a pity that no one who could stand on the dragon beheading stage was a fool. Knowing that if they made a move, then in the next round of the life and death fight, they would be at a disadvantage, not only would they not be able to get their hands on the immortal chi, but they would also most likely be targeted. The people who shouted loudly to the lack of oxygen, sat down, because the crowd of the pride of heaven below, simply did not want to do anything, just cold eyes. Although they knew that they would have some reasons, at this moment, the people really wanted one person to come forward. Yun Zun's face became very bad. The demon race did not violate the rules, because the time is almost up, so it is fine to be aggressive, these things were not clear in the first place, unless it was particularly excessive. So something like face had to rely on the younger generation of the Yuan continent, to fight for it themselves. But looking at the actions of the pride of heaven below, she was honestly a little disappointed, although she knew that she couldn't expose her strength, she was still disappointed, because reason never outweighs emotion, and people are not like grass and trees, who can be merciless? For some reason, she began to look forward to what her Shenner would do. The great demons below were extremely fierce. The dragon beheading stage was full of mutilated limbs and broken arms, and with one cultivator dying and struggling to no avail, after gulping down his breath, there was still another cultivator left, and there was still the last little bit of incense as well. Time is still early, play with him. Ha ha ha. Good idea, let them Yuanzhou people see how unbearable their Yuanzhou cultivators are in front of our Qingzhou's demon race. The words fell. Swinging his wings, he gave chase to the last cultivator, and every time he caught up, he would use his extremely long nails to give that cultivator a large bloody gash. Ah, ah, ah. The area around the venue was quiet, they watched the scene in silence, watching their compatriots being abused, but they themselves were unable to do anything about it. The anger had disappeared, only a little bit of tears flowed down without realizing it. This was also a kind of torment for the proud sons of heaven in the middle of the venue, their hands squeezed and crunched, but they didn't dare to make a move, because the immortal energy was too important. No one dared to make half a mistake. The demon race is very strong, the same cultivation, the demon race cultivator, is will be stronger than the human race half a point. So if it's not the top fighting force of the younger generation of the human race, it can't deal with the ordinary cultivators of the demon race below, it's innate, as well as IQ for a change. That incense burner has not yet burned out. The abuse in the field was still continuing, and a few other demon clansmen on the side. At this time, they were staring at this, what they thought was a farce, and from time to time, laughter came out. Is your excellency not going a bit overboard? A fluttering gentleman dressed as Shang Qingfeng, at this time, his folding fan was put away and he walked to the front of the crowd, his face gloomy. After all, no one could endure this situation. Excessive? Long Chong clasped his hands and said with some sarcasm, there are only so many places, isn't it the one who can do it? Why is it excessive? If you want to kill just kill, why abuse? Is oh. Long Chong dark face, revealing doubts, then immediately became arrogant, then what can you do? Not convinced? Do not serve you can go to kill them ah, with me to say what is the use? Long Chang's purpose was obvious, it was to explore the bottom of the Yuan continent's strongest players, even if it was one or two, it was still considered a good start, so his words were extremely arrogant. When the people heard this, hope burned in their hearts once again, thinking that Shang Qingfeng would come forward and kill the demon clansman regardless, protecting the last ordinary cultivator in Yuan Zhou. But it was a pity. What Shang Qingfeng did next not only disappointed the people at the scene, even Long Chong's side. Shang Qingfeng was directly retreating back, it could be seen that he was very angry, but just held back. Ha 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 ha. The jeers of the demon people rose and fell. The faces of the people of Yuan Zhou turned red. And there was no one more desperate than the cultivator who was being chased by a great demon on the dragon beheading stage. His whole body was a bloody hole at the moment, his breath was if anything, and his speed was already very, very slow. He expects that someone can come to save him, and also expects that on the high platform, the incense and the altar can be burned out as soon as possible, so that he can survive. Despair. 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 Lao Air don't play, give him a good time, the time is coming. 
The big demon next to him, looking at the dying ordinary cultivator, casually said. All right. The big demon chasing the ordinary cultivator, directly accelerated his speed, raised his sharp claws, to give the ordinary cultivator in front of him a final blow. The end. This is the crowd's current thoughts, the pride of the heavens are secretly relieved. Yet it was not yet over. Because there was always a beam of light that would burst out in the darkest of times with a shock. Boom. Rumble. The crowd looked into the field with wide eyes, because as that great demon slammed his fist down, they all saw a black rainbow light that rushed in. It was just like back then. On the broken dragon cliff, when everyone was at their wit's end, when the officials and gentry were brightly philosophizing, and when everyone among the people was in danger, a hero appeared. Saving the waves from falling, help the building will fall. Smoke and dust dispersed. On the dragon beheading stage, there was the sound of dripping blood, and that ordinary cultivator was still alive, his body slightly trembling but because he was too heavily injured, he could not escape. The gazes of everyone looked over, including the proud sons of heaven and Long Chong. It was because just a moment ago, they had also seen that black rainbow light. The body of the great demon was extremely huge, but it stood in front of that ordinary cultivator without moving, and the huge hand that was raised was not smashed down. It just froze. Long Chang's face became a little ugly, scanned the circle and found that the people who needed to pay attention in the prior plan were all in front of him, so who was the one who blocked Long Air? Who has this strength? Then he signaled the big demon next to him to go over and take a look, old three, you go over and take a look. Yes. Long San, who had been watching the show just now, walked out, and with some caution, walked forward. However, he had just walked out not more than two steps when he suddenly felt an extremely strong, lawful power. With a loud cry of bad, he quickly dodged. The crowd also felt that power, have invoked the true chi to resist, but the eyes are dead staring at the front. Bang! After a huge explosion, a piece of limbs and arms belonging to the demon race, in no particular order, landed on the dragon beheading platform, and dark blood was scattered everywhere. The crowd was horrified. A demon race with such a strong physical quality was actually chopped into pieces? One must know that the physical strength of the demon race could be compared to the hardest stone in the world. And with the increase in cultivation, the body could continue to get stronger, even becoming a saint in the flesh. And at this moment... A great demon whose cultivation had reached the late stage of spirit transformation had actually been dismantled by someone? Who in the world was it? After being surprised, the crowd turned their gazes over, but none of them found the person they had imagined, but rather a youngster wearing a mask and a black robe. His body was covered by the big demon just now, and at this time, the big demon died, which was only discovered by everyone. It was none other than Knight Beixian. It's actually him. It's unbelievable, it's actually this strong. Is he pretending to be a pig to eat a tiger? It's too terrifying. Just now, if Lu Changha had rushed up to him, I'm afraid he wouldn't have been slapped to death already. What's so arrogant about the demon race of Qin Zhou? My Yuan continent also has strong people. Knight Beixian shook off the black blood on his hands and walked out of the smoke, not going to assist the dying ordinary cultivator as the people thought. It didn't even look at it. The blood of you demon races really stinks. Trouble is, when you come to be killed by me in the future, bleed clean before you come. Knight Beixuan's tone was cold. This caused a stir once again. Right. Fucking bleed clean before coming back. Rubbish. Garbage. Garbage. The trash of Qingzhou doesn't bark anymore? Hundreds of people have been suppressed for too long, at this time has finally found the venting point, instantly fire, to the field of the demon race wild spray, half a bit of etiquette not to speak. Because the masked teenager, was like the hero who saved them from lizy head back then. It allowed them to mock those who bullied them with impunity. It was bad, but it was cool. Lu Changha, however, was unusually upset, and the killing intent in his eyes as he looked at Knight Beixian became even more intense. This kind of being a hero, he doesn't do it, and he doesn't want others to do it either, that would damage his prestige, saying that he's afraid of the demon race, although it's true that he's a bit afraid. Look quickly. That's my nephew. On the high stage, Qin Yuxian pulled one of Qin Shuayue's small lotus root-like hands, tugging it while saying. The expression was extremely excited. Qin Shuayue opened her mouth slightly and didn't reply. In her heart, she also felt surprised. Wasn't Knight Beixian invalidated by Hua Ma Shang? Why was he still so strong? Slowly, her curiosity about Knight Beixian also came to a peak, wanting to understand him. Another level up. Yun Zun's eyes burned as he looked down, the corners of his mouth curling up slightly without saying a word. On the other hand, Yun Rinpio's expression was similar to that of Empress Qin Shuiyang, both extremely surprised. She even wiped her eyes, thinking that she had misread the situation. It was only at this point that she understood the sentence that her master said, there won't be anyone more powerful and more talented than your senior brother. What exactly does it mean? Everyone's thoughts were different, while Knight Bei Xian, who was the leading person of the incident, had no waves in his heart at the moment, and his face, under the mask, 
did not have any expression. Doing so might be exposed, or he might be targeted, or even held a grudge by the demon clan, almost all of which were bad effects, but he still did it, not for anything else. Just because he was Knight Beixian. It wasn't his character to cower and look ahead if he did things just to get something. Not for the sake of righteousness, not for the sake of position, just purely disliking that big demon that abused people, he stepped in, a very simple reason, not complicated. Just like what Gu Qinghan said at the tea party before the competition, he was a person who did things without distinguishing between good and evil, only seeking his heart, just as simple as the water in the brook. Time passes by one minute. The incense in the altar came to the last little bit, it is estimated that it will not take more than 10 breaths, it will be completely extinguished, and the game will also end. Long Chong was in an extremely bad mood at this time. He didn't know where this was a person who came out of nowhere, actually the strength could be so strong, and amongst Long Air's corpse, there was also the power of the laws mixed in. The degree of control was not low. As early as when they came, they had already planned how to win the match, but now suddenly there was an accident which made Long Chong have a slight sense of insecurity. I thought of this. Looked at the altar in the few remaining incense, ice condensed, and turned his head to signal the next six or seven strong demon race. The demon race powerhouses received the signal. The next second, they rushed towards Knight Beixian in unison, striking out with killing moves that covered the sky and wrapped their breaths together, comparable to the strongest strike of a motto powerhouse. Die. The crowd of the demon race roared in unison. This time, the speed wasn't fast, but the proud sons of heaven in the field, still didn't make a move, they just watched silently, their expressions were actually indifferent? This makes the people on the sidelines of the field is completely exploded. They do not dare to top themselves, others on, actually still upset? Twice did not help. With such thoughts, the people gradually began to reject those pride of heaven, thinking that even if these people grew up, they couldn't possibly be of much use. This made them think of one person at the same time, Devil Jr. Yunrin Poppy turned her head in some shame, and when she thought of the fact that she had just disparaged Knight Beixian and elevated Lu Chang'e and Yi Yuntian, she felt a burst of fire on her face. Watching the crowd of demonic clansmen, combining their efforts to rush towards Knight Beixian, actually vaguely began to worry. This change was very sudden, but it was caused by a variety of factors. Looked at Yun Zun again. Discovered that Yun Zun actually did not drink, and the Green Jade Gourd also did not know where to go, made a kind of ready to strike at any time, slightly surprised. With Master Zun around, there shouldn't be any accidents. Under the field. Knight Beixian, who was surrounded by a number of demon race powerhouses, sidestepped, clasped his hands, and stared straight at the crowd of demon race powerhouses, his eyes looming unafraid. One breath. Two breaths. Three breaths. Knight Beixian is still half immobile, even the gas are not transported, so straight staring, as if it is scared silly general. Hundreds of people panicked, Jin Yuxian looked on blankly, Yun Zun aura surged to all limbs, Lu Changha breathed a sigh of relief, Long Chang's face was overjoyed. Such a close distance, it is too late to be lucky again, so Knight Beixian is dead. Seek gifts. Oh. Facing the raging demon powerhouse, Knight Beixian had no fluctuations within his heart and just clasped his hands. The crowd held their breath as they watched the scene, all curious as to what Knight Beixian was doing in the end, why didn't he have the luck to counterattack? Why didn't he fight back? Just in the nick of time. Time is up, the match is over. A loud and clear female voice resounded through the arena, and then those few strong demon race members who were fixed in midair flew out backwards. At this moment, Knight Beixian lowered his hands and headed towards the resting grounds. The calmness displayed throughout the entire process made people wonder if he still had other means. The crowd of heaven's pride showed a look of pity, deeply glancing at Knight Beixian, and then also headed to the resting grounds, and then there were specialized people who came to clean up the dragon beheading stage. The people chatted cheerfully, clearly what Knight Beixian had just done made them feel extremely honored, and every single one of them wore a smile on their faces. They wouldn't care about the cultivators who had already died, they only cared about their face as Yuan Zhou people. After the venue was cleaned up and all the players had taken a short break, they once again came to the dragon beheading stage. 16 people. 8 from the demon race and 8 from the human race. One side was from Qingzhou, and the other side was from Yuan Zhou, and the next match, which not only represented the fight between the two regions, but also between the two races, could be considered a lot to watch. Cheers rang out from the surroundings, all for the sake of Knight Beixian, but Knight Beixian, who was the rightful owner, was half-heartedly responding, after all, he wasn't doing it for the sake of the people either. In his heart, he couldn't talk about regret, but he also felt that he shouldn't stand out, so it would be good to bear it for a while. Putting away his thoughts, because Yun Zun came. Silence. Yun Rin Poppy, who was following behind Yun Zun, said loudly, and the scene suddenly stopped. After the silence, Jin Zun announced the next match, the second round was a life and death fight, the opponents would be decided by drawing lots, 8 into 4, 4 into 2, and finally the champion would be decided. 
Moreover, in a life and death fight, there would be no restrictions on the use of moves, and any pills were also unrestricted, meaning that any means that could be used could be used at will. Knight Beishuan's eyes narrowed slightly, he didn't know why a martial arts competition, a place to compare strengths, would arrange a life and death fight? Was there any benefit to it? The other people in the arena looked disinterested, as if they already knew the outcome. However, Knight Beishuan still felt a few strands of unkind sights, thought that he felt that he shouldn't stand out and take away someone's limelight, but he didn't care. Three days later, it was the final battle. At this time, after Yun Zun introduced the rules of the competition, as well as the precautions, the female emperor also went up to the stage to say a few words, but it was nothing more than some cliches. After some of the great powers with energy had finished their speeches, the people began to disperse one after another, and so did the contestants on the dragon beheading stage. As Knight Beixian walked, suddenly Long Chong stepped in front and blocked his path. Something wrong? Long Chang's tall body clasped his hands as he looked down at Knight Beixian, arrogant but said with anger. You'd better pray that you won't meet me, or else I'll abuse you in the cruelest way possible. Long Chang's expression was hideous. It was as if he was truly an ancient beast, with his teeth and claws open, ferocious and horrifying. The surrounding people were startled. Knight Beixian didn't have the habit of looking up to others and didn't even look at Long Chong, circling around before directly leaving. But before he could take two steps, the road ahead was stopped again, this time it was, a sword cultivator dressed in white, Lu Changha. His face was somewhat sneering at this time. In front of the people, he muttered, Mast One, that Qingzhou cultivator humiliated you so much and you didn't show any sign of it, isn't this a disgrace to the people of my Yuanzhou? Lu Changha had been plotting since just now, how exactly to regain his prestige, knowing that he had to start with Knight Bei Xian, he was waiting for an opportunity. After waiting and waiting, he had really waited. Knight Bei Xian had just stood up for Yuan Zhou, killing a not-so-strong cultivator of the demon race, while not daring to say a single word in the face of the demon race's top powerhouses. There could be a big deal here. And while people were coming and going at the tunnel, he also believed that the people would understand him and know his difficulties. Do I need you to care what I do? There was no semblance of color in Knight Beishuan's cold eyes. Honestly, if Lu Changha had been honest, he might have even looked at him in a high light, but it was clear that Lu Changha was a dumbass who pawned and stood up. He didn't want to stand out, but also wanted to gain prestige, and for that reason, he didn't hesitate to attach himself to people from other states to undermine him. This kind of person could truly be called the shame of the righteous path. You. Lu Changha had never been so humiliated before, and at this moment, he was somewhat annoyed, his eyes filled with killing intent, as if he couldn't wait to kill Knight Beixian by a thousand cuts right now. Don't think that you can do whatever you want just because you killed a trashy demon clan member. Let me tell you, you're nothing. Lu Changha's voice was loud, drawing the people around. Even Long Chong was watching the scene with interest, a faint smile hanging at the corner of his mouth. The people really couldn't help themselves, they had already held a belly full of fire for Lu Changha, a person they had given high hopes to, and at this moment, they finally exploded. It doesn't matter if Lu Changha is the heir to the sword sect, or if he has a heavenly background, they just started to talk about Lu Changha's faults, and the words were a bit measured though. But it was even more unpleasant to listen to. Lu Changha looked incredulously at the people next to him. Some cannot believe this scene, killed him could not imagine, this matter actually affect him so much. More and more people began to join the ranks of the denunciation of Lu Changha. Lu Changha pushed down the wall of the people, but also cannot refute, can only hold his breath. I just. Lu Changha frowned and wanted to explain, although it was all strong words, it was better than nothing, but he was interrupted by Knight Bei Xian. What happened just now? For your own compatriots to see death and let them be killed by the demon race? In the end, you still want me, a small person, to make a move, isn't that not funny? The corners of Knight Beishuan's mouth curled slightly, his eyes seemingly clear and harmless, but his words were astonishing, every word killing him. You. Lu Changha pointed at Knight Beishuan half unable to speak, indifferent half a day, before stifling a sentence that he felt was not too disgraceful, you wait for me. Subsequently with his own senior brother and sister had also did not return to leave, footsteps extremely fast. In fact, Lu Changha did not make a move, this is all still nothing. The people do not care too much, after all, a lot of people have not come forward, it is not bad. However, Lu Changhai is just like a fool, come to attach the position of the demon race, as a way to suppress the people who stand out, so the people cannot help but erupt. At this time, Long Chong once again walked up and sneered, it seems like I'm not the only one who wants to kill you. Knight Bei Xian didn't even pay attention and accelerated his steps to leave, leaving a crowd of people looking up at his back. He wants to kill, also more than one. South of Yuanzhou, Sun and Moon Divine Sect. A black, dark cloud, obscuring a ghostly, lofty building, under the broken dragon cliff, as if there are wrong souls hissing, mournful and incomparable. Inside the sect, everyone was used to the days without the sect master, and the orders that came from the back mountain from time to time, and under the compliance, there was no big deal. Back mountain. 
air pavilion. A stunningly beautiful silhouette sat in it. In her hand was some fabric, which she was threading with a needle. Huama Shang's long white hair fell from her chest to between her legs, looking at the children's clothes and skirts on the table with some chagrin. She had wanted to make some clothes for the child, but as she was doing it, she still couldn't hold back from making it for Night Bei Xian. Child, you must be firmly tethered to your father. Huama Shang's expression was a little morbid, and in her eyes there was a seemingly watery flow of love and a crazy obsession. Hands slowly stroked on her not yet bulging belly, feeling that life, she only felt that she was a little closer to Night Bei Xian. That was what her favorite person had left in her body, that was the proof that the person she loved, loved her. Thinking about it day and night, only the fetus in her abdomen could relieve the sorrow of longing. Elder brother, that night, you were really rude. Huama Shan closed her eyes and fell into memories. In the middle of the room filled with small objects, a breeze blew in, but it could only take away some thoughts. Just at this moment, Bloodbead's voice came from below, subordinate Bloodbead comes to report, reporting to the Lord, Yu Jing's martial arts competition, Lord Husband has advanced to the next round. The voice was not arrogant. Within the pavilion, the eyes of Huama Shang that had closed with tenderness, but opened with ferocity. A fling long sleeve stood up, negative hand walked to the windowsill side, just now sitting is not obvious, at this moment stood up, revealing long and heel snow white hair. Even some of it has been dragged to the ground. How has seen your brother been recently? Huama Shang seemed like a fairy that had fallen from the sky and had been dyed with demonic chi. Possessing the most perfect facial features as well as voice in this world. There have been a few hiccups, but it's all fine, overall, it's still going well. Blood Pearl knelt on one knee, her voice resounding as she reported. Report to this father on everything, regardless of the details. Yes. In half a quarter of an hour's time, the blood bead reported all the information to Huama Shang. After listening to it, Huama Shang revealed a puzzled expression. What does Yun Zun want? Drawing out a strand of immortal energy as the ultimate reward? Could it be that he is planning to defend himself against this Zun? She was also unable to guess what Yun Zun was doing, but it didn't matter because it was exactly what she wanted. There is no need to pay too much attention to this matter, Yun Zun's actions, although this honored one can't guess what she wants to do, but as far as the plan is concerned, the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. The flowers between the Shang absolute beauty of the immortal face some surprise, but after, slightly curved up the corner of the mouth. Lord, what are the next instructions? Qin Yuxian this woman first don't move. Obviously when he was a child, Qin Yuxian also particularly loved Hua Manshang, and at this moment when it was brought up again, Hua Manshang's reaction was flat. Or rather, it's no different from talking about a stranger, cold with a sense of distance. Qin Yuxian is senior brother's sister-in-law, the relationship is very shallow, so we must be cautious, in the future, this honored one will handle it himself. Hua Manshang's phoenix eyes looked towards the dim sky. As for Tai Ling Qing Shui, Hua Manshang's expression became dangerous, her eyes narrowed slightly and in an instant, the wind raged. Thunderstorms churned as if rain would fall from time to time. Mark it for senior brother first. Allowing senior brother to get the top list of the tournament is the top priority. Yes, remember, all those who have targeted the senior brother will be killed without amnesty. They can be allowed to pressure elder brother, but they cannot jeopardize lives, understand? Subordinate understands. At this time, Huama Shang was like a mother who was uneasy about her child wandering around, searching her intestines and wanting to instruct something, but the uneasiness in her heart was never eliminated. Subsequently, Huama Shang also instructed some matters, such as what to bring enough heavenly herbs and earthly treasures, and not to let the past life parasites nibble away at Knight Beishuan's life force. Another example was that if Knight Beishuan encountered danger on the field, he didn't need to be concerned about the rules and could just strike, and so on. The blood pearl didn't have any impatience, serious as a talismanic machine that only knew how to agree. Su felt enough, Huama Shang slowly turned around, finally leaving a sentence, the plan can start, make as much trouble as you can. After closing the window, the blood beads promised, then hidden. Elder brother, elder brother, elder brother, elder brother. Within the room, Huama Shang's breathing was a bit rapid, her thoughts for Night Bei Xian also came to the highest point the consequences of the usual deliberate concealment, at this time completely exploded. Slender as crystal products of the small hand, as if a touch on the broken, at this time to seize the black gauze skirt, will be bright oil silky skirt to get the folds up. Jogging two steps, came to the bed above the couch, flowers between the dress blush, do not care about the image of pouncing on it, there are some men's robes on it. It looks like it has been placed on the bed for a while. Soon, immediately senior brother can come back. The time is really too hard to get through. Hua Masang exhaled deeply, elder brother, Masang is really going crazy. A stunningly beautiful silhouette rolled around unimaginatively on the bed, but because the person was so beautiful, it instead showed a kind of, a different kind of artistic beauty. It was only a pity that it was impossible for anyone to see this scene, 
and of course, it included the only person in this world who was qualified to see it, Night Bei Xian, Yu Jing. Night Bei Xian, who had exited the passageway, sat in Qin Yuxian's luxurious chauffeured car, before relaxing slightly, feeling his body instantly feel much more comfortable, and letting out a long breath. Xian'er, are you under a lot of stress? Let's sister-in-law press you. Qin Yuxian thought that Night Bei Xian had developed a great deal of stress after seeing the demon race powerhouses. Thank you, sister-in-law, but no need. Night Bei Xian pressed down Qin Yuxian's raised little hand and replied with a smile. It wasn't because of anyone that his entire body was tense, but rather a habit he had developed over the years. Why did he care so much about the people he cared about? Because he needed a haven, a place where he could completely relax. After all, people are not grass, who can be the same all the time. Brat, you dislike your sister-in-law, don't you? No. Then why don't you let Auntie give you a massage? Auntie your strength is too small. Tai Ling Qingxue sat on the sidelines watching this scene, and for some reason, there was inexplicably some tastiness in her eyes. Looking at Night Bei Xian, who was smiling naturally, she had some words she wanted to say. Yet she couldn't say them no matter what. She saved Night Bei Xian out of being able to save her sister, but whether there were other reasons she didn't know, perhaps she didn't want to know, but it was a fact that existed. She wanted to ask Night Bei Xian exactly what he thought of her, would he think she was a frivolous woman? If the answer was whether or not, then why was he ignoring himself? She did not know. Between her thoughts, she arrived at the mansion. Night Bei Xian and Qin Yuxian led the way into the mansion, with Tai Ling Qingxue following behind as usual. Miss. Tai Ling Qingxue's eyes widened as she looked towards the mature figure that walked out from the side. The person who came was none other than Yu Zhu. Aren't you, you're back? Tai Ling Qingxue was surprised for just a moment, and then like an eggplant that had been frosted, she said in a listless tone. Yu Zhu frowned and walked forward to pull Tai Ling Qingxue who was walking towards the mansion and said. It's Yi Yun Tian Yi Gongzi. He has promised to give us the qualification to choose the treasures of the Dakian treasury without charging a fee once he gets the top list. Then what does he want? He doesn't want anything, he just, just wants to make a friend with the young lady. Begging for a gift. Begging for a gift. Request a gift. Yu Zhu had been worried about whether Night Bei Xian could get the top list since she knew that Night Bei Xian was suffering from the past life compass in Qing Shui Town, until later when Night Bei Xian showed his strength, but that was only for the general situation. Came to the Yu Jing, she found that this year's contestants, compared to previous years, the strength of more than one grade, the original put down the heart, and once again seized up, but has not been said, thinking of Night Bei Xian so confident, and he himself also need to win the top list, as a way to get sleep compulsion Dan, also slightly at ease. Until Night Bei Xian was cut by Zhang Xiangfeng. All the negative thoughts exploded at that moment as well, and Yu Zhu chose to abandon Night Bei Xian and seek out a new partner before the competition started. He wanted to drag Tai Ling Qing Shui along with him, but then it didn't work out. Moon Bamboo with the mentality of revenge, looking for a number of heaven's pride, but unfortunately, even met face to face are very few, let alone can become a partner. After remembering the eyes of Yi Yun Tian, the holy son of the Tai Chu Holy Land, towards the Tai Ling Qing water during the tea party, Yu Zhu knew that this was his last chance. As expected, Yi Yun Tian not only agreed, but also did not charge any payment, only needing to introduce Tai Ling Qing Shui to its acquaintance. Yu Zhu was originally very happy, thinking that Tai Ling Qing Shui would definitely regret not following her to find her next family, fantasizing about how Tai Ling Qing Shui would apologize to her the next time they met. But above the arena, something unexpected happened, Night Bei Xian actually got better. Although he hadn't shown too much, the strength shown was unrivaled. Even more so, it is pulled in the hearts and minds of the people. And while the original plan was to arrange for the two to get acquainted only after the end of the competition, Yi Yintian couldn't help it when he saw Tai Ling Qing Shui following behind Night Bei Xian. Anger flared up. Immediately, he gave Yu Zhu an ultimatum that he must abduct Tai Ling Qing Shui over there, or else the contract would be voided. Yu Zhu was also somewhat forced at his wit's end, after all, when making a deal with a transcendent power like the Tai Chu Sacred Land, one had to be careful in everything and make no mistakes. As for Tai Ling Qing Shui, when she heard this, she directly froze in place and didn't speak for a long time. Miss? Yu Zhu raised her hand and shook it in front of Tai Ling Qing Shui, trying to wake her up. I don't know if it was Yu Zhu's action that had worked. But Tai Ling Qing Shui's eyes began to gradually focus, but the coldness that emanated from her eyes was even greater. Are you selling me out? These were Tai Ling Qing Shui's words that were forced to suppress her anger, but they concealed fire. She wasn't a fool, that Yi Yun Tian was looking at her with what kind of eyes, could she not know? Recognize recognize? That was nothing but bullshit to fool ghosts. Tai Ling Qing Shui really doubted if Yu Zhu had been nightmared in her mind and would actually believe such bullshit. How could it be? Isn't this all for Lord Ghost King? Originally, Night Bei Xian only had a 90% chance of being eliminated, and now, having offended Lu Changha and Long Chong, he will surely die as long as he goes on stage. 
Yu Zhu had an expression that he was all for the sake of the 10,000 Ghost Cave, and persuaded bitterly. Could it be that you don't care what happens to Lord Ghost King, miss? Don't forget. Although Lord Ghost King rarely smiles, you know how he treats you. Facing the love and kin card played by Yu Zhu, Tai Ling Ching Shui clenched her pink fists and struggled a little. Her sister was her only relative, how could she not take it to heart? But, seeing Tai Ling Ching Shui had a tendency to back down, Yu Zhu rode the wave of victory, don't worry miss, I've seen Mr. Yi, he's a good son of heaven. After two steps forward, walked to the side of Tai Ling Ching Shui, whispered, it won't be anything, at most, at most, we will just let him touch his little hand. Suddenly, Tai Ling Ching Shui directly pushed away Yu Zhu, revealing an unthinkable expression, pointing at Yu Zhu half unable to speak. Miss, I don't want to lie to you either. But there is no such thing as a free lunch in the world, mister. Yi is also a good person, if you think he is still okay, even. Enough. Hearing Tai Ling Ching Shui's hysterical roar. Yu Xu froze, she had never seen Tai Ling Ching Shui so angry, she could feel it even through the veil. Miss. Tai Ling Ching Shui was feeling bad right now because in her heart, she had long been Night Beishuan's woman, although Night Beishuan had not mentioned it or made any promises. But regardless of whether Night Beishuan admitted it or not, she had already given her innocence to Night Beishuan which was a fact. And at this moment, someone actually came and said that she should go and touch other men's little hands? What was the difference between this and calling her a slut? That was why she was so agitated. The other side. The moral issue of saving her sister had been tormenting her, Duizhu might have been out of line, but words were not thick, her sister still needed saving. Her sister had taken care of her for so many years, and was her only relative, she should all possibilities to try to be right, even if it was to be touched a little hand. But she, Tai Ling Ching Shui, couldn't do it, even for the sake of her sister, she couldn't do it all the same. You go back. Tai Ling Ching Shui was in an extremely bad mood and waved her small, slender, and bony hand. Miss. Yu Zhu was anxious. She went up to pull Tai Ling Ching Shui who was ready to leave. The movement was made all relatively small. If so go back, cooperation is certainly not to be thought of, the consequence as well. Yu Zhu dare not say, too early Holy Land dare to kill, but other. Cannot be said. Think about the Ghost King Lord. I can talk to Yi Gongzi, let him not touch you, can it? Yu Zhu herself knew that she was talking about ghosts, and when they really arrived at Yi Yuntian's territory, it was useless to say anything else. After all, they were ghost cultivators, and the ghost king was still in trouble, in this situation, they were little rabbits to be held, no one cared if they killed them. If you want to go, you go, I am not going to go. And don't you dare irritate me with my sister. If my sister was awake, she would definitely not agree even if she knew about this. So don't waste your time. Hearing this, Yu Xu's face became ugly because when she came, she had already sworn to promise Yi Yun Tian, and at this time if she couldn't bring it away. Miss, I'm sorry. S.H. Under the moon bamboo with special gung fu hand knife, Tai Ling Ching Shui directly is fainted, soft down, was caught by the moon bamboo, held in the arms, after the escape. Tai Ling Ching Shui from getting off the car to be captured by the moon bamboo, a total of less than one incense burn time, coupled with the Qin Mansion unique courtyard, the door did not have a passerby so it resulted in not a single person seeing. When Tai Ling Ching Shui woke up again, but found himself tied to a bed, surrounded by darkness, thinking of some kind of possibility, he was instantly terrified. Want to use energy to break the rope, but found that the body has no aura, struggling for a while never be solved. And at this time, the door opened. Early morning. Night Beixian walked down from the stairs, Xin Yuxian has already boiled porridge, at this time is smoking hot. Auntie, have you seen Ching Shui? Hearing Night Beixian ask, Qin Yuxian placed the finished porridge in front of Qi Mingren and replied, I haven't seen her, I haven't seen her since I came back yesterday. At once, Night Beixian felt a chill down his spine. What's going on? Why does it suddenly feel so cold? Afterward, he remembered the matter of Tai Ling Qing Shui, leaving without saying hello? Could it be? The matter of Moon Bamboo leaving, Tai Ling Qing Shui had already told him, although the wording was vague, but he still heard the secret of it. He also knew that Yue Zhu had not been too optimistic about him, so he did not care. If Tai Ling Ching Shui had gone to find Yu Zhu, then everything made sense, but why? Could it be that he had messed with a lot of powerful people? But if Tai Ling Ching Shui didn't have confidence in him, then why did she use her body to help him? Quickly sit down and eat, Ching Shui is such a big person, can he still lose it? Xin Yuxian served another bowl of content-rich porridge and placed it on the table. Night Beixian walked to the table and sat down, picked up the bowl and took a sip, always feeling uneasy. What? Can't bear to part with others? Xin Yuxian's tone was a bit sour, teasingly asking. That's not true, it's just that I feel that her behavior is a bit strange. Night Beixian answered truthfully. Who made you treat Qing Shui so coldly? She must be uncomfortable in her heart. Xin Yuxian had seen it long ago, and it was only at this moment that she spoke to Night Beixian about it. Cold? Don't you kid. 
know it yourself, didn't notice, it's, you, hey, forget it, in a nutshell, it's just very cold, if Ching Shui has feelings for you, it's pretty much drained clean, Qin Yuxian said with some bloating. Knight Beishuan's thoughts drifted, he was always very slow with his feelings, or perhaps the women he met were too proactive, forgetting a girl's reserve. Maybe there really was something wrong with him. In order to save him, Tai Ling Ching Shui had even given him her innocence that she had treasured for an unknown number of years, while he hadn't really given feedback and was still the same as before. There wasn't even a promise. In any case, Knight Beishuan felt that he must do something, as far as Tai Ling Ching Shui was concerned. It was a bit more vulgar. He still wanted all the heavenly treasures in the 10,000 ghost cave, so this couldn't go yellow. Forget it. Let's talk about it later when we have the chance. Knight Beixian recovered as before and took another sip of porridge. Right at this moment, Xin Yuxian was the one who poked her head over, mysteriously and somewhat panicked. Shenner, don't go out for these two days. The Yu Jing has not been peaceful lately. Oh, how is it not peaceful? Knight Beixian didn't take it too seriously, slightly raising his eyes to look at Qin Yuxian as he asked, treating it as idle chatter. Recently there have been some officials, inexplicably died, and the body is stiff and uncorrupted, and there is a black fire flower burning at the heart of the chest. Knight Beixian frowned slightly, hearing the four words black fire flower, his heart unexpectedly had a sense of familiarity. And then? Qin Yuxian continued, just last night, a small village not far from the Yujing, overnight, blood flowed and all died. What? Knight Beixian was horrified. Just what kind of person was so heartless, to kill so many unarmed civilians, and what was their purpose? When we were discovered this morning, there were black flames burning throughout the village, as if someone had done it on purpose and left a mark afterward. Qin Yuxian's face was also unusually ugly, because killing the civilian population meant that the person who did the evil was killing people indiscriminately without a purpose, and this kind of person was extremely dangerous. What did the imperial dynasty say? Knight Beixian put down his bowl and asked with a grave face. There aren't any clues, only that one bizarre black flame ghost flower, nothing else. Hearing this, Knight Beishuan's heart was vaguely uneasy, he had a feeling that this matter was directed at himself, black flame of flowers? Flowers. I'm afraid that it has another meaning. Auntie, do you know where that village is? You child, I told you about the danger, but you still want to go there, you are not allowed to go anywhere. I have to go and see, otherwise I won't have peace of mind, Auntie shall quickly tell me. I've said I'm not allowed to go. The two of them ground their tongues for a while, Xin Yuxian saw that Knight Beixian appeared to be in a real hurry and had to compromise, finally sighing and saying, truly I owe you Knight family in my previous life. Thank you, sister-in-law. After getting the address, Knight Beixian flew out of Peach Blossom Street, Xi Menger wanted to follow along, of course he couldn't agree, and soon arrived at the city gates. At this time, the city gates were already tightly inspected, and the number of patrols was more than ten times more. Passing pedestrians and horses, all need proper reasons and identity. Next to them, there was even a feudal marquis strongman pressing the field. From these actions, it can be concluded that the impact of this incident is extremely bad. The imperial dynasty took it very seriously. Walking on the streets, from time to time, Knight Bei Xin could hear about this matter from the mouths of the people next to him, the tone of his voice full of the color of fear, fear of falling on his own head. Blackness colored the streets of Yu Jing overnight. But his appearance had also caused quite a stir. After all, he had fought for the face of the Yuan Zhou people, so Knight Beixian acted quickly, wanting to get out of the city gates quickly. Thanks to his popularity, when he left the city gates, he was not checked and was let through. Knight Beixian did not dare to delay, nonstop hoof towards the address given by Qin Yuxian, dash 2. The small village was attached to the Yujing, so the location was very close, and Knight Beixian arrived very quickly. Just as soon as he arrived he was dumbfounded. Black flames burned out, burned away everything, only the body is half not burned, as if deliberately left in general, the chest and a black flower. The surrounding area has been blocked, but the cries are endless, some people who have escaped because they went out, are crying outside the parapet at this time. That voice, tearing the lungs. It made some of the people who had come over to watch the spectacle have an urge to shed tears. Knight Beishuan's footsteps became slower, bit by bit, he walked over, the village was naturally gone, it was just a pile of ruins inside, lying a pile of corpses. Only on those corpses, there is a bizarre black ghost spark, and burning. Lotus flower. Between murmurs, Knight Beishuan's body trembled a little. Breathing became rapid, and his eyes filled with blood. Sure enough, it was directed at himself, and these villagers died because of himself. Without too many words, ignoring the cries around him, Knight Beishuan walked back with an expressionless face, thinking about the reason behind all this. The mood is terrible. Walking, but saw a mountain hut, surrounded by green grass, beautiful mountains, birds and flowers, for some reason, some like the scene in the painting. It is not too much to call it a fairyland. Seeing all this, gradually, Knight Beishuan's mood improved a lot, but he clearly remembered that there was no such heaven and earth when he came. 
The Yukio city was an empty piece, how could there be such a paradise-like place? Just as Knight Bashian was wondering, a woman dressed in a light blue long skirt, left hand carrying a wooden basin, poured the hut in style and went. The woman's immortal face was so beautiful that the surrounding beauty couldn't help but pale in comparison to her. Small hand has a superb material of white jade bracelet, but the texture and luster is not even compared to her snow white skin. On her forehead hung a sea blue oval gemstone. The entire person was somewhat unrealistic, not transparent, but like this person shouldn't have appeared in such a mundane world. Knight Bashian looked dumbfounded. For the first time, he had seen someone who could compete with his own senior sister, in terms of face value. Please gift ah, the author is going to starve to death. A word of caution. The author's degree of pure love, from the previous text can be seen, the main female lead did not even talk to any male. To go overboard, the father didn't even show up. So, I won't even write NTR if you give me money, not even a little bit, don't worry. The brook flows slowly the young girl is bright and colorful, the picture is harmonious and surprising, the knight Bashian wants to say something, but always feel that it is not appropriate to say anything. Because of the fear of destroying this beautiful scene, the young girl seems to have discovered knight Bashian, but did not pay attention, but straight into the hut. Not long after, curls of smoke came out from the chimney of the hut, and the girl's blue-white skirt was flowing, and when she walked, along with her tassels, she kept fluttering backwards. Knight Bashian felt a never-before-experienced peace of mind, as if the young girl has some kind of magic generally, can heal his heart, this is also the reason why he delayed the choice to leave, he coveted that feeling. The smoke from the cooker was getting smaller and smaller, the young girl was carrying a plate of delicate dishes and placed them on a table woven with bamboo in the courtyard, the smoke and fire emanated out instantly. After doing all this, the, the young girl was then tired, with a white and tender little thumb, hooked up the ear hair, revealing that absolutely beautiful and exquisite little face, between the mountains and the water, only to let people sink into it. After sitting down, prepare to eat. But Froze, once again noticed Knight Beishuan's side, served another bowl of rice, placed it opposite his own. No one said anything, but Knight Beishuan already knew the young girl's thoughts, a few steps across the steps, sat opposite the young girl, but did not move his chopsticks. The eyes were somewhat unable to move on the young girl. What is your name? Ling. A short question, a short answer. Have we met before? Why do I sense a special feeling in you? Maybe met before. Ling's words were extremely concise, speaking without joy or sorrow, and her expression didn't change, but Knight Beishin could see that she just didn't care, rather than being high-strung. What kind of place is this? I don't remember such a paradise in Yujing. This is the place that belongs to me. Knight Beishin was somewhat baffled. There was no land under the heavens that wasn't the king's land, so how could it be someone's? Afterward, he asked. Have you always lived here? No, only recently came over. Oh, then where did you originally live? The Eastern Domain. Knight Beishian was again baffled by these words. The Eastern Domain was just a sea, aside from some ferocious extraterrestrial heavenly demons, where else could there be a place to live? Eventually, he asked. Ever since the sea people were slaughtered by the heavenly demons, that part of the Eastern Domain should have been sealed, right? Can't you live there if it's sealed? Knight Beishian. He didn't know why, 